What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list, and this time around, we are doing a Nesquik slash milkshake tier list, but obviously with ones you can buy in store. Now, I am a milk expert, and since you all also must know, I am the Nesquik expert because I can chug these bad boys faster than anyone else in the world. I have yet to hear of a man who can chug as many Nesquiks as I can under the heat of 110 degree weather in a car with absolutely no ventilation. Why the hell would anyone subject themselves to that? The only thing I'd leave in a car with 110 degree weather is a baby or a dog. Okay, that is not the right thing to say at all. I'm sure what you meant to say was that you wouldn't leave any living creature in your car with no AC in extremely hot weather. No, I really meant what I said. I said it proudly with my chest. See, I like to stay in the car by myself because it then becomes my own personal sauna. Sometimes I pass out, but that's when I power up and chug some delicious Nesquik. And oh boy, let me tell you that being in the car makes it all warm and yummy, but that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and get the tier list started because that's the big thing here. And up first, we got the protein versions of the strawberry and chocolate Nesquik. Now, I personally don't work out, so I do not care for these protein-filled drinks. I never understood why people stress about protein when I know a simple life hack that will get you tons of protein. Joe, what the hell is your life hack? I need to know to keep cultivating mass because these protein Nesquiks are good, but I usually drink Fairlife or Muscle Milk. Well, I'm going to ask you later to close your eyes and rub this hose. And in a couple of minutes, some weird tasting goo will come out. And I promise you that it will have tons of protein and you will get shredded. Oh, shit, bet. I cannot wait to get that. But you got to tell me the recipe for your protein drink one day. We can just call it Papa Joe's special sauce for now. Donald, please, for the love of God, don't do what he's telling you to do. Now, Barack, he is a grown man who can come to his own decisions because Lord knows I'll be coming to uh, making my own decision. I will be coming to my own decisions on these drinks. And I think that the strawberry Nesquik protein is a D tier because strawberry protein is just not it. It tastes absolutely abhorrent. And this gutter slug of a drink has no redeeming qualities, like say what you will about pedophiles. But at least they drive slowly past schools and that is one redeeming about them while protein strawberry Nesquik has none. And the chocolate protein flavor will go into C tier because that one is actually kind of yummy. I can actually withstand the awful taste of chocolate protein and sometimes think it's not half bad. Anyways, after that, we got a bit of a pickle because as you all can tell, there are two purple labeled Nesquik flavors and I have them. But the thing is that the flavors online either show it being called fudge brownie or double chocolate. And I think that they are the same thing. But the thing is, I cannot remember which one I had for the life of me. So I cannot verify if they do taste the same, but Google shows me mixed results. So I will grade them the same. Go figures that you can't remember what the flavor is, Joe. Your sleepy ass can barely remember what day it is. Yeah, Joe, you really need to fix that problem of yours. It's not a problem. It is simply a mix up and it is not a big deal. And me getting names wrong and not remembering things is not a sign of future or current health problems that I have. Either way, that has very little to do with the list and I will be rating both the double chocolate and brownie fudge flavor a B tier. I swear that they are the same thing, but I am going to need some help from the comment section on it, but I felt as though it was too much chocolate. Like this was extreme cacao for my liking, but it still is not half bad. After that, we got the tried and true chocolate flavor, and this is like in the hall of fame for chocolate flavored drinks. So you all know this is an easy S tier, and I don't even have to think about it. I absolutely am in love with this flavor and can drink it like it's water. As a matter of fact, I think I've gone a couple of days drinking just Nesquik instead of anything else. Sure, my piss might have been darker than cheddar cheese, but let me tell you that I absolutely loved crushing these bad boys every other hour. I don't care how much you need to strengthen your bones, Joe, because of your frail, weak body. Drinking anything more than three of these a day is not right at all, and you should probably be institutionalized. I personally actually respect the level of dedication it takes to drink that much milk in one day. It's gross, but I can't help but cheer him on. It's like watching Joey Chestnut crush a bunch of hot dogs. Like you're absolutely repulsed by the mere sight of him dipping his dogs in water or Gatorade, and then just shoving the mush down his mouth with no beauty at all. It's like pouring slop on a plate and watching a pig just go buck wild. Well, I personally think that dipping your hot dogs in Gatorade water is delicious and totally see the appeal to it. But uh, thanks, Donald. I'm glad you respect me. I respect your dedication to how much of a filthy, vile human being you are. I don't really respect you as a person at all still. Well, a dub is still a dub, so I am going to take the road less traveled and not go at you. I know y'all like that Robert Frost reference. Yeah, 
I'm a bit of a poet, and I didn't even know it. I actually hate you so much right now, Joe. Please, for the love of God, just continue on with the list instead of doing this bit. Fine, but I won't be happy about it. Anyways, up next, we got a cinnamon toast crunch shake, and this isn't Nesquik, but it is still a Nestle product, so I do not care. The Nestle cinnamon toast crunch drink, which is also called Cinna Milk, is a freaking bop. I have to place this into S tier. It tastes amazing, and just like the milk you have after having some cinnamon toast crunch, and I'm so happy that someone decided to make a drink after that because it has to be the best part of eating cinnamon toast crunch. That's some fat boy shit right there, Joe, and I respect that, but I have to disagree. I still prefer the crunch of the cereal alongside the milk more than the end where I drink the cinnamon and sugar mix. Don't get me wrong, thought it is amazing, but it's not the best part of it. It's more like eating a nice dessert after demolishing a nice Wagyu steak. Ain't no way you just compared Cinnamon Toast Crunch to Wagyu steak. I refuse to believe I just heard that. I think we will agree to disagree, Donald, because it's the inverse for me. I eat all the delicious cereal so I can reach the milk, which has then become the nectar of the gods because of all the cinnamon and sugar. But yeah, point is that this drink is a bop and you all need to try this. Then after we got the strawberry banana flavored Nesquik, and this is pretty good, once again, the Joe Dog has to reiterate that he is a fan of artificially flavored banana, so it should be no surprise when I place the strawberry banana into A tier. It's a good one to have in case you're getting tired of the other flavors. Joe, I promise you that people are not having so many of these that they, quote, get tired of the other flavors. Hop off the Jock Barack. You're writing me harder than Angela White ever could. Hey, ho! Thanks, Donald. But anyways, aside from Barack constant need to try to correct me, we then got another pretty good flavor. And that, of course, is vanilla. Now, some people don't like vanilla because it's too basic, but I am not one of those people. I personally really like the flavor of vanilla. And once again, would love one of these if they were available. Dare I say, I would twerk for one of these, but I would not handstand twerk for this, which will then place the vanilla Nesquik into A tier alongside the banana strawberry. Good decision there, Joe. Now, normally I am a part of the white is right movement, but not for this case. I like the placing you got for it. Thanks, Donnie T. We're just gonna overlook his comment just now? What that he agrees with me? Man, you don't know what you want, Barack. You tell us to get along, and when we finally do, you decide to just talk shit constantly. Everything okay at home with you and Michelle, man? I'd rather not talk about that. Can uh, we just go on with the list? You must not be allowed to drink Nesquik. What a sad existence it is for your berry. Not for me, though, because I can bathe in this shit if I wanted to. Sugar contents be damned, but anyways, after that, we got the glorious follow-up to the delicious chocolate Nesquik, and that, of course, is the pure strawberry-flavored one. This is an immediate S tier, and we all know that strawberries dominate all of the Joe Dog's tier lists. It's no secret, but I would, in fact, get on all fours and bark like a dog if someone were to wave a strawberry Nesquik in front of me. Joe, what would you bark more for? This Nesquik flavor or a used Margot Robbie shoe after she got done running a marathon? Come on, man, you think I'm some sort of weirdo or something? Of course I'm picking the shoe. What kind of oddball would say otherwise? Anyways, after that stupid question, we got a, this Snickers drink, and this is actually made by Nesquik as well. And let me tell you all right now that this is an automatic S tier as well. I love Snickers. And if you add that to anything, I will most certainly love it. Like just a bit ago, I was eating some Snickers ice cream that I just bought. And it's this amazing chocolate ice cream with bits of Snickers all throughout it. And it is absolutely delicious. Snickers lovers rejoice because this shit do indeed fucking bang. And uh, Joe, if I am not mistaken, they also have a Twix flavor as well, right? What would you rate that? Well, I like Twix more than I like Snickers, so it would also go in S tier. We probably should have added that drink in before doing the list. But hey, what can we do? We're not the editor, so it's not our fault. If anything, we should be applauded for working in these harsh conditions. Joe, you were literally napping earlier. What do you mean by harsh working conditions? Way to be a snitch, Donald. Anyways, we are on our last entry on this list, and I want to let you all know that this is a sore topic for me because I thought this Fruit Loops drink was going to be amazing. I really did. But it is quite the opposite. I don't think I have ever tried a lazier drink than this one because it is literally milk that has been left to marinate with Fruit Loop cereal. And while that might be amazing with Cinnamon Toast Crunch or even Frosted Flakes, this drink had so much potential, but I am placing it in B tier only because it doesn't taste as ass as the protein drinks. Uh, I'm sorry I gave it such harsh words, but those are my honest to God feelings. No one please buy this and don't mention this drink in front of me again because it is a touchy subject for me. 
Joe, it's okay. We don't have to keep going because the video is over. Hey, Joe, you want to know what is a real touchy subject? What is that, Donald? Well, you see, Joe, for pedophiles, children are always a matter of a touchy subject. Hey, everyone. Your presidential boys are back at it again with yet another tier list. It's only a matter of time before we start making a tier list about air. I wouldn't underrate fresh air, Donald. You're going to miss it when you're in prison. Joe, don't you go starting this again. Settle down, gents. Let's go ahead and get this condiments tier list started. So for our first entry, I have Dijon mustard going in C tier. What? No way. I am a mustard enjoyer, and there is no way Dijon mustard is in C tier. You seem like a must-tard for that take, Joey. Mustard is okay, but I can't have it with anything alone aside from a hot dog and a burger. On God, Donald, when do you ever see someone dipping their fries in mustard, hmm? I like to sometimes dip my fries in a little bit of yellow mustard when- Stop it, you freak. I thought you were going to say honey mustard, but yellow mustard? Gross. Anyways, we already got our first S tier, and that is guacamole. Yes, Barack, if there's one thing those damn illegals know how to do, it's build great houses, clean very well. Frankly, they do some great lawn work as well, make some fantastic food, but most important of all, they know how to make a goddamn great guacamole. I would Piper Perry a motherfucker for some guac right now. Strangely enough, I agreed with everything you just said. Aside from that last sentence, but I hope you'll feel the same about hummus because that's our first A tier. Mm, it comes from Egypt and is associated with Arabs, but it is extremely halal, so I must agree with that amazing take. Give me some hummus and carrots and I am set. Donnie, stop trying to act like you'd ever touch a vegetable. The hell are you talking about, Joe? I love carrots. Must explain the orange skin. Okay, guys, enough. Anyways, up next, I got Jack Daniel's sweet and spicy barbecue sauce at B tier. I love it, don't get me wrong, but I have a soft spot for Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce and much prefer it. That's okay, Barack. I think we all have soft spots for certain things. Only soft spot you have is in your brain, Joey. You're probably going to want your honey mussy at S tier up next. Well, yeah, it's freaking honey mustard. I love eating it with my chicken tendies. Just because you said that I am putting it in B tier, but I can't even lie, I do like me some honey mustard. I dabble in the occasional honey mustard dip. You guys don't understand. Honey mustard is literally the best. It can go on almost anything. I will for real twerk for that shit. And it's definitely staying in B tier. Up next, we got actual honey going in A tier because, well, it's honey and I think everyone loves it. Fun fact, guys, did you all know that having a honey allergy is rare? With an estimated incidence of less than 0.001% in the general population. Pretty cool, right? That is not pretty cool. That sounds sorry as hell. How the hell are you going to be allergic to honey? God, you might as well keel over anything at that point. Motherfuckers being allergic to honey is like the equivalent of someone taking Lizzo's advice for workouts. Both are equally lousy. Can we stop with the Lizzo hate? She actually has some bangers. Well, I can't say jokes about Jonah Hill. He stopped Kanye from hating Jews. On God trumpet. Anyways, we have Cholula up next, which I'm confidently placing in A tier. It's better than Tabasco sauce, and I love having it on my eggs when I'm not using ketchup. A little too spicy for me, but I like the way it tastes as well. A little too spicy? Come on, Donald, it's more vinegar than anything else. More vin what, Joey? Stop with that bit, Donald. We gotta get to maple syrup up next, and I can confidently say that it is a B tier. Honey clears it. On God, Barack, I'll split a wig if anyone dares to say maple syrup is better. That's some Canadian shit, and I do not fuck with Canadians. There he goes again with his rant. It's not a rant, I'm just saying the world would be better if we just wiped them off the face of the planet like the vermin they are. Like if I had the choice to cure AIDS and cancer or kill all of the Canadians, I would do the Canadian one 10 times over. You're just mad that Drake talks to me and not you. Yeah, he's salty as fuck about not getting the autograph from Drake anyways. We got Prego marinara sauce next and that's another A tier to be honest. I love marinara sauce on my pasta and on my mozzarella sticks. Ooh, I love pasta. This is a W of a choice Barack. I am telling you guys, I am on fire with the list recently. Then we have mayo up next. And that's the next S tier, fellas. This shit is so versatile and is used in so much stuff. Oh my God, I love mayo. I can eat that shit straight out the tub. Wait, what? Joey, that is not fucking normal. Did you expect us to jump for joy when you said that stinky ass shit? Eating a whole tub of mayo? Jesus Christ. Your cholesterol must be out of control, Joey. Okay, I didn't mean it like that, I just... No, you definitely meant it like that. That is gross, Joey, borderline asinine. Yeah, I just feel gross after hearing that, but nonetheless, we got to keep going with the list, and I have ranch at S tier as well. It goes on pizza, wings, fries, nuggets. It's another goaded sauce, in my opinion. Yeah, but I feel like if you have too much ranch, it gets kind of gross. 
I don't disagree, but in moderation, it is amazing. Unlike our first D-tier entry, and that's relish. When have you ever heard anyone ask for relish on anything that's not a hot dog? Yeah, but it's pretty good on hot dogs. Hey, it's all right, but I'm not gonna bend over backwards for some relish. Ain't no motherfucker gonna cry over relish going in D-tier. On God, Donald, relish is probably the worst thing on this whole condiment list. Same can't be said for Tostito salsa, and I have that in B-tier. It's some good salsa from a jar, and it's pretty easy to enjoy. Yeah, you set that up alongside some chips, and it's an easy snack to enjoy. Shit is good. For real, Joey, up next I have Prego Pesto. And even though it can only be used on pasta, I'm still putting that shit in B tier because it is good. Okay, so then why is relish in D tier? That's not fair. Ignore him, Barack. I agree that it should go somewhat high. I love some good pesto. Thanks, Donnie. Honest questions for everyone. How are we feeling about sriracha? I like it, but I don't like love it. The same for me, honestly. It's decent, and I'd say above Dijon mustard, but at times it can be a bit too oriental for me. I don't know what that means, but I'd agree that it isn't amazing, but I'd say B tier is a solid placing for it. That's what I was thinking, and next I got soy sauce in C tier. I really like it, but it is way too salty and filled with sodium. It's also super overpowering, but with a little it adds the perfect amount of flavor to some dishes. Yeah, but you can't dip food in it unless it's like sushi. Agreed, I then have tartar sauce going in B tier alongside Tabasco. Both are pretty solid, but I don't think they exceed a B. Factual? We got our fourth S tier, and that is ketchup. This shit goes on so many things, and it is just so amazing. On God, Barack, I'll put ketchup on my fries, hot dogs, meatloaf, you name it. Joe, I can't disagree with you here. Ketchup is indeed one of the best condiments. Thanks, guys. I got Frank's Red Hot going at A tier because it's a good hot sauce. It's a classic, and it can go on so much shit. Then, and I am sorry, Joe, but I am putting yellow mustard at C tier. I just feel disgusted that you would put that shit by itself on your fries. Don't knock it till you try it. Nah, that shit sounds rancid as fuck. I don't think I will ever be trying that shit. We're almost done with the list, and I have Thousand Island at B tier because it's a solid dressing for salads, and it tastes pretty good in general, not gonna lie. Then I have Sweet Baby Ray's at A tier because that shit is banging. God, I love Sweet Baby Ray's. I bet you love you some Ray's deep inside of you, don't you, Joey? Donald, stop. And finishing up, I have the bomb at D tier as well. Like, why the fuck is this even here? Who genuinely enjoys this extremely hot sauce? Like, you have to be a masochist for this. Like, you'd enjoy getting pain inflicted upon you. You of all people putting the bomb in D tier is just absurd. We all know how much you enjoyed bombing stuff, Barack. Haha, <laughs> real funny there, Donald. You got everyone laughing. I thought it was funny. And that's why you're not coming to Wendy's with us later. Aw, oh, hamburgers. What's going on, gang? Me, Barack, and Donald are gonna rank some chips on our tier list. Let it be known Donald is probably the most qualified for this. Why, thank you, Barack. I appreciate the fact that you know about my superior taste buds. I think he just meant you're the most qualified because you look like you eat the most chips out of all of us. You calling me a fat ass, you sleepy motherfucker? Uh, let's get this list started with Cheetos. How we feeling on that, fellas? Solid starter chips. I like them, but I've never heard someone say, yo, get me some regular Cheetos. Barack is right. Ain't no way a sane person would go and say, please give me some regular Cheetos. Like, if they're there, then I'd eat them, and they're not bad either. They're okay. Safe choices belong in C, and next up we have Funyuns, and I personally am an onion man, so I like them a lot. No wonder your breath fucking reeks, Joe, but they are pretty nice chips, but not the best. Yeah, they're slightly better than Cheetos, so I'd say B tier is solid. All right, sounds great. Next up is Lay's Salt and Vinegar, and I'm a huge fan of these. Ain't no way you're a fan of these, Joey. If you took one bite out of these, you'd crumble to dust. I swear I love these. Yeah, they're okay, but let's not overrate them, Joe. It is just salt and vinegar. And what more could you want from salt and vinegar? Say the end of vinegar, Joe. Why? Don't fall for that, Joe, but I know you love these chips, but I'd say me and Donnie would put them at B tier, right? Yeah, they're good, but not that good. Fine, I'll move them to B tier, but you guys better put these next chips high because I love spicy sweet chili Doritos. I gotta admit it, Joe. These are underrated, to be honest. As a man with great taste buds, I like the little tang these chips have, but they're not the best Doritos. Oh, I agree, but I'm thinking A tier is good for these. And the spicy nacho Doritos up next, I'm giving a B tier while I'm ranking the Doritos. Yeah, they're not as good as the originals in my opinion. Agreed, next I'm putting Pringles original at B tier because they're solid as well. Can't go wrong with Lay's or Pringles originals. Good take, Joe, not everything needs to be fancy. I just hope you guys don't get too upset at my next take because I have barbecue Lay's at B tier as well. No fucking way you have these the same rank as original Pringles. Like, I know I just praised them, but what the fuck, Joe? Nah, he's spitting right now. 
Lay's barbecue chips are weaker compared to other barbecue chips. Like any kettle cooked, one blows it out of the water. On God, Barack, and with that, I'm putting Ruffles Original at D tier because the ridges hurt my mouth. Yeah, you ever bite one the wrong way, and next thing you know, the roof of your mouth is bleeding? Too many times, Donald. And next, I have Cool Ranch Doritos at B tier because they're solid but are outclassed by the other flavors. Agreed. And with that, our first S tier is coming up, and I'm proud to say that it is sour cream and onion. I have to agree with that. Alone cheddar and sour cream are good, but combined, they are elite. Those make me want to come with how good they are. Have you guys tried the LeBron chips? The chip is good as fuck, Donnie. We gonna ignore what he first said? Okay, fine. Ooh, one of my personal favorites is coming up, and those are original Sun Chips. I want to put those at B tier. Fuck no, you aren't. They are going to D tier. Who the fuck says they like original Sun Chips? Yeah, Joey put that shit in D tier. Fine, we can put it in D tier, but Cheddar Sun Chips have to go in B. That's fine, Joey. Those aren't bad. Now, here's a sleeper chip, and that's the Chili Fritos, which I'm putting in A tier. That's an actually good sleeper, Joe. Waking up for that, take Mr. Sleepy. Thanks, guys. Hope you guys like Classic Lay's at A tier as well, since it's a classic, as the name implies. Can't go wrong with that. The next two I have at S tier, and that is both the Nacho Cheese and Flaming Hot Limon Doritos. The Nacho Cheese is a classic and deserves its spot, and the Flaming Hot one is just so fucking good. I see too many illegals enjoying the Limon-flavored things, Joe. I don't know about that one. No, Trump. Trust me that Joe is spitting right now. Then I have Sour Cream and A. Another banger. Thanks, Barack. Next, I have Fritos at D tier. I wouldn't even feed this shit to my dog. On God, that shit is gross as fuck. We need to deport all those fucking chips. Next, I have Cheeto Puffs at B tier because I like grabbing a bunch of them and chew them till I have a huge glob of cheese in my mouth. What in the ever-living fuck, Joe? They're good, but who the fuck does that? I like having the big glob and then swallowing it. So, uh, where are you ranking Cheddar Pringles? They're pretty good, and generally I'm a fan of Pringles, so I'm putting them at A tier. I can get behind that, but the sour cream and cheddar would be higher, correct? Yes, and up next we got these god-awful Frito scoops. Another D tier, honestly? Who the hell eats these? I would rather be a blood-sucking vampire in San Francisco than ever eat those chips. Next, I'm putting sour cream lays at B tier. Whoops, accidentally moved original Sun Chips to B. This fucker did that on purpose. Joe Buddy, move that back to where it belongs. Wow, guys, so next I have hot Cheetos at S tier. We all know it would be there, Joe. Now fucking move the Sun Chips. Joey Buddy, please. And lastly, I got hot Cheeto puffs at B tier. Joe! Fine, guys, I'll do what everyone wants, what everyone is thinking. I make my lists with honor and integrity, and I plan to take your guys' opinion on this, and I won't just ignore it. I am a man who carries himself highly and will never make people upset. I will make a move. Thank Christ. Thank you. I will move Lay Sour Cream to A tier. Motherfucker. What is going on, gang? We're back with another tier list, and this time around, we're going to be making a Capri Sun tier list, and you all know that old Joe has got you all covered. These things are sugary-filled diabetes machines, but I'm glad you're happy to be doing this list, Joe. Barack quit making everything about being healthy or not. Not a single soul cares about getting diabetes. Well, I'd be especially careful if I were you. Donald, don't listen to him because your Diet Coke will always save you. But anyways, enough of this jibber-jabber because we have a list to talk about and oh man, up first we got some butt because I hate the strawberry banana flavor and actually have this going into D tier. Can't believe we started the list with a stinker. Joe, you're already starting off this list with an L. I am not a huge fan of the straw nana, but it definitely deserves some more respect than a damn D tier. The Joe Dog shows no mercy with his tier lists and it shall remain in D. Then following that, we got something that is only slightly better because the mountain cooler drink is barely a C tier. If I want some Capri Sun, I sure as hell am not gonna grab the primarily apple flavored one. Now what the hell is wrong with apple flavored things, Joe? Well, nothing is necessarily wrong with them. It's just that like, I would rather just get pure apple juice. Like whenever I have an apple flavored thing mixed in with berries or other stuff, I just end up primarily tasting the damn apple juice. Like it just overpowers stuff and I would rather just avoid all that and have some other flavor. But then after we got the Pacific Cooler going into A tier, so thank God we have no more stinkers. Okay, that one has an apple in it, so why does that get a higher placement? God, you're really choosing the weirdest hill to die on Barack, but even Sleepy Joe knows that there is a very clear difference between green apples and red apples flavor-wise. Okay, I know that, but like I thought Joe was an apple hater. When the hell did I ever say that? I just said that red apples overpower the taste of other fruits. I never said I disliked green apples. I'm more than certain you didn't even bother specifying that. 
Barack, did you not hear properly because Joe quite literally said that verbatim? Hell no, he didn't. You two cannot gaslight me. No one is lighting any gas here, Barry. You're just acting mighty stranger slimer. But anyways, enough of the goofs and gaffs because we got a certified banger alert and I have the next three entries going into S tier. The classic lemonade flavor might be basic, but hell, the Joester loves himself some lemonade. And then next we got the tropical punch and oh man, I will suck these Capri Suns dry and not leave a single speck of fluid in them. Then don't even get me started on the strawberry kiwi because then you'll have old Joe creaming. These are so good that I will not only suck them dry, but I will then fill it up with my own saliva so that it can pick up any molecules of flavor from the Capri Sun and then proceed to suck my Capri Sun flavored saliva dry. That's so rancid, holy shit, that is so gross. Well, I wouldn't say it's the worst thing. You know, sometimes when you finish a Capri Sun, you end up doing that accidentally and you drink some of your saliva. Big deal, it happens to the best of us. No, the hell it does not. It has never happened to me. That's because you're not a real sucker like the rest of us, Barack. Only real ones know how to suck that good. But anyways, after that, we got the summer cooler, and I swear I have never heard of these. Hold on one moment. Let me look this up. Oh, shit. Oh, man, how embarrassing. Let me switch to another Safari tab. Oh, God, oh, no. Guys, just please disregard this. I'm switching again. Joe, for the love of Christ, clean your tabs. Hey, you. Oh, shucks. Oh, no. You know what I think? I'm just not going to use the Internet on my phone anymore. Jesus Christ, Joe. I didn't want to point it out because it was funny you looked that dumb. And quite frankly, the amount of tabs you have open with those videos playing makes it even funnier, but it's actually called Surfer Cooler and not Summer Cooler. Oh, well, uh, if that's the case, then I actually have had this and I think this belongs in B tier. It's okay, but I don't remember it being memorable much. How the hell can you say that when you didn't even know what it was? You couldn't just look at the picture and just remember what flavor it was some of us are rather intelligent and don't rely on pictures, Barack. Ahem, but anyways, let's keep moving on with the list. And after that, we got the pure orange flavored Capri Suns. And I have this going into C tier. When I think of orange, I think of orange juice. And while this did taste like orange juice, it also didn't taste like orange juice. I hope you all caught what the dirty Joe dog was throwing down because this flavor is mighty mid. Then after I have the red berry Capri Sun going only slightly above it as I have it going into B tier. I don't have much to say about it other than it just had too many berries. Joe, that's the whole point of that flavor, you fucktard. Hey, it had too many berries in my opinion. After that, we got the Splash Cooler Capri Sun. And this will go into A tier because I feel like it had the right mix of fruit and the flavor is pretty immaculate. But I don't think it's deserving of S tier. But after that, we got something that is quite deserving of S tier and that is the fruit punch flavor. Whenever you're in doubt of a good flavor to pick, just know that fruit punch will always have your back. And for Capri Suns, I can assure you that it is indeed a banging flavor. Okay, solid so far, Joe. As long as you don't fuck up this next cherry rank, and then I think we should be fine. We'll define fuck up because I don't think this is great. Joe, I swear to God, if you go on your artificial cherry rant, I swear to God. Listen, man, I feel so ostracized for this opinion because everyone I know fucking loves artificial cherry. Cherry Starburst, Cherry Cough Drops, Cherry Jolly Ranchers, Cherry Lollipops, whatever has artificial cherry, everyone just seems to fucking throw their full ass back for it. And the thing is that I think all of them are disgusting. They're a bastardization of a real cherry's complex. Slightly tart, but still pretty sweet flavor. A real cherry tastes like summertime and happiness. A fake cherry tastes like high fructose corn syrup with a touch of wannabe fruity cherry flavors and crushed dreams. Artificial cherry is the worst fruit flavor, and I will continue to shit on it until my taste buds have gone completely, with me to follow not long after. I hate it so goddamn much, and I genuinely cannot understand the love behind artificial cherry. I feel like I'm in a world where everything wrong is right and everything right is wrong. It's like the SpongeBob SquarePants movie where Plankton takes control of everyone and they all have these buckets on their head and all hail Plankton. Except for this time, the world seems to fucking love artificial cherry, pickles, and mint-flavored things. What the fuck has this godforsaken world come to? I only pray that the rapture comes sooner rather than later. And even if I don't ascend to heaven, I'd still be happy with the demons roaming the earth because I'd know they wouldn't be as stupid as the people who liked all the things I mentioned before. That being said, this artificial cherry flavor was actually not that bad, and I'd give it an honest C tier. It might even go higher, but I'd need to try it again. Joe, I know your ass did not just go on that whole ass rant and deep fry everyone for liking cherry, just to fucking give it a C tier. 
Honestly, I agree with Donald here, Joe. If you're going to do the bit, then at least commit to it all the way. There is no fucking bit. I genuinely feel that way, but I know you cherry conspirators will never feel the same way as I do. Thankfully, though, we got something banging up next, and that, of course, is the pure strawberry Capri Sun. I think everyone knows how much we like strawberries on this channel and how that is almost the only thing that will bring us all together. The strawberry is like the avatar. They bring peace and harmony between all presidents and viewers. Unless there's someone out there who hates strawberries, Joe. Did you ever think about that? Listen, man, I don't really think there are any strawberry haters out there in the world. You'd have to be insane to hate something that tastes so good in almost any form at all. Strawberries are elite as a fruit on top of some pastries or even as a filling for some. Like, you can't tell me a strawberry cake does not bang and then don't even get me started on strawberry ice cream. There is no form of strawberry that tastes bad in any way at all. Like, even candies taste great, and if we get to the juice form, then we already know that it fucking bangs. So why don't you just stop playing devil's advocate, Barack, and stop caring about the people who hate on greatness? Wow. A fucking men, Joe. There is no strawberry hate, and I refuse to participate in any if there were to be any strawberry hate. All right, Jesus, guys, I get it. You two love the hell out of strawberries, and quite frankly, so do I. So you two don't need to keep gangbanging me about how much everyone loves strawberries. So why the hell even bring it up then, Barack? Why do you like being so special and unique? Like, please tell me what the hell you gained from doing all this. I just wanted to spice things up and throw a wrench in there. What if Donald was scared to say an opinion that wasn't popular, but if he would have heard me say something, it would have given him the courage to speak up and talk about it. And then in turn, that would have made our video spicier and have more drama. Man, why the hell would I do that? The Don operates on his own time, and I refuse to answer to any other man. If I didn't like something, I would have said something about it almost instantly. But why the hell would you choose this one to do this weird bit on? Like you already know how much we love strawberries. Hell, even Joe mentioned that as one of his first opening statements. Quite frankly, this is the most Joe thing you've done recently. And what I mean by that is that this is the most tarred thing you've done in recent memory. Thanks for the clear up, Donald. I was confused for a bit on what you meant by that. I thought you were calling him handsome or something. But yeah, you've been a total Joe this video, Barack. And not in the good way, but anyways, let's go ahead and wrap up this list because we all know that the Joe dog loves himself. Some grapes call me the grapist with the way I make love to these grape flavored things. Doesn't matter if we're talking about grape popsicles or juice. Then you already know I love the hell out of it. I know some people were upset about your rating on the Grape Jolly Ranchers, Barack. But hell, I must be your brother from another mother because the Joe Dog loves himself some motherfucking grape-flavored things. And I have this grape Capri Sun going straight into A tier. Wait, what the hell did you call yourself at the start? The Grapist because I love graping so damn hard. That's just how much I love grapes. Yeah, sure you do, buddy. What is up, gang? We are back at it again with another tier list. And unfortunately for everyone, we have to do a vegetable one. Donald and Barack said I wasn't allowed to do another tier list unless I do this one even though I barely eat veggies. Literally, the other day I saw you munching on raw onion like you were Shrek or something, bro. How are you going to say that you barely eat veggies? Ew, did he really do that? Listen, don't knock it till you try it, and there's a reason why Shrek be eating his onions like that, but just because I like that doesn't mean I like them all. That being said, I have had most, if not all, of the vegetables on this list. And immediately, I want to start this list off by saying that Artichoke is terrible and belong in D tier. I hate it. And if you love artichokes, then I would probably hate you too. Actually, uh, I take that back. I wouldn't hate you. Sorry I said that. Way to freaking backpedal on your comments, Sleepy Joe. This is why you can't establish a loving relationship with your son. Oh, you're right. Uh, I don't think those two things correlate, Joe, but let's not bring up Hunter and instead continue on with the list, please. Dude, I wish I could, but what the hell is arugula? Are we still talking about vegetables or is this shit a Pokemon? I have never seen this or tasted this, but it looks a lot like kale. And I freaking hate kale, so I have to place it into F tier. Common Joey L, I personally love arugula. Do you actually? No, but if Joe hates it, then it has to be good for something. That thing looks like poison ivy. If you like it, you may as well go outside and munch on some grass, bro. But enough of that, let's move on to an actual good vegetable. And that is asparagus. If you don't like asparagus, then quite frankly, I don't think I like you. 
Ooh, way to get them, Joey. That'll teach them. I'm just saying how I feel because some roasted asparagus hits and makes a great side dish if you're eating something meaty. And as we all know, I am the meat expert. Donald even said I am the best meat beater out there, so you all know I am pretty much bona fide. I can confidently say I need some roasted asparagus alongside my steak just to expand my flavor palette and introduce my tongue to a melody of flavors. And for that, I have to give asparagus an A tier. A melody of flavors. When did you decide to start using your brain more, Joey? Ever since I've been putting young Sheldon on loop, I swear my brain has expanded to like triple its normal size. I think I can hear people's thoughts. Guess what I'm thinking right now? Hold on, let me focus in with all my powers. Hung, uh, uh, hung, uh. Brain Blast, you're thinking about young Sheldon, aren't you? No, I was thinking about how your son doesn't love you. Yikes. Well, uh, at least I tried to guess it, and I'm sure Sheldon would have appreciated that. Anyways, up next we got avocado, and I'm pretty sure that's a fruit, but the list maker must have not seen enough young Sheldon to know that. But alas, I will rank it in this tier list, and this is an obvious S tier. Like we suck this fruit off in our fruit tier list, which you should all see if you haven't already. Let's just head on to our next one, and that is beets. I actually don't mind these a lot, and it's cool how multifunctional they are. Like, I think you can use them for red dye, and like they have a ton of iron in them, which is good for us. They kind of taste like nothing, which is a W in my opinion, and I think a B for beets is a solid assessment. I don't like go crazy for beets, but a motherfucker like me would partake in some beetery. Did you learn that beets can be used as dye from young Sheldon Joey? No, what the fuck? Why does everything have to relate to young Sheldon, bro? You need to go outside more often. Anyways, up next we got bell peppers, and I think a solid B tier is in order for these. I like them, but I don't really like them that much, if that makes sense. I'll eat these on my pizza because they add a nice extra crunch, and they're nice to add in for your chicken and rice, but again, I do not go crazy for these things. Then while we're at it, we may as well grade broccoli, and I do indeed fucks with broccoli, and I think it's a better add-in for different foods than bell peppers. Like some steamed broccoli slaps, and you, the juiciness from it adds to the food that you're eating. I think an A tier is in order. Broccoli does not slap that much Sleepy Joe, you're insane. The so-called juice you're tasting from the broccoli is just water from the steam bro. You're literally confessing to liking broccoli water. And so what if I do? You're gonna take me to the cops or something. Yeah, I didn't think so, bro. Maybe your fat ass could use some more broccoli in your diet with your overgrown Oompa Loompa ass. Uh -huh. Sorry about that. I just won't take any broccoli slander, but you all can slander the next two because I am very indifferent towards Brussels sprouts and butternut squash. Like these are both okay, like Brussels sprouts are overhated in my opinion, but yeah, I think a solid B tier for them both is in play. I don't even remember the last time I've had butternut squash, if I'm being honest. Like, I literally cannot recall the time I had it. Uh, it's slightly better than what I have going into C tier. But if anyone was expecting cabbage to go there, then you will be upset to learn that I actually have cabbage going into A tier. I think it's pretty good, especially when you have it accompanied with the right dishes. But more importantly, everyone, we have an actual S tier coming through, and that is carrots. I love carrots so much, and I would even juice my carrots. Sometimes, and if you combine that with some OJ, then you got yourself the healthiest banger of a drink on your hands. Plus, by itself, it's good as hell, too. Like, you can smack on some baby carrots as a snack if you got some munchies. Like some baby carrots and hummus, absolutely slap. Baby carrots and hummus? Way to get real ethnic here, Joey. See me personally, I'd rather just have my carrots with ranch, but I'm glad you actually placed this where it belongs. I feel like carrots can go in almost every dish. On God, Donald, I'm glad we could agree on that, but anyways, up next we got cauliflower, and I think I like this almost as much as broccoli. I think a solid A tier is in order, because I mean, who doesn't like cauliflower? And actually, now that I think about it, it may actually be better than broccoli. This next veggie, though, I am pretty conflicted about. I like celery a decent bit and can eat it with some peanut butter, but what else is celery used for? Dude, it's often used in soup, like a lot, actually. Oh, then I guess I'll put it in A tier. I just like it with peanut butter, though, but more importantly, are you guys seeing what I'm seeing because I spot two back-to-back -back monsters? Corn is an absolute S tier, and I don't want to see anyone arguing otherwise because I will eat corn in almost anything. Sure, it may have next to no nutritional value, but I personally love the flavor enough to not care. And I think it's funny that my poop has little corn pellets. Then we got cucumber, and oh man, I love me some cucumber. I also think this is technically a fruit, but it won't matter because it's an S tier either way, like some cucumber lime Gatorade slaps, 
and some cucumber sandwiches absolutely bang. What in the hell is a cucumber sandwich and why does it sound so cursed? It's actually pretty good. It's cucumber with cream cheese and some people add other stuff to it, but I keep it plain. That sounds almost okay, but couldn't you just make normal sandwiches? Huh. I guess I could, especially since I'm not a vegetarian. Uh-huh. Uh, well, either way, it doesn't matter. And up next, we got edamame, and I think this is a banger that belongs in A tier. Some salty edamame in my mouth sounds so good, and then I got eggplant, and I genuinely have never had eggplant in anything aside from having eggplant lasagna once. And they replaced all the pasta layers with eggplant. I think a B tier is good for this. Why was it eggplant lasagna? I don't know, dude. Maybe because it was vegetarian or something. Dude, that makes no sense at all. Why would they replace the pasta if they were gonna make it vegetarian? Huh. Uh, now that you mention it, it still uh, had meat and cheese, so it couldn't have been vegan or vegetarian. Well, I guess I just got scammed. I don't know what else to say there. Up next, we got the best vampire repellent, and that is garlic, and I am a huge fan of garlic. It adds flavors to your food and is amazing on bread as a spread. I think this is an instant S tier for being yummy and defending you from vampires. Joey, how many times do we have to tell you that vampires aren't real? You go ahead and think that, man, but once you get bit by a vampire from San Francisco and wish you had your garlic on you, don't go crawling back to me. Yikes from San Francisco, that would be game over, bro. Yeah, because they would bite you in style, but anyways, after that we got some ginger and jalapenos. I think ginger's all right and would add that into B tier. I'm not really a huge fan of it, but I respect it as an ingredient that probably gets added to my food without me knowing, and as for jalapenos, I think that's our first C-tier, fellas. Like, there are better chilies out there and jalapenos or so, whatever. Just say you can't handle the spice, Joe. I saw you dying from hot Cheetos the other day. I don't want to hear it from you, man, but oh God, we have my worst fear up next, and that's kale. It's pretty garbage, but arugula looks like poison ivy. I'm at a crossroads, but I think I'd rather have kale going into D-tier. Then after we got leeks and I don't know, place this into B-tier, I guess. You spent the whole list just shitting on kale, and yet you didn't take this opportunity to place this into F tier. What the hell, Joey? Yeah, I just don't know. The arugula really threw me off, and again, this is my list, so no arguing with the Joe dog. And up next, we got lettuce and mushrooms. I have something to tell everyone, and that is that lettuce is overhyped. It has no nutritional value at all. The better thing to put in your sandwiches is spinach, and that's a life hack for everyone listening. But I will admit it adds flavor to your burgers so I will not disrespect lettuce too much and give it a solid C tier alongside jalapenos. Mushrooms, however, they get special treatment from me and I will place them into A tier. I know there are a lot of mushroom haters, but I love them in my pasta, my pizza, you name it, and I will love it. I like the lettuce take, but mushrooms taste like wet Lizzo ass, bro. Well then, I'd love me some of that then, but more importantly, what the hell is an okra? It looks like a messed up piece of corn. Uh, no clue. Yeah, same. Well, I'll put this into F tier and you all already know where I'm gonna place onions at. So no need to explain the S tier ranking because these are simply elite. And next up, we got peas and potatoes and I like me some peas and think they should get a solid A tier ranking, but more importantly, we got potatoes. And that's an honest to God is tier for me. Maybe it's the Irish blood inside of me begging me to place these that high. But when have you ever heard of someone complaining about potatoes? Uh, the people who try to lose weight, that's a lot of carbs and you need those carbs for energy. Come on guys, it's simple, young Sheldon science. Up next, we got pumpkin and radishes and pumpkins are kind of whatever. I think Barack rated it higher on the fruit tier list because I think it was on there too, but I give it a solid C tier. And as for the radishes, I also give that a C tier. How is pumpkin so low? Like there's a reason people get excited for fall because they get their pumpkin flavored desserts. Yeah, well, I don't care because these are veggies. Now settle down and let me talk about these next two, which are indeed some bangers, and we all know I love normal onions, and oh boy, if we mention red onions. Well, uh, I actually like them less, but still an S tier for me, and honestly, I don't know why I hyped up scallions so much. Hmm, uh, I think they're an A tier. Joe, your mind is actively rotting as you're making this tier list. My mind is as sharp as ever. It's sharper than a knife, actually. A cool knife, but anyways, we got spinach next, and I definitely am a spinach guy. It adds extra iron to your meal and has fiber instead of just being a whole load of nothing like lettuce. I think that alone gets it A tier and it would go higher, but admittedly it doesn't taste the best. Kind of like our next entry, which is sweet potato, and I do not like it that much, especially when compared to normal potatoes. 
it still gets a B tier from me because you can do some good stuff with it, not gonna lie. Up next, we got a good veggie up next though, and that's the tomato, the real showstopper. Now I know a lot of don't like it, but I love tomatoes. I can eat cherry tomatoes like they're candy and they're full of all the good nutrients you'd want while also making your food better. An S tier is needed for this veggie. I'm pretty sure that's a fruit too. Shut the hell up, Barack. You think I don't know that already. I did not make this list, so stop telling me that. Uh -huh. And wrapping up this list, we got turnips and zucchini, and I think they're both pretty all right. I think a C tier would be nice for the both of them. Who the hell actually likes turnips, bro? Maybe some people do, Donald. You can't judge. Yeah, Donald, maybe some people love to turn up like a turnip. <laughs> Joe, kill yourself. What is up, gang? Your presidential trio is back once again, and this time we are bringing you a much anticipated tier list and one of my favorite inventions ever. Cheese. Joe, who was anticipating a cheese list? Like I am looking at this list and I don't even remember even having some of these cheeses. That's because you're not a cheese diehard like I am. But uh, to be honest, I haven't had a decent bit of these cheeses either. But the ones I have had, I know I am bona fide. Man, how are you going to suggest doing this cheese tier list when you haven't had a decent bit of them? Why didn't you do something better? Because the Joe Dog does what the Joe Dog does. And I don't think anyone has had these last cheeses towards the end of the list. But if you have had these, let me know where you'd grade them because I have not had these elusive cheeses. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started with the list. Up first, we got a good old fashioned cheese that many people have had in their lifetime. I am sure all of you have had amazing American cheese and always put it in your sandwiches because I know I always do and these especially slap on hamburgers. I think to properly do this great cheese justice, I'd have to place it high up. And I am thinking this has to belong in S tier. Most individuals use this cheese and even if it's not their favorite, it has to be somewhat up there in the rankings. You just can't go wrong with this cheese. I personally just like it because it has American in the title. So I have to place that in S tier just for that reason but it does bang on burgers. Although I'd personally add different cheeses on my burger as well, just to mix it up. I get that, like this next one, we got up next, I freaking love it on my burgers, and that is blue cheese. It's so good that they even have this in a dip. Like, think about how good it is just to have a dip dedicated to it, and you bet your ass, I dip my wings in blue cheese, and I will also be placing this into S tier alongside the American cheese. You strike me more as a ranch guy, Joey. And like the type of ranch guy to just suck the sauce with no food, like a straight slurp from whatever container it's in. Oh, I definitely do. And I also do that with the blue cheese, but I just wanted it to be known that I love blue cheese. And up next, we got Swiss cheese. It's the staple cheese you see in a lot of cartoons. Anytime you watch Tom and Jerry, you already know they got this big cheese block on there that is usually Swiss cheese. And despite it being a well-known cheese, I want it to be known that I do not mess with it that heavily. I still think it's good as hell, but compared to American or blue cheese, I simply don't think of it that highly. I'm thinking a decent A tier for this one is in play. Joe, this might be a bit of an L take from you, but quite frankly, it doesn't surprise me. If you place this next cheese low, though, I'm gonna have to make Lizzo body slam your ass. I think I'd actually kind of like her slamming me, but uh, no, I have Gouda cheese actually going up high as well. Cheese lovers know that if you got a good piece of Gouda, then you get a good piece of cheese on your hands. Boo, we don't like the cheese jokes, Joe. Sorry if you think it's cheesy, but the jokes are here to stay unless I cut the cheese and make everyone smell it. Haha, I crack myself up. But yeah, Gouda is the bomb.com and I will be placing this into S tier. Some slices of Gouda on top of your pizza slaps and will be bona fide. Up next, we got Asiago cheese. And this is the most mid one so far. Maybe I am a hater, but I don't know. I just don't really mess with Asiago cheese. Like there are a lot better options. And for that, I will be placing this into B tier. Okay, what the hell? You talk about how it's not that good, but then plop it into B tier. That makes no sense. That's just because I freaking love cheese. The hardest thing to do on this list will be finding the worst piece of cheese. Like we got another mid one up next and I am sorry to all my Brie cheese lovers, but I also think it's not popping enough. It simply isn't bust down enough for me to go devour it like a rat. I still enjoy it as well, but I think it belongs in the Asiago tier, so I will be placing Brie cheese into B tier. Maybe I am missing out, but I don't really like the flavor of it. I swear if you talk all that shit about Brie and Asiago only to put something as basic as cheddar up there, I will split a wig. Uh, well, 
About that, I kind of uh, will have cheddar going into S tier. I don't know how anyone could hate cheddar because that shit slaps. Like whenever you eat chips, what flavor cheese are they? Cheddar chips. It's not like they have Munster cheese flavored chips. I also add a ton of cheddar to my mac and cheese and I am not ashamed of it because it simply slaps. You know what, Joe, this is your list and if you want cheddar to go that high, then so be it. You're just saying that because you love cheddar. Don't think the Joester didn't see you munching on those cheddar Pringles the other day. But anyways, up next we got Cote Hot Cheese and Donald probably hates it because it sounds Spanish, but this cheese is a certified banger. If anyone ever spots this cheese, just know that eating it straight out of the bag is delicious. And for that, I have to place it into A tier. Then while I'm here, I may as well rank the next one, which is cream cheese, and I have nothing more to say other than it is freaking amazing. I will be placing it in A tier as well because it's an amazing spreadable cheese. But I had the chives and onion cream cheese the other day, and I ate the whole container, and I swear my breath smelled god awful for like the next week and a half. That definitely was not the cheese man. Me and Barack constantly tell you how awful your breath is and always offer you a mint or piece of gum as soon as we see you in person. Yeah, because of the chives and onion. Joe, this has been happening for a while now. This isn't some new development where all of a sudden we just started giving you gum. Oh, well, uh, I may have to up my teeth brushing duties from once a week to like twice or three times a week. Anyways, up next we got some nice feta cheese and I'm a big fan of feta cheese. I think I'll have to place this into A tier as well. All I'm seeing is these cheeses being rated high as hell, like there's no cheese beneath B tier. The Joe dog loves his cheese, what can I say? Don't worry though, I have the next cheese going into B tier. I am not too huge of a fan to be honest, and unfortunately for you, Donald, I happen to love these next two cheeses. Up first we go the Monterey Jack cheese, and which I have going into a solid A tier, but then we have the big kahuna, and that is mozzarella, and this is an instant S tier. I love the hell out of mozzarella cheese. I'll eat it in stick form or in my sandwiches too. Ooh, what also tastes delicious is putting globs of mozzarella on your pizza in different areas. So when you bite, you just get some gooey deliciousness all inside of your mouth. But be careful because it can be so gooey that you end up swallowing too much and choking on it. You have to be trolling. And it's not like I hate all of these cheeses, but no way Gouda is that high up, especially with everything else you just put up there. Like, no way you just said all of those things with a straight face and genuinely believe that they are all that good. But also, it doesn't surprise me that you like those gooey loads of cheese in your mouth, so I am not surprised. You bet your bottom dollar I do. I love all of these cheeses and all those gooey, delicious, salty loads in my mouth. But anyways, up next, we got another good cheese, and that is Munster cheese. I fucks with the Munster, but I'd give it a solid B tier, but it cannot compete with these next two titans we got up next. We got the Parmigiano Reggiano, and that is bona fide S tier. I put Parmesan cheese on almost anything and everything. Like if you don't put cheese on your pasta, I may look at you a little funny, but I'll let it slide. But I cannot live life without Parmesan cheese. Then we got our final S tier, and that is the provolone cheese. I need that in my life as always, and it's a great alternate for American cheese in my opinion, and it always slaps. You need to relax with the way you say load and the gooey word. But I cannot lie, Joe. It's a bit weird nothing is low, and I have to agree with Donald on this. Like, Joe, every single cheese on this list has been rated higher than a C tier. You really don't have any cheese that you actively dislike. But aside from that, I want to give you a huge W on the Parmesan and Provolone take. Yeah, actually, I do, in fact, have a cheese that I do not like. And, well, uh, I know everyone might hate me for this, but I genuinely have a high level of disdain for this cheese. Like. It actively repulses me and makes me want to gag and puke at merely the thought of it. Even thinking about it now, it makes me shudder and quiver in fear because that's how much the cheese has scarred me. And unfortunately for the lovers of this cheese, I have to break it to them that Romano cheese tastes god awful. That is a definite C tier for me and no higher than that. I just cannot put it higher. Hold on, you just went on a tirade about how awful it was. You literally said you shuddered and quivered in fear because of that cheese and said it tastes awful. Actually, you went even further beyond that and said you were repulsed by that fucking cheese. So how the hell is it a C tier when you said all those negative things about it? Because it's still cheese. Duh. I'll eat cheese till I die. I cannot stop my love for cheese even if I hate it. God help you, Joe, because I genuinely cannot understand your dementia-ridden mind. I do need God's help because I haven't tried any of the cheeses left on this list. So I have to put these all into the never-had tier. And just doing that pains me. 
because I need to have all of those delicious cheeses in my little mouth. You really never had a single one of those, Joe? No, why do you think I left those last you freaking mouth-breathing, rock-chewing, glass-eating nincompoop? Like you got me fucked up if you tell me with a straight face you had Humboldt fog cheese. Like, what the hell is that? Jesus, man, I just asked a question. Why am I catching a stray? Okay, more importantly, Joey, what are your thoughts on dick cheese? Gross dude, don't ask him that. He won't know what it means. Shut up, Barry. Do not ever speak for me. And to answer your question, Donald, I've never had that before, but if it's cheese, I know I'll love it. So if you got any to feed me, I'll happily eat it. Oh, you bet your ass I have some of that cheese to feed you. You just got to close your eyes and open wide and say, ah. Jesus Christ, save me. What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list. And this time around, we will be doing a rice energy drink tier list. And we've actually had these bad boys. And we're sitting in this tier list for a decent bit. You've all probably heard of these energy drinks if you're on TikTok or if you follow fitness influencers. And we're happy to report that these do indeed bang. Honestly, these bang so much that I don't even use these things for when I work out, but rather I drink these whenever I need an extra boost. To be fair, Donald, I did catch you munching on protein bars even though you haven't gone to the gym in months. Joe, stop snack watching because you can't be a calorie counter and a Peter Gazer at the same time. Joe, just please stop being a Peter Gazer. It makes me very uncomfortable when you initiate conversation with me when you're peeing in the stall next to me. But all you do is fixate your eyes in my bottom half. I just want to make sure I know what my friends are packing. What's so wrong with knowing what your homies got on their domies? Joe, I am not a fan of that, and quite frankly, I'm thinking about reporting you one of these days. Well, when you got a pecker the size of a baby carrot, I can see why you'd be mad at my Peter gazing. Swear I saw him lift up his shirt to be, and I saw him freestyle that shit. All right, I think we've spoken enough about this, because Jesus Christ, this was such a weird way to start out our tier list. Was it really, Barack? I want you to think about all of our past videos and ask yourself, was this really the weirdest intro sequence for our videos? Point taken. But nonetheless, we actually have to start talking about these drinks. Now up first, we got the lime-flavored Baja Cooler drink, and this was actually a pretty decent one. Whenever I'm drinking energy drinks, I tend to always prefer something citrusy and fruity, to be honest. I would have expected Joe to be the one guy who likes fruity things the most. But there you go, surprising me again, Barack. No, but what the hell do you expect the energy drink to be flavored with? Like, no shit, everyone is gonna like fruity energy drinks. Yeah, I won't lie, Barack. I don't know why you brought that point up. Did you want bland tasting energy drinks? Or maybe a bread or pickle flavored one is more towards your liking. Okay, I was just being hella specific because we have energy drinks that were flavored after candy on this tier list. I won't ever think about clarifying a statement again. But yeah, since you two didn't even bother giving a statement or formulating an opinion on this drink, I'll just go ahead and rate it and I think I'll give this a solid A tier. Exactly where I'd place it. More importantly, guys, I see two back-to-back -back bangers up next, and oh boy, I would handstand twerk for these two. Joe, you could have waited for me to get to that part and then open the floor to you and Donald. And well, I actually have to begrudgingly agree with you because I also agree that the Kool-Aid flavor and the strawberry squeeze are indeed bangers. Donald, what do you think about this? Well, shit. You two kind of backed me into a corner with this ranking, because how the hell am I supposed to say anything bad about it if you and Joe were basically come 4K glazing the hell out of these two? I'll just add on to the glaze, since it seems like you and Joe are ovulating for these two. But yeah, the Kool-Aid flavored drink tastes exactly as you'd expect. And of course, having an energy drink like Kool-Aid is gonna bang. The strawberry squeeze is also another easy one to like, because it's just strawberries and lemons. It's pretty hard to fuck that up if you ask me. Okay, so I think a solid S tier is in order for these next two. I will admit though that my glazing comes to a halt because I was not a fan of the lemonade energy drink they had. Like this might sound a bit weird, but it just was too lemonade-y for my liking. Like too much of a good thing produced a bad thing and I wanna put this in C tier. Barack, you can't be serious right now? You saw the flavor was named Country Time Lemonade. What the fuck did you expect it to taste like? Fucking raspberries and pineapples? That should be like a whipping and or lashing on your end for saying something like that. Joe, and I can't believe I'm the one saying this, but I don't think that is entirely right for you to say to Barack. Why, is it because he was an ex-president? Joe, I don't know if I should laugh or if I should be concerned with your dumbass comments. But yeah, back onto the drink, I just feel like it bangs at first, but then the more you have, the less you enjoy it. Donald, help me out with this. 
I actually smell what you are indeed throwing down. Now, me, personally, I enjoyed the lemonade one. I wouldn't say it's S or A tier, but I can accept a C tier from you, Barack. It's like you said, Barack, when you have too much of a good thing, it can harm it more in the long run. Take this for example, because I went to a wing place the other day and I ordered 10 lemon pepper wings and they were like OD on the lemon and the pepper. Like I took a bite and with the amount of salt that was in it, you could have probably made a rack of beef jerky or killed a colony of snails with the sheer amount of sodium. But anyways, the first like four wings were absolutely marvelous. Like I know I complained about the amount of seasoning on it, but don't get me wrong, I loved it at first. Then after my fourth wing, I felt like my lips were cracking and I started developing canker sores and ulcers from the amount of sodium in my body. And I fully believed that it was gonna kill me. I had no water or juice, so I just had to thug it out and I was unfortunately barely thugging it out. And I had to ask Joe to swap wings with me because my mouth puckered up like an asshole at the thought of consuming another godforsaken lemon pepper wing. Those first four were absolutely magical though. Thanks for this overly long explanation as to why too much of a good thing can be bad. Fuck off, man. Why is it that Joe can go on his tism rants about any random particular subject, but God forbid the moment Donald decides to bring up a story about something that actually happened to him and relates to the goddamn list? Why the heck did I catch a stray? Joe, let's be honest. Me and Donald throw strays at you all the time, but you either don't realize it or you think it's a compliment. And, uh, Donald, I was actually being thankful and I wasn't being sarcastic either. Oh, in that case, good job, Barack, and carry on. Yeah, I think it would be best. But anyways, after that, we got the peach cooler flavor, and if you're a fan of peach, I'll assume you'll love this one, but for me personally, this was a B tier at best. Thankfully, though, we got two back-to-back -back bangers, and I know that you two are absolutely on board with me on these because I have the rainbow sherbet and Sunny D flavors going into S tier. Preach! I know the Sunny D energy drink thing might throw off people in the audience, but trust us all because that shit is an absolute banger. Like if any of you love energy drinks and you love Sunny D, then go out there and buy some fucking rise. All right, let's not suck them off that much. If they sponsored us, then I'd go on my hands and knees and say that rise energy has cured my HIV and dementia. But as for now, I think we can just say that we like the Sunny D and rainbow sherbet flavor a lot. Joe, I just, never mind. It's not even worth discussing because it's you who said all that. But yeah, these are great. Following that, we got two back-to-back -back A tiers, and this time around, it's the Ring Pop and Smarties flavor. I think the Ring Pop flavor was missed potential, and I honestly think it could have been tweaked with a bit more and it would have tasted better. And the Smarties one is, uh, well, it's Smarties flavored. It was never gonna taste amazing. The Smarties hate is unwarranted, Barack, and like the flavor was pretty fucking good too. Like what else would you have wanted from them? Back me up here, Joe. You guys ever hear about gooning? Joe, not now. See, the other day, someone online said, I edged to Trump in those big booty shorts the other day. I'm a real gooner. And I read that tweet and I wondered and pondered, what is a gooner? What is edging? I took it upon myself to research day in and day out constantly. And I've come to the consensus that gooning is an act wherein self-pleasuring addicts crank their horn over and over, but never to completion. And that, of course, is referred to as edging. So that's step one of becoming a real gooner. And so these people edge for hours on end, yet do not achieve orgasm, nor do they want to for weeks or months, and your mind elevates to a different state of being. You see, gooning is not a narcissistic manifestation. Narcissism is extreme selfishness with a grandiose view of one's own talents. Rather, gooning is closer to a meditation experience where the mind and the body align, focused on a single thought or feeling in this case. Joe, why the hell are you bringing any of this up? Where did this all come from? Because quite honestly, you can kiss our sponsorship goodbye if you're gonna reference edging and gooning this video. I did all this to come out to you all and pronounce myself as a gooner. I've been gooning before gooning was even a thing, which then makes me the most OG of gooners. I spent 10 hours gooning over the weekend and that's on a week week. All right, I refuse to hear you out further. Let's go ahead and finish off the list because we are on our final two entries. And up first, we got the strawberry flavored drink, also known as Pink Splash. And of course, all of you saw this coming. And this is an easy S tier. If I had to pick the best three from this list, then I'd have to pick the Sunny D, the Kool-Aid, and lastly, the Pink Splash flavor. I just don't ever see a time where I would ever hate on strawberries. I agree with you wholeheartedly on that, Barack. But put some respect on the goddamn Tiger's blood flavor. It has some watermelon, strawberry, and lastly, some coconut. What the hell isn't there to love in that? 
Well, you didn't even let me finish the list, but I was gonna place that high. Just uh, not an S tier because this is the one instance I feel like adding coconut to this kind of ruined it. Like an energy drink with coconut flavoring doesn't really bang in my opinion. And if they would have just stuck with just the watermelon and strawberry, then this would have been an instant S tier. But I understand this is the whole tropical feel of tiger's blood, so I can understand why they added coconuts. This might be one of your most crazy and dumbest takes out there. You know damn well we all twerk for coconut, and the subtle flavoring it adds to the tiger's blood flavor is just amazing. Joe, this guy is speaking some nonsense. Help me out here. Edge. Edge. Have you ever been on an edging streak? Edge. Edge. Do they keep you in a state of edging? Edge. Edge. You know what? This is all on me. Forever expecting to get some help from you. I'm sorry, Barack. What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list. And this time around, we are going to be doing a pizza topping ranking. And you all already know that I'm going to be placing pineapples high as hell because that belongs on pizza. Oh my God, here we go with this again. How many times do I have to tell you, Donald, that fruit does not belong on pizza? If you're gonna add some pineapples, then you may as well go buck wild and add some blueberries and strawberries on top. Joe, you know, those things are not similar at all to some pineapple on pizza. Hell, they even put pineapple on some burgers. God, just because people do it doesn't make it okay at all. I refuse to ever like pineapple pizza and would rather drag my balls through shards of broken glass and then douse myself in honey and let the gnats and bugs eat me alive in a swamp than ever ingest some pineapples on my pizza. You don't know what the hell you're missing out on Sleepy Joe. And I'm going to love how angry you get when you see me rate them high. But anyways, let's get started with the list already. And up first, we got bacon. And who here doesn't like bacon? Oh, wait. I guess Barack wouldn't like it because it's haram. God damn it, Donald. How many times do I have to tell you that I am not Muslim? You can trick the people of America, but you can never trick me, Barry. But sure, we'll go ahead and say that you can eat bacon for the sake of this list. But anyways, I would rate bacon a solid ass S tier because bacon can almost go on anything. And you bet your ass this belongs on pizza. It can pair extremely well with almost any other topping on this list. Except for pineapple because nothing can redeem that god awful topping. It pairs especially well with pineapple. Joe full offense, but I don't exactly trust the word of a man who chugs Nesquik in the hot summer days and who also boils his hot dogs in blue Gatorade. Okay, but uh, those two things are quite normal. No, the hell they are not. Joe talking to you is giving me a brain embolism. Let me just get through the list before I die from pure anger. Following the bacon, we got some basil. And while I don't mind it on my pizza, especially when globs of mozzarella are on it, like in the picture, I also don't really twerk for this at all. Like, I don't think a goddamn soul on this earth is eating their pizza and thinking to themselves, man, this is really missing some basil. Like, just saying that out loud made me feel dumb as fuck. This is an auto D tier. I actually have no complaints about this one. I'm actually surprised about that because I just felt like some dumb Sleepy Joe comment was coming my way, but thankfully I was proven wrong. Anyways, after that, we got some bell peppers. And while I normally hate bell peppers on almost anything, I hate it on my chicken, in my steak, and even stuffed bell peppers. I oddly enough actually enjoy them on my pizza. Like some sliced up green bell pepper actually smacks and adds some texture and flavor to an otherwise plain pizza. Get yourself some sausage on that, and you got yourself a good-ass slice of pizza. I think I will be placing this into A tier. Okay, that's nice and all, but uh, what the hell is that next topping? A fucking meatball. A whole-ass meatball being placed onto your pizza. Yeah, that's not that weird, Joe. There are plenty of places that sell meatball pizza. Okay, but look at the fucking picture of that one. It is grotesquely humongous, and it looks like someone just cut a huge-ass meatball in half and just slammed it on my pizza. Okay, yeah, that does look pretty bad. Shit, I was gonna rate this higher, but Joe's inner hate is making me rethink it because what in the fuck is that picture? I think this goes into C tier. That's what the hell I'm saying. That shit is bigger than Lizzo's ass cheeks, for Christ's sake. Didn't need that mental image in my head, but I'm glad we keep ripping on Lizzo. It feels like a tried and true tradition of this channel, and we made fun of her before it was okay to do so. Yeah, I am no longer on Team Lizzo ever since those allegations came out. Yeah, can you imagine body shaming someone when you're as wide as a fucking semi-truck? Well, I can because you frankly do it all the time. And your mere existence brings shame to the whole goddamn human race. Anyways, enough of that, because after that, we got two back-to-back B-tiers, and that is both chicken and anchovies. Every time I've had chicken on pizza, 
It just ends up coming up drier than Joe's sex life. And anchovies makes my pizza too damn salty. Much like Joe's sex life once again. Okay, I'll take the dry comment, but what the heck does having a salty sex life even mean? Means you're salty that no one wants to be with you. Listen, I don't know, man. Sometimes I just say shit and pray that the audience or you two don't catch on to it. I catch on to it a decent bit, but for the sake of the video, I just let you or Joe babble on. You know what? I actually prefer that. I'd rather have a world full of yes men rather than some fucking critics up my ass. Anyways, after that, we got some extra cheese and I have to also place this in C tier alongside the monster meatballs. Like it isn't a bad option, but I don't really see myself going for extra cheese unless I know the place that I'm getting it from has some of the best cheese. Only thing I want with extra cheese is my little uncircumcised joster down in my pants if you all catch my drift. Joe, there's no drift to catch. You flat out just said one of the grossest things to ever come out of your mouth just now, and that is pretty fucking hard to do. Oh, don't worry, we got the rest of this video and plenty more to come for me to be able to top that shit. Well, Joe's cheesy schnauzer aside, we got garlic as a topping, and quite frankly, I wouldn't really classify this as a topping, to be honest. It's kind of a no-brainer that adding garlic to most things will make it taste better, so it's an auto A tier. More importantly, holy shit, we got ourselves a motherfucking banger up next, and that is ham. Once again, I have to apologize to our one Muslim listener. I am sorry, once again, Barack. How many times do I have to tell you that I'm not Muslim? Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. Why do you have to specify it like that? Of course, we all know that there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, what the hell, man? That is so messed up to all of our Muslim viewers. Don't worry, because Joey and Donald are here for you all, unlike that disgusting, loathful man named Barack. God damn it, I don't hate Muslims. Tell that to all the people you bombed in the Middle East. Enough of that, though, because you are bumming me out on my pizza topping tier list. Wouldn't you rather say that he is bombing you out? Oh, Joe, you jokester. Anywho, following that, we got, well, uh, quite frankly, we got a whole load of decently mid toppings. I think this is the channel's first ever back to back to back to back B tier entry, and that is the jalapenos, mushrooms, olives, and onions. Now, I'm not saying these are bad, but these are mainly complementary toppings that you'd pair up with other stuff on this list. On their own, though, they don't hold up as well, but I'm sure some vegetarian will argue with me that these are a must-have for their veggie delight supreme pizza. I will say, though, that if I had to place one above, it would have probably been the jalapenos, because the Don does love himself some pineapple pizza with some jalapenos. You get some of these sweet and spicy components mixed with the saltiness from the cheese, and if you want to get even fancier, you can add some ham on there and make it even better. Yeah, if you want to make it taste like garbage, I'm sure you can ruin a jalapeno pizza by adding some fruit to it. Or you can be a real man and just have jalapenos with your pepperoni or sausage pizza. If you're such a fan of mixing flavors on your pizza, Donald, why don't you order an anchovy pizza with some pineapples? That way you'll get rid of the super saltiness by adding some sweetness from your precious pineapple, you disgusting fat fuck. Okay, rude ass comment from you there, Joe. You can hate the topping, but no need to go at me for my personal beliefs. But that actually doesn't sound half bad. I may try that next time. And if not, I need someone from the comments to do it. You're right, I took it too far. I'm sorry, Donald. Okay, but I was getting spit roasted by you two for merely existing, but you'll apologize to him first before me? Barack, why are you begging for an apology? Even if he does say sorry, now it just won't feel as genuine, so congrats on ruining your own future apology. I was totally about to say sorry, too. Well, it's never too late to say sorry. Nah, fuck that. The moment is gone. Anyways, following that, we got two back-to-back S-tier rankings in both pepperoni and pineapple pizza. Cry in the comments all you want, but this pineapple pizza rating is staying here. You know what? Enough time has passed for self-reflection. I am now okay with the fact that you think this belongs here. I guess that's as good as it's gonna get. After that, I got plain pizza going into D tier. And this isn't because I hate plain pizza, but rather in a topping tier list. This, of course, would have to go last, right? Because we're assuming I have to go with a topping. And I would rather have something rather than nothing. Unless we are talking about basil, of course. After that, we got spinach, and I have this going into C tier. It, it is more useful than basil, and quite frankly, is kind of all right. Sure, sometimes you take a bite out of a slice with spinach and end up dragging a whole chunk of spinach in your mouth, but aside from that, it's okay. Big dub on the spinach selection not going into D tier. I thought for a second you were going to hate on it. 
because it was a veggie. Listen, man, I don't hate all vegetables. I love corn, for example. I love corn, but replace the C with the letter P. Joe, you always know I'm with you on that one, my special buddy. Anyways, after that, we got an obvious ass S tier in the sausage. I think this is kind of a no-brainer, but I will have to explain the next one because I got steak going into A tier. I don't have this going higher because every time I get steak on my pizza, it just ends up being chewier than a pair of used panties, and I can't exactly enjoy it to its max potential. Don't get me wrong, I still love it, especially when it's done right, but it wouldn't sit right with me if I placed this higher than an A tier. I actually don't like steak at all on my pizza for that exact reason. I don't know how you said all that, but still put it so high because I seriously doubt any pizza place can actually get steak on pizza right. Shit, sometimes I just like something rough to chew on. Makes me feel like a barbarian to just be chewing on the same piece of meat for a bit. But rounding off this list, we got tomatoes. And I'm giving this a C tier. And uh, once again, it is not as bad as basil, but it ain't anything special. You know, now that Donald has got me thinking about tomatoes, it turned some gears in my head and got me thinking about a fruit joke I wanted to tell. Joe, I would love to hear one of your patented jokes. Donald, I have a bad feeling about this. Now let me cook Barack. But anyways, how do you turn a fruit into a vegetable? I don't know, Joe. How do you turn a fruit into a vegetable? You give it AIDS. There it is. What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list. And this time around, I, the almighty Joe Dog, will be ranking something that everyone loves, and that is Girl Scout cookies. Looking forward to seeing what atrocities you rank high during this tier list, Joe. No, this is all wrong. Uh, what do you mean by that, Donald? I refuse to allow you to do this Girl Scout cookies tier list. I will commandeer this tier list, and I refuse to let anyone other than myself rate these gifts from God. You do realize you're directly challenging me. You're gonna have to debate me for the right to do this list. I'm ready to throw down, bro. Three, two, one, go! I'll start this since I am the challenger. But you see, Joe, it really is quite simple. This really shouldn't be a debate. You literally cannot challenge the amount of calories I consume a day, and you don't have the same experience as I do when it comes to pure consumption. Sure, you may have me beat in the calorie point, but if anything that should go against you, you've consumed so many low effort foods like when we made our fast food tier list, you rated Little Caesars an S tier and called it delicious despite it tasting worse than other things on that list. Hold it! Wait a damn moment, Joey. I acknowledge the fact that Little Caesars may not be the best, but I cited the price point as one of the main reasons why I had it so high. Also, your argument of me not having a reliable taste palate because of the amount of food I consume is an absurd point. If anything, me having the variety that I have in my life goes to show how varied my diet is and how I can have both lavish things and the common everyman things. Your logic is flawed, Sleepy Joe. Oh, well, uh... Well, I will give you that point. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you've had or not had, because we all know that I have bought the most Girl Scout cookies out of the two of us. There is no debate there, because I have boxes upon boxes of these suckers, and that alone should prove my loyalty to the product. Objection! I'm glad you mentioned the fact that you have a lot of Girl Scout cookies. Now, I've got you right where I want you, Joe. Frail roll my biggest piece of evidence. I almost bought some poison dart frogs because this super hot girl was trying to sell them to me and it almost worked. Yeah, do you ever find yourself buying things just because you find the person selling the stuff so freaking hot and you just want to bang them? Like me, for example, I'm in my house, got all these boxes everywhere from this one place I bought a ton from, and then it hit me. I realized something crucial about myself. I don't even like Thin Mint Girl Scout cookies. Oh no, I don't like Thin Mints. How are you going to crucify me for that? Oh, yes, I will crucify you. You don't have a pure love for these Girl Scout cookies. There is direct evidence from our reptile tier list that you only bought so many of these cookies because you found the little girls selling them attractive. Therefore, you don't have the right intention when eating and grating these cookies. And that right there is the final straw, Joe. Do you have any last words? Well, shit, what can I say? Sex sells. You will now pay for what you've done, Joe. Donald Hameha. <laughs> Oh, I lost my spot. Now I can't do this list. What the hell even happened? Don't worry about it, Barack. What matters is that I now have the top left corner of the video, thus cementing my power to have full control of the tier list. Which, speaking of, let's go ahead and get this thing started, because that was a long-ass intro. 
Up first, we got some caramel chocolate cookies. And you all should already know that these belong in S tier. Freaking delicious cookies. Yeah, these are pretty good. I feel like anything with caramel and chocolate is a guaranteed banger. For real, Joe. So we're seriously ignoring that whole anime-ass sequence of events that just happened before our very eyes? After that, we got dozy doughs, and as much as I like using peanut butter when playing with my dog, I just cannot justify that high of a placement for a pure peanut butter product. That shit gets drier than Joe's wife. Nah, there's no way it can get that dry. You'd have to be talking about, like, the worst drought in the Sahara Desert in order to compete with that. Okay, I guess we're just continuing on. But, uh, yeah, I have to agree that pure peanut butter isn't exactly the best, but it isn't awful either. Oh, I agree that it's not awful at all. Maybe I made it sound worse than it actually is, but I do quite enjoy them from time to time, but I won't exactly go seeking after it. I actually think B tier is a great placement for it. Granted, I still would prefer literally any single thing above it, which speaking of things above it, we got the Samoas, and these are an easy S tier. I cannot have enough of these things and will prioritize buying boxes of these things whenever I can. I remember us rating Almond Joys high on our candy tier list so I can see why you enjoy the chocolate and coconut mixture. I personally think it's one of the best combos anyone can ever come up with. I love whoever invented the mixing of chocolate and coconut. Yeah, normally I'm not into race mixing, but chocolate and coconut do wonders inside my mouth. Ha! Huh! Barack, it's not crazy to say that chocolate and coconut is delicious. You literally said it yourself in your statement earlier, you silly goose. Yeah, man, settle down. Anyways, after that, we got pure lemon cookies, and I'm sorry that I'm forgetting the names of these things, but who the hell knows all the damn names of these cookies? I just remember one thing and one thing only, and that is the flavor of these things. And unfortunately, this pure lemon cookie will get slotted into C tier. It isn't all that good, and I'd actually prefer a peanut butter cookie over it. But moving on, we have the toffee cookie going into B tier. I do enjoy these things, though, but I don't know the difference between toffee and caramel. Oh, that's easy to explain. You see, the main thing that separates caramel and toffee is its ingredients. And I say that because toffee consists of sugar and butter. While on the flip side, you got caramel, which is made with sugar, water, and cream. So while they both have sugar in them, they still differ in the manners that they are made and with some of the ingredients. And while I'm at it, I may as well explain what butterscotch is because someone in the comments will inevitably ask because all three of these things are so similar. You see, butterscotch is butter and brown sugar that has been slowly heated together to create a soft crack candy. Just like caramel, the brown sugar molecules break down and thanks to the addition of molasses in the sugar, caramelize into a richer, deeper flavor than classic caramel. Wow, uh, that was oddly informative. You really pulled that straight off the dome and knew every single distinct detail about it. Thanks for your fun facts, Joe. It is a really cool and extremely useless life skill you have, but we love you for it nonetheless. Yeah, I actually am also impressed with all the useless knowledge you keep in your head. Like some would argue, that you should conserve whatever you have left of your brain for actual important global and national issues we have for our country. But I actually think this is better that you're essentially a fun fact machine. But anyways, after that, we got tagalongs, which are also known as peanut butter patties, and it is peanut butter and chocolate. And despite that concept sounding absolutely amazing, I still don't think it reaches the upper echelon of this list and will slot into A tier. It's still pretty amazing, don't get me wrong, but it's no S tier like our next entry, which of course are the amazing Thin Mints. Everyone who has Girl Scout cookies knows that these bang and that they are one of the best cookies available. See, this is what's stupid about this list because Thin Mint cookies are in no way good. Any single product with mint flavoring tastes god awful. Fresh mint is lovely, especially with strawberries or in a tea. But most mint flavored things are so artificial that they conjure up some ass-tasting wannabe mint flavor. Altoid mints, for example, are artificial mint and they're just cold spicy. I can't even have a sip of damn water after because then it'll feel like I'm deep-throating Jack Frost. I also had a mint chocolate shake recently and thought it would maybe be okay if the chocolate would overpower it, but it just tasted like straight hot ass. Like I was ingesting mouthwash mixed with chocolate syrup and it was so overpowering that the mint flavor was like being smashed in the teeth with a brick coated in Clorox or Fabuloso. Which now brings us to the damn thin mints because like what's the point of having a cookie that tastes like Crest toothpaste alongside some chocolate? 
If you want that so badly, why don't you all just smear some toothpaste on an Oreo and call it a damn day? Okay, wow, that is a lot to unpack. But Joe, you do realize putting toothpaste on a cookie does not make it taste like a thin mint. You're just exaggerating here, Joe. Yeah, mint is fucking amazing. And you know what? I feel bad that you'll never get to experience the wonderful and refreshing feeling of biting into a thin mint cookie, which is a damn shame because if anyone here needs a damn mint the most, it has to be your sleepy ass, Joe, because your breath smells worse than a gaping asshole after a fresh shit. But enough of that, because trying to convince Joe to like mint is like trying to convince a hardcore vegan to take a bite out of your prime rib. Anyways, after that, we got the lemon cookie, but with powdered sugar on top. And I think this is a solid step above the pure lemon cookie and slots into B tier for me personally. Not much more to add other than that, but we do have a bona fide D tier up next because pure sugar cookies, also known as tree foils, and these are just so basic. Like, I hope no one in the audience seriously goes out of their way to order these instead of getting literally any other option available. Joke's on you because these happen to bang. Since when did everything have to be so fancy and have all these extravagant flavors? I love my basic trefoils and will forever love them. Thank God I did this list instead of you because I would have had a neck vein explode from pure rage if you would have put this shit above a D. And the reason people should get different flavors is because these damn things cost like 10 bucks a box. Fuck yeah, I'm gonna get the good shit instead of some basic ass flavor. Speaking of good shit, we got the s'mores cookies heading straight into S tier. I was debating placing it into A tier for a bit, but I think it deserves that S tier placement. But wrapping up the list, we have our final entry, which are the thanks a lot, and it is a shortbread biscuit dipped in chocolate with a thank you message. It replaced shout outs, but these are a solid A tier. Here is where simplicity shines and the chocolate and nice message make me feel great. I have to agree that the nice thank you on the cookie does make me feel pretty good knowing I supported the Girl Scouts and got a delicious cookie out of it. If they really want sales, they have to start selling trading cards of the little girls who sell them. Then I'd be buying every damn box like if they were Pokemon cards. Seek God, Joe. What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list. And this time around, we are going to be tackling a Fanta flavor tier list. And I'm a Fanta man, aside from being a Coke man. So I feel like this will be an easy tier list for the Don to take on. You know what's cool about this list is that Fanta originated from Germany. So technically, we are doing a German soda tier list. Or if you want to be more broad with it, you can say that we're doing a European soda tier list. First of all, if we call it a European soda tier list and only rank German soda, then it wouldn't be a European soda tier list, would it? Yeah, didn't think so. And secondly, do you also want to mention how Fanta was invented by Coca-Cola, an American company, inside of Nazi Germany during World War II? And how coincidentally it was also developed at the height of the Third Reich, and how Coca-Cola made this whole new soda, so that it ensured the brand's continued popularity, so essentially it was a soda made for Nazis. Fanta became a point of nationalistic pride and was consumed by the German public from the women cooking at home to the highest officials of the Nazi party. Your fun fact isn't so much fun now, is it Barack? Well, when you put it like that, you make it seem like Fanta was purely made to satiate Coca-Cola's desire to control more of the global economy and continually expand, even if it meant that they would be giving drinks to literal Nazis. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that just seems like some genius business strategy. Not only is Fanta still booming, but they also managed to expand the Coca-Cola company into the global juggernaut that it is today. So like, I have to thank the Third Reich for some good ass Fanta. Jesus Christ, man, I cannot believe you just thanked the Third Reich. Well, I'm not gonna thank Hitler if that's what you wanted me to do. God, you're a weirdo, Barack. That is not at all what I implied, Joe. Come back me up here. I won't lie, Barack, the Joe dog really enjoys himself some Fanta, so I guess shout out Nazi Germany. What the hell? No, we are not shouting them out. Uh, shout out Hitler? God, that's even worse, Joe. Well, if Joe made it okay to shout him out, then I may as well do the same, so shout out. No, just start the list. Okay, man, Jesus Christ, you can't just appease any crowd these days. But yeah, back onto our wonderful Fanta tier list. And up first, we got some apple, and I'll say this about apple Fanta. It isn't the best apple-flavored drink, and I have to thank the illegals for making the, uh, oh, man, this is like reading out the menu at some taco place. But uh, shout out Illegals for their creation in the Manzanita Soul drink. Shit is indeed an ass clapper, and the thought of it makes my butt flutter in glee. But as for the Apple Fanta, it gets a B. I just had to shout out the superior apple soda. I'm actually surprised that you're shouting out Latino people for that. 
The Don loves their food. Why the hell do you think I'm some sort of monster? You and Joe literally were about to shout out Hitler. Whoa, 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 we weren't about to do anything. I actually pulled through and shouted him out. Donald got cold feet and only did the third right. Joe, I didn't know we were taking it that far. You know how scary the internet is and how they can take voice clips out of context? Next thing you know, they'll make edits of us, or even worse, they'll advance AI so far to the point where they'll mimic our voices and make us say a whole bunch of hoopla that we normally wouldn't say. Yeah, that would be pretty bad. But yeah, after that, we got good old Barry, and I ain't talking Barack. Oh, 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 oh my God, now that's a knee slapper. Oh my God, Donald, the word play is out of this world, and no one else would be smart enough to come up with that, except for you, Donald. Stop with the dick sucking, Joe. I swear, if you keep it up any longer, you'll end up on come 4K with the amount of glaze you just did. Joe, don't listen to him. Who are you going to listen to? The guy who brought up the fact that Fanta was made by the Nazi party and decided to be a Debbie Downer. Or the guys who is your wingman in those college parties I bring you to. Well, wingman is a strong word because most of the time you just use me as like some sort of spectacle when you tell all the college girls, hey, everybody, come look at this freak. He'll do anything for a sniff of your hair and then you make me eat bugs and grubs for their entertainment. But do you or do you not get to sniff their hair? You know what? I very much so do get to smell their hair, so yeah, you're right. Plus, I like it when they don't like me. Makes the thrill of the hunt even better because old Joe here turns from the Joester into Joe Goldberg in a snap of some fingers. You two have serious issues that I genuinely believe therapy can't even resolve. We do not need therapy. Real motherfuckers like us simply thug it out because we are just ballers like that. But yeah, I'm giving Barry Fanta a solid A tier. And after that, we got some Cherry Fanta. And although I'm not an artificial cherry hater like Joe here, I still have to say that I prefer Cherry Coke over this, but I'll still give it some respect and give it a B tier. But oh man, I got something that make Barack so happy that he'll be kicking his feet up in the air like a little schoolgirl because I have both Fruit Punch Fanta and Grape Fanta going into S tier. These two flavors are absolutely amazing. And honestly, who doesn't like grape soda? In fact, I'd go as far as to say that Fanta Grape Soda is the best grape soda on the market. I mean, valid placements, but I'm more of a crush soda type of guy when it comes to grape. Can't ever appease you, can I? God, at least you didn't say you were a fan of Sunkist. Now, what's wrong with Sunkist? Well, nothing really. I think that just would have pissed me off more if it came from Barack's mouth. Why am I catching strays? Enough of your whining, Barack, but got up next that we got the Taranja flavor, and the hell is a Taranja? That's grapefruit in Spanish, Donald. Why couldn't they just put the regular English name for it? Why'd they have to get all fancy and put the Taranya flavor? But either way, let me rate this a C tier, and I'll explain why. It is simply because I have too much respect for the Latino people. You just ridiculed the fact that the flavor was in Spanish, and I'm pretty sure earlier in the video, you referred to them as illegals rather than Latino people. Well, Barack, some Latinos can be illegal, but not all illegals are Latinos. Book of the Don, Chapter 4, Sector 7. But yeah, I know my Latino brethren will love the fact that I am about to twerk for some squirt, because if you truly are a fan of grapefruit, then you all already know that squirt soda does it better. Plus, like, the name is so cool, squirt, like, I love it. Yeah, I like to drink some squirt, and I am not talking about the soda. Joe, you dirty, dirty dog. But yeah, everyone knows that it is superior in every way to other grapefruit-flavored sodas. Following that piece of mid, we then got two back-to-back -back A tiers, and that, of course, is the green apple and mango flavors. Now I am a fan of green apple-flavored things because we usually don't get them in the form of drinks. And when we do, I feel like they usually bang. Like, if you ask me, the green apple Gatorade is a slapper, and, of course, a carbonated sweet green apple drink is also going to bang. So, of course, that goes up there. And mango is also like a super self-explanatory one because who the hell doesn't like mangoes? Like, they always bang no matter what form they're in because it can be juice, soda, candy, dessert, you name it, and mango will bang. I say that, but I still feel like they don't reach the upper echelon of S tier, but god damn, are they close? So what do you have going into S tier? We only have two entries up there, and that is quite odd for a Donald list. I'm going to take that as a compliment, but uh, you didn't even let me get into it because literally the flavor most people associate Fanta with is orange, and of course, you all know that the Don will give it the respect that it damn well deserves. And I am putting Orange Fanta straight into S tier. If you're a fan of orange flavored things, then I already know you have Orange Fanta stocked up in your fridge. Some Orange Fanta is my go-to, so thank God it's rated that high. 
Barack, don't disrespect the Don like that. You already know I was going to put some respect on its name and never rate it low. What I will rate somewhat lower is the peach flavor Fanta. And I do like peach as a flavor, but I don't know. The peach Fanta just wasn't doing it for the Don, but it still belongs in a solid B tier. More importantly, we got two back-to-back -back S tiers, and that, of course, is the pineapple Fanta and the strawberry Fanta, which, of course, must come to no surprise to anybody. Certainly doesn't surprise me because you suck off pineapple more than anyone else I know. First you want it in your pizza, then you want it on your burger, and now you can't help but have it in your drinks. You are the number one pineapple enjoyer I know, and frankly, it disgusts me. Joe, you know damn well that pineapple is delicious. I'll let you have your wrong opinion on it when it comes to having it on pizza or not, but you know damn well that it is delicious as a fruit and especially as a drink. Okay, you got me. Maybe I've had too much haterade like Barack, and now I get all grumpy whenever pineapples get mentioned. Since when was I a hater? Barack, you are most certainly a hater when you want to be. Don't try to act all high and mighty and try to take the high road because you are a guaranteed hater when we place certain things high or make certain comments. Like take earlier in the video, for example. That was a prime example of you hating. Me calling you and Joe out for shouting out the Third Reich is not hating. That's exactly what a hater would say. But anyways, on to more important matters, because after that, we got a flavor that's cut off, and I don't know what that is. It's okay. Let me look it up for you, Donald. No, 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 Joe. You do not need to look it up, because we all remember what happened in our Caprice and Tear list where you had some weird tabs open during the recording. I'll look this up, and uh, let's see. Hmm. Ah, uh, it's the Strawberry Kiwi Fanta flavor. Oh, my God, then. That's an auto S tier. Who the hell doesn't like strawberry and kiwi flavored things? I will say, Barack, that I hate that you deprived us of Joe opening his phone tabs because I am so sure he would have had something hilarious in there. Donald, it only would have been funny to you and the audience, but it would have humiliated Joe because I know damn well he didn't clean his tabs. Come on, Barack, I've been better at cleaning my tabs. Have you a little faith? Watch, I'll open up a tab right now. Is that dick good? Yes, kid. Ah, oh, shit. What is up, gang? We are back with another tier list, and we've been getting comments to do a shake tier list. So I decided to get the gang around and go ahead and start another ranking. I am the ice cream expert, so I think this extends to shakes as well. Well, shakes have ice cream in them, so I would say that you are the most qualified based on that. But if we were counting the amount of calories someone eats a day, well, Donald has you beat by a mile. Barry, shut the hell up. I told you that I am on a bulk. When I finally cut, I'll be so freaking shredded. Only thing you're cutting is some more snacks open. Anyways, let's start this list off, and we have a pumpkin shake. Now, I like pumpkin pie, but if you hand me a whole ass shake dedicated to the flavor of pumpkin, you and me are going to have some problems. I like pumpkins, but they should not be in shake form. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but I just feel like it is simply way too much pumpkin to go through in one sitting. Like, imagine slurping on pumpkin-flavored sweetness for, like, five minutes straight, and if you get a super thick shake, it's basically game over. I will be placing this into C tier because I guess no shake can be truly awful. But goddamn pumpkin shakes are not the best thing you can get. Joe, you exaggerate so much. People love pumpkin a lot, and Starbucks makes a killing off pumpkin spice lattes. This is why I know more about business than you. Yeah, they sell pumpkin spice lattes. It has a hint of pumpkin. It's not the entire thing like a shake would be. Anyways, continuing my hater rampage, I am putting mint shakes so a shamrock shake from McDonald's, or as I like to call them, shamcock shakes, right into D tier. Joe, hold your ass down. I get hating those things, but I for one enjoy shamrock shakes, and you have to realize a lot of people in general love those shakes. The comments ate you alive last time you talked badly about shamrock shakes. God, fine. I'll put it into B tier since I guess I can skip brushing my teeth and just have a shamrock shake instead, but I won't be happy about placing it that high. You have to at least let me place this next one into C tier then. I don't even know what the hell it is, so sure. Go ahead and place it into C tier. Barry, I am so surprised you don't know what it is. There's a banana right there. It's your favorite thing to suck on and eat. On God, Donald, we do not be fucking with the bananas. I will confidently place a banana shake into C tier and have no qualms about it. Up next, though, we got our very first S tier, a classic shake, really, and that is the pure chocolate shake. I love this thing, and I genuinely believe it is extremely hard to mess up a chocolate shake. If you somehow find a way to mess that up, then you have a talent for screwing up everything in life. 
The simplicity behind this flavor and the deliciousness is what boosts this into an S tier. This is an extremely uncommon Joe W, but I will let it slide and allow you to spit. On God, I be spitting guys. Sometimes it's saliva and sometimes it's the truth. But anyways, up next, we got a peanut butter shake and this is a pretty good one. If you love peanut butter and I have loved it ever since someone taught me a cool trick involving peanut butter and a dog. Ever since then, I have loved it and a shake version of it is absolutely delicious. And I will confidently be placing this into an easy A tier for this list. What the hell did you say in that first part, Joe? That I love peanut butter? I don't know what's so weird about that. You know, a lot of people love peanut butter Barack. Joe, that is not what you said, but you know what? I'm too scared to talk further about what you did with that peanut butter. Please just go on to the next shake. Uh, I was planning on doing that anyways. This next shake is my personal favorite, and I have the cookies and cream shake going straight into S tier as well, because who doesn't like this? It's basically an Oreo shake, and I love Oreos so much. I get the double stuffed Oreos and make a quadruple stuffed Oreo by taking two apart and putting them together. I love that creamy white stuff so much. I bet you're a huge fan of that white stuff going inside. Do you swallow all of it, Joey? Well, of course I swallow it all. How else am I supposed to eat it? You acting kind of strange, slime. Anyways, we got yet another S tier coming up, and that is the strawberry shake. I freaking love strawberries, and I can drink them in juice, eat them fresh, eat them in ice cream form, and I will also devour it in shake form. I think this was an easy one to grade because of how fire strawberries are. Well said, Joey. As a fellow strawberry lover, I am proud to stand by your statement. Even more proud you did not say any weird stuff during all of that. Thanks, Barry. I try really hard to not be myself sometimes. Well, to wrap up this list, we got vanilla flavored shakes. Now this is a tough one for me because I love the hell out of vanilla ice cream, but vanilla shakes are just a bit too much vanilla, if that makes sense. It's the same as the pumpkin reasoning, except I can handle more of the vanilla. Is it because it's so good and creamy, all that yummy white vanilla going inside of you and on your lip? Donald, sometimes you weird me out by how freaking accurate you are. Yeah, it's thick and creamy, and I love it inside of me, but not too much. So in total, I will be giving it an A tier. Are we even freaking talking about vanilla shakes anymore? No. No. Hello, everyone. It's me, the master grinder, the Don himself. I am here to rank ramen flavors since Joe and Barack were really excited to do this one. I just suggested I do the list due to my superior taste buds. Donald, I'm honestly surprised you wanted to do this one, especially since Joe is a big fan of ramen. I sure do love noodles. They're just so easy to make and are a great snack. Joe did the last list, and I'm not fucking letting him do another, but let's start this list off with roast chicken ramen. Who the fuck has ever had this one? Ooh, I have Donnie. I really like the flavor, but I prefer the original chicken. See, Donald, maybe Joe should do the list instead. He is not doing the goddamn list. It is my turn, and I said I was going to do ramen. I'm putting it in C tier. Next, I have the chicken flavor at A tier, man. This was a real lifesaver when all I had to live off of was the small loan my father gave me back when I was a youngin'. Wasn't that loan like a million dollars? Listen, Joey, a small loan is a small loan. A man like you wouldn't understand the hardship I had to go through. I remember once I had to dip into my savings to fully buy one of my many apartment complexes in full. Real big struggle there, Donnie. Did you also use part of that loan for Stormy Daniels? Uh... Next, we have beef flavor at D tier. It literally tastes like someone put dog food into my noodles, cooked it with Dr. Pepper, made the noodles out of clay, and then proceeded to run them through feces before serving it to me. Donald, don't say that. What if people genuinely like that flavor? I'll believe that people really like this flavor once Lizzo stops lying to everyone about being vegan, because ain't no way that is possible. Moving on, we got the picante chicken, and this nice bit of spice makes it better than the normal chicken flavor and moves it up to S tier. Amazing take here, Donnie. I'm genuinely surprised you like the spiciness it adds, but that flavor really does one up the OG chicken. I know I'm amazing, what can I say? I know they say God sculpts everyone in his own image, but he must have been in his bag when making me. Anyways, next up, we also have shrimp in S tier because that is the staple ramen flavor I always used to get. Surviving in the slums of the Jamaica estates, I remember opening up this for a nice snack. Isn't that place like a pretty good neighborhood? Joe, you know nothing of my struggles. No, uh, I just pulled it up. This place looks pretty nice to live in. The place was infested with illegals, Joe. Sure, most of them were gardeners, construction workers, maintenance guys, and restaurant workers, but I felt danger around every corner. Wow, Donald, you know they were probably really good, hardworking people. 
Good people can do bad things, Barack. Remember, the McChicken used to be only a dollar, but now they are damn near three dollars. I remember thinking back then McDonald's were the good guys, but then they blindsided their number one consumer, which is me. I've been filled with nothing but vitriol and hate for the franchise ever since. Sure, I still buy their stuff like every other day, but I'll never forget that my precious McChicken is no longer a dollar. But moving past all that, who the hell has ever had creamy chicken ramen? I've never even heard of that before this list. Who is making these flavors? This seems like a Joe type of flavor, something senile people would enjoy. I have never had it before, Donnie, but it sounds delicious. I feel like I would have remembered a creamy chicken ramen if I ever had it. Let's be honest, Joe, you most definitely wouldn't have remembered. Up next, we have the Oriental flavor. I once again have never had this. The only type of Oriental I like are the people and their massages, if you get what I mean. I don't get what you mean. What's cool about a massage? Just forget it, Joe. You wouldn't get it. Be glad you don't get it, Joey. That's how Donald is getting in trouble for the stormy thing. Can we give up that bit already? This next flavor must have been in Mexico only or something, because I've never seen the chili flavor. I've had it before. See, Donald, this is why I should have made the list. I think that's a decent flavor. Joe, you did the last one. I am doing this one, and I have never had it. Your opinion is invalid since I already gave you one. So why even do this tier list, Donald, plus Joey listened to you on his other lists? He doesn't get shit after that Sun Chips fiasco. And next we have the roast beef flavor, which is at D tier because that is garbage. Probably tastes like Joe's wife. Probably tastes more like Stormy, you orange fuck. Joe, did I not just say to drop that? Let's proceed with the list. This next item is peak and Tay beef, and this is a D tier. It also tastes bad. It's like someone added hot sauce to boiled hot dog water to add to my ramen that was already made out of raw sewage. You know what? I've never heard someone describe it like Donnie. I know, I know, I'm a genius, a wordsmith, a poet, practically a full-fledged writer. I mean, I do have a book, and up next I have chicken mushroom ramen at B tier. It's good, but I tend to prefer the original chicken more. Same can be said about the lime shrimp, just because I tend to like the originals more than the variants. However, the lime chili shrimp is slightly better, so I have that A tier accompanying the chicken flavor. Whoa, don't you think you're going a little too fast, Donald? You gotta really soak in the flavors and describe them. Joe, for the last goddamn time, this is my list, and I refuse to hear anything about it. All my decisions are final, and this is the absolute correct list. Some say this is the best list. All right, Donnie, time for the most important one. Where do you place the pork-flavored ramen? I place it at D tier for do not eat as it is haram, inshallah, my brothers, and masha'Allah to all living life. Wait, what the fuck? Hey, everyone, it's my turn to make some lists, and I want to take a moment to thank Zach Martin 3006 for this idea. As soon as we saw it, we all knew we had to rank some Pop-Tart flavors because they are delicious as hell. And I think I am a connoisseur of the tarts that pop. Yeah, you're a huge tart, a big friggin' retard if you ask me. I've never seen someone as tarted as you. Aw, oh, gee whiz, thanks, Donnie. Joey, you know that? Never mind, you'd be happier without knowing, but please enlighten us with your list, Joey. Oh yeah, time to get epic. Anyways, first and foremost, I feel like we have to put Blueberry in A tier. Personally, when I think of Pop-Tart, I think of blueberry. But I don't think it's the best flavor, if that makes sense. I totally get that. Whenever you see Pop-Tarts, you always see a blueberry. It's a great, safe option. You know, Joey, I figured that you'd pick a fruit-flavored one and put it high. You always seemed like a fruity guy. I am a fruity guy. I like to think I'm the fruitiest guy I know. Thanks for being so nice to me today, Donald. I really didn't expect it. Moving on, we got brown sugar up next, and that's a solid A tier as well. People be sleeping on brown sugar, but I think it's another safe option again, and it's good. Joe, this is an okay choice. I agree. People sleep on brown sugar, but it probably could have gone in B tier. Nah, trust me. Just let me cook on this one. With my next entry, I'm putting cherry in C tier. What the hell, Joey? I don't think it's that bad. Isn't it basically the same as blueberry? No, you freaking buffoon. It is not the same. You guys ever compare a real cherry to artificial cherry-flavored things? They are not the same, and I, for one, am a hater of artificial cherry. I do not want that Pop-Tart, but if it's there, I will eat it. It will remain in C tier. Can't really disagree as I never had cherry Pop-Tarts. I'm just used to popping them. Gross, Donald, but Joe, what about everyone else who likes cherry-flavored things? Fuck them. Anywho, I got chocolate cookie dough and chocolate chip both in B tier. They are better than cherry, and I love chocolate. Call me the chocolate man, I'd be eating dookie like it's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Joe, listen to half the shit you say. It either makes no sense or you somehow in your dementia-ridden head believe it to be cool. 
just let Joey be himself, Donnie, but these are solid selections for B tier. I'm just keeping my eye out for this one particular chocolate flavor. Is it the chocolate fudge pop tart? Because that is going straight to A tier. Like I said, I am the chocolate man and I think this is better than the other two. Okay, that's more valid than what you did to the cherry flavored pop tarts. Are we still going on about that? Jeez. Next, you'll say that the confetti flavored pop tarts are good, but they're actually garbage and go in D tier. Sleepy Joe wakes up from his slumber, I agree. Anyone that likes confetti or shit with a ton of sprinkles must have a hole in their brain. I am not a fan of birthday flavored things and this confetti cupcake one. They are scamming you America with this lazily flavored product. What if I like that flavor, guys? You deserve the absolute worst in life if you do. Like that flavor is stinky as hell. And if you like it, then you must be a stinky person. Anyways, don't worry, everyone. We'll wash our brains of that with our first S tier, and that is the cookies and cream. These are so appetizing. I will absolutely get on my hands and knees for this flavor. This biracial flavor is a bop. I am a huge fan as well. W of a choice here, Joey. I don't get it. If you're a fan of cookies and cream, why not just get Oreos? They taste exactly the same. No, they do not, Donald, you freaking Neanderthal. There is a very clear difference only the most elevated of Pop-Tart eaters will know. Up next, we have another banger, and that is the hot fudge sundae flavor. Oh my God, this can bring tears to my eye from how good it is, but it's not in the elite section. I'm only holding two flavors up there. Joe, never call me that again. So we know cookies and cream are there, but what the hell could the other one be, Joey? Patience, Donnie. Up next, we got raspberry, and I'm gonna be honest, I like it, but I prefer strawberry. So I'm putting this in B tier. I feel like it's an honest placement for it because everyone likes strawberries more. Way to assume there, Joey. What about the people that prefer raspberries over strawberries? And what about those innocent kids that you blew up? Yeah, that's what I thought. Never question me again, Barry. Next, we got red velvet going at C tier, and it's an okay flavor. I much rather have the next flavor, and that is the s'mores pop tarts, which are going in A tier. These are good as hell, and the marshmallow and chocolate flavors make for an elite pop tart. So now that we got that out, we can assume that your sleepy ass put strawberry in A tier as well, since you put raspberry in B and said strawberry was better. Donald, what the heck, man? This is my list, and I get to rate them. But yeah, they go in A tier, but I bet you won't guess where the unfrosted ones go. Your old shriveled, shrinky, dinky ass would probably like these unflavored messes. Wrong, Donald. I actually have all three in F tier as they taste like doo-doo fart, and I am not a fan of them at all. Give me all the sweet stuff, even if it gives me diarrhea, which directly leads us to the finale, the magnum opus of sweet pop tarts, and that is the wild berry flavor. I would sacrifice one of my kids for this pop tart. Now, Joe, we know how much you like pop tarts, but that's a pretty insensitive thing to say. How could you get rid of any of your precious kids? This fucker is just using that as an excuse to get rid of Hunter, I bet. Well, as the great Drewski once said, you got, got me. <laughs> what is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list, and this is technically the first tier list of 2024, and I am so glad that it is done by the best tier list maker. Well, technically, it's not our first tier list, because in our top five videos, ranking technically counts as a list, and when we did, I got both top two rankings, so some in the fan base would argue that I am the best tier list president. That was a load of bull and was basically a make-a-wish event for your sped self, Joe. Now we move on to something real like a, uh, a potato tier list. Man, so we are starting off the year with this, and not only that, we are making me do another food-related list. You guys do realize that I can do much more than just eat. Yeah, we've seen the Epstein flight logs. Trust me, we do know you do a lot more than just eat. Okay, that is fake news, and let's get this potato list started, shall we? Because I do not want to talk or make a comment on that stuff. You'll have to talk to my lawyers, but uh, anyways, up first on this wonderful list, we got potato wedges, and I like a good potato wedge. Get that seasoned up and then add a little ketchup on it, and I am in for a good time. I think a solid A tier is in order for that. I really have nothing but good things to say about that, and the same would apply for our next entry because I have Hasbrowns going into S tier. Like, these things are simply elite, and I don't care how you eat them because you can crack your sunny side egg over them and let the yolk run on top of it. You can also add some hot sauce like Cholula, or you can add some ketchup. This is just elite in any form or way that you eat it. Ooh, when I go to IHOP, I choose to pour a little bit of syrup on them because I don't mind a little sweet hash brown on the side. Is it elite in that way, too? Joe, you're just saying that to piss me off because I know damn well no normal human being eats it like that. But then again, it is you who we're talking about, so I already know you are not normal. Now up next we, uh, well, I guess we have other forms of hash browns, huh? 
I guess I should have rated these with the other hash browns, but I want everyone to know that these all get an S tier as well. The same comments apply to them, even if made in other forms. After that, we got home fries, and this looks like homemade fries that were grilled up and seasoned well. And of course, you know that I am also placing this into A tier. These things are great if prepared well. The real question is, if you and your family actually prepare home-cooked fries well, or if they just do unseasoned potatoes. Barack, stop projecting your own problems onto me because I know damn well Michelle does not feed your family well enough with all of her low-calorie meals, and I bet her crazy ass thinks there are too many calories in seasonings. Anyways, after that, we got some latkes, and I've only had these a couple of times, but I can tell you all that they do indeed bang. I'd give it a solid A tier in terms of my enjoyment for it. And after that, we got three back-to-back-to-back -back -back S tiers. And first one is tater tots. And who doesn't like frying up some tots and eating them with some ketchup while chilling? They're good for snacks, and I won't judge you either if you order them instead of fries. Then, of course, we have normal potato chips and crinkle-cut chips. And as I said earlier, they both go into S tier. And quite honestly, I don't know the purpose of crinkle-cut chips. Ooh, I can answer this one. You see, crinkle-cut chips aren't actually cut. They're made out of mashed potatoes of sorts. Instead, they're pressed or squirted out of a nozzle. Flat-sliced chips are just that, slices of potatoes. The source material is just different. Wow, I didn't know that. Thanks, Joe. You really are informed when it comes to really random stuff that will not help almost anyone in knowing. Speak for yourself, Barry, because I did not ask Joe to go on his tism rant about potato chips, but I do have to agree that Joe is the king of useless knowledge. He's like a human fun fact book. But anyways, after that, we got tornado potatoes, or also known as potato twists. And these things are pretty solid. They are popular in South Korea, but merit a solid B tier in my eyes. After this, we got a goddamn raw potato, and I hate that the lowest I can go is C tier, but this belongs in goddamn F tier. If you eat raw potatoes like an apple, you need to be examined in a lab. Then we come back to greatness with our next entry, which is an S tier, and that is mashed potatoes. Goddamn, do I love mashed potatoes so much, and if you put some good ass gravy on top, well, you'll have the Don creaming. We really don't need to hear that about you, Donald, but to a certain extent, I get what you mean because I do love me some mashed potatoes. I love just getting globs of it in my mouth and trying to swallow the biggest gulp of mashed potato in my mouth. Joe, why do you have to ruin things for me? Like, I did not want to hear that, but whatever what's said is said, and the show must go on with this tier list. And up next, we got some scalloped potatoes, and I really only have these during Thanksgiving for the most part. Sometimes we do have some during Christmas, but most times out of 10, we are eating scalloped potatoes during Thanksgiving, and I actually like them during those times, but I won't really be asking for it other times of the year. I think a solid B tier is needed for this because it really is not anything special, and the same can be said about Hasselback potatoes because I also don't think they're anything special and also belong in B tier. I would rather have a baked potato, but we will get there when we get there. Then we got some potato soup, and I really love this stuff. I also like broccoli soup and generally just like soups like these in general. Put some oyster crackers in there and you are set. I will have to give potato soup an A tier. Sounding like an old man with those takes right there, Donald. Joe, so help me God, I will kill you before you ever mutter words like that to me ever again. I just like good things and this happens to be one of the best things to eat. Following that, we got some gnocchis going into A tier. I really enjoy these, but I do not like them as much as our next entry, which will make all the Polish people happy because I am putting pierogies into S tier. Okay, this is some bull because pierogies are not made of potatoes. Joe, shut your mouth. You obviously have not had potato and cheese or even potato and meat pierogies, and those are the only ones I am grading, so I say they count. After that, we got some potato mochi, and I have never had that, so someone in the comments tell me if they're good. I assume it might be because I like mochi and potatoes, but something about that combo scares me. After that, we got some smashed potatoes, and this is like a fried potato disc, and this, of course, is going straight to A tier. You will not hear any complaints from the Don regarding this, but as for croquettes, the Don has had only mid-experiences with them. Maybe I just haven't had the best place for them, but they are either too cheesy or not fried enough, and I have to give it a B tier. There's no such thing as too cheesy Donald. You should realize how much flavor an umami cheese gives to a dish. I do realize that, but I just have not had good ones. I am open to changing my mind, but until that day comes, this is staying in B tier. Following all that, we have potato salad, and this stuff merits a B tier as well. I like it, but again, it just is not all that when compared to the stuff above it. 
Speaking of stuff above it, I will be placing the baked potato into A tier above the potato salad. And what the hell is warm potato salad? That sounds awful, but I've never had it, so I can't judge. But this goes into the I have not had tier. Then we have the twice-baked potato, and I honestly prefer the original baked potato, and we'll have this going into B tier. And since I'm already here, I may as well put roasted potatoes into B tier as well. Nothing special to say about them, but they're all right. This might be an L take from you, Donald. I love roasted potatoes so much, and I could have let an A tier slide, but a B tier man? Come on. Yeah, I know you of all people probably love roasted potatoes in the oven. Probably no sauce or seasoning because Michelle hates things that taste good. But here in my house, we have flavor. We can tell from all the weight you've gained recently. That is simply just me cultivating mass for an insane cut that I plan to have later this year. Speaking of, the things that help me cultivate the most mass are these next S tiers because I have French fries, curly fries, and waffle fries all going into S tier. Normal French fries are simply elite no matter what, but then you bump it up when you go to Arby's or Jack in the Box and get some curly fries from there, and then some nice ass waffle fries with some sauce is simply a combo to die for. I cannot express how insane these three are, but then you get like the run of the group, and this is like the Down Syndrome, brother, and that is steak cut fries. I have that going into B tier, but honestly, these are pretty bad. Like whatever place that serves, these always tends to not season them, and I don't know why. It's like they go out of their way to put almost no seasoning, and then you just get mushed flavorless potato. I really have disdain for steak cut fries. Well, at least you get something happy to rate. Those smiley fries will brighten up anyone's day. Joe, I don't care about these dumbass fries, but they are probably better than steak cut fries, and we'll be placing the smile fries into A tier. I have never seen these things before, nor do I know where to get them, but I have no doubt in my mind that they are better than steak cut fries. That's some big hater mindset right there, Donald. Nothing to be happy about in life. Man, those flight logs got our man depressed. Hey, everyone, we've gathered around to make yet another goaded tier list. This time, we're going to be ranking different bottled water on our tier list to determine which one is the best of the best. As a master drinker of liquids, I can assure you all that you will be given the best of the best regarding opinions. I bet you you love drinking liquids, Donald. Joe, stop being weird and let's start this list. Up first, we got Arrowhead water, and I'm going to be honest, gentlemen. It's not bad, but it's not great, it's good. So I think we have a B tier in our hands here. I uh, have to agree with this decision. I have nothing bad, but nothing great to say about Arrowhead water, honestly. Sounds great then. We'll move on to Poland Springs water, and I have never had this water. This feels like some Polish exclusive thing, honestly. I've had it, but it's not as good as Arrowhead and definitely not as good as Life Water. Yeah, Barack, I can't lie to you. The German within me wants to rank this Poland water low. I feel like that's a bit racist, but I'm going to listen to you both and put it at C tier. Up next, though, we have a pretty good brand here. I like it a lot. I am a big fan of Life Water. I like the water, but that shape is too phallic. I do not enjoy that cylinder shape entering my mouth. It seems to me that you like that shit, Barack. On Baby Donald, I bet Barack likes some big and round wee-wee shaped objects, don't you? Good one, Joey. Okay, what the hell are you guys like sucking the whole bottle to drink it? The water is good, though, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you guys enjoy drinking it, and we'll have some if it's there, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so basically you guys just want to place it lower just because of the shape and how you both weirdly suck the whole bottle instead of just drinking it like a normal person. Yeah. yeah. Why the hell do I talk to you two? I'll place it in A tier then. Anyways, we got Nestle water, and I actually like this one too, but again, it's not as good as life water, so I'm placing it at B tier. I still don't like life water being that high, but I agree. Okay, so we're moving on to Niagara Water and... I have to stop you here, Barack. This is Niagara Water. This is not American. Fuck the Canadians in this water. What did the Canadians ever do to you, Donnie? I just don't like the way they look, so I say we make this water sea tier. God damn it, Donald. I just want you to know it was going there before you even said anything. I was not influenced by you at all. Now, I got a controversial one here, fellas. I'm putting Fiji Water at sea tier. They are scamming the shit out of you, America. I love Fiji water. What the hell are you on about Barack? Nah, he's spitting right now, Donald. A little lesson from Biden University for you all. Better not send any kids to that place. Ignoring that, did you all know that the Cleveland Water Department ran tests comparing a bottle of Fiji water to Cleveland tap water and some other national bottled brands? Fiji water reportedly contains 6.31 micrograms of arsenic per liter, whereas the tap water of Cleveland contained none. How's that for you, Donald? You were killing yourself drinking that. 
God, imagine having worse water than Cleveland. I'm no longer drinking that garbage brand. Exactly. Thank you, Joey, for the not-so-fun fact. And as for the next one on the tier list, I still like life water more, so I'm putting smart water at B tier. I agree. Nothing smart about that water, to be honest. The fuck does that even mean, Joey? Just ignore him, Donald, because we have another A tier in here joining us, and that's Evian water. Quite honestly, I want to put this in S, but since there's such a small amount, I feel like it should be exclusive. Agreed. Evian water makes me feel like I'm climbing a mountain, and I quite like that. How about you actually climb off the chair and get some exercise, Donald? Joey, you shouldn't fat shame. It's not nice to make fun of someone's weight, you sleepy fuck. No, I wasn't making a joke. I am genuinely concerned about your health. Guys, please, we're almost at the end. Anyways, I have Dasani at D tier because that shit is absolute garbage. But I really like Dasani. I think it is overhated. Of course Joe would drink Dasani. God, that shit tastes like dirt water. Yeah, Joe, that shit is kind of garbage. I think I would rather die of dehydration than ever drink Dasani. Come on, guys, you don't really mean all that. No, I think we genuinely do mean that. If I was dying of thirst in the Sahara Desert and had the choice between RC Cola and Dasani, I would still choose the RC Cola even if I knew it was actively dehydrating me. Joey, we are not joking. I'm with Donald here. I'd rather go full Bear grills and drink my piss than have a drop of Dasani. Fine, you guys are just being bullies. More Dasani for me. Please keep every single bottle, dude. Okay, next we have Aquafina at A tier. Ooh, excellent choice here, Barack. Okay, now you guys are fucking with me. No way can you guys tell me Aquafina is in A tier. Ain't no fucking way. Joe, what's the matter? That is a completely great and logical take. Yeah, Joey, what's wrong with Aquafina? Nothing is wrong with it. It just feels like you guys are gaslighting me because there's no way this is true. How can Aquafina be so high, but Dasani is so low? You're in denial, Joe Bag. Your taste buds are just inferior. Yeah, Joester, you're just butthurt right now. Anyways, we have Ice Mountain at S tier to end off the list. The flavor is just unmatched. Once again, Barack has struck gold instead of Holmes with his drones. I really enjoy the rich flavor that emanates from Ice Mountain. I have a full fridge of them. Okay, now what the f What is going on, a gang of lang? We are back with another tier list, and this time we got one of my favorite ones ever because we are going to be tackling snacks from the 2000s. And oh boy, just staring this list up and down has me rubbing my hands like a damn fly out of pure excitement. If you ask me, I should have headlined this list. Joe won't know true eats like I would. Donald, you've done the last two lists, and to be honest, Joe is the oldest, so in this case, he will have seniority. Don't worry, Donald, you can trust me with this list. Joe, I trust you as much as a homeless person to take care of my wallet. Well, I'm gonna get you to see my vision because I have some good vibes about this list. Let's go ahead and get this started. And up first, we got fruit roll-ups, and this is an immediate S tier. I don't see how people would not like these things because they are literally one of the most goaded candies out there. Joe, they have tons of sugar, man. I may be in the minority in this, but I think it wasn't that healthy or good. You are definitely in the minority in more ways than one Barack. These things bang, and I refuse to hear you out on the healthy food front. Allow me to cook, because after that, I have Pop-Tarts also in S tier. You get these things for a quick breakfast or a little snack later in the day, and these always smack no matter what. My personal favorite is Wildberry, but honestly, the Joe Dog is a fan of almost all Pop-Tarts. Another W from Joe. Jesus, this is amazing. Keep letting me cook. Ahem, after that, we got some Go-Gurt, and I'm going to keep it quite honest here. I loved Go-Gurts, but were they really all that? Like, I remember them being amazing and are even better if you freeze them, but honestly, they are just normal, good-tasting yogurt. I know a lot of you might be up in arms about this, but I have this going into A tier. I knew you were bound to mess this up, Joe. How is this only an A tier? This is literally one of the best items here. Listen, Donald, I know your ass would put everything in S tier, but I am reserving that for only the absolute most elite snacks on this list. And speaking of elite snacks, we got Lunchables up next, but unfortunately for us, we got one of the worst ones, and that is the nachos with cheese and salsa. And I have this going into B tier. Like, you can't possibly think this is high up there, especially when the better ones are on the list. Then after that, we got some grips, and I actually don't remember having these, but they just look like miniature versions of normal snacks, which seems stupid as hell. I'm giving this a D tier. This is possibly one of the biggest L's on this list. Jesus Christ, I knew I shouldn't have let you cook because you were going to make some of the worst shit I've ever seen. Blood just cooked up some undercooked meat alongside some fucking gruel because that's how bad this ranking was. Why would you not want smaller bite-sized things as a snack? 
Yeah, Joe, I normally don't speak out, but this ranking is possibly as bad as letting your kids get babysat by a sex offender. Well, I'll let you know firsthand that I would take great care of your kids. But please just allow the dish to marinate because I am not done cooking. I then have Bagel Bites Pizza going into A tier. I know your fat ass is more than happy with this selection, Donald. Well, I'd rather it be an S tier, but I will allow an A tier. Well, I'm glad I'm making this list because Bagel Bites are good, but I am telling you all that I will fucking cook with the S tiers in this list. After that, I got Cosmic Brownies going into B tier, and before anyone says anything, I know these are good, but man, this shit feels like I'm eating brownie quicksand. Like if I don't have milk with these things, then it just feels like I'm deep throating the Sandman, and I genuinely feel like I'm gonna choke. This shit is drier than a goddamn Popeye's biscuit. You know, that's not entirely a bad ranking. I actually respect this one, because one time I was eating these Cosmic Brownies and accidentally swallowed a whole glob with no beverage, and I ended up almost choking. It felt like I had snail slime going down my throat and I had to drink something, but all I had was a thick-ass milkshake and I tried chugging it in order to pass the food, but the goddamn brownies formed a fucking wall on my throat. Like they were setting fucking screens down my esophagus and I couldn't pass down any sort of liquid, so I just ended up throwing up all over the floor and the chunks of brownie came up just from the sheer force of my violent coughs. I'd actually place this shit in D or even C tier. Well, yeah, they are dry, but I don't think they're bad. Just don't be fucking dumb and eat these without milk. But don't worry, Donald, I know your ass will be happy about these next two entries because I have Oreo Cakesters and Uncrustables both going into S tier. Oreo Cakesters are honestly some of the best goddamn things I've ever had. But my problem is that they're too sweet. But if you're into that, then I already know you're all creaming over this S tier ranking. And as for Uncrustables, well, the Joe Dog already knows this is something that is amazing. All the kids love Uncrustables and the Joe Dog loves that. They are nice and simple peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and honestly, that's all you need. Okay, Major W on the Uncrustable Joe. I completely forgot about the existence of Cakesters, but goddamn, those are indeed S tiers. I do a handstand twerk on some dick for some Uncrustables or Oreo Cakesters. Jesus fucking Christ, man, just say you love them. It just won't emphasize how much I love those two things. Like twerking for them is one thing, but I am also handstand twerking for them. And then to add on top of that, I motherfucking handstand twerking on some dick for those two things. I think I see the vision, Donald. I too would handstand twerk on dick for these two things. God, now you got Joe saying this shit too. No, no, I smell the fuck out of what he said, Barack. Think about it, me and Donald love women so much, yet we're willing to twerk on penis just for a bite out of these things. If you ask me, it's still not far enough, but I feel his sentiment to my core. Then after we got dippable Ritz crackers with some cheese, and these are okay. I think a solid C tier at best is okay for these things. But holy shit, we got an auto S tier next, and that of course are the gushers. Who doesn't like eating these things and feeling the sweet juices burst in your petite mouth? Whoa, pause. You're gonna say pause to that statement, but we're supposed to ignore the whole twerking on dick from you? Well, yes, he did not need to call his mouth petite. Sorry guys, I shouldn't have said that, but it's just that I often forget I uh, tend to do that a lot. I'm actually kind of scared of that. Guys, what if I forget everything and all the precious memories I have with everyone, including you two? Uh, don't worry, Joe. We will try our hardest to never get you to forget about us, buddy. And remember that we love you. What the hell are you talking about? You sound mighty homosexual with that statement saying you'll love me. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Wait, what the heck are we doing? Whoa, a tier list. Ooh, and we have grandma mini sandwich cookies. I don't know who's doing the list, but these are honestly a B tier for me. Jesus Christ. What man, do you like these or something? They're okay to good at best. Sorry to burst your bubble and sorry to any pudding fans because I also have that shit going into C tier. But thankful we got a little mini banger up next and I have Danimal's yogurt going into A tier because it's also good as hell. And I know many people will argue that it's an S tier, but just let the Joe dog cook. Joe, I'm telling you that if we let you cook, you're gonna burn the kitchen down. Okay, but trust me because up next we got another certified S tier and that is fruit by the foot. Eating these with only your mouth has to be an integral experience for everyone. Then after we have something mighty mid and that is Scooby-Doo gummies, and these are just a C tier, like they're gummies in the shape of the mystery team. But holy shit, do we have a terrible one up next, and that is kids' cuisine. These bang if you're a fucking toddler with the IQ equivalent to warm water. But if you've developed a consciousness past the level of a two-year-old, 
then you'd realize how god-awful these things are and how they are probably made with synthesized meat from a fucking lab. Absolute D-tier. Okay, this is actually real as fuck, though. You'd have some food that was still frozen solid, and then you'd have the other stuff be as hot as molten lava. I would not even feed a homeless man this slop. Not because I don't think they'd eat it, but rather because the homeless are gross to me. And I'm scared that I'd get super AIDS if I make contact with them. Wow, that's such a fucked up statement. But regarding kids' cuisine, I have to agree because the nutritional value on this was seriously bad, like... Yeah, I don't want to hear you yap about the nutrition facts about kids' cuisine. Marrying Michelle was your problem, Barack. Don't go trying to spread her gospel here on this channel. But anyways, we got a banger up next and what I believe to be the yogurt product on this list. And that, of course, is the Trix yogurt. Does anyone remember these? Because I swear to God, these things were so delicious and possibly gifts from heaven. Oh my God, these things were fucking amazing. I remember the little multi-flavored things they'd have and how you can swirl them. And they would just taste like pure unfiltered gas. I told you all that the Joe dog knows what's up. After that, we got two back-to-back -back B tiers and the circus animal cookies and the Fruit Loop cereal straws. The cookies might be placed a little low because those things bang like I would have go out of my way for them, but if you had them there, you know, they bang. And as for the straws, well, I think they're pretty good. And I like just munching on them rather than using them as straws. But then we got back to back Lunkables. And let me tell you all first that, of course, the cracker ham and cheese one is an auto S tier. Like these things are the first product I think of when I hear about Lunchables. They are so simple yet so delicious. And I can't help but place them in S tier. Now, as for the pizza, well, I really like them, and they are definitely the second best, but I just can't justify an S tier ranking for them. I still think that they're a solid A tier because it was fun making pizzas, but they're not actually good. Yeah, this is where you take another L, Joe, because the pizza is arguably better than the crackers, but I'd have both of these bangers in S tier. Well, we all know that your fat ass would have a lot of items in S tier, but hey, man, I want to make a great list. Speaking of great, I know I'm gonna make Barack really happy with this next placement. Of course you're gonna bring me up with the Kool-Aid talk. Listen, the Joe dog is quite in tune with the African-American community. Remember that one time I said, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure we all do. It's still crazy to me that you said that because we all know that Don loves his thick women and I know my brothers from Othamothas feel the same way. Wow, please just go with the ranking Joe. Oh yeah, I have these bad boys going into S tier, of course. I would chug so many of these things that they'd give me diarrhea. Well, uh, that and fruit barrels. Joe, please tell us more about what makes you get diarrhea. I'm sure our audience would love to hear that. Well, you see, nope. what is up, gang? It is your presidential trio back at it again. And this time around, we're making a seafood tier list and freaking frail. And Donald thought it would be hilarious for old Joe to get the most stupid list of them all. Like most of these animals aren't even cooked, man. Like there's an alive catfish on the first slide and a freaking jellyfish on here. Who the heck is eating jellyfish? I've been dishonored with this choice of a tier list. Come on, Joe, you know we chose you because you have some good takes when you wanna have good takes. Plus it was your turn and we already knew you would complain. I told our editor Frail to make this list like that just so you can get screwed over. The people want Donald versus animals and we are focusing our resources on that. It's not my fault you got left over with the booty tier list. Well, joke's on you because aside from the pictures on this tier list, I'm actually pretty big on seafood and like them when it's cooked, unless it's sushi, I guess. But I guess I will start this list for our precious viewers and all the big Joe heads out there. Uh, what and who are the Joe heads? Well, as the name implies, you idiot, they are fans of the Joe army and they worship me. Kind of like a cult the more you think about it, but I do these tier lists for them. Anyways, up first we got catfish, and despite this picture of a very much so alive catfish looking mighty unappetizing, I have to be the first to say that fried catfish bangs, and I am a pretty big fan of it. I think all in all I will have to give it a solid A tier. I think most people like catfish, so this is a pretty safe bet. Yeah, I can see catfish going that high, but I can also see it going higher or lower. What kind of weenie-ass willy-nilly answer is that, Barack? The biggest non-answer ever if you say, yeah, I can see that, but I can also see it being higher or lower. Stop pandering to the damn audience, Barack, and put a real opinion. Fine, I like where it's at exactly, because catfish is good, but not the best on this list. There we go, Barry. That wasn't so hard, was it? Anyways, up next we got uh, what I presume to be our clams. 
Honestly, I think a solid B is in order for this one, but if you cook enough of these in butter, I won't be able to tell you the difference. But the same cannot be said for our next entry, which is crabs. Now, I don't want to hear no, oh, crabs are overrated talk in the comments because I love crabs. I am a crab man and I even love the imitation crab as well. This is an immediate S tier for me and I really have a hankering for some soft shell crab. I keep seeing people eat soft shell crab by cooking it in the air fryer and then just devouring that little dude hole, like with the shell and all. Well, no shit, Joe, it's a soft shell crab for a reason. Just because it's a soft shell doesn't mean the first thought is, oh man, I should eat this with the shell and all. Like, what the heck are you talking about? But enough of that, because we are moving to our next S tier, and that is crawfish. And get me a seafood boil with these bad boys in there, and I will practically sign whatever bill you want into existence. These bad boys are God's gift to humanity, and quite honestly, most shellfish are freaking amazing. Boy, it must suck to be allergic to these things, but honestly, even if I was allergic, I would just carry that thang on me and eat at a seafood place. What the hell are you talking about? What is that thang you're talking about? The EpiPen thingamabobber. I would eat as much as I could like a speed run of it, and then once the throat was closed up to the point where I couldn't breathe, boom, I would inject myself and be good to go. But honestly, if all people get are rashes or hives from seafood, the Joster only has one thing to say to you. Do not let your body tell you what you can't or can do. Always defy the odds and carry on. I don't know if that's good advice. Nah, I heavily smell him on that. The doctor said I was morbidly obese, and I turned and looked at him and said, I already know I am morbidly obese. He was stupefied at the thought of my superior brain power and tried telling me to stop eating KFC. Jesus Christ. Donald, you madman, you sure showed that stupid idiot doctor. I swear some of them are fake news. I got told I was suffering from Alzheimer and I just shook my head and laughed at him. But yeah, I swear some of them are fake news. I got told I was suffering from Alzheimer and I just shook my head and laughed at him. Uh, Joe, you do remember that we are currently doing a tier list, right? You just repeated yourself. A tier what now? Oh, snap, crackle, pop. There's some squid on our screen with a tier list. Man, whoever was making this so far was cooking, but it's time for the Joester to take over. And I have squid going into B tier. It's all right, but I am not about to throw it back for some squid. The only squid I fuck with is squid game. You guys smell me? But anyways, after that, we got octopus or squid tentacles. Listen, I couldn't tell you what that is, but either way, it's a B tier as well. Joe, I thought you were a freaking seafood expert. That's why we gave you this tier list to do. Maybe a self-proclaimed expert, but I do love seafood. My bad, I don't know the difference between octopus and squid tentacle. Also, this list isn't freaking labeled, and half the stuff on here is alive. What do you want me to do about that Barack? You want me to go back in time and label this list? You want me to prepare every single dish on here and then take pictures of each one for our tier list? Shit, I may as well go out on a fishing boat and catch all of these before cooking them right. Okay, fine, I get it. I am sorry, please go on with the list. That's what I thought anyways. After that, we got snails. And last time I checked, I'm not a Frenchie, so I am placing this into C tier. Snails aren't as gross as you'd think, but still not amazing. Then after that, we got a freaking joke of a food that goes into D tier immediately, and that is a jellyfish. Like, can you honestly even eat these? Isn't it all just membrane? And like, even if you were to indulge in some jellyfish, it would be like six centimeters of meat to enjoy. Hey, Donald, that should be your catchphrase. Shut the hell up, Sleepy Joe. That's why you're not doing the animal fight tier list, and I am. I wouldn't want to make that anyways. I love animals, and I love to eat them. Moving on past that, we got shrimp, and I have to give this an S tier. I am a shrimp guy and I love eating them in almost any way prepared. I think I would prefer them to be fried and just have some surf and turf. But following that we got lobsters and you all already know where this is going. Straight to S tier, because even though I admit it is overrated, I still have to say that in this pure seafood tier list, it belongs all the way up in S lobster rolls go absolutely crazy and even just normal lobster with tons of butter will make any man shed tears of joy. That is, of course, if you're not allergic. I want them to die for lobster. I know I would. Following that, we then got mussels, and I'm actually a pretty big fan of mussels. I'm a pretty big fan of mussels and their overall flavor slash texture. I think an A tier is good for this, but then up next, we got a whole ass octopus. And again, I don't think it is appetizing at all to have the very much so alive animal for the picture, and not to mention it's an underwater picture. So already in my mind, I got this vivid image of an octopus swimming happily in the water, and that's what's going to be going in my mouth to eat. 
I'll still give it as B tier because I swear I have had octopus before and it actually kind of slapped. I can't even lie to you guys. Some octopus ceviche kind of goes hard and I would recommend seafood lovers to try it. But before I hear any other comments, I'm actually going to need you all to try our next entry after because we have smoked oysters and this immediately goes into A tier. The reason for such a high rating is because I have recently seen a lot of TikTok videos and they recommended some smoked oysters from a can and some homemade garlic bread. And oh boy, it's a combo that will make you want some more and more. I think for that alone, it deserves a solid A tier for being that delicious. Way to go on a long ass rant about oysters and octopuses, Joe. I was about to shit on you for your opinions, but like I keep saying in other videos, for some odd and mysterious reason, you choose to have good takes whenever you make tier lists. But when it comes to me and Barack, you always have these abhorrent and rancid takes on our lists. What? Me? No way. I guarantee you that if either me or Barry were doing this tier list, you would be jumping for joy at the thought of eating some jellyfish. Nah, it's all in your head, man. I always have the same takes, no matter who is doing what tier list. Anyways, enough of your blasphemy, and let's move on to our next entry, which is salmon. And of course, this is an obvious S tier. This is like a God tier food in any tier list, I feel like. It's a goddamn superfood, and I will enjoy any type of salmon that is prepared in any type of way. And uh, up next, we got what I think are sardines. And now, while I love sardines from a can in tomato sauce, I uh, just cannot place it that high and will be giving it a C tier. Yeah, I don't really mess with sardines either, but they're not awful. Like some people will act like they just ate out of grandma's booty hole when they have some sardines. That is gross, dude. Don't bring up grandmothers in that context. Have some more shame, Barack. After that, we got scallops, and I like me some good scallops, and believe it merits a solid B tier. It is no smoked oysters, that's for sure, but still good. Then after we got prawns, I believe, or maybe the one before was prawns, and this is shrimp. Listen, I honestly am not quite sure, but it really does not matter because they are both ranked as an S tier in my eyes. Wow, why the hell did we even allow you to make this when you don't even know the difference? Listen, man, I chose to do this one out of the kindness in my own heart. I am sorry I can't tell you the difference, but like, what do you want me to do? Like, what the hell is that next thing? Another freaking squid slash octopus. This is a C tier, I don't care anymore. And then after that is some canned food. What the hell is that? I don't care, this is a C tier too, because apparently it's too hard to just label and prepare the foods for old Joe. I'm gonna sleep. Wow, uh, what now? Well, we could be nice people and go apologize to Crybaby Joe and tell him that we will try to do better next time because we care about him as a person. Or we can announce that Sunday, 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 we will hold the Donald versus Animals list this Sunday. Amazing plug for our upcoming video. I am glad someone said it because that video is going to pop off. But uh, aside from that, I am guessing we're not apologizing to Joe, right? No shit. What is up, gang? We are back with another tier list, and this time around we are going to do a chicken wing tier list, and we can't lie to you all. We could not come up with a lot of wing places, so we are going to work with what we got, but I'm sure all of you in the comments can tell us what we should have added or where you personally would rank these things. Also, everyone, I just want to assure you all that I made sure that Barry did this tier list, because even though I have the most refined palate out of everyone here, we all know why Barack is the chicken expert. Really now? Tell us what exactly tipped you off on the fact that I love chicken. Well, uh, to put it quite simply, you told me one time. Yeah, I actually probably did, to be honest. And because of something else. What was that? Nothing at all. You guys are about to make me snooze. Can we please get on to our precious chicken wing tier list? Because I need to see my precious little Caesar's wings get the respect they finally deserve for being the most elite of the elite wings to ever be made in human existence, really. Let me just tell you right now, Joe, I would rather get JFK'd on national television in front of my whole family and loved ones than ever allow myself to place little Caesar's wings in S tier. Well, keep up this attitude and we might turn that into a reality. Is that a threat, Joey? It's not, not a threat. It could merely be a goof and gaff. Or it could be the reason why you're six feet under Barack. Let's play our cards right. Joe, a threat from you is like having Lizzo say she can beat you in a race. If I'm being quite frank here, Joey, I am like in no way at all threatened by the likes of you, nor will I ever be for the entirety of my life. Yeah, I have to fully agree with Donald here, Joey. A threat from you is like someone pointing a bubble gun at me. Like, what are you gonna do? Tickle me to death? Hey man, don't underestimate the power of tickling another grown man for so long that he either soils himself or he starts crying because he legitimately cannot breathe 
and has his life flash before his eyes and starts to wonder where it all went wrong. Like was it during his teenage years when he had an encounter with another male his own age and realized that he was indeed super straight? Was it when he kept getting high and kept buying OnlyFans content until eventually his credit card was maxed out and he had to explain why to his wife? Or was it when his son mugged him to buy cocaine and take a trip to Mexico like around three years back? That person who got tickled almost to death knows. That's who knows. Uh, that is a lot to unpack, and I am more than 500% sure that you are talking about yourself, Joe. But that is neither here nor there because we are not your therapists. So instead of trauma dumping all this knowledge of your personal life onto us, why don't you instead just get a session with your local therapist and talk it out? Anyways, that aside, let's finally please, for the love of all things holy, get to this list. And up first, we got Papa John's Pizza, and their wings are pretty solid. Like, I know that isn't their main thing, so I give them more of a pass. But I personally think out of all the pizza joints that Papa John's has the best wings, and I believe it is deserving of a B tier, in all honesty. The Don is quite pleased with this rating. I always make sure to get some wings whenever I get pizza in general. And I have to agree that Papa John's has the best wings, but I don't think it's running away with the award, to be honest. I think at the end of the day, it's all on personal preference, unless you're talking about Little Caesar's wings. With that comment right there, you just got added to my list, buddy. Oh no, I got added to the big bad list. No one is scared of your stupid list, Joe. But anyways, up next we got Domino's, and I'm feeling, hmm, I think uh, another B is in order for this, because Domino's wings are not bad at all. And like Donald said, I love to get some wings alongside my pizza. But if I had to choose one, I'd still have Papa John's over Domino's. That's not a hot take at all. Yeah. But this next one might be a bit of a hot one because up next we got Applebee's and I just don't know, but their super cheap margaritas and their bottomless wings make me sick every time. Like, don't get me wrong, paying 13 bucks for all you can eat wings is a steal of a deal. And if you combine that with the $1 margaritas, well, uh, you got yourself quite the banger on your hands. Every time I've done this though, I get super sick, but the actual flavor of the wings is not bad at all. Like I can eat them. And if I get an unlimited amount, then who am I to complain about the quality of said wings? I just wonder what type of meat they're using to be able to accomplish such a deal. Like what if I'm munching on some mystery meat? But either way, like I said, the price is worth the mystery meat, so I have to give it a solid C tier, I think. Like I would rather have most other wings, but Jesus, man, if you have that bottomless wing deal going on, you just gotta try it once. It's like getting gas station taquitos, like it's so gross, but it's a yummy and deplorable type of gross. Oh, believe me, the Joe dog knows about the yummy, gross stuff, except to someone like me, it's not gross at all. I'll eat all the bottomless wings I want, even if it's ostrich meat. Give me that with some foot-long glizzies from Sonic, and we are freaking set. That is absolutely atrocious, Joe. As for what you said, Barry, I can see the allure of bottomless wings, so I won't judge at all especially for that freaking price, but I think Applebee's is a bit gross. Like, not even their food necessarily, but whenever you tell someone you're going to Applebee's, they give you a look. Like a disgusted look, as if you told them you were about to go eat some resident evil-ass food. But if you ask me, well, $1 margaritas and $13 bottomless wings is enough to merit an A tier. Yeah, but it's a limited time deal, so I can't really put that up higher than a C because on pure flavor alone, it belongs there, but anyways. Up next, we got Buffalo Wild Wings, and I think an A tier is in order for this one. I appreciate the taste of their wings, and had I not have had the other wings on this tier list, it might have gotten an S tier from me. I used to love their traditional Tuesday deal and would order so many wings and beer during that time and just fill myself up. Their wings aren't gross, and they have a decent bit of variety when it comes to their flavors, so I like this placement for them. I just like the fact I can eat and drink with the boys and also be able to catch a game on their TVs. If you ask me, I uh, think they have too many freaking TVs in the building. Like, what the heck is up with that? Also, they only have sports and no freaking eSports. Joe, you're the only one who thinks that's a problem. But if it bothers you so much, why don't you go open your own restaurant? Anyways, up next we got Popeyes, and I love their wings as well. I think this is not a surprise at all to anyone when I say Popeyes has good wings, because they have amazing chicken in general. I'm gonna have this going into A tier, alongside Buffalo Wild Wings. Doesn't surprise me that you of all people would have it so high considering you twerk for Popeyes in our other tier lists. Okay, I did twerk for Popeyes, don't get me wrong. 
but you're acting as if my butt was fluttering like a damn butterfly when I ranked this high. Like goddamn Donald, you do realize you made the other two chicken-related tier lists, right? Wait, I did? Looking like Joe there with the way you forget, but yeah. Anyways, we got our next entry, and that is Hooters. And I have them as our first S tier on this list. And before you and Joe say anything, I want to clarify that it is not because of the women, but rather because of the quality of their food. Now, nah, I'm going to keep it a buck with everyone and say that if Hooters did not have girls in those skimpy outfits, well, then I'd probably be eating wings from Little Caesars exclusively. On God, Joe, those Hooters girls really get it done, and that establishment more than deserves the S tier. Hell, I'd give it an S plus tier. OK, that's enough, you two. I knew you guys were going to take it there, but I actually just enjoy the flavor and texture of their actual wings and nothing more. But I guess to you two, that doesn't matter. Thankfully for our next entry, we have nothing that'll deter you from giving it an actual ranking based on the food because Wingstop has nothing else going on. They give out some food and that's it. No need for all the extra stuff. And honestly, I love them for it. I am giving Wingstop a solid S tier as well because their quality in wings are unmatched. I will actually twerk for some voodoo fries too. Like they are so freaking spicy, but it is so worth. And the spicy Korean Q is the best possible flavor for a sauce that I can ever imagine. Like it is my go-to sauce whenever I got to Wingstop. Wingstop is all right, but it has no chicks and skimpy little outfits. For once, I have to agree with Joe. Yeah, it's a true S tier in my eyes and is my favorite out of the whole list. The comment section can fight me on it, but I am a Wingstop ride or die. But anyways, up next we got another pizza joint, and that is Pizza Hut. Actually, our last two are pizza places, but we all know where Little Caesars is going. Straight to S tier. Yeah. Uh, we'll see, but anyways, the rating I'll give Pizza Hut will probably be another B tier. Like, I have no hate for these pizza places, and genuinely like their wings a decent bit. As long as they aren't shitty booty places like Little Caesars, then we will be set. Super funny, Barack, but get to the S tier for Little Caesars, please. Joe, I'm not really that sorry, but for our last place, we have Little Caesars. And much like I have alluded to this whole time, I will not be placing this that high. Fine, I guess I can live with an A tier rating. I will be placing Little Caesars pizza into D tier for their terrible, terrible wings that have a worse texture than the McRib and just feel like they've been doused in Frank's red hot sauce. Ooh, that is rough for Joey, but Barack has a point here. I don't think I have ever had worse wings than whatever monstrosity comes out of Little Caesar's wing making process. I'd rather lick some boots or chew on rocks covered in Frank's red hot than ever eat another Little Caesar's wing again in my whole entire life. And Joey, you know that when I say something, you know it has to be bad. See, Joey, it's uh, not just me, and I'm sure that everyone in the comments is going to agree as well. Please just open your eyes to the truth. Oh, I'll open my eyes, all right. You guys better skedaddle. Hey, everyone, it's your favorite president here, Barry Barack Obama. I am joined by Joey and Donald on our soda tier list right here, and I'm sure we're going to have a great time. Barack, I am obviously their favorite president, but anyways, what do you mean we're going to have a great time? Don't you mean we're going to have a blast? Oh, I get it. It's because Barack loves to blow. Yes, Joey, we all get it. Haha, -ha, what a funny and original joke, Donald. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this list started. And up first, we got 7-Up. How are we feeling about this gang of Lang? Heads up, 7-Up is an elite game, so I think this should be maybe above mid. Joey, we're talking about soda, you idiot. But yeah, I'd say B tier would be perfect for it because it's one of the better citrus sodas, but not amazing. Like, I wouldn't send someone to an internment camp if they handed this to me instead of my tried and true Mountain Dew or Sprite. Yeah, I'm feeling that Donnie, a solid B tier for this would be good. Moving on, we got Bang's Root Beer, but we're going to pretend it's a Mug Root Beer. I personally have that going into A tier. Like you can never go wrong with some root beer because it always bangs. Ooh, that and cream soda goes hard, can't even lie. Joe, you are so old, you may as well crumble into dust. Cream soda? Was that the only thing they had in the prehistoric times and that's why you twerk for that? Donald, you will make Joe angry. And trust me, you wouldn't like Joe when he's angry. Don't talk in third person, Joe. It freaks me out and makes me think you're up to no good. Anyways, we got another solid entry and that is Canada Dry Ginger Ale. That is super solid and I think the diet version of that drink is legit. One of the best diet drinks. 
I hate that it has Canada in the front, but I must agree it is elite, not as elite as this upcoming drink we have here. Now, Barry, how are you going to do this? Because the list is based on overall flavor. And even though Diet Cokes are quite literally the best diet soda ever made, we all know it isn't much when compared to the real thing, but I believe we still got to give it credit. Still can't believe they let him put a Diet Coke button in the White House, but they refused to put an ice cream button for me. Joey ice cream is probably messier to transport to the Oval Office. And God, the stains it would get from you dropping ice cream would piss me off. But yeah, Donald, I am with you, don't worry. I think it deserves merit for being one of the best diets and we'll place it into C tier. It isn't as good as normal Coke, but for a diet drink, it is indeed elite. Huge W for you, Barack. I'll gift you some explosives for this massive W you gave everyone. Hilarious, really funny guys. Please do more jokes anyways. Up next, we got Sierra Mist, and this is straight garbage. So bad, in fact, that they completely ditched their old name and rebranded to Starry, and no one still cares. Just for taking L after L, I have to place them in D tier for how bad they handled the whole brand and the flavor is whatever. I would rather have so many other drinks, like it's so forgettable, and I feel like that's worse than being bad. While we're speaking of bad drinks, let's go ahead and knock out Diet Pepsi from this list, and I am putting it in C tier. It is worse than Diet Coke, but still pretty good for a diet drink can't even lie. I honestly can't tell the difference between Diet Pepsi and Coke, if I'm being honest. Oh my God, Joe, it is so obvious, but of course some smooth brain rock chewer like yourself wouldn't be able to tell. Now let's settle down because I have a pretty controversial take coming up and that it's the fact I'm putting Dr. Pepper in C tier. It is pretty mid and I feel like people say you either like Dr. Pepper or you don't and I don't hate it or love it. It's kind of just there and I would rather have most other sodas but I'll drink it if it's there. I can't say the same for Pineapple Fanta because that is indeed a banger and belongs in A tier. I don't get the Dr. Pepper hate to be honest. It's a good drink and should go in B for bussin. Ignore him, Barack. I also applaud the W move in putting Pineapple Fanta up in A tier. I'm assuming you're putting Grape Fanta up there with your fascination with grape flavored things. Uh, I never said I loved grape flavored things and I actually have that going into B tier now that you mention. What exactly made you think that I of all people would love grape? Ooh, you're gonna get a spanking now, Donnie. Why, uh, I just, you see, I just really love grape flavored things and I assumed you and me had similar taste buds. Nothing involving what you looked like made me think you liked grape flavored things. Never said it was because of how I looked like Jesus Donald. Ignoring that, I have orange Fanta going into A tier as it is a classic Fanta flavored that I believe all enjoy. Up next, however, we have our first S tier and that is Mountain Dew. All three of us love it so much we made a freaking tier list revolving around the different flavors of Mountain Dew. Everyone should go watch that it was a banger video and we refuse to listen to any of the Code Red hate. The tier list is absolute and is the best Mountain Dew one ever made. I wish I can take a shower in Mountain Dew and leave myself all sticky and yummy. What the hell is wrong with you? Let's just move on and go to our next entry, which is Coke. And let's all be honest, you all know where this is going and it is a straight up S tier soda, no ifs, ands, or buts. The only one I can see everyone questioning me on is this next one as I am putting Pepsi in S tier as well. I am a Pepsi believer and I genuinely like both Coke and Pepsi. I don't know why people like to create this divide. You know what, Barry? I'm a Coke diehard, but I'll admit it. When the function has no Coca-Cola, I ask for a Pepsi instead. They're both really good in my opinion, unless we talk about the diet versions. I like Pepsi more, to be honest. I like how blue the can is. I don't know why you would even care about the color, but I am glad Donald is in agreement with me. Up next, I am putting Sunkissed in A tier. I feel like every time I have Sunkiss soda, I am never disappointed. It's always enjoyable and I can't really complain about it. Now what about this next one, Barry? I swear Sprite belongs in S tier and that's not even talking about McDonald's Sprite because that shit hits different. It may even be the best soda in the world if it came strictly from McDonald's. Don't worry, Donnie, I got Sprite going into S tier and if McDonald's Sprite were in this, I'd have that going in God tier. McDonald's Sprite hits me like a truck. I swear they somehow carbonate that way more than it should be, and it makes my throat hurt and my eyes water so much when I swallow it, but I take it nice and good down my throat. You what the hell? Pause. What is going on, gang? We are back with a very cool tier list, in my opinion, because we have ourselves a T tier list, and this time around, I am making it because we all know how Donald feels about British people, and then you have Joe over here who only consumes milk products, and if he doesn't do that, he'll instead drink some weird and nasty stuff.
Okay, first of all, there's nothing weird and nasty about milk, and what is weird and nasty about Gatorade and soda? Because guess what? The Joe dog freaking loves his Gatorade and sodas alongside his milk, and sometimes I drink them all at the same time. I alternate between sips, and let me tell you that it brews a yummy potion in my tummy. Okay, let me stop you there, Joe, because you making a cauldron of disgusting liquids in your stomach is absolutely asinine. It probably looks like a witch's cauldron in there, but there's nothing wrong with Gatorade, but it's the way you try to normalize hot dog water Gatorade that gets everyone messed up. And what do you mean, Barack? I personally love British people, and I will give beans on toast a try because that honestly looks like it bangs. Sure, they have a classist society. You will never be upper class unless you're born into it. They're also pessimistic, sarcastic, and just generally have a cynical outlook on life. Just look at Gordon Ramsay and how much he hates absolutely everyone, and it feels like he dreads being kind. See us Americans at a tailgate for a football game. I can ask a dude to hammer a beer in front of me just for fun, and he will do it while exclaiming a victory belch. But if I were to do something similar and give someone a drink in a British bar, He'd look at me funny and call me a bell end and tell me to bloody piss off. But their bangers and mash does look quite exquisite and I respect them for their food because people honestly don't give the Brits enough credit for their cuisine. I personally think British people are cool. Have you guys ever seen the in-betweeners or peep show? I love those two British comedies and I agree that their food does indeed look banging. Okay, it is clearly shown that you two are unfit for this tier list. And again, Brits are not the only tea drinkers in the world. We got some Asian countries that mess with tea heavily, and why can't us Americans enjoy tea as well? Unless you douse my shit in sugar and basically turn it into juice, I'm afraid I will not be drinking tea. Who the hell wants a bitter drink? Well, I do, and before you guys say anything, it is not because Michelle forces me to drink unsweetened drinks. I just so happen to enjoy tea. It's totally because of Michelle. Oh, 100%. Whatever, let's go ahead and get started with this list because up first we got two back-to-back -back D tiers, in my opinion, and that is both the pure tea and the herbal rooibos taste like absolute dog water. I cannot stand the taste of pure tea because it just tastes earthy like wild mushrooms and smells like the forest. And if I want a nice tea in the morning to enjoy alongside some avocado toast, this is simply not it. And then you got the herbal rooibos tasting like smoky, sweet, woody, grassy, vanilla, floral. Like, none of that sounds appetizing to me in the slightest and makes me feel like I might as well make some tea out of mulch. Isn't that simply how all tea tastes like? Like, how the hell can you taste the difference between that and something like Earl Grey tea? Enough with the trolling Donald because you know damn well you can taste the difference. Even if you add your boatload of honey to the teas, you'd be able to feel the difference in flavor. Do you know what type of tea I'm interested in? You know how cocaine comes from a plant? Couldn't you make some cocaine tea with those plants? Now that sounds like an absolute banger of a tea. Joe, do not promote the use of that on our channel. Like, I know you made a tier list revolving around substances, but I don't want to hear it on my tea tier list. I don't even know if that will do anything because I'm not sure about the whole process behind making that. Why don't you go ask Hunter about that instead? Anyways, after those two bad ones, we got some herbal chamomile, and this is an honest to God S tier. I always have some when I'm sick, and this is like a miracle tea because it can help with loads of things like inflammation, immune system support, stomach issues, and a whole lot more. The flavor of chamomile is great too, which only adds more support for it being an S tier. Why don't you just go to a damn doctor if you feel sick at all? Dude, I refuse to pay a ton of money to get checked at because my stomach happens to hurt a ton that day. It's like this one time I dislocated a finger and someone near me threatened to call the ambulance on me and I just popped that sucker back in because I refused to pay over a grand just to have a ride to the hospital. I can be red screened and on my last goddamn legs and still would rather drive to the hospital myself if I need to. I don't know about that one. Motherfucker like me just pays for it because I can, they say more money, more problems. But as a matter of fact, it is quite the opposite. Oh, I'm sure someone like you does not have to worry about the hospital bills. I just sleep off whatever ailment I have. It seems to work out pretty well in my opinion. And of course, there is Joe's dumb comment. Anyways, after that, we got black Earl Grey tea, and this is yet another S tier in my book. The flavor profiles on this are absolutely immaculate, and this with a nice breakfast is a banger in my books. It's a great way to start off your morning and is better than coffee, in my opinion, because it prevents that coffee breath that a lot of people have in the morning. Tell me about it. 
Whenever Joe says hi to me in the morning, that shit is like the Sunday breath from SpongeBob. It is so bad that I can actually see the stink clouds emitting from his mouth. Well, you don't have to go that far. I get it's a joke, but that's a bit excessive. I have feelings too, guys. No, Joe. He is being for real. And having smelled your breath in the morning before, I can definitely assure you that I'd rather smell the inside of an overweight person's skid mark tidy whiteys after they just had the most grueling workout session of their life than smell your breath after waking up. Okay, ow, this is noted. I'll up the teeth brushing to once a week from now on. God help us all. Anyways, after that, we got English breakfast tea, and this is also a certified banger, but before we have all of British audience jump for joy at this, I want to give them the harsh reality that I do indeed like it, but I feel like this only merits an A tier. You can all argue in the comments, but I stand firm on this decision. Yeah, here in America, the only tea we like is a good old cup of freedom. Okay, that's not it either, but I appreciate your enthusiasm on my decision, Donald. After that, we got some herbal hibiscus, and this has got some flavor packing in it. I know this helps with its antioxidants and reduces blood pressure. But I'm talking about the flavor alone, and hibiscus is underrated as hell. Have you guys ever tried hibiscus drink, too? Like, I go to my taco place, and they got this red punch. And apparently, it is hibiscus. And that is when I open my eyes to how yummy this plant can be and is an absolute A tier in my book. I have tried that actually. I am a connoisseur of Mexican delights and they got it right with all the sugar they put in those drinks. Okay, well it doesn't need that much sugar to be good, but whatever. After that we got yet another banger and that is jasmine tea because I have this deliciousness going straight into S tier. Any tea lover will tell you that jasmine tea is one of their favorites and if they say otherwise, then they are not real tea lovers. Well, I frankly don't really like jasmine tea. Well, that's because you're not a tea lover, Joe. You're a kitty lover. Okay, that's enough with those type of jokes. You two cracked two jokes like that in our Nesquik tier list, and I was not a fan of those jokes. Okay, I'll change the joke style here. How about this one? What did one lesbian vampire say to the other? Hmm, I don't know. What did they say, Donald? See you next month. Okay, that one is kind of funny, but still gross as hell. Moving on past that, we got some black lapsang, and this one is pretty all right. I don't have a super strong opinion on it, but I still think it merits a B tier. The same cannot be said about black chai because I have that going into S tier, and I may as well rank our next one too because I got green matcha also going into S tier. These two are some absolute bangers. I'm sorry, but every time I hear matcha, I think of Japanese people, and whenever I think of that, I think of that one South Park episode where they have the Japanese and Chinese guy in the show do an assembly for the school. Frail, you're gonna have to roll that clip because the behind the scenes for that episode was absolutely amazing. Today we have a special assembly, okay, to learn about, we're gonna learn about the diversity of Asian people. This part okay, coming up is hilarious. Mr. Liu Kim and Mr. Junichi Nakayama. Jesus Christ. Did you know that China and Japan are actually a different countries? Oh, really? Wow, that is so stupidly offensive. I cannot put into words how much that probably offended people. Oh, really? God damn it, Joe. Now you're forever clipped saying that. Anyways, up next we got some oolong tea. And yet again, this is another W in my book because I am a fan of some good oolong tea. I'm thinking an A tier is in order for this one. And unfortunately for us, I think this is the last bit of good tea we'll have because everything I see right now that's left on the list are kind of some stinkers. Now as a non-tea drinker, I wanna know what the hell is the difference between these last set of teas and the ones you had going before it? Well, really it doesn't start till after Orange Pico because I have that going into B tier and actually uh, I have the green sencha going there with it. I really am just hating on the white tea to be honest and it still is better than the things in D tier. So it really is just a pretty mid tea and I have that going into C tier. To be honest, I just can't get over the fact that we played that clip in our video. Don't worry, Barack, I'll end it off with a tried and true Joe dog banger of a joke that won't offend anyone. Him, last Christmas we bought a fake Christmas tree and the guy behind the counter said, are you gonna put it up yourself? And I said, don't be disgusting. I'm gonna put it in the living room, not up myself. Yeah, uh, I think I like the offensive jokes more. What is up, gang? We are back again with another tier list. 
And this time, we are going to be doing a Thanksgiving meal tier list. And as the food expert with the taste buds of a living deity, I have decided to task myself with this tier list because I know Barack and Joey would simply not be up to the task of handling something as good as a Thanksgiving food tier list. You're just upset that I happen to love Brussels sprouts and squash. You know what, Joe? He has an excellent reason for not letting you make this list then. Who the hell enjoys squash? Just wait till the veggie defenders come out in full force in our comments section and try to convince us that we should indulge in the squash instead of having ham or some cornbread. But enough of Joe's ramblings, and let's instead get on with this absolutely delicious tier list. And up first, we got the tried and true Thanksgiving turkey, and this is a classic and a staple. Now, despite it being a staple, I do think turkey is somewhat mediocre, however. I think it is enhanced a great deal by both cranberry sauce and gravy. It all depends on which one you like, but turkey is a very healthy meat and tastes amazingly with either sauce. So for those reasons alone, I have to start off our list with turkey in A tier. And if you're asking me what type of guy I am, gravy or cranberry, my simple answer is that I love them both. And I'll have one dish with cranberry and the other with gravy, because that's the type of guy I am. Holy W here, Donald. I personally would have put it in S tier because I almost never have turkey unless it's turkey ham. And whenever I have it during Thanksgiving, it slaps with when I put a ton of gravy over it. I don't mind cranberry sauce and have actually warmed up to it over the years, but I started off as a hard hater at first. Yeah, turkey is all right, but guys, cranberry sauce on ham is where it is at. Hold on now, he might be cooking here, but we're not even on that part of the list, Joey. Let's save the cranberry and ham talk for when we get one of them. But anyways, up next we got pumpkin pie, and I hate to be that guy, but uh, I don't really have pumpkin pie or even apple pies during Thanksgiving. Like, we tend to just have cornbread or the wine helps wash down all the grease, so I can't really talk about it with the best judgment. But either way, I imagine that having either of these two freshly baked right in front of you must slap a bit after a hefty meal. I think I'll place them both into B tier, but again, I can honestly do without either during Thanksgiving. What I can't do without is the next entry, which is biscuits. And goddamn, some fresh biscuits out of the oven are a must have. And I believe it to be an A tier because you need these or dinner rolls during a Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, yeah, I am sure that everyone loves to hear about the boring pie and biscuit talk. But let's get on to our next two juicy contenders for S tier and that is Brussels sprouts and squash. Contender for S tier on whose list? Not on mine, that's for sure, because I have both of these atrocities going into D tier. So have fun with that placement, Joe. If I were next to you, I'd shiv the hell out of you for committing this crime against Joe Kind. I'd do it again if I could, Joe. That's how much I hate these two. But I definitely can't say the same for the next entry because I have jellied cranberry going into A tier. I'd prefer homemade cranberry sauce, but jellied cranberry from a can still slaps and you can just smear it onto anything you want to smear it on and because of its easy access i still have to give it an a tier because of that then after we have our first s tier and i better not hear none of you fuckers say anything against green bean casserole because this shit slaps i would allow myself to be crucified like jesus christ of nazareth for green bean casserole that's just how much i love this dish being crucified for food seems a bit extreme but i get the gist of what you mean the gist I said I would basically die a painful death for this. What do you mean a gist? Was I not clear enough? Okay, man, I get it. You are a huge fan of green bean casserole, and honestly, you being such a huge advocate and basically doing the splits for this dish is making me kind of like it less. Yeah, this dude is twerking on some dick for green bean casserole. All right, relax now, Joe. You took things a bit too far there, and now you ruined it. But yeah, I love green bean casserole. Moving on, we got cornbread. And I made it clear that I was a fan and I am placing cornbread straight into A tier because it's a nice side dish to have and much on after eating all the greasy stuff. I wouldn't die without it like with the green bean casserole, but I will give you a mean stank face if I come to eat at your household for Thanksgiving and you hit me with the, we have no cornbread. I don't have cornbread usually in my house. We usually just indulge ourselves in normal corn, thank you very much. None of this cornbread thingamabobber that you talk about. We have dinner rolls and biscuits if someone wants a baked treat. Joe, you sound super retarded. Hey, don't use that word unless you don't want to be monetized. Ugh, fine, Joe. You are an absurd, brainless, daft, deficient, dense, dim-witted, doofus, dopey, dull, foolish, half-baked, half-witted, short-sighted, simpleton, ridiculous person. Is that better, Barack? Much better. It's okay. I accept your apology, Donald. It wasn't a, uh, never mind. 
After all that, we have corn, and this is honestly kind of whatever for me. Like, I always have corn during barbecues and other events that it doesn't feel special during Thanksgiving, but I will still give it a B tier because it's still corn and corn bangs. Following that, we got another A tier, and that is cranberry sauce. I probably almost have this at an S tier, but consider it like almost there, like an A plus, if you will. I love spreading it all over my turkey and ham, and you all heard the amount of love I have for cranberry sauce when I was talking about jellied cranberry. I don't think I need to get into that again, but following that, we have creamed corn, and who the hell has creamed corn? I again don't have this for Thanksgiving, but it isn't awful. I think another B tier is in order for this as well. Dude, you are glazing the hell out of corn right now. First we got cornbread at A tier, and now we got corn and creamed corn going into B tier. I bet you throw corn more than me. Joe, phrase your words better for the love of Christ, and yes, we all enjoy corn here. Don't act like you're calling me out or something when you literally rated corn and S tier in our vegetable tier list. Wait, I did? Jesus Christ, Joey, you most definitely did. As a matter of fact, the thumbnail was a picture of you deep-throating a piece of corn. Ah, oh, well, would you look at that? I guess I have more similarities with Donald than what I previously thought. I guess you can say that, but I wouldn't go as far as to say that liking corn is a character trait, but I guess that's just me. After that, we got dinner rolls, and even though I have biscuits and cornbread down in A tier, I will be placing dinner rolls in S tier. Anything I put in S tier is a must have for my Thanksgiving meals. And believe me when I say dinner rolls are a must have at the table. So with that in mind, also know that I am placing our next two entries into S tier, and that is gravy and ham. Now I am a cranberry sauce man, but gravy has my goddamn heart, and I need it and gun to my head. If I had to choose, I'd choose gravy over cranberry sauce but I pray I am never put in that position in my whole life because I'd rather have both if I can. Then after that, we got what I honestly prefer over turkey, and that is ham. I think this one is self-explanatory because ham is amazing unless you're like Barack and can't have pork. What the hell? I can eat pork, dude. Wait, you're not Muslim. Dude, I am a Christian. Nah, bro, you definitely are lying to us with the name Barack Hussein Obama, but if you want to be condemned to hell because of your haram activities, then let it be. Wouldn't you also be going there since you're eating pork? Nah, but I am like actually a Christian, so it's fine. Anyways, up next we got two solid B tiers, and that is mac and cheese and some mashed potatoes. I like them both, but I don't think I would go crazy if I was missing either, especially because the bread replaces my carbs, and these two aren't really that needed. I'd still prefer mashed potatoes over mac and cheese because I can put gravy over one and not the other. Wait, you guys don't put gravy on your mac and cheese? Oh man, this is a real shocker to me. Next thing you'll tell me is that you guys don't put cranberry sauce on your mashed potatoes. Jesus Christ, Joe, I'm actually baffled that you have somewhat good takes on our other tier lists, but that's neither here nor there because we are so close to the finish line for this list. And up next, we got red wine. If you all listen to our alcohol tier list, you all know how I feel about red wine, and you all know how I cannot have a Thanksgiving dinner without some red wine, purely for aiding digestion and nothing more. It makes me feel refined and important when I have these alongside my grease-filled plate. And before you say anything, Joe, I want you to know that I have roasted veggies going into C tier, and there will be no arguments about it. Hey, man, I agree with you. I am not a huge fan unless we're talking Brussels sprouts or squash. You are a very odd old man, Joe. Anyways, up next, we got scalloped potatoes, and I like these a decent bit. Like, this is a solid A tier for me, and I think it's an excellent side dish that goes along well with the whole stuff your mouth till you're about to explode from food because we got yet another carb filled food but it's delicious so i forgive it then after that we got sparkling juice and this just a nice and pleasant thing to have during thanksgiving and i'm feeling an a tier for this juice i'm a fan of it and i love me some sparkling juice if i don't feel like drinking this list is looking pretty solid it's not like i was looking for your approval or anything but i'm afraid up next is where i will lose people because i think stuffing is super mid I have this going into C tier because I was never a fan of stuffing when I was younger, and even now I just think it's whatever. Like I can do with or without it, and I am not scared to voice that opinion anymore. I hope all my stuffing haters rise up with me. Oh, and to end the list, I got sweet potato casserole in B tier. Wow, way to pay zero attention to the sweet potato casserole and basically just ignore it just to get the list over with. But anyways, here's my joke. See, Donald. It's crazy that you don't like stuffing with the way you stuff your mouth full of food constantly. I don't really care about sweet potato casserole and I am more than sure the whole world feels the same way. And by the way, very funny joke in all Barack, 
but I'll have you know that I am all muscle and big bones. Oh, wait, guys, it's my turn for a funny and hilarious joke about Donald because I just had a brain blast. Okay, here goes. See, Donald, me personally, I am amazed you don't like stuffing with the amount of dick you stuff in your ass. What is up, gang? Today, we're going to be making another tier list. And this time around, we're going to be doing a sandwich place tier list. And I will not lie, it was hard as hell to think of all these sandwich places. Like, there aren't a lot of sandwich places, so if we missed one, please do let us know because it was tough finding or even thinking of some off the top of our head. I can tell because there's a freaking house on this tier list. What the heck is that about? Well, obviously, it's a sandwich from home and not from a shop. Again, it's a sandwich place tier list and not a sandwich shop tier list. Couldn't I make a sandwich at work or in the park? Would that then make it a sandwich place? Joe, don't start this again like when you kept yapping about having prime rib for breakfast during our breakfast food tier list. I am actually on Donald's side for this. Joe, please stop being so annoying. I'll pipe down, but just know that the Joe heads will not be pleased because you are silencing the truth speaker. Remember to question everything society throws at you and never believe anything the media says. Joe, the fake news bit is mine. Don't go stealing my ideas or I'm gonna have to go off on you on my social media platform. Acting like you don't do that already, I've seen your mean tweets. Yeah, you're right, I'll probably do it anyways after this list. Anyway, speaking of the list, let's actually please, for the love of Christ, get this started. Up first, we got Subway, and listen, I have very strong opinions on Subway, and they are not good ones. Like, if you're starving and have absolutely no other options, then I would understand. But like, going out of your way for some Subway is crazy. I ordered some like a month or two ago, and they gave me some soggy ass gross lettuce sandwich and had the nerve to charge me around 15 bucks for it. Like who the hell does Subway think they are charging absurd prices for the most mediocre food to ever exist? I ultimately give it a C tier for being the king of mid, and quite honestly, it just is not that good and I will proudly stand by it. I will admit though that they do have some banging cookies and I think that raises their grade higher than it honestly should be because the sandwiches are just not that good. Why are we giving it a better ranking for having good cookies? This is a sandwich tier list and not a cookie tier list. I don't care if their macadamia nut cookies are amazing. Joe, it's my list, so shut up. I will rank it a C tier and that is final. God, the nerve of that guy. But anyways, after that, we got sandwiches from home and you all already know these are banging. I'm still only going to give it a B tier because we all know that having a sandwich made for you is still superior. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but having someone else make a sandwich for you is just better because you don't have to expend any effort at all in making it. Like, the thought of getting up and lathering two pieces of bread and layering it with whatever I want just seems boring and tiresome. But when you go to a sandwich shop and you just see people assembling whatever the hell you ordered just feels great and enhances the flavor. Donald, that's just called being lazy as hell. And quite honestly, it really is not that hard to make a sandwich. Like what you just said was nothing earth shattering. Like you literally just complained about getting up and putting mayo on two slices of bread. After that, you just put cheese or whatever meat you want and maybe some spinach and boom, you're literally done. The process could be accomplished in under five minutes. Nah, there's some actual science behind the fact that sandwiches taste better when you aren't the one making them yourself. Like the same applies when you're at home and someone brings you a sandwich, like your brain releases endorphins that help with your happiness and gives you more dopamine. Are you for real right now? I didn't know that. Nah, I'm lying, but the fact that you trusted me immediately goes to show how easily the American people can be fooled and does not give me hope for people with low media literacy. If I say that I can poop gold, would you believe that too? Okay, those two are not the same at all. That is an unfair comparison. I would believe it if you pooped gold. That sounds cool. Joe, you piss me off so much. Anyways, moving on with our tier list, we got Jimmy John's, and I like Jimmy John's, but quite honestly, their sandwiches aren't quite up to snuff. I don't enjoy their freaky fast delivery because I would rather just pick up my food. I think a solid B tier is okay for them because they aren't doing anything extraordinary in the sandwich making field. But I will be the first to admit that if a gun were pointed at my head 10 times out of 10, I would be choosing Jimmy John's over Subway any day of the week because that is just how much I freaking despise Subway. I think I would rather eat a rubber shoe than ever to eat Subway again. Man, this Subway hate is real. What would you rather have, Donald, a McRib, or a sub from Subway? Hmm, uh, I honestly could not answer that question. And the fact that I can't actually is quite concerning. I think I'd leave it to a coin flip, but anyways, after that, we got Panera Bread, and I am also giving this a B tier. I also like their sandwiches, but again, it's nothing amazing, to be honest. 
like everything left in this list beats out Panera, and I don't think it is deserving of anything higher than a B. The Panera bread lover can crucify me, but I stand by my goddamn word. After that, though, we got a really good sandwich place, and I visit this place whenever I can, but the problem is that it is never near me. But whenever it's on the way, I make sure to get something, and that is Potbelly. I really like Potbelly, and maybe if I have had it more, it would go higher. But the few times that I've had it, I can tell you all that it has been great experiences every single time. I think this merits a solid A tier in my book. See, I disagree with this. I have not had Potbelly since an incident that occurred to me over three years ago. I was eating some Potbelly, and I went to watch this one Star Wars movie. I forgot which one, so don't ask me. Actually, uh, it may have been Rouge One, but either way, that doesn't matter because I don't know if I got a stomach virus or if Potbelly poisoned me, but I had severe stomach pain when watching the movie, and I had to shit so bad, but I did not want to miss, so what did old Joe do? I'll tell you what I did. I held it in with cold sweats, constantly coming and going whilst grabbing my tummy as if I were hanging on for my dear life, but it did not help one bit. Towards the end, I hit my breaking point and I had to erupt. My chocolate starfish could not hold back the incoming fudge wave that was coming, and I sprinted to the bathroom, but whilst I was running, I had little sharts along the way. And when I went to the bathroom stall, I examined the damage, and it was quite severe. My white undies had a nice caramel hue, and I had to abandon my precious cargo, and I smelled too much to return to the theater. But once I thought it was okay, I then suddenly fell to my knees in the parking lot and realized the sandwich had not finished its rampage in my inner sanctum, and I projectile vomited all over the grass and could not stop. I've never felt the presence of a higher being until that day because I was shown how utterly defenseless and human I was when I had both ends of my holes just evacuating as if they were on the plane during 9-11. I then had a very sad drive home, and honestly, I have not had pot belly since then. Dude, what the fuck? Jesus Christ, man, that is fucking hilarious. It actually made me like pot belly some more. But anyways, after that whole long fiasco, we got Jersey Mike subs, and I also really like this sub place. My favorite thing from here is the tuna sub because they just know how to make it here. So I am thinking we also place this place into A tier. After that, we got our first S tier, and that of course is Mr. Sub. And I hate giving it this high of a rating because it originated in Canada, but goddamn, if I don't love me some Mr. Sub, because this is one of the best places for some sandwiches, and they have some amazing freaking cheese fries here. They are absolutely to twerk for, and I am a frequent Mr. Sub visitor. Again, why are we rating stuff based on things other than their sandwiches? Because I'm the one making this list, and if you go to a place with variety, then it'll be good for the people who don't want to eat sandwiches. Following that amazing choice, we got another good sandwich place, and that is Schlotzky's. God, with a name like that, you'd think that it would run out of business, but surprisingly, they are thriving. And I will even say that they have some of the better sandwiches on this list. Like, out of all the A-tier selections, I personally would prefer Schlotzky's to everything else there. If you all have not gone to Schlotzky's yet, I would heavily recommend it. And they are also like all around the U.S., so you should be good on finding one nearby. W placement here. I'd maybe argue that it could go into S-tier because they're French dip sandwich because it has roast beef, two cheeses, caramelized onions, and it's all served on a sourdough bun. If that doesn't sound appetizing to you, then I don't know what will make your mouth water because I am a huge fan of roast beef. I'm a fan of roast beef, but uh, not the meat if you're catching what I'm throwing down. Some good old fashioned beef curtains, Joe? Oh man, you're a dirty, dirty dog. But yeah, it is good berry, but it stays in A tier because our next and final entry will be taking the coveted S tier spot. I love Firehouse subs and I love their hot subs so much. The sweet and spicy meatball sub is to die for. And if you're not in the mood for some meatballs, you can go ahead and order some spicy Cajun chicken all in your sub. And if you want to make some monstrosity unknown to man and just create the best sub you ever imagined, then you absolutely could do that. This place has had some of the best service every time I go, and they are even offering pulled pork sandwiches right now with coleslaw inside. And you all already know the Don fucks with some good coleslaw. So all in all, I would implore you all to go to this place whenever you're craving some sandwiches. Man, it sounds like you would jump on a grenade for this place. I respect your level of dedication to this place. I won't go as far as to say you're glazing because quite honestly, I feel like you have really good recommendations because as I always say, Donald, you're an elite eater and I will forever respect that about you. Okay, what the heck? So you're gonna sit here and praise Donald for that BS. 
But all of a sudden, when the Joe dog is a diehard fan of something, it's the end of the world. And Joe over here is the worst human being alive and should be crucified in front of a live studio and be streamed to millions worldwide. Exactly. I'm glad you get the memo, Joe. What is going on, gang? We're back with another tier list, and this time around, we're going to be doing the long-awaited nut tier list. Was this really a long-awaited list? I don't remember seeing a single soul beg for this in the comments. Barack has a point, but more importantly, Joe, are we talking about nuts or are we talking about nuts, if you catch my drift? Yeah, we're talking about nuts, but uh, I won't elaborate further on the type of nuts until we reach them on this list, that is. And speaking of, let's go ahead and rate our first nut, which is the good old almond. Who doesn't like these? People who are allergic to nuts. Frankly, I think people who are allergic would hate this list in general. Imagine being allergic to freaking nuts, man. Weak ass immune system, diatomaceous ass body, like nuts are just a plant and you're gonna sit here with a straight face and tell me that you're afraid of a goddamn plant. Next, you'll tell me that people are afraid of bananas or something because they're deathly allergic. Well, there are some people that are actually allergic to bananas, Donald. Oh my God, why are there so many softies out in the world? Listen, everyone, even if you're allergic to certain things, don't let that stop you from eating or drinking anything. If you're allergic to peanuts, shellfish, or hell, even some goddamn bananas just power through whatever it is that you're feeling, it'll be worth it in the end. What if their throat swells up to the point they can't breathe and they end up dying because they ate an Uncrustable? Barack, that is simply natural selection, but hey, if they were smart, they'd carry an EpiPen or something. Shit, wouldn't an inhaler work too? Either way, at least they die a warrior's death. Don't think eating yourself to death is a noble way to die. Speak for yourself, Barack. But that's enough allergy talk, because quite frankly, the Joester's quite tired about all this talk revolving it. Let's instead continue on with the list. And up next, we got peanuts. And this is the classic peanut that everyone knows and loves, and I am also giving this bad boy an A tier. I hate the shell and having to break them, but the taste is amazing. But that reminds me, uh, Barack, what did a nut say to another nut? Ooh, a joke. I love these corny ones sometimes, but, uh... I don't know, what did he say, Joe? Look busy, the boss is coming. Wow, suddenly I am not really a big fan of this joke. Barack, you need to calm down before you end up like Ken. Who the hell is Ken? Ken, these nuts fit in your mouth. Oh my God, he fell for it. He got you with the classic one-two combo. You know what he did actually get me, I'll admit it. Thankfully, this isn't as bad as what happened in Norway. Wait, what happened to you in Norway? You know, it's a pretty touchy subject, but everyone was in shock and awe because they all believed that there was Norway. These nuts can fit in your mouth. Oh my God. Okay, that's enough jokes. I didn't like that one, and these jokes are from 2014. I refuse to go back to that meme era, and we will instead move on with this list instead of saying dead memes. Anyways, after that, we got these Brazil nuts, and these, quite frankly, are all right, but to me, they taste kind of funky. Not the type of nut that you usually like, Joe? Yeah, I just can't put my finger on it, but my mouth and tongue know that this nut doesn't taste quite right. So it's safe to say that the Brazilian nut in your mouth doesn't taste as good as other nuts in your mouth? Donald, please grow up. Why? He actually just made an astute observation because Brazilian nut is actually not that good and belongs in C tier, to be honest. Uh, sorry to all my Brazilians, but your nut does not taste good in my mouth. After that, we got what I believe to be as a black walnut, and per their name, the shells are black and will instantly stain your fingers so they seem like a hassle. But I'm sure you can use them for some nice dye. Joe, this isn't fucking Minecraft, man. Who the fuck is gonna be going through the whole dying process just for fun? A dye enthusiast, maybe? I don't know, but yeah, because of how bad they stain and their earthy and bittersweet flavor, I have to then give this nut a D-tier ranking. Unfortunately, I wish I could love this black nut as much as everyone else must. Joe, stop saying it like that for the love of God. I can't tell if you're doing it jokingly or not. Barack, don't go getting your black nuts in a twist because of Joe. Wait, what? Does he have black walnuts? One could say that. Shut the hell up, Donald. Oh, well, uh, I'll leave whatever weird thing you two are doing to yourselves because the old Joe dog has got himself a list he needs to finish. Following the worst nut of my life, we then have a very okay nut coming up. That, of course, is pecan, and a lot of people argue if it's pecan or pecan, and quite frankly, I don't know either. I'll let you all argue in the comments, but as for the flavor of this nut, I actually like it quite a lot when it's added onto various desserts, but on its own, it actually is kind of mid to be honest. I think a solid B tier ranking is in order for this, because I acknowledge the nut's versatility. 
and how it pairs well with baked goods like a pecan pie. But on its own, it just doesn't have what it takes to claim the top spots on this list. It constantly needs to be carried by other ingredients, in my opinion. This has to be the first time in my life I've ever heard someone do a deep dive on pecans and care about it so damn much. Like, what could you possibly have going up there that would blow a pecan pie out of the water? Well, actually, our next entry, which is the cashew, is actually going into S tier. I'm not saying it blows a pecan pie out of the water, but hell, man, I will give it some motherfucking respect because I can down cashews by themselves like it's goddamn candy. I'll load up my mouth with some cashew nuts and chew them all up until I get a good glob of nut to swallow down my throat. I respect the hell that it can taste that good without being carried by other shit like how the pecans clearly do. Wow, first of all, pause on that statement. And secondly, why the hell do you care so much about if it gets carried or not by other stuff? We're just talking about overall enjoyment. Now, Barry, I think I'm starting to see Joe's vision. I agree that cashews are delicious on their own. You can't say the same about pecans for some people, but you can argue that cashews do what pecans do, but on a bigger and larger scale, because they're also used for baking and shit. So why didn't we do that for peanuts then? They taste good on their own and are used in a ton of dishes. I don't like that dumbass shell they have and they don't taste as good as cashews. So of course, as always, this list just falls on someone's personal bias. Well, it wouldn't be a good list if we didn't throw in our two cents. The Joe dog carves his own path in life and follows no one at all. Unless they happen to be hot as hell, in that case, I will follow you. Just don't call the cops on me, please. Joe, the age group you're chasing probably won't even know how to type in the numbers 911. One can hope, Donald, but nowadays no one knows anymore. Anyways, following that S tier, we got another one, and that is hazelnut. They taste good on their own, but more importantly, they are a key component in one of America's greatest treasure. And while it's not made by Americans, I can assure you all that we love the hell out of it, and that is Nutella. Oh my God, I fucking love Nutella. I couldn't agree more with you, Joe. Donald, remember that time you made a sandwich and I called you fat as shit for it? Can you please tell the audience what in the ever-living hell you made with Nutella? Shit, it's not really that fat. Sure, Melania didn't let me eat the sandwich because she said that would put me on my deathbed. And I had to watch Baron's little ass eat that delicious sandwich in front of me. But fine, I'll tell the audience. I swear it's not even that bad, but whatever. I first grabbed three slices of Hawaiian sweet bread and I covered two layers in Nutella, and it was the first piece and both the front and back of the middle piece. That middle slice of bread was getting gang-banged by Nutella. But anyways, after that, I put some, and you're gonna love this, Barack, I put some grape jelly on the last piece of bread so that it would smush together with the Nutella. But before that, if you wanna get fancy, you can add a drizzle of honey or syrup. I did both personally, but anyways, onto our finishing touches. I then added Oreos to the bottom half all throughout, and then I got some Samoa Girl Scout cookies and added them to the top layer. So all in all, you should be left with a pretty dense, but albeit delicious ass sandwich. Jesus Christ, I can't even wrap my mind around how many grams of sugar that must have had. No wonder Melania didn't let you eat it because your fat ass would have either keeled over and died or would have instantly become diabetic. I swear they could probably use your blood for honey at that point. Well, I didn't get to eat it either way, and the worst part was watching Baron's smug ass face eat that shit with no fucking milk. No Bev for that monstrosity is insane, but uh, everyone in the audience should try making that. Please don't do that, everyone. You are literally asking to go to the hospital. Nah, go and do what Donald couldn't do. Anyways, after that whole debacle, we have macadamia nuts, and I don't think I've ever had one by itself, but macadamia nut cookies are absolute bangers that belong in A tier. I always make sure to grab one from Subway after I order my Joe special from there. Oh God, please don't bring that shit up again. All right, all right, I'll just keep going with the list. And after that, we got two back-to-back -back bangers, and that is coconut and pistachio. I have both of these going into S tier because they are elite flavors for ice cream and both taste amazing on their own. Some pistachios absolutely bang and coconut is the best. Very valid takes here regarding the coconut, but uh, Joe, I don't know if pistachio is an elite flavor for ice cream. Do me a favor, Barack. Never fucking question my authority when it comes to ice cream because you're a fucking amateur when compared to me. A fucking newborn fetus would have better ice cream ratings than your bum ass. Peanut head shaped motherfucking dark walnut looking ass. Jesus Christ. Damn, my bad, Joe. Sorry, I just get really triggered when someone tries to critique my ice cream takes. Anyways, after that, we got our last two, and up first, we got walnuts, and this goes into B tier. 
They kind of taste like ass to me by themselves. And uh, I actually don't know what nut is up next on the list. If someone in the comments can tell me, I'd appreciate it. But it can't possibly taste as bad as black walnuts because those taste like straight ass. So I'll place them in C tier. Joe, how many times have you tasted ass for Christ's sake? Too many times to count Barack. Now that's a real eater right there. What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list. And thankfully, the Don has you all covered on today's subject because we are going to be discussing different Oreo products and flavors, and I am freaking excited, man. This list has been on your mind for quite a bit, so I'm glad to see that you're happy. No kidding, man. He's happier than a midget with a step stool. For once, you're actually completely right, Joe, because I get to rate the greatest creation known to man, and that, of course, is the Oreo. I mean, I would say it would be space travel or our modern-day electronics, but hey, to each their own. That's because you're a nerd Barack. A true American would know that the best thing to ever be invented is any type of food. Who the hell cares about space travel? Tell me, are you going to space anytime soon? Well, uh, not me personally. Exactly. God, sometimes you just want to be different for the sake of being different. Look at Joe over here who is never ashamed of being who he is. Darn tootin', the Joe Dingo Mandingo will never change his ways, and I do it for all the Joe heads out there. Never change, Joe, never change. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this list started. And up first, we got Oreo Thins. Who the hell even came up with the idea of Oreo Thins? Like, if you want to be healthy, then you shouldn't even be eating Oreos in the first place. But now you're trying to pass off these Oreo Thins as a healthier alternative to include less cookie on the outside and less filling on the inside. Hell no. Not in my neighborhood because I have this garbage repugnant invention going into D tier. Makes sense that you wouldn't like Thins, Donald. It's what you can never be, and you hate it for that. Joe, I am naturally bulky. We've talked about this. And no, I genuinely just hate it for being the inferior product. Like, if you truly want a smaller-sized Oreo package, then just get the minis, because those actually serve the purpose of being a snack. The Thins are just a shittier version of our normal and beloved Oreos. And I refuse to stand here and let them massacre my boy. You know what, Donald? You seem extremely passionate about the subject, so I actually am gonna just believe in your reasoning for it. I barely have Oreos, and when I do pig out, I choose the double stuff one, so I'm not really super informed. Oh man, don't even get me started on those double stuffed ones, because you'll have me coming, coming to a great conclusion on where I should rate them, that is. And speaking of the double stuff, we got them right next, and you all already know where the Don is going to place his beloved double stuffed Oreos, because if this isn't an S tier, then crucify me on the cross. I like to get my two double stuffed Oreos and take them off the top and make a super mega stuffed Oreo. It uh, doesn't taste as good as the filling can be overpowering, but hey, the fact that I can do it is amazing. Get me some milk for some dunking and you got yourself a happy Donald. I'd be more happier than Joe in an elementary school. Whoa, whoa, let's not take it that far. I doubt you'd be able to compete with my levels of joy in that scenario. You disappoint me so much, Joe. That's our Joe, all right. Anyways, moving on, we got the fudge-covered Oreos. And you might be thinking to yourself, man, this has to be an auto S tier, since Donald loves himself chocolate and can't have enough of it. Well, you'd be wrong. This is the true case of too much a, a, of a good thing, because I actually don't really like the fudge-covered Oreos. I think they get rid of the original taste of the Oreo, and it just ends up tasting more like fudge than anything else. Then you also get a worsened dipping ability because of the outer coating of fudge and you just got yourself a B tier at best on your hands. See, dipping has never been that big of a thing for me. I know you're supposed to enjoy Oreos by dipping them in milk, but you see, the Joe Dog has a different method for his milk to cookie consumption. I like to get a large glass and make sure it's big enough to fit a spoon in and a bunch of cookies. Then you get your Oreos and you make a clean tower of them all the way up to the top of your glass. Then after you have all that prepared, you then grab the milk from your fridge and let it rip right in that glass till it almost fills it up all the way. Then you simply just scoop up the Oreos with a spoon and it'll be washed up. Chocolate cookie goodness. The best part is that after you're done eating all of it, you're left with a glass of Oreo and milk mixture and then you can just gulp it all or start a whole new tower of cookies. Doesn't that all sound amazing? Joe, that sounds kind of awful. Seems like too many Oreos would get lost in the milk. I'll tell you what it sounds like, Barack. It sounds like a goddamn crime against humanity, and we should strip Joe of every single Oreo packet that he has in his house. 
Go ahead, I do the same thing with Chips Ahoy and most other cookies. Dear God, it is so much worse than I imagined. I need those men in black mind white machines because listening to that made me almost die from cringe. Moving past that despicable conversation, we got fudge covered Oreos, but thin edition. I'm giving this a C tier because at least this time they aren't ripping you off as much because at least now you got a coating of chocolate for your thin ass anorexic Oreo. After that, we got another entry that I think many people will be taken aback by because I don't really think that chocolate cream Oreos really elevate its flavor. I still think they're solid and quite honestly might be better than the fudge covered ones, but I have not had them in so long that I can't verify that claim. So I am gonna play it safe and just place this into B tier as well. Never heard you say you were going to play it safe before? You always just say some ridiculous shit, but I guess that's just how serious you take Oreos. Damn straight, Barry. Moving on, we got mini Oreos, and honestly, for me, this is yet another S tier. These are the perfect snack-sized Oreos, and they do not skimp out on the product, but rather they are a perfect miniature version of our already beloved Oreo, and how could you not like that? I know damn well that when I get these, I'm gonna get the classic Oreo experience, but in small bits that just accumulate to an explosion of flavor inside my mouth. Yeah, but couldn't you do the same thing with the normal Oreos, but just put them in a Ziploc bag or something? Joe, I'm gonna look sped as fuck holding around a Ziploc bag of Oreos. People are going to think I lost my caretaker and are going to start talking to me super slow and start calling me their little buddy. And then I have to kindly explain to them that I'm a grown ass man who can take care of himself. But then it'll only infuriate you even more when they respond with, I know you are champ. Let's go ahead and find your mommy or daddy, or maybe even your auntie or uncle. God, I'll kill that person's ass if I saw them again. Uh, what do you mean by again? Is this something that actually happened to you? No, I was just describing something that happened to a friend. And let me tell you, that it was the wrong day to wear the propeller hat and bow tie I got from the festival that day. But anyways, enough of that, because after that, we got something that I know some people don't like, but quite honestly, golden Oreos are pretty good. I don't think they belong in S tier, but I'll put some respect on their name because they are not bad at all. I think a solid A tier is not a disrespectful tier to put them in because they have the same creamy goodness, but instead of chocolate, you get more of a vanilla cookie outside and I quite like it, to be honest. It's a nice change every now and then when you've had too many of the classic Oreos. Hell no, I refuse to have that white Oreo in my mouth. It is the devil's Oreo, and it has too much vanilla tasting things in it. Like not only is the outside layer vanilla, but then you have the white cream inside. That's a certified C tier, if not D tier on that one, Donald. Joe, with all disrespect intended, I refuse to value the opinion of a man with your track record, and that's not even me being mean, that's just me being as candid as possible, like it's not your fault. You was born that way. Damn straight, Joe Feasty has his strong opinions and I will fight anyone on them. Joe, let's be honest, you won't fight anyone and you'd probably run the first chance you get. This motherfucker can't even run a stove. How in the hell do you expect him to walk, much less run from a fight? It amazes me how much faith you have in him, Barry, but whatever because up next we got the normal chocolate filling Oreos and they'll go next to their double stuffed brother in B tier because once again, I can't truly verify how good or bad they are, but I feel like I remember them being in that tier. Like I don't know about everyone else, but C tier feels too low, but A tier feels too high. Then we get to B tier and it feels just right. Since when did you turn into Goldilocks? Listen, man, that was my genuine opinion on it. But anyways, moving on to our second to last entry, we got the tried and true classic Oreo. Now you have to be a downright fucktard to believe that these gifts from up above are not certified S tier bangers. Like this is the most purest form to enjoy your Oreos and one can argue that double stuffed Oreos are better, but why must we argue about trivial things when instead we can join hand in hand as Oreo lovers and just admit that these two are the tastiest cookie on the planet barring Girl Scout cookies, of course, but I say the two legends can coexist and will fight anyone if they think that the normal Oreos belong anywhere else. That was a very passionate speech, but I don't think you said anything crazy, nor do I think anyone will argue with you. Now, wait a minute. I have a problem with this ranking. Mm -hmm. I think that the classic Oreo should be placed in S++ tier. Joe, we don't fucking have that on this list. Hmm, it appears that we do not indeed have that tier on this list. Allow me to gather my thoughts once again. 
Uh, hmm. Ooh, oh, hmm. uh, I see now. I believe that S tier is truly where it belongs now. God, you piss me off sometimes, but when you do this sort of stuff to Barack, it's so funny that I have to let this slide. Anyways, moving on to our last entry, we got the most stuff Oreo, and this shit is just too overpowering. I can eat like one or two, maybe even 10 or 15 of these in one sitting, but my God, will I feel sick after and just not want to see an Oreo for a while. If you eat these in moderation, though, I'd have to give it an A tier. I mean, doesn't that really apply to almost anything, Donald? Like, of course, we should all be consuming things with moderation and caution in order to avoid getting sick. Not the Joe dog because he consumes like there's no tomorrow without a lick of moderation when it comes to some kitty. What is going on, gang? It is your supreme leader back at it again with another tier list. And this time around, we are doing a sports drink tier list, which I am obviously the most qualified for. I will be grading these on their thirst quenching power, their design, their flavors and taste. But most importantly, I will be grading them based on how well they can help with my hangovers. Well, that's not really the best purpose for this tier list, considering that these drinks just help hydrate you and replenish lost electrolytes. Yeah, well, I am in desperate need of that whenever I'm out late hanging out with Hunter and partying like the madman he is. I need a super drink if I'm supposed to recover from his alcohol and coke-fueled parties. Dude, what the heck? He never invites me to those. How did you get in? I already have told you dozens upon dozens of times, but your son prefers me as a father figure, and he has told me countless times that he wishes I were his real dad. Now I wish I could return the sentiment but I straight up told him that it's very weird for a grown man to be telling me these things, but I like partying with him, so I let it slide from time to time. But enough of these weird familial issues you got going on in the Biden household, and let's talk about some drinks. Up first, we got the tried and true Gatorade. You can never go wrong with this drink, and really it's probably one of, if not the best drink on this list without a doubt. This is getting an S tier from me, and there should be no debate about it because they are bona fide in this and are the titans of the sports drink industry. My favorite flavor is definitely the blue Gatorade, but if you all want to hear more about that, you can check out our Gatorade tier list. W plug for our video, Donald. And yeah, I always find myself gravitating towards Gatorade first and foremost whenever I need a drink like that. I'll have them when I'm sick, hungover, or actually tired and thirsty from playing sports. So you admit that you use these for whenever you're hungover, but you chose to get upset at me for saying it. I said that I was upset that it was a part of the rankings, you buffoon. Now, can we all settle down and get along? It's just a fun little tier list, and we all know that we should only use them after we have had a heavy day of exercising. Shut the hell up, Joe. Don't go telling me what to do, but I will go ahead and continue, because I see some atrocity up next, and that is the Sam's Club default sports drink. This is like opening a case in a video game and receiving the most basic common skin in the whole thing. These things don't even have a name, they're just labeled as sports drink. I have to give this a C tier, and if I saw someone pull up with these, I would immediately call them out for even thinking anyone would want these. Do they really taste that awful? Oh, well, uh, they don't uh, actually taste that awful. Like, they're actually kind of decent, but what will the girls think when they see me sipping out of the Sam's Club default skin sports drink instead of a Gatorade? I seriously doubt any single soul would care about what another person is drinking. Oh, but you would be surprised, Barack. You would be shocked at what people have to say. But anyways, up next, we got a D tier, and that is Gatorade's version of Pedialyte. This shit stinks and tastes god awful. Like, I get that it is supposed to taste awful, but Jesus, man, I would rather drink taint sweat than ever subject myself to that abhorrent drink. Someone handed me this the other day, and I saw the Gatorade logo, and that shit lulled me into a false sense of security. I felt like I was a little kid who just got dropped off at a sex offender's house by his parents and was told he had to stay there the whole week like that is raps. It's open season. That's just how awful that thing was when it touched my taste buds. Oh, it is indeed raps if that were to happen. Uh, not that I would know. You're not very subtle with these things. I hope you realize that, but I don't think anyone cares, which is the worst part of it all. Following that, we got Great Britain's national drink, and that is Prime. And let me tell you that these kids in the UK go absolutely batshit crazy for Prime is an understatement. Having a bottle of Prime would mean more to a kid in the UK than the Pope of the Catholic Church meeting Jesus Christ of Nazareth in the flesh. Like there are levels to this that a normal human being cannot simply comprehend. And I'm trying my best to explain it to you all. But enough of that because now we got to talk about the ranking and quite honestly, I actually like Prime. I don't think it is as good as these people in the UK make it out to be, 
but I am a huge fan of the Glowberry and Ice Pop flavors. They are, however, loaded with sugars, but that's fine, I guess. And I am thinking that a solid A tier is needed for this pretty good drink. Pretty spot on with that. I am not going to lie. I enjoy Prime too, but it is definitely overhyped, but I still enjoy the two flavors you mentioned. I'll have some from Time, but ultimately, I think I'd rather have a Gatorade or a Body Armor. I have to agree on the Body Armor take, but we're not there yet, so let me continue with my list. And when we get there, you can start sucking off Body Armor. Anyways, up next, we got Powerade, and this is like Gatorade's little brother. Like, everyone looks at this drink, and they think it is sorry as hell. Still, though, as much as I am hating on this drink, I don't think it's awful. And I actually kind of like it now that I think about it. I think I am just hating on it because it's funny. But this is a solid A tier in my books. So is that why you make fun of me? You hate on me constantly, but is it because everyone in the audience expects you to do it? But in reality, you actually think I am super cool and love being friends with me? Is it like that one episode of SpongeBob where Squidward secretly likes Krabby Patties but doesn't want to tell anyone because he's so shy and embarrassed? No, Joe, I genuinely have a certain level of disdain for you. Let's not talk about things that'll make me angry, and instead, let's talk about something that I really love and is very much so near and dear to my heart. Your kids? No, you idiot. I'm talking about the list still, and I freaking love Liquid IV. I love this product so much, and it literally hydrates you so quickly, like I can feel it almost instantly, and I have to give this product an S tier because of that. Like, if you're drinking, I would heavily recommend taking these while you're drinking, and you will have an amazing time. And even when you're playing sports, these will help quench whatever thirst you have. And I can assure you of that personally. Jesus, this is reading out like an ad read. You're not sponsored by them, are you? I freaking wish, man. That would mean unlimited liquid IV for me. And we all know I love that. But unfortunately, I am just glazing like a motherfucker for fun. It's OK, though, because up next, we got body armor. And as Barack was saying earlier, this is indeed a pretty good product. Like, I wouldn't say it's better than the top two in S tier but it is definitely the best thing in where I'll place it, which is in A tier. I like the flavors they have a lot more than the other drink, and they are the official drink of Kobe Bryant. And man, oh man, that guy is a close friend of mine. May he rest in peace. I'll never forget the fall he took for me out in Colorado. He was really a lifesaver for that back then. Uh, what the hell are you talking about, your fall guy? Are you tied into that case in Colorado way back when? Uh, nothing at all. Let's talk about vitamin water, everyone. Oh man, I don't like vitamin water, but I do think it's better than that Sam's Club members mark default Fortnite skin ass drink. I rather pull up to the function with this vitamin water drink than with that off-brand Gatorade wannabe Sam's Club drink. But on its own, I really don't like vitamin water that much, but a solid B tier would be an okay placement for it in my opinion. I don't think there are tons of vitamin water fans out there. And even if they are fans of the drink, they have to agree with this list. Like, no way they'd argue with me that vitamin water is better than Gatorade. You seem to be very passionate on signifying how mediocre vitamin water is. And as a fan of vitamin water, I choose to respect your opinion, but ultimately disagree with your verdict. Joey, you don't not speak like that. Stop trying to talk all smart and formal when we all know you huff glue and paint in your free time. Anyways, enough of Joe, because up next we got Propel Water. And I wasn't sure if I should include this on the list, but I decided to add it either way just to appease any person who is a fan of this water. I think it is another B tier in all honesty. Like, it isn't bad once again, much like vitamin water, but I will never go out of my way for Propel water. Like, why wouldn't I just drink water instead? I don't know, but either way, that is simply where it goes. Okay, that's nice and all, but what the hell is that last drink? Oh, you've never heard of BioSteel? Neither have I before making this list, and that's why I'm placing this in C tier alongside the other unknown ass sports drink, because these things were not made for human consumption. They were made for real life NPCs and human bots that go out of their way to drink these instead of consuming what every other person drinks. See, a motherfucker like me goes against the grain and chooses to actively drink other things that not a lot of people drink. You know why? It's because I am different and I am not like all of you. I walk my own path in life and I am a trailblazer instead of a follower, which is the type of vibes you're giving me, Donald, big follower vibes. Shut the hell up, Joe. You don't know what you're even saying. You're an old dementia-ridden man who can barely remember what color his own underwear is. Joke's on you, they're all white except for the big brown stain near my ass. That's so vile, Joey. But you guys want to know what the coolest sports drink is? 
Now, I drink this every day no matter what, and quite honestly, it beats everything else in this list. It can be used to cure thirstiness, hangovers, you name it, and honestly, it will help. The magical drink I'm talking about is called water, everyone. Listen to this freaking guy talking about water. What is the point of sipping on water when I can simply get all the liquids I need in my day from Gatorade? And I will get some lost electrolytes. Come on, Barack, we all know the clear winner in this. On God, Donald, now you're spitting facts. Like, please tell me, Barack, why in the heck would I ever decide to drink normal water when I get my yummy, yummy vitamin water? Well, actually, unless it's yummy, yummy Dasani water, but aside from that, I would prefer not to because I like to see how yellow my pee can get before my doctors tells me to start drinking my water again. Okay, that was a bit much. I very much so don't agree with everything Joe says, but his heart is kind of in the right place. You two are both gross as hell and will eventually get diabetes. You two do realize that? Joke's on you, I already do. What is going on, gang a lang We are back with another tier list, and this time around, we are going to be talking about controversial foods, and I will be ranking them based on how controversial they are and how delicious they are. We originally were gonna have Joe do the list, but you all know his opinion on mint-flavored things, and I just feel like he'd put things in weird spots. I'd put them where they belong, which would be below D tier and into the garbage. Mint haters will side with me on this. Joe, you have to eventually give mint flavored things another try. I do whenever I brush my teeth because I know that's how good every mint product will be. Just some toothpaste tasting garbage. All right, that's enough hate from you, Joe. Let's go ahead and get this list started because up first we got some chocolate gold coins. Uh, I know Frail told us that he didn't make this list, but who the hell even thinks these are controversial? like it's just chocolate wrap to look like a coin. So I think I'll place it into B tier because it's not that controversial, but man, do they taste good. After that though, we got raisins and this is a good one. I already know how I feel about raisins, but let me hear it from you too. Raisins are a delectable snack and are good by themselves in trail mix and in cookies. Of course, this guy would say all the healthy stuff. For the Joe dog, he prefers his raisins covered in some sweet, sweet chocolate. Now that's what I like to hear, Joe. I think this is a solid A tier, but moving on. We got some mustard and almond joys, and I don't think it's too crazy to put both of these in S tier. Almond joys are just straight up delicious, and if you're fans of the channel, you already know how much we love coconut on here, and if you combine it with chocolate, you know it's game over. As for the mustard, well, it pairs really well with a lot of things and adds a lot of flavor. Just don't be like Joe and dip your fries in straight mustard. It's the superior dipping sauce, and you can straight up consume pure, unfiltered mustard if you're a real dog like me. If we were talking about honey mustard, I'd be all ears, but I know with your disgusting asses talking about pure yellow mustard, and I will never look at you the same for loving those mustard-flavored Doritos chips. Anyways, after that, Whoppers are warheads. Now, who the hell likes Whoppers a lot? Like, I'll pop them and suck on them for a bit, but I won't go twerking and throwing it back for them. They're a solid C. I think they're overhated. But hey, that's just me. But as for the warheads, I can see why people don't like them. They're not a fan of sour things, but if you're not a fan of sour things, why would you even buy warheads? Like you're asking for a bad time. It's like a deaf person buying concert tickets. Like what the hell is the point of it? Otherwise though, this is a solid B tier for me. What if the deaf person can slightly hear or if he can feel the vibrations? Ah, uh, fine, Joe. It would be like a blind person buying front row seats to a show. I hope that was enough to appease your ass. After that, we got Thin Mints, and I refuse to hear you out, Joe. Your opinion is null on this, but this is an auto A tier. No, the hell it is not. Ignore him, Donald, but yeah, I definitely even argue that it belongs in S tier because you got people like Joe who are mint haters and will have a stroke if you dare say it's good. Yeah, but I feel like there are more of us mint enjoyers out in the world than there are mint haters. After that, we got some beets and anchovies, and okay, you guys got me here. Beets are pretty good, they taste like nothing and have tons of iron. And I don't think I've ever heard a lot of people complain about beets. I think a B tier is in order for this one, and anchovies will go into C tier, but I know tons and tons of people were hating on them for our pizza topping tier list, so hopefully this low placing will make some of you happy. However, we move on to a doozy up next, and I know a decent bit of people who hate blue cheese and constantly say it looks like throw up and won't partake. But let me tell you all that the Don is a believer in blue cheese and must have his wings with ranch and blue cheese. I got two different sauces to dip them in and they both taste amazing. 
I have this banger going straight into S tier. Hmm, the Joe dog sees nothing wrong with these placements. I love me blue cheese so much that I sometimes just suck it straight out the container. God, Joe, don't go making me rethink my placement on this delicious thing, because hearing you say that genuinely made me like blue cheese even less. After that, we got some Brussels sprouts going into B tier. I feel like if you hate these, then you just need to grow the fuck up, man. They literally taste like nothing and are good. After that, we do have something a lot of people hate, and that, of course, is the pickle. Now, I will hear out some of you pickle haters, because I know that this taste can be too much for you all, but it's not bad at all on a burger or in relish or tartar sauce. Nah, that shit is terrible in everything. I despise pickle enjoyers and can never understand how some people eat pickles out the jar, and not only that, they also drink the goddamn pickle juice. That is just straight foul. Okay, Donald, I hate saying this, but Joe kind of has a point. When people drink pickle juice, that's just when it goes too far, man. I mean, that was what I was fucking saying, man. I like them as compliments, but not on their own, Jesus, man. You're giving Joe some cookies for basically just repeating what I said, but none of that matters because I have to get to the rating and this is a C tier in my books. After that, we got two back-to-back -back S tiers because I doubt anyone genuinely hates white chocolate or coconut. And even if they do, it doesn't matter because the Don will die for white chocolate and coconut. Then we got some spam and oh man, tell them what you cooked up the other day, Barack, with this spam. Your Hawaiian ass loves this shit and I know you're gonna be happy about me placing this into A tier. Okay, actually that's a huge dub and I can go ahead and tell everyone. So basically I just made some kimchi fried rice, which is just kimchi and some fried rice, of course. But then I added bits of chopped up spam throughout the dish while it was cooking and to top it all off, I put a bunch of cheese on top, and on top of all that delicious cheese, I topped it off with four eggs and let them cook with all the heat and steam from the dish. God, that shit was banging. It was possibly the best thing I had that week, and I beg everyone to go make that at home. Go get yourself some kimchi and make this delicious ass dish. But anyways, after that, we got Oreos, and we made a whole goddamn tier list revolving around this, and we all know this is an auto S tier. If you hate Oreos, I am sorry that you'll never get to fully enjoy greatness, but yeah, go check out our Oreo tier list if you are indeed a fan. Then after we got some mushrooms, and with this one, I can get some of the hate because I know people who despise mushrooms, but the Don isn't one of them. I have these bad boys going into a tier because they're flat out amazing when added to any dish. Now this next one I know I'll get some flack for because I actually have hard shell tacos going into S tier. Now I know all the Mexicans will get angry and I can't be sure if it's because of the mass deportations I caused or the hard shell taco rating. But let me tell you all that hard shell tacos bang. Some hard shell tacos from Taco Bell will go absolutely nuts. And if you get a Dorito Locos taco, well, you're just begging to make me come. All right, let's settle down now. No, let's actually settle up Donald. Joe is kind of speaking my language here, but anyways, after that, we got the tomato, and this is a solid B tier. Like, I don't mind tomatoes, but they also don't do much. Like, they can make my burgers and sandwiches more moist and add a bit more to my salads, but I prefer to have them in sauce form. Then after we got some olives and sour cream, and I am giving olives a solid C tier. I like them on my pizzas or even as a nice snack with my charcuterie board. Then sour cream gets an absolute S tier. The Don is a massive fan of some fucking sour cream. And before you say anything, Joe, I'm putting junior mints in A tier. Please don't go on a rant. I just feel like I've said enough. I've accepted the fact that no matter how much I struggle, no matter how much I beg and plead, it'll all be for no reason and I have to just sit there and take it. So I guess I finally understand how I make those kids feel when I take care of them. What? Barack quit acting so surprised. You already knew where that was going. Sometimes I'm so breathed, but enough about Joe, because up next we got two back-to-back -back bangers going into S tier. And if you've seen the pizza topping tier list, you already know that Don is on Team Pineapple. And mayo is kind of self-explanatory. The other day someone called me a mayo monkey, and I don't know how to feel about that. Yeah, you're more of a sriracha mayo than a normal mayo. Because I'm so spicy, huh? Then after we got some disgusting, absolutely gross black licorice, and you all already know this abomination is going into D tier, but after that we got some mint chocolate chip ice cream also going into A tier. I am somewhat appeasing the mint haters because I'm placing most of these into A tier, but let's be serious here. This shit is straight gas, and so are thin mints. Then after that, 
We got the motherfucking legendary three-peat coming up because I have oysters, asparagus, and tofu all going into S tier. Oysters are just a goddamn banger, and most seafood in general is just so fucking delicious. Some oyster with some hot sauce, and you got yourself a happy dawn. Then I think asparagus is also hated too much, but it fucking bangs. Get some baked asparagus alongside your Thanksgiving turkey, and you got yourself a nice side. And then we get on to tofu. Why would anyone hate on tofu? It literally tastes like nothing. And if you're a fan of Asian food, then you already know how much it's used. And I love it so goddamn much. It's a great source of protein. These three are valid as hell, Donald. I am actually amazed with how good your list has been going. Like all I see are bangers. All right, Barack, enough glazing because it's getting kind of gay. Rounding off this wonderful list, we got hot sauce going into A tier because it's an excellent condiment for any type of occasion and you can vary the levels of heat that you have. Then I have Marmite going into D tier because I've never had it, but I swear every video I see about it just makes it look awful. And lastly, our New York peppermint patty. Oh man, I actually don't really like this that much, but we'll still give it a solid B tier. It's definitely the worst mint tasting thing I've had, excluding three musketeers. If you ask me, they should be called the three musket queer. What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list, and this time around, we got a cheese its tier list, and oh man, the Don is excited that we are getting this started because I happen to be a cheese its connoisseur, a compatriot of cheese that are it, the comrade of cheese it enthusiasts. I think we understand what you're saying, Donald. You love cheese its a whole ton. Barack, never interrupt a man when he's in the middle of such a heartfelt speech. How the hell was that heartfelt in any way at all? You're not a real eater, Barack. You just wouldn't understand my perspective as an elite and very much so a real eater. Okay, I understand why you would call yourself an elite and real eater, but uh, why the hell is Joe considered a real eater? Well, see, I'm an eater of foods and fine cuisines, but the Joester over here is a real eater if you catch my drift. If you're not catching it, then I don't know what to tell you. But anyways, let's go ahead and get this list started. And up first, we got cheese nips. And you all already know that this garbage is going straight into D tier. The hell is a cheese nip? Well, you see, Barry, cheese nips were a small cheese flavored cracker manufactured by Mondelez International, which is a part of the Nabisco brand. And they were originally used to compete against Sunshine Biscuits cheese it crackers. As always, you provide the most information for the most useless of things, Joe. But yeah, these things were a sorry as hell competitor to my beloved Cheez-Its. It was like trying to out twerk Megan the Stallion. Can't you use a more normal analogy? Fine, it's like challenging a gym leader in Pokemon when you're too underleveled. Now do a non-gamer version of that analogy. I'm not a goddamn dog, Barack. I won't do everything you tell me. I'm just testing your analogy skills. Well, if it's a test, then that's different. Ahem, it would be like trying to bench two plates as your first ever rep in the gym and you've never worked out a day in your life. Now, those are some good analogies. Thanks, Joe, it's one of my many talents. But anyways, let's go ahead and move on to what's next, and that is the cheese, it's big. And these things are just enlarged cheese, it's. And while that sounds amazing, I still prefer smaller handful pieces rather than the humongous piece. I will place this into A tier, but I do have to say that these are great for spreading something on top, or maybe even dipping into some extra cheese, or maybe even some salsa. You sound disastrously fat with that spread and dip comment you just made. My fucking bad for merely recommending something fucking delicious to our precious viewers. Next time I even conjure up the thought of giving them a delicious life hack, I'll just keep it to myself. Following that, we got the Scrabble Junior Cheez-Its, and this shit is made for babies. And I refuse to have another incident where people see me with these things and go on assuming that I'm a special needs kid. This shit goes into C tier. What do you mean by again? Uh, nothing. It happened to a friend of mine, a very handsome friend. Uh, pause. What do you mean by a handsome friend? Joe, you've said the most sus statements here. I sure as hell don't want to hear you say pause. Following that, we got the hot and spicy Cheez-Its, and these are actually not all that bad. I think people overhate these things, and while it's not the one I twerk for the most, I still respect it enough to put it into B tier. But man, after that, we got some wannabe healthy fucking Cheez-Its because we got whole grain ones up next, and this is getting a damn D tier, because I will never enjoy the fact that they try to make healthier alternatives to snacks. Like, let me be a fat piece of shit in peace and don't offer me a worse alternative. Healthy alternative slap, though. Name one fucking thing. Uh... That's what I thought, and let me answer it for you. It's the baked versions of chips, but even then I prefer the original. But anyways, after that, we got a banger coming up. 
And that, of course, is the four cheese flavor. And I have this going into A tier. I'm a cheese man through and through. So, of course, when you add more cheese to something, I'm going to go crazy. Amen to that Donald, because the Joester loves himself some cheese as well. Joe, we know you made the cheese tier list. You don't have to bring up the fact that you love cheese every time. Anyways, after that, we got, of course, the OG of OG flavors of cheese. It's and that, of course, is the original, um, which I have going straight into S tier. I think this is the most obvious tier for this delicious ass snack. Tell me about it, Donald. I love playing a little game where I try to stuff as many Cheez-Its as I can into my petite little mouth. And by the end of it, I have this big glob of cheese mush in my mouth and it's mixed in with my saliva. So it's not entirely dry either, but I love taking that big ball of mush in my mouth and try to swallow the pieces of mush bit by bit. It makes eating cheese, it's that much better if you ask me. You're a disgusting man, Joseph. I'll be the first to always let you know that. Following that, we got the pepper jack flavor. And I actually have this going into B tier alongside the hot and spicy flavor. I like these, but man, when I want cheese, it's I just want something cheesy. Well, no shit on that, Donald. Of course, we all want something cheesy when we eat something called cheese, it's Shut the fuck up, Joe. You didn't let me finish. I want something cheese, but I don't mind throwing in the spice from time to time. But I won't go seeking that primarily if that makes sense. Like for every 10 normal Cheez-Its that I buy, maybe one of them will be a spicy flavor. Why the hell are you buying 10 packs of this at a time? I never said I was buying 10 at a time, but um, you just happen to be right in this instance. Anyways, enough of Barack being a snack watcher because he's so jealous I can eat whatever I want. And let's get back to the list. After that, we got reduced fat white cheddar. And this goes into D tier as well. Why the hell would I want to reduce my fat, like especially during bulking season? These idiots don't know the secret bulking life hacks. But anyways, after that, we got the delicious Cheddar Jack, and I might be one of the few people that really enjoy this flavor. Like, once again, I don't think it's an S tier, but it belongs in a solid A tier, if you ask me. Donald, you have so much shit in A tier, and we don't have much of the list even left. Like, what could you possibly be saving for S tier? God, Barack, if you would have waited literally for the next two items, you'd see that I have white cheddar and duos both going into S tier. But instead, here you are as impatient as Joe during an elementary school's early release. But yeah, these two flavors are elite as hell. And the white cheddar is just a generational talent, if you ask me. I don't think there are many people in the world who hate white cheddar. And if you're one of them, then I want you to expand that thick skull of yours and admit that white cheddar is elite. Then with the duos, we got two good ass flavors in one box and the variety and flavor cannot be beaten. After that, we got the cheese it grooves and I have a solid opinion on this, but I'd love to open the floor to you two here. Wow, uh, thanks for letting us have a say. I'm not really used to that in your tier list, Donald. Whoa, whoa, don't get it twisted. You don't have a say, but you can voice your opinion. This isn't a democracy, but more so a trump tatorship. Well, I, for one, salute our new form of government. Anything that means I can be more lazy is a great thing for me. Joe, that is really not what you should be saying. Barack, please let the Joester think, because he doesn't really remember much about cheese at grooves other than them being OK. I'm not a huge texture guy, so these were kind of whatever to me. I actually have to agree with you, Joey. I don't think the grooves did much other than make the cheese powder get stuck in the grooves and change the texture, but in all honesty, I also don't have much to say. The one time I allow you two to have a voice and the both of you just shit the bed, I actually have this going into C tier because it does change the texture, but I prefer the other one we have on the list that changes texture. And quite honestly, uh, now that I think about it, I uh, also don't have much to say on this. I cannot say the same for the next ones because I have the extra toasty cheese that's going straight into S tier. Now, I'm pretty sure these are just extra burnt Cheez-Its that are rejects from the manufacturing process. And this is just a way for them to make more money off these burnt things. But goddamn, do I love them. I realized as I was eating these Cheez-Its that I love toasty and burnt snacks. This notion never dawned on me until that very moment. I love extra dark pretzels. I like that one over brown saltines in the sleeve, burnt chocolate chip cookies, and that one extra crispy french fry at the bottom of the bag. I even order my pizza well done, so the crust is burnt and crispy. This is just a dream for my precious toast army who loves their shit nice and crispy with a little char. I hate having burnt things. 
Feels like I'm eating straight cancer particles when I chew on something burned or charred. Like what is the enjoyment in that flavor? It literally tastes like I'm licking a dirty grill. Joe, before you go any further, let me stop you right there because I refuse to hear a Joe rant on this video. Uh, we can agree to disagree. One side can agree with Joey the Oaf, who constantly has bad takes and chugs warm milk in hot weather, or the correct side can choose me, who is handsome, humble, loyal, intelligent, and most of all, I am extremely graceful with my words. But yeah, anyways, after that, we got a pretty twerkable entry up next, and that is the pizza cheese flavor, and I want to put this in S tier, but I feel very solid with what we have up there. Like, I look at it, and it's like staring at the goddamn Mona Lisa. I cannot see anything wrong with it. And I feel like if we add the pizza-flavored ones up there, then we would just ruin it. I think A-tier is a great place for it. And I will say that they're never going to be as good as pizza-flavored Pringles. But, oh, man, we got a fucking absolute stinker up next. And that, of course, is the reduced-fat original-flavored cheese It's. I refuse to rate the healthy ones any higher than a D-tier because why the hell would anyone enjoy something healthy when they can be having the true flavor and the best thing available? Okay, you say this, Donald, but then you have a Diet Coke. And last time I checked, a Diet Coke is not better than a normal Coke. Well, a Diet Coke has a fuck ton of carcinogens, Barack, so I wouldn't say it's healthy. Jesus Christ, you trying to kill me? Yeah, you trying to kill him, Barack. I would have never guessed that you of all people would be advocating for such a sugary drink. Joe, I'm not advocating. I'm just saying that it's hypocritical of him to say, and technically diet drinks aren't sugary, but they have sucralose and or aspartame, and one one hundredth of that tastes like a spoonful of sugar. And Quit your yapping, Barack. We don't want to hear your excuses, because we got the final entry on the list, and that, of course, is the cheese it snapped. Now, I will snap my fingers like a sassy black woman at this, but I won't do it in anger, but rather in joy, because I actually fuck with these thin Cheez-Its. Another A tier, in my opinion, but don't sleep on these, because I personally fuck with these heavily. Only thing the Joe Dog fucks with is heavily. Is heavily what, Joe? No, as in I just fuck heavily. Nice one, Joe. What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list, and oh boy, am I excited about this one, because the Don gets to finally talk about another one of the things he loves most in life, and that, of course, is Chipotle. Now, this is going to be like Donald's Mecca. It's either this or the McDonald's food tier list. Don't forget that he would kill for a Mexican food tier list. You know, this is one of the only times that I must say that the both of you are actually correct. I would throw it back for those two lists, but I want to focus all of my attention and love on what's in front of us, and that is this beautiful, beautiful Chipotle topping tier list. But before I get started, I just want to point out that these rankings will work in a bowl or in burrito form. It's just that real dogs, like the Don, always get a burrito. And if you want to be a real baller and create even more calories for yourself, then you get the burrito and double wrap it with an extra layer of tortilla. The only thing Joe double wraps is some condoms, because if I double wrap a burrito, then it'll taste like too much tortilla, and I can tell that it will be dry as hell. Joe, trust me, because you simply do not know ball if that's what you think would happen. I always make sure those Chipotle workers stuff my goddamn burrito, or else I'll be one angry camper. Plus, even if they don't stuff it, it literally won't taste like pure tortilla, because you barely notice the second layer there. It's just good for bulking purposes. Ah, yes, the forever bulk that you seem to be on for the past year and a half. Oh, the cut is coming soon, and when it does, I'm gonna look so ripped. You'll be jealous as hell when my summer body comes in. But enough of these shenanigans, because I want to get started on this wonderful list. And up first, we got our types of rice, and that, of course, is both brown and white rice. Now, I'm going to be completely transparent in this, and we'll say that these two automatically belong in S tier. I don't really taste a difference between the two, so pick whichever one you want, because these are both needed in your burrito or burrito bowl. Joe, you're full of fun facts. What the hell is the difference? Well, I'm glad you asked. You see, brown rice is more nutrient-dense than white rice. Because of this, brown rice may help reduce blood sugar levels and aid in weight management efforts. However, white rice is good for those with certain digestive issues who cannot digest fiber-rich foods well. So all in all, these are both great options, but if you can digest fiber foods well, then you may as well go with the brown rice since it is technically better. And I also agree that it doesn't taste that much different, especially in burrito or burrito bowl form. I was honestly expecting you not to know and for me to angrily yell at you, but wow, you pulled through Sleepy Joe. So yeah, pack your shit up with some brown rice. 
But what I don't have being rated the same are our next two entries. I have the pinto beans going into B tier and black beans going into A tier. See, the reasoning for this is because pinto beans are bigger and mushier. And I frankly don't want my burrito to be so stuffed that it looks like a toddler's diaper. Speak for yourself on that one, because the thought of a toddler's filled diaper makes me drool. Uh, when we talk about a burrito being filled like that, ooh, nice save, Joe. That was not a nice save at all, and honestly, it's pretty disgusting to hear. Joe, don't listen to him. It was one of the best saves I have ever heard. Quite frankly, you should speak like that more often, especially in public. But yeah, anyways, continuing with the bean talk, I place black beans higher because they're more firm and smaller, so it doesn't feel like it's flooding my mouth like some freshman girl attending her first college frat party. Uh, but up next, we got some fucking veggies, and I absolutely despise the fact that I have to rank these, but you all already know that the Don is gonna give absolutely no respect towards some damn veggies. The fajita vegetables are going in the absolute dog water D tier, and I'd honestly pimp slap the fuck out of you if you even dare suggest I should have these things on my burrito. What's the difference between a normal hard slap and a pimp slap? Uh, well, for one, it really doesn't matter how many fingers you use. Just remember that it's the back of the hand and not the palm. You see, using your palm is a bitch slap. The back of the hand is the pimp slap. Now, if you want to perform a pimp slap, this is how you do it. While very, very angry, and yes, you have to be in a state of anger to exude all your energy into this, you then extend your right arm across your chest in a 90 degree angle. You then tighten your biceps as much as you can, as if you're trying to impress Margot Robbie or Sidney Sweeney, and then you proceed to swing to the right with full speed, aiming for the cheek. The goal is to connect as much of the back of your hand with as much force as possible. Ah, uh, so that's why Hunter calls it a pimp slap when he does that to me. Joe, uh, everything at home going okay? I'd rather not talk about it. What if he watches this video? Then it'll be back to the cage for me. I don't even want to begin unraveling that mess that is Joe's personal life. But yeah, that pimp slap is a good one. Now on to our next set of veggies, which I will give slightly more respect to because I'm putting the fresh tomato salsa into C tier. I still wouldn't want it on my burrito, but I understand that there are some people who enjoy it. And to be fair, it does moisten up the burrito a bit. Then after that, we got some guacamole and you'd think I'd twerk and have my butt flutter in the air with how good guac usually is. But my problem with Chipotle is that they always fucking put my guac on one side of my burrito because the artards who make it seem to just want to fuck up my burrito at any time possible. They're probably trying to save your life and get you to consume less Chipotle. Shut the hell up, Barack. But I'm sure that this problem is fixed with a burrito bowl. But guess what also does not get an S tier rating? The fact that they charge you more to add some guac, like you got me fucked up. Why even have it there to entice me if you're gonna be charging me even more as if I'm not paying a goddamn house loan for one burrito? This has to go into A tier for me. After that, we got the Monterey Jack cheese. And of course, you all already know that I need this in my burrito. It is a must have and therefore goes into S tier. And before anyone interject, I just wanna say that no, I do not have Queso Blanco going high because this shit is an honest to God B tier at best. You're just not a real cheese lover like the rest of us, Don. I love cheese, I just don't like that damn queso blanco. Following that, we got some more mid, and that of course is the roasted chili corn salsa that I have going into C tier. This just makes your order more wet, and while I do like the bits of corn, it just doesn't do it for the Don. What does do it for me is the goddamn sour cream, which I have going straight into S tier. And while yes, this does have the same issue as guac sometimes where they just put everything on one side, and when you bite your burrito, you get a mouthful of just tortilla and sour cream. But I will say that the fact that sour cream is free is what puts it up into S tier for me. Now that's a banger of a ranking right there. Some sour cream literally goes with almost anything, and it most certainly belongs in the burrito or a burrito bowl. I know, I know, the Don knows how to pump out bangers only, like have you seen my daughters? Now God damn if I weren't there, Dad. Oh, believe you me, Donald, I most certainly am familiar with your daughter's game. I saw her have a wardrobe malfunction on that walkway. That Reddit post is still up and is indeed a banger. Kudos on making Ivanka. Joe, don't talk about my daughters in that way. Yeah, that's incredibly insensitive of you, Joe. Yeah, because the only man who can talk about her in that way is me, Joe. Dear God, no, what in the sweet home Alabama is happening here? 
Listen, man, game recognizes game. And I know that if I weren't related to her, I'd be all up in that. Anyways, following that banger in S tier and the banger of my daughter, we then have two back-to-back -back C tier placements in both salsas because I frankly don't like adding salsa to my shit. If you like adding some spicy salsa to your shit, then good for you. Like, no one is gonna applaud you for it. At most, you'd get an okay badass from me, and I mean that fully sarcastically. But oh man, we got an A tier up next, and that is some romaine lettuce, because this adds some nice crunch and freshness to your bowl and burrito, and I personally would take this over the corn and tomato shit. But holy shit, guys, we've reached the holy grail part of the ranking, and that, of course, is all the meats on here, and oh man, call me Joe with the way I am meat watching this list right now. Oh, the Joe dog knows a thing or two about meat watching. Some would say that I would take home gold in the meat watching Olympics. You know what, I'm not gonna argue with that. But anyways, up first we got barbacoa, and a lot of people have told me that they've never had it because they stay true to chicken or steak, and boy do I have news for you because this shit is an automatic S-tier banger. You are missing out if you've never tried it, and it's halal friendly because it's pure beef, so I'm so happy to report that you can eat it, Barack. Jesus Christ, we've been over this so many times, but I am a Christian. Shit, man, maybe you got a cousin named Christian, but I ain't buying that. Your ass on Ramadan time right now. But anyways, carnitas up next, and this one is not halal and is actually made of pork, but thankfully my ass can pig out and eat as much of this delicious shit as I want. And this is going straight into A tier. I won't have it all the time, but a good switch up from barbacoa is needed from time to time. But here comes the one that'll make the people angry, and that is the fact that I have chicken going into B tier. Like, it isn't bad, but man, you can have chicken anytime you want. So why would you want it at Chipotle? I don't get it. What if I just like Chicken Donald, and I don't mean choking the chicken? Joe people obviously know you don't mean that. Honestly, it can go either way with Joe, but I'd just rather have the other meats on here. But we're on to our final S tier, and that, of course, is steak. Now, this is superior to chicken in every way, but hey, like I said, it's good to switch it up with carnitas or barbacoa, but honestly, I prefer barbacoa to this. Then lastly, we got some sofritas, and I ain't no soy boy. So of course, I have this going into C tier because it still isn't as bad as those goddamn veggies. Did you guys know soy can give you titties? Joe, stop spreading dumb myths like that. Soy has been repeatedly shown to not cause breast growth or impact estrogen at more normal and even high levels of soy consumption. Damn, what the hell? I've been eating so much soy for no reason because I was trying to grow out my calcium cannons. I was gonna call them my Biden honkers. May God save you. What is up, gang? We are back with another tier list, and we are all so happy to bring you this Arizona tier list. We constantly drink these because, well, who can beat that 99 cent price tag and they're just delicious? It's probably because of all the sugar that they have. Like, have you guys ever looked at the amount of sugar that these things have? And people drink more than one of these a day. No shit, Joe, but that's why you also get their diet drinks. They may have the best diet flavors in the goddamn game. I will forever love their green tea flavor and their diet Arnold Palmer is basically my drinking water for the weekend. That sounds super unhealthy, but it's not my life. So let's just ignore that and get started with this wonderful list. Up first, we got the Arizona Lemon Flavor Iced Tea, and their iced teas are absolute bangers. I love all, if not most, of their stuff, and they do honestly have the best diet drinks in the game. But yeah, I think I will place this drink at a solid A tier. I really do like this flavor. Now, this is a banger. I agree wholeheartedly with this selection, and I would even go as far to say is that this is a genius level placement. Well, let's relax now. It's just a list. He's not running the country or anything, so he doesn't deserve to be called a genius. Relax, Joe. No need to get so jealous. Up next, we got the fruit punch drink. And yet again, I will be placing this into A tier. It's a really freaking solid flavor, and I think the biggest problem with this list will be choosing the bad flavors. Like any Arizona drinker knows that most of what they put out are pure bangers. They just taste so good, and I don't have a lot, or actually, I don't really have any bad things to say sometimes. I guess that's valid, um, but I can come up with a lot of bad things. Like guys, can we talk about the amount of sugar? Well, yeah, we know that. We already discussed that, Joe. Plus, you can't even say anything because you've said that you love Arizona's yourself. Like, I'm pretty sure you said this yesterday. Why do you even think we're making this list if we all didn't like drinking them? Well, uh, I, I just thought you were thinking out of the box. Dude, you were drinking in Arizona when I told you this. Whatever. 
Let's keep moving forward and the Golden Bear Strawberry Lemonade is a bop. And I have this going into A tier, oh snap. I also see this next flavor and I can't even lie to you. I have the Grape Aid Arizona going into S tier. We have too many bangers on board and then this masterpiece of a flavor comes by. Well, it doesn't surprise me to see that you would put the grape flavor up there. Maybe it's genetics or something. And I, uh, of course, mean that your relatives must like it and your close family must like grapes as well. And, uh, shit. See, what Donald means is we all assume you like grape flavored things because A you're A big black. fan of fruit. You two are testing me today. But yeah, I love grape flavored stuff. It's okay though, because I also recognize the greatness in the other flavors. We yet again have another S tier and that is the green tea flavor. It is amazing and a classic Arizona flavor. They even have a cucumber version of this, and that one slaps, too. I'd still prefer the OG, but it's nice to switch it up. And I can't talk about the best flavors without mentioning the classic and favorite. The Arnold Palmer is going up into S tier as well. I don't think I need to explain why I have this so high, because this shit is a slapper. Anyone who has had Arizona knows it is banging. Okay, so no hate or anything, but how the hell do we have back-to-back-to-back S-tier placements? Like, no way you actually think they're all the same level, Barry. But I fucking do. And you know what? The Kiwi Strawberry coming up next is also a certified banger that belongs in S-tier. You are trolling me right now. You have to at least put grape down in A or even B. Joe, let's not touch that grape situation or we will get canceled. I, for one, enjoy this placement and think Barack has done a splendid job. Hmm. I'm not entirely buying it, but I'll let it slide. I still genuinely do believe that all those flavors at S tier are certified bangers. Arizona is just such a great company that it's hard to choose or rank flavors low, except for Mucho Mango, which I have in B tier. Dude, you are making me angry. Now let me be clear. There is a perfectly reasonable and sensible reason as to why I do not like it that much. It's because I have had so much of it and I am sick of it. Okay, Barack, that's kind of a fuck-ass situation. How are you going to blame Mucho Mango for your inability to swap flavors or even drink another thing? I don't know. Like how I did just now, I guess. Either way, I have the peach iced tea and raspberry iced tea also going into B tier. I like them, but I'd rather have green tea or an Arnold Palmer. They're pretty good, though, and I would recommend the audience still try them over the Mucho Mango. That's a bit excessive, but whatever, man. It's your list, so go ahead and hate on mango, I guess. Thanks, Donald. Following up all of that, I have the watermelon flavor going into A tier. He is trolling right now. It's a good flavor, but how is it above the other three? Ah! Jesus! What the hell? Well, you made him power screech and then leave. You done broke, Joe. You happy about that? A little bit, actually, yeah. He always does that to us, so it was nice to dish it back to him. So you actually don't think those flavors are that low on the ranking? God, no. I love Mucho Mango and Peach Iced Tea. The raspberry can stay in B, though. Like, I still like it, but A, I would actually rather have the other teas. Actually, wait. I think I wouldn't have their sweet tea over that, and I will be placing that into B tier. Barry, you're really losing your touch with the list, man. How is there no C or D tier? Dude, Arizona fucking slaps. I don't think I'd put more than two flavors under an A tier, in all honesty. Except for this herbal tonic, actually. I've never had it, but the can looks unappetizing. Like I would not go in a store and look at it and go, ooh, this looks great. I'd leave that right where it was, but I'll still place it in C tier. Could have gone D tier for that one at least. I mean, look at that yellow ass can. Looks gross. And you could have placed jalapeno Cheetos higher, but you didn't on your tier list. Jesus, man, you're still hung up over that? What is up, gang? Your presidential trio is back and we are excited to do this tier list right here, which is about canned food. Normally we get Donald to handle food-related things because of his elite eating skills, but he isn't that knowledgeable on canned foods. Sorry, I like my food fresh, sue me, but I will admit that canned tuna is a slapper, and I am quite frankly a huge fan of that. Yeah, and I am a huge fan of canned sardines. I love eating them with the tomato sauce and stuff. Yeah, we can unfortunately tell that you love sardines, Joe, because you never brush after eating them, but I will admit that you and Donald have good taste, but enough of that. We don't want to jump ahead of the list, so let's go ahead and get started, and up first, we got some canned artichoke hearts. Okay, so I got to keep it real with everyone. I freaking hate artichoke hearts, and we'll proudly put this in D tier. 
Oh, man, I love artichokes. What the heck, man? What's next? Sweet peas going into D tier? You cannot be serious, Joey. This thing is gross, and you know what? I do believe that you love it, which makes me even more confident that this belongs in D tier. It's okay, though, because we have back-to-back -back Chef Boy Artie cans, and one is beefaroni and the other is the classic ravioli. I'm proud to say that I freaking love the both of these, and I will be placing the beefaroni into A tier. And even though I know many of you will probably call me out on this, I do not mind. I'm placing the ravioli into S tier because of legacy reasons. This was the one that put Chef Boyardee on the map, and I will give it the praise it deserves. To be fair, though, it's basically the beefaroni, but in different pasta form. Yeah, there can't be much of a difference between those two. Like, it's the same sauce and meat, so it basically is just a change in pasta. Either way, I do enjoy me some Chef Boyardee, so I support this message. Thanks, Donald. And up next, we got canned chicken breast. And I am not a WeGo Gym type of person, so I don't really care about the macros and how much protein is in canned chicken and how good it is for meal prep. So I am placing it into B tier because it actually isn't bad, but you will not catch me eating canned chicken on the regular. Something about it just seems off, and I do not want to get used to eating chicken from a can. Then following that, we got another A tier, and that is canned chili. Come on now, this was an easy A, maybe even an S tier to some. Who doesn't like some good chili in a can, if you ever go camping and bring one of these? Man, that is game over, because everyone is going to be munching on your chili. I absolutely love it. What do you mean, munching on my chili? Hmm. Anyways, I can't have too much chili. I love the stuff, but my stomach bubbles up and then I get the shits from it. I don't know why, but I still don't stop myself from eating it. Even if it means I'm going to be clogging up someone's toilet, it doesn't matter to me because I need my chili. That's why you're never allowed to set foot in my house, Joey. That and, well, many other reasons. Yeah, that's pretty gross, man. Let's just pretend we don't know that about Joe and move on. Up next, we got canned corn, and I think this is a solid C tier. Like, fresh corn on a cob is always preferred, but if you're too lazy, well, I won't judge you for getting corn in a can. As for our next entry, I got fried apples going into A tier because this slaps. I probably am just a huge fan of canned desserts, but either way, I like it, so it's going up high. After that, though, I am putting the fruit cocktail in C tier, but only because I've never had it. And quite honestly, it looks like it would be delicious. I need the audience to help me out on that. Yeah, I haven't had any fruit cocktails in a can either, so don't feel bad, Barack. Nah, don't cap, Joe. I bet you've had the cocktails just without the tail. Okay, relax now, Donald, before you make Joey sound that word out. Next up, we got another decent one, and that is canned green beans that I'm then putting into B tier. I fuck with green beans. Let it be known. As for the canned mac and cheese, I do not smell that at all. It sounds quite awful, to be honest, but again, I've never had it, but it somehow has to be better than the artichoke. So I am putting it into C tier. And while we're at it, I am putting fruit cups into C tier as well because they aren't canned. Quite frankly, I don't even know why they're here. I love fruit cups, though. Aren't fruit cups basically the same as a can, though? They both last a while and have preservatives in them. Are we really going to be nitpicking that one triviality and then proceed to not give it an accurate ranking because of it? I find that very impractical. Shut up, Joe. Thanks for that, Donald. Now we can move on to the peach slices, which come in a can, and I love peach slices. I will be placing these into A tier because I love me some peaches. Can't say I love sweet peas either, but I'll give them a solid B tier. If I got to use these peas when I'm cooking, I will. Up next, we got a good-ass entry with the refried beans in a can. God damn, is this another good one. Bring one of these camping, and you also got yourself another banger. I'd like to place it into A tier, but it's like a super high B tier, in my opinion. Oh, no, the illegals are going to get you for that one Barack. Then Joey will shit himself in your car if you don't place the sardines high. It's true. I will actually do it, and I'll also do it in a secret area in your house. They don't call me the Joe Dog for no reason. Okay, let's relax, Joey. I thought they called you Joe Dog for a different reason. That's kind of gross, but don't worry. I will be placing sardines into A tier, but only the tomato sauce sardines. This one says it's in mustard sauce, and I'm not sure if that's good, but I can vouch for the tomato sauce ones. Then we have our second S tier, and that is spaghetti O's, and I love these things. Actually, looking at what's next on the list, all of these are bangers. 
The spam and tuna instantly go into S tier. Honestly, if there were a tier above S, I would put tuna in that. I think it is the ultimate canned food. And I know the image shows a plastic bag, but these come in cans, so I count it. Yeah, a huge W for tuna, and I expected it the whole time. Yeah, yeah, we knew this Hawaiian dude was going to put spam in S. But more importantly, where do the Vienna sausages go? I would suck the hell out of the sausage juice that was left over in the can. That sounds absolutely putrid, but I don't expect anything less from you, Joey. I'm feeling mighty generous today. And I do like Vienna sausages, so I'll put it in S tier. Why the hell not? Come on now, Barry, these cannot possibly go that high. Shut up, Donald. You only hate them because they remind you of your cock. What is up, gang? We are back yet again with another tier list. This time, we got a cake tier list ready baked and fresh for everyone. Oh, because cakes get baked, so that's why you said baked. No shit, Joe. Way to point out the super obvious thing I said. Now let's settle down, Donald. What if there's someone in the audience that didn't get that reference as well? Well, then I'd be surprised they even mustered up the knowledge possible to open up YouTube and click on this video. Like they'd have to be mouth breathers like Joe to not understand what I meant. But enough of all that, let's get on to our list. And up first, we got carrot cake. Now, I don't know about you, but I am a fan of carrot cake. Like it's still cake and has a good flavor. Give me a slice with a glass of milk and it's game over, man. I think I'll place it into B tier. I freaking hate vegetables and I would never place this cake that high. If you're so fine with carrot cake, why don't you go ahead and make a broccoli cake? Or better yet, just make a cauliflower cake. Jesus, Joe. What's the hate for carrots? They're probably the best type of vegetable. Sleepy Joe being weird is nothing new. Best to ignore his rock chewing ass and move on to the next item, which is a cupcake. Yeah, I don't know if it really qualifies as a cake. More like just a baked good that happens to have cake in the name. Plus, it's so small that it would piss me off getting that. Like, imagine you're being promised cake and someone whips out a teeny tiny cupcake. Me, personally, I would get heated as hell and knock that shit to the ground. Plus, the cupcake word has really fallen off because of EDP 445. Like, I can't even say I do like cupcakes anymore because people will immediately make a reference to him. Fist bump, Donald? See, just like that. Did you know the fucker got caught again for trying to meet up with a 15-year-old? Jesus Christ, what the hell has this world come to? I might have to put cupcakes in D tier for that. EDP sounds like a pretty cool guy. I might have to ask him for some cupcakes sometime soon. Yeah, you'll be able to ask him once the two of you share a prison cell. Anyways, up next, we got a certified hood classic banger right here, and that is cheesecake. I am sorry to any cheesecake hater, but I have this delicious ass shit going straight into S tier. Like, they have places like the Cheesecake Factory centered around those delicious things. Like, how could you not like these things? I freaking love cheesecake. I can't even begin to describe how much these bang. Sure, let's all suck off the cake made with cheese instead of giving cupcakes the flowers they deserve. Jesus, Joe, you didn't even like cupcakes until I mentioned EDP was a fan of them. You need to relax before they catch you texting some miners. Now, what do miners have to do with this? Last time I checked, this isn't Minecraft. Joe, I hate you so much sometimes. Let's just jump towards our next entry, which is chocolate cake. And I think we all know where this is going. Let's not lie to each other and try to make it seem like I will not be placing this in S tier as well. I can demolish a whole chocolate cake, and if you put Oreos on top of these things, I will go apeshit for these things. No complaints from me about this. Well, I do love chocolate, but guys, if I have too much chocolate or sugar in general, I get really bad tummy aches and then have to diarrhea all over the toilet. God, we know this, Joe. You make it like your central talking point every video. We get it. Jesus, this is raising my blood pressure. Thankfully, up next, we got yet another banger, and that is red velvet, and I think a solid A tier is in order for this delicious ass cake. Now, I heard red velvet isn't really like a flavor because the red is food coloring, but God damn, I love the cream cheese that's used on this thing, and that alone makes me a huge fan of this cake. Have you guys ever had the Nothing Bunt Cakes? Those things are delicious, and whenever I go there, I always make sure to get my red velvet or chocolate one. Ooh, my favorite is the confetti-flavored one. You are such a little kid, Joe. I bet you like sprinkles on your ice cream, too. And what if I do? You know what? I am not surprised in the slightest bit. Anyways, up next, we got strawberry cake, and I love strawberries in almost every single sweet or treat, but I ain't gonna lie. I feel like cake is the worst way of having it. That being said, I still think it bangs compared to everything on this list, and we'll be giving it a solid A tier in this ranking. Don't get me wrong, it's probably the worst strawberry flavored thing. Like I'd rather have ice cream or strawberry candy, but compared to all the things here, it is still high up there. That's not that crazy to say Donald. 
I don't necessarily agree, but I can see where you're coming from. But more importantly, what is that next cake up on the list? Uh, I have no clue to be totally honest. I think it's an ice cream cake. As an ice cream expert, let me verify. Hmm. Yes, interesting. I think it's all starting to click right now. Yes, the cake and the ice cream combining. Hmm. Ooh. Uh, so what is it, Joe? Oh, I don't know. I left my glasses in the White House. Jesus Christ. Let's just say it's ice cream cake. And if it is, I may have to place this immediately into S tier. Ice cream cake is possibly the best version of any cake. It combines my two loves into one, and I couldn't be more grateful for that. Okay, what about that last one? What's that? Man, quit it with all the questions. Always yapping and yapping away. Now let me think. Hmm, I actually know this one, and I believe it is coconut cake. I just wish our editor would have labeled these so that it would be easier, but fuck us, I guess. Anyways, if it is indeed coconut cake, I'll give it a solid B tier. I like coconut shavings as much as the next guy, but if you ask me, this is OD. What's that mean? What's an OD? Is that like being an OG? Come on, Joe, get with the times. It basically means you're overdoing it. Like, for instance, you are being OD with your diarrhea references in our videos. Oh, like how a drug addict overdoses on his drugs and he is ODing. Wow, way to take this to a dark place, Joey. Do you possibly have something on your mind relating with substance abuse? I'm worried about Hunter guys. Uh... Yeah, uh, let's just cut the video. What is going on, gang? We are back from a little break, and we are going to get started with our barbecue tier list. I know we usually would have Donald for these food tier lists because he's an elite eater and consumes calories unlike any other president we have ever seen before, but we got another Donald versus video coming up, so we have to gear him up for that. First of all, Barack, I only consume those insane amounts of calories because I am on a bulk, and I need those calories to fight off the wolves that our subscribers think I can't beat. Everyone was up in arms over the fact that they thought I could not beat an alpha wolf. Again, if I get that guy in a headlock, what is he gonna do? He has no hands, and therefore I would easily choke him out. See, I know none of our viewers would beat an alpha wolf because the wolf would smell the fear on them and not on me. I will tame that wolf like a freaking Minecraft dog. Jesus Christ, Donald, please, I don't want to hear this again. We don't need to hear about this because you already explained it in the last tier list. Just be happy and appreciative that you get to do a cool tier list. The old Joe dog over here is stuck with nothing cool. I want to fight things or do a barbecue tier list. Joe, you don't consume enough calories, nor do you meet the melanin requirement that Barack has. Excuse me? Uh, disregard that and please let's get started with this list because I know you of all people must be well versed in eating barbecue food. You have to watch what you freaking say, Donald. But as for you, Joe, I would not worry too much because I have a special popsicle tier list ready for you. And if you keep behaving well, then I got a hot sauce tier list for you as well. Oh boy, I love popsicles and hot sauce. God, we're treating this fucker like a make-a-wish kid. This is like when they sub in the Down Syndrome kid to get a basket in the last minute of a high school basketball game. Well, at least then we'd get cheers and applauses from the audience. In this instance, all we get is a happy Joe. It'll please all the Joe heads. We are a unified force. What I feel is what they feel. Stop trying to start a goddamn cult, Joe. And let me finally actually get this list started. Up first, we got hamburgers. And I don't think anyone can argue that this belongs anywhere below an S tier. Like this is the prime staple of American barbecue culture. Holding a barbecue without burgers of any kind is like a cardinal sin. You should be hunted down by the highest forces of law and be subjected to cruel and unusual punishments if you don't have these at a barbecue. Like you have got me fucked up if I show up at a barbecue and you have no hamburgers. Like I will split a wig. Jesus, calm down, Barack. I actually did not know you were this passionate about barbecues. I was just making a joke about it because you were brown, but goddamn man, Usually it's me or Joe that has the deranged jokes about these things, but here you are saying you want to murder people for not having hamburgers. What if they're vegetarian, my man? If you come to my goddamn family barbecue and say you're vegetarian, then I will personally drone strike you. Ahem, sorry about that, guys. I uh, got a bit too carried away there. Let's continue next with another staple in American barbecue culture, and that is the hot dog. This is yet another S tier, like I could explain it. But we all know Joey here loves dogs the most, so I'll have him explain it. Thank you for allowing a higher power and being such as myself to explain the glory that are hot dogs. You see, they are the perfect type of thing to have for any occasion. I know I'd want hot dogs to be served during my funeral, but alas, I am here to tell you that they can be boiled, microwaved, and grilled. 
the perfect trifecta of amazingness. And apart from being super diverse in their cooking methods, you can also have them in different ways. You can slap some relish on a dog, mustard, onions, tomato, mayo on your buns, ketchup, you name it, and it will have it. You can wrap a piece of bacon around it and have a little bacon dog, or you can have a pure brat dog. Don't even get me started on chili cheese dogs because honestly, I will just ramble about them the whole video. That is the most coherent I have ever heard you speak, and the fact that it's about hot dogs is what is the most stupid thing to me, but I respect your level of meat riding. Up next, we got chicken, and I won't lie, a grilled chicken does not really appetize me like I want a nice, moist chicken. And if we got someone on the grill that doesn't know how to properly handle it, then I know it will be a waste. I think a C tier is okay for that because I don't really mess with chicken at the barbecue. Plus, then it feels gross to place any other meat where the raw chicken was. Moving past that, we got something that is even goddamn worse, and that is a salad. Like, who the hell are you bringing a goddamn salad to my barbecue? If I wanted to chew on something gross, I'd just yank a chunk of grass and start munching on it. A straight D tier for this monstrosity. What about the people that are just trying to watch their calories, Barack? Nah, I am with Barack on this. If you come to a barbecue, you already know what type of food is coming through. Don't be surprised when it's all meat and unhealthy. I will throw that salad bowl back at your face if you bring that. If I want a palate cleanser to get rid of the greasy feeling I have, I'd eat some Twinkies. God, that is so American. I love this nation, but yeah, I just chew on corn or have a side thing, but we're not there yet. So let me instead rate mac and cheese, and this is an excellent side dish. I will be welcoming you with open arms if you bring mac and cheese to the barbecue. I feel a solid A tier for this entry. And since I mentioned it already and it's up next, let me go ahead and rate corn. And I think I will be also giving this an A tier. If you do get too much of a greasy feeling or you're getting some meat sweats, a bit of some side dishes or corn will do you good. No need to get some salad or whatever that next entry is. What the hell is that? Spinach, instant D tier for me. I think we are being a bit excessive here, guys. I, I, I am not like putting my life on the line for salads, but I think they do some good for barbecues. Like whenever you guys go to Korean barbecues, don't you make a little lettuce wrap with the kimchi and meat whenever you guys go there. Why the hell would we go to a Korean barbecue when we are goddamn Americans, Joe? Next, you'll be telling me to go to a freaking communist barbecue. You can't be serious, right? Like you're both trolling, right? We're dead serious here, Joe. Anyways, up next we got kebabs, and I like these depending on how you make them. You can do beef, chicken, and shrimp kebabs, and all of it grilled, of course. Would I be throwing it back if someone made kebabs? No, I would not be, but I would enjoy them if they were there. I think a solid B tier is in order for this one. The next one, though, is a very enjoyable side dish, if you ask me. Like, if you ask me, I would prefer some cornbread over some goddamn salad like Joe over here. I'm giving this an A tier. Okay, I did not say I prefer salads over cornbread. All I did was say that they probably aren't as bad as you and Donald make them out to be. Look at this guy already switching sides, pathetic. Agreed, Donald. Then after that, we got another S tier, and that is mashed potatoes. Like, I don't think you can argue against this. This is like the only set of carbs we have on the list. Then, oh my God, we got some fried chicken, and this is also an S tier. Well, of course you'd put fried chicken in S tier. Okay, haha. -ha. Very funny that I said it was an S tier. But I know if your fat orange ass was making this list, you'd also have this going that high. Don't act like you didn't eat all my Popeyes the other week. You devoured that faster than Joey Chestnut in his prime. Okay, you caught me, but explain to me why spaghetti is on this list. Can I actually vouch for this? See, I always have this as a side dish because spaghetti rules, but recently I invited my petite Filipino friend to a barbecue, and he brought some Filipino spaghetti, and the Joe Dog has a new obsession. Like, shout out to all my Filipinos, because you guys have the best spaghetti the Joe Dog has ever tried. I hate to agree with him, and I know why he likes it so much. Filipino spaghetti has hot dogs cut up into it and is slightly sweeter. But I must admit it bangs, but normal spaghetti also bangs, and I was going to put it in S tier either way, but I guess uh, we can shout out the Filipinos. Then following that, we got yet another goddamn S tier, and that is a nice slab of ribs. Jesus, these ribs are so amazing. Like, I will need some falling off the bone, and I can already taste how good it'll be. I might need some ribs sometime soon, because just talking about them has my mouth salivating. Let's move on to our next entry, which might be a bit controversial, but I assume this is potato salad, and I won't lie to you all. 
I'm not the biggest fan, and I prefer a lot of things over it, but I do understand that some people throw it back for some good potato salad. I think a B tier is fair for this, but I would understand if you personally don't rate it that high or that low. Potato salad is okay. The Don doesn't really go crazy for it, so I think it's good at B tier. More importantly, Barack, let's talk about the goddamn beans up next. Oh, yes. Let's please talk about beans, because I freaking loves beans at a barbecue. Like, I will need them on my platter. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but they just add so much to my plate. Like, if you take a bite out of your hot dog and then get some beans after, the flavor combo in your mouth is just immaculate. Uh, yeah, I don't really jive with beans, Joey. I am sorry to say, but they are just a C tier for me. I do not really think they are extremely necessary, but it sure beats a salad. I will slaughter your entire lineage for that placement, Barack. Sure you will, buddy. Then wrapping up this list, we got sausages, and I assume it's just the pure sausage. I will be ranking this at an S tier still, because some sausage with a nice snap is a great addition to any plate at the barbecue. Man, looking back at this list, I'm pretty proud of the placement. Yeah, I like this list, but I know we won't get the same opinions from Joe over here. Yeah, but who cares it's just Joe? Hey man, are you still upset? Ha, huh, he must have taken a nap. I guess so. What the, how'd you get into my house, Joe? It'll all be over soon, don't worry. Run, Barry! What is going on, gang? It's me, the Joester, also known as the Joe Dog. And I am here with my two best friends in the whole wide world, and that is Donald and Barack. It's sad to me that you call me that, but I doubt either me or Barack return your unrequited feelings of friendship. I honestly hate you at times and merely tolerate your presence for our online audience. If that weren't a thing, I would have already left your presence around 10 times over already. We all know your son is so much cooler than you, and quite frankly, I'd rather spend a day with him staring at paint dry than spend one moment in Six Flags roller coaster with you. That's just how boring you are. Damn, dude. Ha ha ha, that's our Donald, always being so sassy, but deep down, I know he doesn't feel that way. I definitely do. But anyways, now that we're done joking around, let's get this tier list started, my good buds. Oh, wait, before anyone says anything, I do not want to go through every single individual beef jerky brand because there are so many out there, so we just dwindled it down to Jack Link's beef jerky flavors first and foremost. And then we added a Slim Jim because why not? I feel like they're pretty well known. Anyways, up first we got teriyaki beef jerky and I have to give this thing an S tier. I love the Asian persuasion that the teriyaki provides. And much like their women, you already know, the Joe Dog enjoys his meat in small bits and very Japanese. Yeah, I have no doubt in my mind that you would prefer small pieces of Japanese meat in your mouth. It's just so on brand for you, Joey. Yeah, you totally get me. I love those meat bits in my mouth. But anyways, up next, we got another S tier, and that is the original beef jerky. I feel like this is the pure essence of meat, and you truly cannot go wrong with original. Like maybe teriyaki is a preference, even though we all know it's delicious. But as for original flavored beef jerky, there is no dispute that this belongs up there because it is the purest form of dried meat. I can eat this on a road trip, camping, gaming, and even when I'm watching kids play at the park. You don't mean to say your grandkids, right? Like uh, you're watching your grandkids at the park, right, Joey? You gotta be more specific with that. Um, Joey, please respond and say that you were only watching your grandkids. Please, Joey. So following up the original flavor, we got peppered beef jerky, and these things sure are delicious, but I will only be giving it an A tier. Like it gets a bit too spicy and I feel like I'd rather have a sweet and spicy flavor or just the original. Because the pepper is like spicy, but it makes you cough if that makes sense. Like when you chew on a pure pepper molecule, that shit kind of sucks. On God, Joey, you know what? Thank you for standing up for those who can't handle spice because the peppered meat makes it tougher to eat because I swear they just add hella pepper without even thinking of distributing it evenly throughout the slices of meat. We cannot be seriously considering ignoring what was just said earlier, right? We're just gonna act like he never denied my allegations. We aren't ignoring it, Barack. We are addressing the pepper problems right now. But you must want us to talk about the pepper issues in the next one, which is another A tier in my book, and that is cracked pepper with garlic steak strips. Like even though me and Donald talked about how the pepper bothers us, I just want everyone in the audience to know that most beef jerky is delicious and we just nitpick the finest ones. There will, however, be some C and D tiers, so wait till you all hear about those. Thankfully for everyone, we won't be talking about those yet, because up next, we got another S tier, and that is these absolutely delicious pork tender bites. And for as haram as they are, 
I cannot begin to describe how delicious these things are. You all need to buy yourselves a bag right this instant if you are a fan of pork and beef jerky, but have yet to buy these gifts from God himself. I have to be honest, this whole list just looks delicious to me. I will have a hard time rating any beef jerky below a B or a C. Nah, trust me, Donald, we have some coming up that you wouldn't even wipe your ass with. Like they are so gross, I would rather lick some unwashed taint than ever expose my taste buds to those things ever again. But don't worry about it quite just yet. We are still on the path of goodness and deliciousness. And up next, we got jalapeno chicken bites. And I must admit, this is a B tier from me. I don't mind the jalapeno, but Jesus, man, I always find myself choking on chicken. I don't know how, but these freaking chicken bites almost knocked me out of presidency more times than I can count on both of my hands. These are choking hazards, and also I don't really like chicken that much, but it still deserves a B tier for providing something different to the table. Joey, why the hell do you keep eating these if you keep saying that you're constantly choking on them? Like, what sense does that make? If I kept repeatedly choking on a certain type of food, I would simply avoid eating in the future to avoid said choking. Yeah, but to be honest, I think I am addicted to the thrill of sometimes wondering if I am gonna survive this bag of chicken bites. Like, it gives me a big thrill. It's like gambling. But instead of doing it on sports or horse races, I gamble on my own life. And there is no better thrill than that, let me tell you. Enough of my kinks, though, because up next we got the Doritos collab with Jack Link's Beef Jerky and these freaking bang. I am immediately giving these an A tier because they are pretty freaking good. Like, it is probably the best thing in A tier, if I am being honest with you all. The sweet and spicy mixture is always, a, for sure, a great combo for meat. And if it's the Doritos flavored ones, then it is a home run and just got knocked out of the park with this great combo. Those seem deadly, but not as deadly as the ones we have up next. Like, there is no way that Jack Link's collabed with Hot Cheetos, and I wasn't there to find out about it until this tier list. Oh, but they did. And let me tell you all that it is actually quite, well, uh, it's actually rather okay. I am giving it a solid B tier, but honestly, that might be the hater in me speaking. Because when I saw the flaming hot on it, I was expecting pure greatness from these things, but I was disappointed when they didn't taste like the nectar of the gods. They are still pretty good, though, and remind me quite a bit of the hot Cheetos mac and cheese. Like, I also expected that and the normal Cheetos mac and cheese to be literally amazing but they disappointed me with how mediocre they were. Like, I will still eat them and enjoy them, but I was expecting more. And funnily enough, I prefer the hot Cheeto mac and cheese over the normal Cheeto-flavored one. Just goes to show that sometimes these Cheeto collabs don't always hit. Like, do you guys remember the freaking Mountain Dew collaboration with hot Cheetos and we had spicy Mountain Dew? Like, that tasted like they put pepper in my freaking Mountain Dew drink. I actually like the design of the can for that one, though, while this one has nothing going for it. But whatever that is for another day, because up next we got our very first C tier. And that is the pickle flavored beef jerky. And maybe it's because I hate pickles and everything they stand for. But I did not really enjoy these that much. Like, again, it's still not that bad and is actually better than what we got in D tier. But Jesus Christ, man, I don't like the flavor of vinegar and cucumbers together. Ooh, you are going to piss off the pickle lovers with that one, Joe. And quite frankly, I stand by them because I am a man of the people, unlike your sleepy ass. There you go again with the Sleepy Joe comments. Learn a new bit already, Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Anyways, up next, we got our first D tier, and that is the smoking hot peach-flavored beef strips. Like, I don't know who concocted this in the lab and thought to themselves, yeah, this shit is going to be banging because they clearly should be blindfolded and then tied up and be shoved into a car trunk and driven for hundreds upon of hundreds of miles and deserted into an abandoned forest and forced to fend for themselves for days and weeks until they ultimately find a way out and as they are about to escape to freedom or find someone to help them, we then kidnap them again and force feed them these disgusting slabs of meat until their stomach explodes or they choke on their own vomit because that is the most merciful death I can conjure up for these lower than scum human beings. I'd even do that one medieval trap where they rub honey all over someone and tie them to a boat and let the insects eat them alive as they drift across a lake. Jesus Christ, Joe. You have some morbid ass thoughts. And I think this is rooted in some deeper problems you aren't quite tackling in your own life. Do you want to talk about it? No, I don't want to talk about anything. The more I say, the more that can be used against me in court. Uh, I mean, I was just joking is all. I am just quirky like that. Anyways, up next, we got the next D tier, and that is the Jack Link's Chew. 
And these taste the worst, but it isn't quite awful. I'd just rather have almost everything on this list over it. Well, not the freaking hot peach flavor, but that chew is good for the first, like, two bites, and then it's just kind of gross in your mouth. Like, I think this product was invented to help people who are into chewing tobacco. So, like, respect to Jack Links for that. I can definitely see it as a substitute for it and can probably help with people who miss that chewing sensation. But unfortunately for me, I just am not a fan of it. It's fun to chew, though. I have had it a couple of times, and I don't think it merits a D tier. I like chewing on it for fun. And unlike dip, I can actually swallow this and get my protein. Yeah, I guess. But either way, this is my list. So I am happily leaving these where they are. And let's hurry up and round off this list because I am trying to go to the park right now. Anyways, up next, we got another S tier, and that is the beef steaks. They are perfect to go size and shape. And you can snag one of these and just snack on them wherever you are. You can eat these at home while gaming, while you're doing groceries, while you're driving. And most importantly, you can eat these while at the park sitting down on a bench and then uncomfortably being forced to leave after a parent was about to fight you because allegedly you may or may not have been staring too hard. But as I was telling everyone, I was simply focused on eating my meat stick. See, this is shit that will get you canceled, Joey. This is why we need to keep you on the right path and get rid of your outside privileges. Ah, uh, fine, dude. Let me just finish off this list. And lastly, we got Slim Jims, and I like these a lot. I think it's a solid C tier because they taste funny after you eat so many in a row. Like, I don't know, but they tasted mighty funny to me after eating 11 sticks in a row. Jesus Christ, why the hell was your dumbass eating so many in a row? Well, the kids in the park weren't eating them, and honestly... That's it. Cut this episode off or we won't get sponsors. What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list, and we got a little banger on our hands because this bread tier list will be done by no one other than the Don himself. I am a carb connoisseur, so I feel like I am a great person to judge. Our elite eater once again steps up to the plate as always. That sounds like a joke, but as I always say, I'm simply cultivating mass for my insane cut. When is that supposed to be? I'm looking forward to seeing it. The cut is, to be determined, I still am not satisfied with my mass. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started with this list. And up first, we got one of my absolute favorites, and that is a bagel. You all already know that I have to place this all the way in S tier. Get you some bagels with some cream cheese, and that by itself merits this high rating. Then after that, oh my God, we got ourselves another S tier, and that's Hawaiian rolls. These things are like God's gift to us because these are the perfect buns for any type of sliders, and you can make something as simple as ham and cheese sandwiches or something as avant-garde as burger sliders. Are hamburger sliders really that amazing to your fat ass that you'd call that avant-garde? I'm pretty sure that you're not even using that in the right way. Joe, I am more than positive that I am smarter than you, and I am definitely using this in the right way. Your sleepy self can barely babble a coherent sentence. Your ass sounds like Walter Jr., but sprinkle in a little bit of Tourette's on top of that speech impediment cake. Uh, I hate to break it to you, Donald, but I just looked it up, and it probably was not used correctly by you. The definition goes as follows. New and unusual or experimental ideas, especially in the arts or the people introducing them. Or if we use the adjective form, favoring or introducing experimental or unusual ideas, which is still actually wrong either way. Yeah, my bad, Donald. It turns out you're not as smart as me. You're actually as smart as a Chinese kid with Down syndrome. Well, that uh, actually seems quite smart if you ask me, but I refuse to sit here and get slandered just because I didn't know what the hell avant-garde means. And I absolutely refused to get told off by the dude who was talking about ice cream during the New Year's Eve thing on ABC. Hey, man, I was merely giving the Joe heads what they wanted. And as you can tell by the host, he wanted me to talk to him about ice cream. What the hell did you want me to do? Talk about those tunnels in New York? Can we please not bring that up again? I don't want any tunnel talk during this video. OK, let's instead talk about how I plan on gambling all of our country's money on the Ravens winning the Super Bowl. I cannot wait to pull this country out of its debt and even tripling our money just because I gambled it all. I cannot wait to see them lose to the 49ers or some other team. Frankly, I don't care, but now that you are rooting for them, then I kind of have to hate them. Anyways, let's not get confused and continue with the bread list because we are getting too sidetracked by Joe's tardness. Following these two amazing performances from Hawaiian Rolls and Bagels, we kind of falter a bit and get onto oatmeal bread, and I will be honest. I don't entirely hate it, and I'm not at all throwing it back for it, but I think I'll place a little respect on it and have it at C tier, because there can certainly be worse. Thankful the worst thing has not come yet, because we got brioche bread coming up next, and this shit is a slapper. Solid A tier for some brioche bread, 
and I'll also be giving whole wheat bread an A tier. This one might be controversial, but I actually don't mind whole wheat. Like, it's not as good as white bread, but it also has some nutritional value instead of none when it's compared to white bread. So I'll give it something rather than nothing. Since when did someone as round as my nutsack care about what is nutritious and what is not? Joe, let's be honest here. Your nutsack is no longer round. That shit probably looks like some curtains and can probably stretch more than rubber. But I told you that I am bulking and I do care about what I eat. You just catch me on my cheat days. Anyways, moving on, we got some rye bread. And even though I was giving respect to whole wheat bread, I am afraid that I will give absolutely no respect towards rye bread. This would only serve to wipe my ass with, and even then I feel like it would do a shit job at it. Absolutely awful and belongs in D tier. Now what's the hate for rye bread? I don't think it's that bad. You also seem to think that bombing the innocent lives of children isn't a big deal, so I don't think you have much of a say. Anyways, up next we got white bread, and I actually really like white bread, but to be honest, it isn't a world beater. Like, it belongs in a solid A tier because it does enhance a sandwich, but I won't go crazy if I can't get a sandwich with white bread. After that, we got banana bread, and I like this as a little dessert and would give this a solid B tier. Some banana bread slaps with some tea or coffee. Ooh, and then we got some sweet, sweet cornbread, and you all know that Don loves him some cornbread, and I think that has to go in A tier. Solid selections here, but I think I may enjoy banana bread more than cornbread. I feel like you can't compare the two, Joe, but amazingly, I won't actually hold you on that opinion. It's not like you said you liked rye bread. Following that, we got whole grain bread and cinnamon bread, which I have both coincidentally going into B tier. I am not a hater of whole grain bread, and if you toast it, it becomes better in my opinion, and the same applies for the cinnamon bread. However, I cannot say the same for our next two entries, because I have croissants going into A tier, and then I have biscuits going into S tier, just seeing that image of a croissant makes me crave a chocolate one. Of course, your fat ass wants a chocolate one first before anything else. Okay, to be fair, Joe, chocolate croissants slap so hard. The first thing Barack has said that did not make my ears bleed. But yeah, any type of croissant slaps. After that, we got two types of butter bread, which both go into B tier in my opinion. Don't have much to say on that, but I do have something to say about English muffins, and that is that they are mid as hell. They belong in C tier because it isn't that good. Like, I would rather have all things above it than an English muffin. And maybe that's just how American I am. But I can't have no English muffin for breakfast. Some cinnamon raisin bread, though. Now, that's a different story because this is pretty all right. I think it also belongs in B tier alongside normal cinnamon bread because I think the raisin doesn't enhance, nor does it make it worse. It's more of a preference thing. I personally prefer raisins. I am a huge fan of raisins, and I especially love raisin brand cereal. My only problem is when there aren't enough raisins. I hate it when they try to skimp out on that. Joe, I just want you to know that it makes complete sense that an old fart like you enjoys raisins. And I'm sure no one is surprised to hear that about you. After that, we got two back-to-back A-tier entries, and that is both flatbread and flour tortillas. I don't know why flour tortillas are here considering this is a bread tier list, but uh, either way it gets ranked. These two are very nice and I quite enjoy them. But if you ask the Don what he really loves, then I will tell you straight up that it is this trilogy we got coming up next because sourdough bread, garlic bread, and lastly, some French bread. All three of these are God's gifts bestowed upon us lowly humans. And I know everyone is going to get on me for shitting on English muffins, but now here I am praising French bread. And all I have to say regarding that is that the French know how to make some damn good bread. I don't think anyone is going to say anything against a pretty solid take like this. Your ass just said a very popular opinion. That's like me going, hey, everyone stealing is bad. I'm sorry if that offends anyone. Stealing is only bad if you get caught, unless you're a scaredy cat. Barack, you're spitting a whole lot of nonsense today, especially if you make it seem like Joe is cool. I am sure there are some sourdough haters watching, or maybe even someone who's allergic to garlic, and they can't ever have garlic bread. Either way, I don't care. And Joe, all I have to say regarding your comment is nice. That's about it. Okay, continuing on with the list, we got pita bread and breadsticks both going into A tier. I feel like no one has complaints with this. Feels like a good place to have them. Yuck, and up next, call me a damn hater. But you cannot expect the Don to like pumpernickel bread and even some zucchini bread. Like if your ass came to this list with the mindset of man, I sure hope the great and magnificent Donald puts pumpernickel and zucchini bread into S tier. Then let me crush your hopes and dreams right here and right now. I am placing these both into C tier 
But in reality, they're hanging on by a damn thread, because if I didn't hate rye bread so much, they would be there with that disgusting thing. Okay, the hate for rye bread is kind of out of pocket at this point. You cannot sit there with a straight face and try to convince me that you enjoy pumpernickel and zucchini bread more than rye bread. I don't even understand why you two are hating on zucchini bread that much when it's actually pretty decent. And, uh, uh, Donald, you do realize that pumpernickel is basically the same as rye bread. Wait, what? Yes, pumpernickel is a typically dense, slightly sweet rye bread, traditionally made with sourdough starter and coarsely ground rye. So in essence, you're still eating rye bread. Nah, man, you said it is made with sourdough starter, so that has to be what makes it better. I refuse to listen to your facts and logic and will instead proceed with this list. Fuck off, Joe. I am demoting your ass, and now you are no longer cool. Up next, we got our last S tier, and that, of course, is non bread. Now, I love me some non bread with almost anything. The more butter on it, the better. Actually, I do have to say that I require some non if I am eating chicken tikka masala or some curry. Like, if I don't have it, then I feel like I'm eating it incorrectly, and it just doesn't feel right. Okay, that is kind of a solid take, unlike your pumpernickel take. Joe, stop pointing that shit out. Just let it die out so no one thinks about it. Anyways, after that, we got pretzel buns and potato bread going into A tier. Both are pretty solid for selections, and I personally quite enjoy them. Get me a nice pretzel bun on a burger or some potato bread for my hot dog, and I will be set. And since I am on the last one, I may as well grate it, and our last thing is yeast bread, and I don't know what the fuck that means. I assume it's just normal everyday bread, and I will be giving it a C tier. It needs more flashiness. Does the bread need more flashiness? Like, what the hell does that even mean? I don't know about the bread, but old Joe here knows a thing or two about flashing. I can show everyone right now if you want. Okay, that's enough. Hello, all. As everyone can see by the title, we are continuing my epic and amazing tier lists with a Mountain Dew flavor one. Before any of that, I'd like to thank at the John Apocalypse for suggesting this idea because I personally think I am the biggest Mountain Dew expert we have. The only do you're an expert of is doing absolutely nothing in Office Sleepy Joe. Yeah, but I wasn't sleeping when it came to these lists. And let's be honest, you're just mad because we didn't do a soda tier list in general, but we'll get to that eventually, Donald. Your Diet Cokes will not be disrespected, probably. Joey, I for one am excited for this list as an average fan of the Dew. I love me some Major Melon. Barry, you gotta wait for that placement, but I can assure you all I drink the Dew as water because that's how much I like it. Bet that piss is the darkest yellow of the world. On God, it's almost orange. Anyways, let's get started with the list, and I have original Mountain Dew and C tier. It's a solid selection, but trust me, guys, the flavored stuff is so much better. I don't know, Joey. C feels kind of low, like as if you're disrespecting the Dew. Let me cook once again. Berry C tier is not bad. It is simply average, and I believe out of all these flavors that the OG Mountain Dew belongs here. As for the next entry, we have Livewire, and I'm putting this as our first A tier entry. It's a bit slept on, but I personally enjoy it. Hilarious hearing you talk about something being slept on, Joe, considering all you do is sleep. The only thing I sleep on is a bed, Donnie. Chew on that. We do have another A tier, and that is Major Melon. It's a little newer, but I love me some melon, guys. I do like melon, and this is one of the better, newer flavors, in my opinion. I love melons, guys. I am a huge fan of big ol' melons. In fact, I think I may be the biggest fan of melons that I know of. Right, Donald. The flavor melon has is great. Up next, we got Diet Mountain Dew, and out of all the flavors, this fits into the D tier the best because it's good for a diet soda. But in general, it's one of the weakest of the list. Don't worry, though, fellas, there's going to be another one joining it in D tier. I have to agree that Diet Dew is not as good as other flavors and frankly isn't as good as Diet Coke either because we all know that is the most elite diet soda. Well, I don't know about that, but it's a discussion for another day. This next one is a spicy soda, and that is the Mountain Dew Hot Cheetos collab. This was surprisingly not awful like I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it added a nice little kick to the soda and did not taste like utter garbage. And as for a novelty soda, I think it was neat. Hell no, fuck this drink. I almost died from the spice. It was literally like someone mixed pepper and soda together. The carbonation plus the peppery sensation almost killed my ass. That's why it's going in C tier, Donnie. Don't you worry. I wouldn't drink a whole case of these, but if they're there, I would definitely drink them. Then after that, we have another A tier, and that is Mountain Dew Frostbite. This is a nice flavor overall, and I like it a lot, but just not enough for S tier. Joey, I don't know. That shit is pretty good. What could you possibly be reserving for S tier? That is easy as hell, Barack. Much like with my Pop-Tart list, I'm only reserving two flavors for S tier, 
and the easiest S tier of my life right now is this next one, and that is Mountain Dew Baja Blast. This shit is so freaking good, I would go to Taco Bell just to get this flavor. Like, Taco Bell Baja Blast is simply elite. And then we have it alongside some chalupas. Jesus, I'm going to cream myself at the thought of it. Now you're straight spitting, Joey. Baja Blast is legitimately one of the best Mountain Dew flavors, and I refuse to hear anyone else say otherwise. Woke up feeling dangerous, didn't you, Joey? You know the Joe dog got that dog in him, of course. Then I have to put the ginger snapped flavor at D tier. This might be one of the worst Mountain Dew flavors to have come out in a while. Anyone who has ever tasted this knows that you would be better off chugging battery acid off of Lizzo's ass crack than ever drinking one of these. Jesus, the Lizzo jokes are back. I thought we were done with them. Only I make the Lizzo jokes, Joey, what the hell? I'll make a better analogy. Drinking ginger snapped Mountain Dew is like having Lizzo throw up in a blender and then mixing it with some dying person's stomach bile and then savoring every second of the sewage smoothie. Thanks for the tag team, Donnie. Anyways, up next, we got both Baja Gold and Legend going in B tier. Baja Gold just isn't as good as normal Baja Blast, in my honest opinion. And Legend is good, but it pisses me off that it's only available in Buffalo Wild Wings. Like, who the hell goes to Buffalo Wild Wings when they could go to Wingstop instead? Wingstop is way better than B-dubs if you're going to get wings. I can agree with that. It's all the same shit, guys. We have to remember to rate the soda and not the food, you freaking troglodytes. Sorry, Dad. And next up, we have Mountain Dew Spark going straight to A tier. I am building up suspense for that next S tier. But yeah, I have Mountain Dew Spark in A because it is one of my personal favorites and is relatively new. So I got to let it marinate a bit and truly let it earn the higher ranking if it ever reaches that. On God, you have to let that shit ferment for a while before we decide on moving it up. But out of the newer Dew flavors, this is a good one. Now, you guys may have been expecting this, but I have Mountain Dew Code Red going in S tier simply because it is the best year round flavor. Like you can never go wrong with Code Red and it is definitely up there with Baja Blast. I don't know if I agree with that. I tend to prefer the newer flavors more just because I get sick of having so much Code Red. No one is telling you to drink that every day you mouth breather. It is elite and I refuse to hear otherwise. Then to top off the list, I am putting Voltage in A tier as well. It's good, but again, not as good as Code Red. I want to get topped off right now. Like on gas or something? This fucking guy. What is up, gang? We are back with yet another tier list, and this time around, we are going to be discussing the best breakfast foods to have for today's tier list. And oh man, we have quite a lot to talk about today. Now, what exactly are the terms of this? Like, couldn't any food be considered a breakfast food? Like if I got up at seven in the morning, and decided I wanted some prime rib or some lobster in the morning, wouldn't that make it a breakfast food? Sleepy Joe, shut up because you're trying to raise a stupid point because you know damn well that prime rib and lobster would be a heavy meal for the morning and you know exactly what breakfast foods are what. Oh, so you'll get on me for saying prime rib and lobster are heavy for the morning, but then you'll have some people literally eat biscuits and gravy first thing in the morning, but God forbid a man wants prime rib. Joe, that sounds absolutely atrocious to have in the morning. And, uh, you know, that Donald has a point in all this. But enough stalling because this list is pretty large and I'd rather start it now rather than later. So up first we got apple juice and this is kind of whatever. So I give it a B tier. Like it's not orange juice, which is preferred quite honestly. Then we got a banana and that is a sorry ass hell breakfast if you got one singular banana. Like imagine you're at the office and everyone has a nice lunch planned and you just whip out the banana and that's it. I still like bananas, so it merits a B tier for me. Oh, believe me, I whip out the banana a lot of times in the White House. The staff has gotten quite accustomed to it at this point. Uh, I really hope we're still talking about actual bananas here rather than what I think it actually is. I pray for those poor attendants in the White House. Anyways, after that, we got our first S tier, and that is the breakfast burrito. It is quite perfect because you get a multitude of flavors and carbs from the tortilla. I am a huge fan of them, and when McDonald's has breakfast, I make sure to snag me one or two to have. Dude, if you want to know a life hack, then I want everyone to order McDonald's and order a sausage burrito and ask for either strawberry or grape jelly, whichever one you prefer, and then pour some on your burrito and enjoy a true breakfast burrito. I know it sounds weird, but you all have to trust me on this life hack. It does sound weird, but trust me, Donald, that not a single soul will doubt your food-related life hacks because of how much of an elite eater you are. Anyways, following that, we got rice. And I have had rice in the mornings alongside some sunny side eggs, and it is actually pretty good. 
It basically replaces whatever carb you have, and while I would prefer something like potatoes, I still think this is pretty good and give it an A tier. The same would go for coffee. Now, I don't really have coffee religiously, but I know some people go apeshit for this stuff and cannot function without it, which is why I am still giving it an A tier. Some people literally just have cigarettes and coffee for breakfast, and that is insane to me. Following that, we got some pastries, and pairing a pastry with coffee or just having it with some milk is great, and I think they, quite frankly, also belong in A tier. Ooh, same cannot be said for the next entry, because donuts are an automatic S tier. I freaking love donuts, and honestly, for a breakfast item, I know they slap no matter what. Get me a simple glazed donut from Krispy Kreme, and I will be a happy man for the whole morning. Uh, I hate to be that guy, but uh, don't donuts technically count as a pastry? Listen here, Joe, I know you actually love being that guy, and also if the list doesn't count it as the same thing, then I will not either. After that, we got an English muffin, and if you're just eating that by itself, then you must be some kind of monster, because a plain English muffin is insane, and I will be giving it a C tier. Oh my God. But up next, we got something amazing, and that is French toast. This is an instant S tier, because I will be drowning my French toast with powdered sugar and different types of syrups. This is like a personal favorite of mine to have, because I just love French toast. So some heavy personal bias is coming here. Then we got two back-to-back -back D tiers, because who the hell likes fruit salad and grits in the morning? Like, I get it, you want to be healthy, but you're telling me that you would rather have these two over any of the other items above. Maybe the English muffin, actually, but still, I will not be having either of these in the morning unless Michelle makes me eat healthy. Then, after we got some ham, and this goes into an instant A tier, whenever I get some French toast, I have to have some eggs and ham on the side just to really ensure my breakfast is great. Then we got another C tier and a hard-boiled egg, because honestly, if you have no time and just get a bunch of hard-boiled eggs with some hot sauce, that can be a decent breakfast. Like, it won't be amazing, but you cannot be expecting too much from boiled eggs. Speaking of hot sauce, everyone make sure to check out our hot sauce tier list because we made one of the best lists out there. Some would say it's because I made the list. Some would argue that it was a good list despite you making it. After that, we got hash browns, and this is an instant S tier. Like, I don't get how you would argue otherwise because these are like a breakfast staple. The next one, though, is just too hipster for me. Like, you gotta be some vegan Californian to want avocado toast for breakfast. And now, admittedly, it is actually good, but it gets a bad rep because of the hipsters. Then we got bacon, and you have to be a hardcore hater to not place this in S tier. That or you just don't eat pork, I guess. Either way, I do eat pork, so it is an S tier for me. Then I got crepes going into A tier, because a good crepe as a dessert after your nice breakfast can be extremely rewarding. I don't know about having just the crepes, but hey to each their own. Following that, we got some croissants, and I personally prefer bagels, if I'm being quite honest, which, speaking of, I got bagels going into A tier. A good New York City bagel will change your perspective on bagels forever. What if I don't want to go to New York? The rats there are huge, and quite honestly, they kind of scare me. Joe, stop being a pussy. I wouldn't use that word exactly, but Donald kind of has a point, Joe. Anyways, after that, we got some banana bread, and. Whilst it does slap as a dessert sometimes, I just can't imagine having them. As your only breakfast item, like this gets a D tier from me. Biscuits, though, get a solid B from me because a nice buttered up biscuit is a nice thing to have every now and then, but I don't really get breakfast vibes unless it's in sausage and gravy. Potatoes, though, get an S tier from me, having these alongside some eggs slap. Just like our next entry, which is the breakfast sandwich, and whoever labeled this spelt it incorrectly. But nonetheless, it is still an A tier for me. And you would think that our next entry merits an A tier, but quite honestly, and everyone in the comments can get angry at me, but I think cereal for breakfast is kind of mid. It gets a B tier for being easy to make, but wouldn't you rather have something else, like something more filling? Or is that just me? You're sounding like Donald over there, saying that cereal won't fill you and that you'd probably want to eat something after having some cereal. Joe cereal actually does not fill you up. That's like a snack or something light because you have no time to make something else. After that, though, we got some chicken and waffles. And while I do think this is great, I also think that this is a bit too heavy for breakfast, too much grease, but still deserving of an A tier. Cinnamon rolls are a bit too sugary for me. And I think I will be giving that a C tier. Then after we got muffins, and I actually am a fan of muffins and prefer them to the ultra sugary cinnamon rolls, and we'll be placing these into B tier. 
Oatmeal gets a D tier from me though. You have to be an old man like Joe here to genuinely enjoy some morning oatmeal. An omelet though is a different story because a well-cooked omelet will be amazing and deserves an S tier. Honestly, the two items after that also deserve an S tier because eggs over easy are amazing as hell and a fresh glass of orange juice in the morning is probably like a top 10 thing to ever exist. Like it sounds like such an amazing way to start the morning and both deserve S tier. Did you guys know that if you drink orange juice immediately after brushing your teeth, then it tastes just like Sunny D? That cannot possibly be healthy for your teeth. It would explain some of Joe's dental issues. After that, though we got chocolate bread, I don't know why it's in French, but either way, this is a solid B tier. Then, of course, we got pancakes, and you guys already know that it's an instant S tier. I don't even need to explain it. Following that, we got a parfait and some Pop-Tarts, both going into C tier. Now, many of you probably agree with the parfait one, but let me explain the Pop-Tart one. While I do enjoy this a lot and have eaten them for breakfast, I just feel like in the grand scheme of things, this is just a quick bite rather than an actual meal, so it's just kind of there if I need it, but I won't go out of my way for it. As for quiches, well, I'm a fan of them and have to place them in B tier. Raisin bread, though, is gross and gets a D tier from me. Now, what the heck is wrong with raisin bread? Joe, shut the hell up. You know yourself that you don't like raisin bread. You don't know what I like. Well, even if you did like that, I honestly wouldn't be surprised, but the rating stays. After that, we have, in my opinion, the best meat for breakfast, and that is sausages. This is an S tier in my book. I freaking love sausages. Oh, I love me some sausage too, huh? Weird, Joe, but yeah, then after we got scones, and that's a solid B in my book. Then we got another S tier, and that is scrambled eggs. This with some ketchup or Cholula hot sauce goes absolutely nuts. After that, smoothies get a B tier from me and strudels get a C tier. Like I would rather have a toaster strudel instead, but I'll get to that rating when we get to it. After that, we got tea and this is an A tier. Shout out British people because some tea with a sweet pastry goes absolutely hard. Then after we got toast, which is getting an S tier because it's simple yet extremely effective. I appreciate toast. How the hell does toast get an S tier? It just does because I want it to. A nice slice of toast with either jam or butter should not go as hard as it does, but it is absolutely amazing. Wrapping up our list, our final three entries are toaster strudels, waffles, and yogurt. Toaster strudels get a B tier from me whilst waffles are an automatic S tier. Get a good nice crunchy waffle and I will go apeshit. Meanwhile, yogurt in the morning is all right. It gets a B tier from me. Pretty solid list, but uh, you're missing something. And what is that, Joe? Some prime rib. Shut the hell up, Joe. What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list, and this time around we are going to be doing a burger topping tier list. And I, for one, am excited for this one because I always like to think I can make a mean burger. Let's be honest here, I know I'd make a damn better burger than you, but I just felt generous and decided to let you have this burger topping tier list. No, 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 let's all be even more honest here because we all know that the Joe dog can cook up something good. Just get me some chili so I can douse my burger in it, and then I'll add some barbecue sauce to give it a nice sweet heat element. And then lastly, some fried jalapenos or onions just to add some texture to my burger. Wow, that actually sounds delicious. I won't even lie, Joe. Like a sloppy Joe, but with some meat in the middle. Well, you know how the Joe dog loves himself some meat. All right, and your talking privileges are revoked. But let's go ahead and get started with this list. And up first, we got bacon. And of course, we are all fans of bacon here. So this is an automatic S tier. I highly doubt we'll have anyone say otherwise because this is just an amazing compliment to your burger. And despite you saying that your titular burger has barbecue sauce, I hate to tell you, Joe, that I actually only have that going into A tier. I feel like you can have a great burger without it, but I'll still put some respect on its name. Now this is just ludicrous, and I'm not talking about the wrapper here. That was a stupid joke, Joe, but I can see Barack's reasoning here because if you have a certain flavor profile coming in, then you wouldn't want barbecue on your burger in that case. That, and I feel like I haven't had a burger with barbecue sauce in a while, but I don't hate it. Thanks for the backup, Donald. But yeah, no disrespect to those barbecue lovers who have this going into S tier. Following that, we got cheese. And I don't know why the creator of this list just chose to put a picture of a full ass cheeseburger instead of just putting a slice of cheese as the picture. But once again, I feel like this is a no brainer S tier. Like I genuinely feel like if you dislike cheese on a burger, then you're just not a cheese guy at all. And Joe, I know you have some strong feelings about that. You bet your ass I do. First of all, I just want to point out that if you're lactose intolerant, I will give you a little pass on not liking cheese. 
but they also have lactate tablets to help you tolerate and process dairy products. So if you're truly dedicated to a good ass burger, then you would pop these bad boys and have yourself a delicious ass burger. A real trooper like me though would just shit himself while eating the burger, but they don't make them like me anymore. But anyways, if you're just one of those people that hate cheese, then this is like some kid saying, I don't like vegetables. And then you ask them, which ones? And then they hit you with the, uh, all of them. Like, fuck off, because the Joe dog will literally force his cheese down your throat because there are so many different kinds of cheeses and they're all wildly different. Saying you don't like the texture when melted is so nonsensical because melted cheeses don't have a common texture. They're all so varied. You know I was fully expecting a Joe rant about cheese, but thankfully we didn't really get one. But I'll summarize what Joe meant to say. If you don't like cheese, then you're a fucking dweeb window licker who probably huffs glue and paint. I don't think that's what he meant. Yeah, no, if I really said what I wanted to say, then the video would get demonetized because I have so many more worse things to say. Well, save that for your list because I refuse to allow mine to get tainted by that shit. Anyways, up next we got chili. And I don't hate chili and I rather like it, but if you put it on a burger, it can be a bit much. And while it does sound tasty, like when Joe mentioned it earlier in the list, I just feel like it would make everything too soggy and I'd be eating a wet ass diaper. That being said, I think a C tier is an okay spot for it. I'll let a C tier slide only because I can get some of the reasoning behind your logic. But the Joe dog loves himself some wet and sloppy things. Dear God, I don't wanna hear what else that entails. After that, we got back-to-back S-tiers with eggs and caramelized onions. Having a nice runny egg on your burger will just elevate the flavor profile of that damn thing and will also help fill you up a decent bit more. And caramelized onions are just the best. I implore anyone to give them a shot, even if you don't like normal onions, because the caramelized ones tend to be sweeter and taste totally different from raw or fried onions. As an elite eater, I can vouch for the onions, but I don't know about the egg. I love the hell out of it, but I don't know if S tier is the right spot for it. Like when I think of S tier rankings, I think of stuff that absolutely have to go on my burger. And quite honestly, I feel like eggs aren't in that tier for me personally, but I won't hate on the decision too much because so far you've been cooking with this list, Barack. Yeah, he's been cooking because your fat ass likes the fact that we have mostly everything in A and or S tier. Joe, you must have the IQ of a fucking crayon eating toddler because chili is not high up there and I know your ass is still butthurt about that. Okay, settle down gentlemen because we got a genuine stinker up next. And that of course is the hot sauce which I have going into D tier. Who the hell genuinely uses hot sauce on their burger? Well, when you're making a chili burger, it helps to add some spice to it so you can get some nice heat in your burger. Joe, stop talking about your damn chili burger because now it's honestly pissing me off. I agree with Barack here, because why the fuck would I want my burger to be spicy? On God, Donald. After that, we got ourselves yet another S tier, because who the hell doesn't like ketchup on their burger? I'm not trying to eat a dry ass burger, so I definitely think you need any sort of condiment on the burger, just to avoid the dryness. Then after I got lettuce into A tier, because I like the texture it adds to the burger, because it doesn't really add flavor, nor does it provide nutritional value, but hey, I love me some lettuce. Solid, solid dubs on this list, Barack. You're not disappointing me like Joe did when he did the 2000 snack tier list. Okay, enough with the glazing on Barack here because this shit is getting embarrassing. And listen, man, are you still butthurt over the grips placement? We all are, Joe. That was one of your biggest mess ups. But anyways, after that, we got two back-to-back -back S tiers in mayo and mustard. Mayo is a must have in most burgers. And once again, I am bringing up the argument that I refuse to eat a dry ass burger. Then, after we got some onion rings, and I don't know how I feel about this. Well, these things are good as hell, but I don't think I need them in my burger. It's a nice addition to it, but L would rather have them as a side. I disagree. See, this is how I know you don't have a galaxy brain like good old Joe here, because I think it's nice to have, and when I get onion rings as a side, I put them in my burger, and I do the same with fries, too. Joe might actually be spitting here. I think a solid A tier is good because I do know a handful of people who do the same thing that Joe does. Wow, even hearing that come out of my mouth amazes me because I know that I won't be saying that again anytime soon. After that, though, we got a certified S tier and that is fried onions, like I'm just an onion guy. So I will forever be happy if anyone adds any type of onion into my burger. This next thing, though, is quite controversial and I'm gonna hear both you and Donald out on this, but I personally don't hate pickles. 
I don't love pickles, but I don't mind them when they're in my burger. Actually, if anything, I'd prefer them to be there because it helps with all the grease from the burger. Hell no. The smell of pickles is horrid. If one of you pickle crushing people are in the general vicinity of my sniffer, I smell you and you smell like shit. The taste is god awful. I don't understand how people enjoy this salty, crunchy, dumpster tasting food. On their own, they suck. On burgers, they're even worse. Who wants slippery pickle slices mixed with ketchup, mustard, etc.? The thought of that as I talk about this is causing me to feel sick to my fucking stomach. Pickles have some kind of cult following too, like be your own person. Escape the simulation, the pickle simulation. If a pickle lover finds out that someone hates pickles, they are ostracized to death for it. You'd get better enjoyment fucking yourself with a cucumber than eating a pickle. Well, uh, I hate to rain on your parade, Joe, but people quite literally do that. But I would rather not talk about what people do with cucumbers in their free time, and I'll just chalk it up to a B tier. Now, while you may hate that, Joe, I'm sure you'll be happy with our next ranking, because I actually have pineapples going into B tier. Not too shabby, right, Joe? This is quite literally one of the most dumb fuck rankings I've ever seen. Pineapple is a fruit. You make juice with it, and you can eat it by itself. Why would I ever allow myself to pair my delicious burger or pizza with some fucking sour and sweet fruit? Shit, you may as well place syrup on your burger while you're at it. Barbecue sauce is a fucking A tier. But then you have this horse shit going into B tier. Barack, you need to get your brain checked out, and that's coming from me. And half the time, I don't even know what fucking day of the week we're on. Wow. Okay, man, but it tastes good on both things, to be honest. But pineapples on pizza remain superior. But anyways, after that, we got back-to-back -back S tiers once again. And that is normal onions on a burger and what I believe to be is either Big Mac sauce or chipotle mayo. But either way, this belongs high up there because it just adds so much flavor. Now, while I agree with your rankings, I just want to point out that some people don't like big onion slices on their burgers because it overpowers the flavor. Now, I disagree with this, but if any of you onion haters don't like it, please try fried onions or caramelized onion. But even then, diced onions provide a small but pretty good flavor to all the burgers you eat. Donald, you are being unusually positive about this all. Because you haven't messed up yet on this list. I am honestly quite amazed that someone would perform as well as me on a food tier list. Might as well call yourself Krispy Kreme because the glaze is unmatched here and is quite frankly OD. Joe, why can't you ever let Donald be nice? Maybe this is why he dislikes you. But anyways, rounding off the list, we got tomatoes and this also goes into B tier. It may not have a lot of flavor, but man, oh man, does it make your burgers juicy, and that is what I personally like most about it. Now, if it's some juicy stuff you like, then I got some Joe's secret sauce I can add to your burger. Just close your eyes and give me four to five minutes. Oh, hell no. What is going on, gang? Your presidential boys are back at it again with the tier lists. This time we're doing cereals. Boy, howdy, am I excited. Knowing you, Joe, you're gonna put some shit like Special K at S tier. Wait, hold on, guys. Where's the music? Our fucking editor is being lazy again. Frail, you fuck, come and put on the music. I was literally about to add it. Don't let him bully you like that, Frail. He's just upset that he's going to go to jail soon. Whoa, way too soon for that, Joe. And what was even funny about that? This is Donald's life we're talking about. Yeah, you dick. Ah, uh, hamburgers. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, whatever. Let's get this list started. We have our first entry, which is the Apple Cinnamon Cheerios, which I'm going to be honest, fellas. It's OK. Yeah, they're not as good as the OG Cheerios, to be honest. Yeah, like if I want something healthy and tasty, I'll get the normal Cheerios. But what's the point of the apple cinnamon? I'd rather just get Apple Jacks at that point. On God Donald, same can't be said for Cookie Crisps, though. It's a solid A tier, just because there are better chocolate cereals, in my opinion. Guys, I don't know that cereal has too much sugar. Oh my God, here comes this pussy with his. Oh, my tummy hurts. Man, grow the fuck up, Joe. Guys, it's not me. I swear I love sugary cereal, but when I have too much, I get an upset tummy and then I have diarrhea. Joey, that is way too much info, but you also know what that sounds like to me? What's it sound like, Barack? Like a personal problem. Got his ass, Barack. Anyways, we got Special K at C tier because I genuinely can't imagine anyone under 300 pounds saying, oh man, I can't wait for this Special K. I don't think it's that bad if it has berries and stuff. Oh my fucking God, Joe, that shit is garbage. You're lucky it's even at C tier. I think I would rather drag my balls through miles of broken glass only to have them doused in lemon juice as I get mauled by a bear than have Special K willingly. Well, frankly, I think that's a bit excessive. Now, I'm kind of with him on that one. Anyways, we got kicks at C tier as well. Like, they're decent as a snack. 
But I swear I've seen more people eat Kix as a snack with no milk than I have people actually eating it as cereal. After that, though, we have another A tier, and that is Apple Jacks. Ooh, I love me some Apple Jacks. Remember the commercials they had with that skinny piece of cinnamon? I just know that Mofo chases after big girls only. Probably wants his face smushed by Lizzo. I want my face smushed by Jenna Ortega. Gross, Joe, what the hell? I was just saying she's hot. Joe, she is only 20-something. She is basically a child, what the hell? We have to hurry before Joe inevitably says something weird again. Sorry, guys, I may or may not be off to perks. Jeff, feel me, man. Do you hear what he is saying? Donald, let's just continue and maybe he will stop. I got cornflakes at D because once again, ain't no motherfucker say, damn, I'm craving some cornflakes. That's like hearing someone say, damn, I wish there was an all you can eat buffet for just grits. My brother from another mother, you know what's cooking B, dog? Don't do that, Donnie. Up next, I got Count Chocula at B because it's a decent chocolate cereal and then Captain Crunch at C tier. There's a reason why you don't see Captain Crunch that much anymore, but it used to be banging back then. I swear they must have changed the formula or something. I remember munching on those more than I ever munched on my wife. Joe, what the hell, man? Nobody wants to know this. Joey, now you're kind of scaring us. Ooh, guys, look, it's Rice Checks up next. I freaking love Rice Checks. I think we should put that at S tier. Joe, you know we're not doing that. Were you trying to act cool and say funny things so we'd put this up higher? That is totally what that fucker was doing. Guys, please, I just think Rice Checks is underrated. Please put it high. It's going in D tier, and there's nothing you can do about it, Joe. Up next, we got Captain Crunch peanut butter, and I'm going to be honest that, and Honey Bunches of Oats are solid. Both are kind of slightly better than mid, in my opinion. I don't know about the Honey Bunches, man, but I guess out of all those types of cereals, that is the best one. On Gang Barack, when I get that big cluster in my mouth and bite into it, it just bursts in my mouth. Makes me so happy to have it inside me. Uh, yeah, I like the oat cluster, too. I got Rice Krispies at D tier because they're pretty bad as a cereal, and next I got Cinnamon Toast Crunch as our first S tier. Oh, hell yeah, I'll fucking twerk for some Cinnamon Toast Crunch. On God, Donald will be on all fours throwing it back. What the hell do you two mean by that? Like it's so appetizing that I am willing to twerk for that cereal. It is a very twerkable cereal. Uh, sure, well, up next we got one that I think Joe will appreciate, and I'm placing Mini Wheats at A tier. It is good as hell. Mini Wheats? Yay, I love Mini Wheats. I had to throw them a bone, Donald, plus they're not that bad. I like them a decent bit and feel like they're an A tier if we categorize the healthy cereal. I'll let this slide just so Joe stops acting so weird. Thanks, Donnie. Our next S tier is going to be Cheerios because they are healthy, lower cholesterol, and genuinely taste good. I agree. You can also have them as snacks, and once you finish eating all the Cheerios, you can drink the milk and it tastes sweet like honey. I know you guys probably would think I hate this, but I think this is genuinely good. I have no issues. Next, I have Reese's Puff at A tier because they are elite, but the other chocolate cereal have it beat honestly. What hell no? The peanut butter adds such a good mix, Barack. This is an L take from you. I know it should be S, but I just can't put it there. Maybe when the list is done, I'll rethink it. Up next, I got Rice Krispie Treat cereal at C tier. They're good, but still, I would rather have chocolate Krispies. I also see up next we got another Cheerios box. I don't know the difference, so it'll just go in B. You better not do Lucky Charms, Dirty Barack. Yeah, I love the marshmallow thingies that it has. I think I'm putting it as an A tier, fellas. The marshmallows are elite, but once you eat them all, you're left with bland cereal. Same can't be said with our next S tier, and that is the Cocoa Krispies. This shit is delicious. On God, Barack, then when you finish all the cereal, you got a bowl of chocolate milk. I hate to agree with Joe, but he's right. It's an elite cereal. Thanks, guys. And up next, I have Fruit Loops going at A tier because they're kind of like Apple Jacks minus the cinnamon, but they're really good. And then I have Raisin Bran at C tier. God, I hate Raisin Bran. Imagine someone giving you such a shitty cereal that they stockpile that shit with sugar just so you can eat it. Isn't that Frosted Flakes? You don't get it, Joe. They are not the same. Speaking of not the same, Golden Crisp is not the same as the other cereals, and I think it's a D tier. Unlike the Fruity Pebbles, which I have going at S tier because it is an elite cereal. Fruity Pebbles are so elite, Cocoa Pebbles and Fruity Pebbles belong in the Cereal Hall of Fame. I would once again twerk for these cereals. Donnie, settle down. We are not even at the Cocoa Pebbles yet. Shut up, Joe. We all know where it's headed anyways. I hate going out of order, but he is right. I then have Cocoa Puffs at A, and then I have Frosted Flakes at S tier. This shit is delicious, and it leaves behind this sugary milk. Like, I don't even care if I get diabetes. Well, I care if I'll get diabetes. 
Joe, you'll die of dementia before anything else. Don't worry about diabetes. All right, settle down, fellas. I have Captain Crunch Berries at A tier. This one is a banger, I'm not gonna lie. Whoa, I agree, but more importantly, where are we putting Double Raisin Bran and Honeycomb at? Joe, don't even act like those are contenders for anything good. Barack is putting that shit in C tier. Stop trying to play them up. Donald knows me. I also have tricks at B tier, but I really like those tricks yogurt things. Whatever happened to those? You know, I fucking love those things. I don't know what happened to them. Michelle probably ordered them to shut down because she didn't want to make more fat kids like Donnie. You shut your mouth, you sleepy fuck. I am literally the definition of a chiseled alpha male. Joe, shut up. Let's just finish this list. I want a game. I have Pops at C tier and Cocoa Pebbles, of course, go in S tier. There is no surprise here. The commercials for Pops made me crave it so much. But then when I actually ate Pops, it reminded me of why I don't get it. Realest shit you've said yet, Joey. Lastly, I have these Honey Smacks at D tier. This shit was sold in these big ass bags. It was like it was made to feed horses. It is borderline prison food. You hear that, Donald? You better start getting these since you gotta adjust to the prison lifestyle. Ah, oh, listen, guys, they are not taking me to prison. I'd like to see those fuckers try to... FBI, Fuck! What is going on, Gang A Lang? Your presidential trio is back with another tier list, and this time around, we thought we'd throw it a bit back. You see, what started our channel's popularity was a chip tier list, so we thought, why not start the new year with a bang and go back to our roots a bit? So this time around, I'm once again doing the tier list, but this time it is strictly a hot chip tier list. I still think it's bull that I didn't do this list. This could have been a certified Donald banger if I had gotten my hands on it first. Donald, you have said it multiple times throughout a lot of our videos that you can't handle the spice levels in different foods. How are you supposed to rate all these hot chips if normal hot Cheetos make you cough up a storm and give you the hiccups? I'd survive through the power of the people and the Don is a soldier who can outlive any event. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you can do that, but guess what? I am the list maker and it is about time we get this bad boy started. And up first we got hot Cheeto popcorn and these are like kind of puffy and don't really taste the best in my opinion. Like I think the whole puffy popcorn aspect of it ruins it for me and it just has an off tasting flavor if you guys have noticed. I'm not a big fan of them and would prefer the other Cheeto types that are on this list. Still though, despite all this hate I just gave it, I still don't think it belongs in D tier because I have something quite diabolical going down there and nothing else on this list tastes as bad as that thing that I will put there. So the Cheeto popcorn gets a C tier for me. Wow, all that hate, but you still put it in C tier. And then you hype up one of these chips to be like absolute dog water. My money is on the hot Fritos that are gonna go into D tier for Joey. Remember how bad he was trashing normal Fritos last time? Put some respect on my name because I did the same for Fritos and put some respect on the honey barbecue twists and chili cheese flavors because those two are banging. Either way, we are not on that portion of the list, so we will have to wait for me to denounce that one god-awful hot chip, but up next we got Ruffles Flaming Hot and this is a pretty good, but they aren't anything amazing in my opinion. I think a solid B tier is in order for this one. And quite frankly, these hot fries also belong there. Call me a biased Cheeto fan and tell me that they taste the same, but I don't care. I prefer the hot Cheeto hot fries over the Andy Cap hot fries, but don't get it twisted, everyone. I still very much so enjoy these and think they merit a B tier, just like the flaming hot ruffles. What did you just say? Uh, don't get it twisted. You have been hanging around Barack too much. That literally makes no sense because I never say that. When have you ever heard me say that throughout the entirety of our videography on this channel? It's just something innate. Joey picked it up by simply being in your presence. But I've been saying that since before I knew Barack. Oh, well, anyways, after that, we got some Doritos flaming hot chips, and I will admit that these are banging. I think this is our very first A tier of this list because these have just the right amount of spice and flavor, and you all know how Doritos are. You suck and suck and lick and lick all over because they just have so much dust on a chip, and then you chew. Please stop describing the chips that way, Joe. I don't like the way it all sounds. But it's true. That's what you have to do with a good-ass Dorito before chewing on it. Same with Takis, to be honest. Just not with these next ones, because I have Takis Nitro going into C tier. I don't really like these as much as the original, and I feel like they were just doing too much with this flavor. I will say, though, that they made those cheese Takis, and I am actually interested in how they taste. Have you guys ever had these? because I feel like this wouldn't work, but I am also super curious. I have not had them. Neither have I. Surprised your fat ass hasn't had them. What the hell did you just call me? Your fat ass. 
as in you are always hip and young with the fads and always seem to know what's up because you know Sleepy Joe here doesn't keep up with the times. But anyways, we've made it to that part of the list, guys. This is the bag of chips I absolutely despise. And I will be giving these Doritos ranch dipped hot wings flavor an absolute ass rating because these are stinkers. I was eating a small bag of these expecting some sort of greatness, but instead I got generational level stink in my mouth and I had to leave this bag half filled. For the life of me, I could not gulp this shit down and old Joe knows that spitters are quitters. So you already know I felt a great deal of shame when I could not swallow these. I don't think they refer to food or chips when using that saying, Joe, you should uh, probably use that saying way less. Matter of fact, just stop using it at all. The Joe heads will not tolerate this slander. I will use anything and everything when it comes to me. After that, we got jalapeno cheddar Cheetos and these things are also an A tier. Now I understand these are not spicy, but you guys have to understand that these things are delicious and it does have some spice. I love these things and fully believe that they belong up there. After that, we got our first controversial take, I believe, and that is the flaming hot Cheetos with lime. And I am uh, placing these into B tier. I don't think they are better than the original hot Cheetos. And if you really want these bad boys with lime, then why don't you just grab the normal bag and just squeeze the lime in there yourself? That way you can add more or less depending on what you like. You know, Joe, usually you say some dumb stuff, but I actually think you were spitting just now. The Joe dog always spits when he speaks, don't you worry. Following that, we got Doritos Flamas, and these are actually kind of underrated, I think, because these bang. If you had these, you know, they got the perfect blend of lime and spice. I think that these merit a solid A tier. And if you had not had them, I would highly recommend them. Now we can get on to what Donald was hating on the most, and that is the spicy Fritos. And I don't think they are that bad, but they definitely are not worth a try, in my opinion. But if they are there, I'll still eat them. And I think with that description alone, we know that it is a C tier, very, uh, but man, oh man, we then got our first S tier. And that is of course the hot Cheeto fries. I was gassing them up earlier. So you all should have seen this coming, but man, oh man, are these things amazing. I love getting the $2 big bag and finishing the whole thing. And then just feeling like the biggest pile of fat shit because I ate all of it. And then my stomach starts to go crazy in pain. Why don't you just not eat the whole thing? and instead just ration it out and eat small portions throughout the day so that your stomach doesn't hurt. That sounds like pussy talk right there. I don't think I will be doing that, but don't worry because the hot Cheeto fry pain is nothing in comparison to the black label hot Cheeto pain. This will actually have my butthole burning in pain and I will be placing these in A tier. Now, even though they hurt me so very much, I love their flavor and when I feel like hurting myself, I just open up one of these bad boys and have a dreadful time in the toilet later, and the spice will have me salivating a river's worth of saliva. That sounds absolutely terrible, and if that is your idea of a good time, then I would rather have a bad time. You just gotta enjoy the pain and torture that comes with something spicy, Donald, like it's a hurt so good type of pain. But yeah, following that, we actually have two back-to-back S-tier placements, and that will be the spicy Funny Uns and the original Hot Cheetos. These two are amazing, but the Funny Uns in particular are just great, like I love original Funny Uns and then you add some spice to it. Man, oh man, it's great. Original Hot Cheetos are self-explanatory. You already know that these are a safe bet if you want something spicy and delicious. I cannot say the same for the Pringles Extra Hot with chili and lime. These are not bad at all, but I just don't think spicy Pringles are the move and would rather have a lot of other flavors, but like I said, it isn't bad and definitely is better than the DNC tier stuff, so I think this lands at a solid B for me. Wow, that was not as bad of a rating as I thought. What are your favorite Pringles, Joe? I love me some cheddar Pringles or pizza Pringles, and I just much and chew a ton of them till I get that big old glob of chip in my mouth. It's the only right way to eat them in my opinion, but not for Takis because those need to be suckled on like a teat. I suck all that powder off that bad boy and make sure that I get a clean tortilla chip by the time I chew it. Then after I'm done with all the chips, I undress the bag and look at its insides and see all this wonderful red dust and like the tips of my fingers as I gracefully move up and down on that bag, getting into every single nook and cranny in order to consume the max amount of chili powder that the bag provides. This has to go into A tier. With the way you were describing it, I thought for sure this was gonna go into S tier. Joe, you have the tendency to make everything just sound weird, and I think it makes people uncomfortable. Good, if you aren't uncomfortable, then you're not doing something right with your life. 
But yeah, rounding off this list, we got our finalists, and that is the Flaming Hot Lays, which I have going into A tier. I like their flavor, but what I enjoy more is the texture of the Lays chip and just the satisfying thin chip. It has a really nice texture when compared to other things on this list, and wrapping everything up, we got Hot Munchies, and if you thought I was going to sit here and praise Hot Munchies, well, you'd be mistaken. I like the regular munchies, but if I am trying to eat hot chips and I get a fucking pretzel in the middle of it, I'm going to get upset. Still, though, it is not that awful and belongs at least in C tier. Well, looking at this list, it's actually pretty solid. Once again, you pull through when it comes to your lists. Thanks, Barack. I really appreciate that compliment. I have been cooking with the lists, and I'd like to think it's because of my new routines that I implemented into my life to help me concentrate and really hunker down on these lists. Let me share all these secrets of the trade with my precious Joe heads. So first I remove distractions, take regular breaks, put on some focus music or some white noise, plan out the whole day in order to timestamp things, meditate regularly, exercise, and get plenty of electrolytes. All those things will help you all concentrate and maintain better focus in any task you guys have. Oh, and uh, I do take a copious amount of Adderall as well. Wait, what now? What is up, gang? Your presidential trio is back, and this time around, we are going to be ranking our favorite set of alcoholic beverages. And you all already know that your main man, Joe, has you all set and ready for the best type of brews to get you messed up. Joe, I swear to God, if you try convincing that Everclear is somehow an S-tier alcoholic drink, I might have to publicly execute you. I can't do that, Donald. Even I have my limits. Especially after that dark night in 1978, I can't talk about the atrocities I committed, nor can I discuss who and what groups of people were affected by the heinous acts I did. But I can let you know one thing. It all started with the idea of, hey guys, wouldn't it be funny if we did shots of Everclear to get messed up fast as hell? And next thing you know, I wake up in a hotel room with mysterious red stains that I cannot disclose, and a bunch of what many could assume to be human heads in the hotel freezer. But uh, I had nothing to do with the Ted Bundy murders. And I am more than glad we got that psycho in jail. And now he is where Epstein is. Jesus Christ, Joe. What's that one Tame Impala song? Uh, oh yeah. The less I know, the better. Yeah, let's just apply that to this list. And please, for the love of God, don't do any more Everclear shots. Uh, I won't do any more Everclear shots starting now. But anything before that, just know that I was not liable. And that, uh... I in no way have any connections or ties to Epstein or the murders Jeffrey Dahmer committed. Ahem. Anyways, let's get this fun list started. Up first, we got hard seltzers, and I personally am a fan of White Claws or Trulies. Don't forget about Topo Chico's, because those freaking bang, and I'd argue that they are the best hard seltzers. That is a great point, Donald, but all in all, I think I am going to place hard seltzers in B tier. Like, I don't really get these drinks, because if you want to get drunk drinking very horrible tasting alcohol, then you might as well drink beer which is better in my opinion. But I guess if you're a sparkling water fanatic, then I guess your butt flutters at the mention of a hard seltzer. But anyways, let's move on to our next entry, which is rum. And the Joe Dog very much, so enjoys some rum chata. I think for that alone, I have to place it into A tier. It is simply delicious, and I don't need to hear anything other than rum chata in order to place rum this high. So you're literally just placing rum this high because you're that big of a fan of rum chata. There is no other reason aside from your huge personal bias. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. That's exactly what I said. Why do you ask some dumb fucking questions sometimes, man? Anyways, before Barack pisses me off more, let me talk about bourbon. And I love bourbon chicken, but that is not at all similar to the beverage. And I have to say, I am a fan of bourbon. Put it on the rocks, and I will probably have some of the best sleep of my life after drinking it. It's not something you will bring to a party, but it is a refined drink that I will have while lounging on my recliner and maybe watching some Breaking Bad before going night-night. I will have to give it an A tier for those reasons alone. I can't even lie, Joe. For once in your life, you said some real shit. That lounging in the recliner with some bourbon while Breaking Bad plays. Man, that sounds like a vibe. Maybe some fireplace going on in the background so you can hear the crackling of the fire while you see Walter say he is the one who knocks. I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. It's quite the experience, I cannot even lie to you. Now up next we got craft beers and you may be asking yourself, hey Joe, what the heck is a craft beer and why is it different from a canned beer? Well, let me tell you the difference. Craft beer is beer that has been made by craft breweries. They produce smaller amounts of beer, usually less than large breweries and are often independently owned. 
So if you want to help out the little guy, I suggest you try your locally owned beer brands. But I also won't hate if you get the usual Bush, Modelo, or Miller brands of beer. I still have craft beer going into S tier because they experiment more and usually have the cooler and funkier flavors slash brewing methods. That is an actual good take from you, Joe. Uh, why are you taking this list so seriously? Because I want what is best for our dear subscribers, and that is whatever will mess them up the fastest or whatever tastes the best to them. Some of them want a weekend drink to forget that the weekend even happened, and some just want something smooth and nice to relax and take a load off, and trust me, I am the expert at taking loads uh, off. Yeah, uh, anyways, let me move on with the list. And after that, we got gin. And I have this going into C tier. I am sorry for the gin lovers, but I don't really drink it that much. And it's not really something I feel like people go out of their way for. Like, when have you guys ever heard someone go and say, man, I am craving some gin right now. Can we go buy some at the store? Like, no, those combination of words have not been strung along, but maybe I'm hating too hard. I do think it is somewhat solid, but of course not what I would prefer. Hard hating on gin here, only to give it a C tier. I thought you'd give it a D with all that hating. He must be reserving D tier for something truly awful if he's willing to absolutely trash gin for that long, but still give it a C tier. Guys, can we not talk about it yet? I shudder at the thought of it, but let's instead move on with the list. And up next, we got red wine. Now with Thanksgiving coming up, I have to place red wine into A tier. Having this paired up with some greasy or fatty food during Thanksgiving is some of the best shit I will ever experience in my life. They also say that it helps aid with digestion, and even if it doesn't, you will catch the Joe dog getting tipsy off the Thanksgiving wine. Is that when you start sniffing all the girls in your family, Joe? Don't be weird, man. This is my family we are talking about, and anyways, I do the sniffing before as well, so your point is moot. But anyways, after that, we got some vodka, and let me hear my vodka haters loud and proud. Okay, good now that you all outed yourselves. I want you all to take a long look in the mirror and realize that you're wrong. A good vodka is extremely smooth, and honestly, I compare it to tequila at times because when you have a good version of either, you know you're gonna have a good time. I am happily placing this magical elixir into S tier. I will use vodka to mix drinks or just take straight up shots of it if I want to. The vodka take is a good one, but how the hell is it similar to tequila? Well, uh, I just like taking shots of them both. So I guess it's the same to me. It's kind of like our next entry, which is white wine. It is similar to red wine, but it isn't at the same time, but I still have it going into A tier, despite the fact. Now let's talk about something that is also similar to another thing on our list, and that is whiskey. It is essentially very close to bourbon, but ultimately there are some differences, and that mainly comes in the form of flavor. I am a huge whiskey guy, and I will be placing this into S tier. Give me some Jameson whiskey, and I guarantee it is wraps. Whiskey is a bona fide S tier. I am glad you have some semblance of a brain, Joe. I can't even lie. When you volunteered and kept begging us to do this, I really had my doubts, but you keep proving me wrong. Okay, yes, we get it. You thought I was going to be a little jokester, but I take this seriously, man. Getting drunk is one of the many things I do better than being a president. That along with many other things. You wish, buddy. Anyways, up next, we got some cider, and I really have no strong opinions on this. It's a solid B tier, in my opinion, but moving past that, we got tequila. And oh boy, I'm a huge fan of this stuff. Like, I actually don't understand tequila haters. Like, all I hear is, oh man, I get super messed up on tequila. It's dangerous. Like, what the hell? Stop being a pussy and just drink and handle it. See me personally, I will always be an advocate for this S tier drink and will forever love it. I don't even need a lime with my shit or a chaser of any kind because the Joe Dog is a freaking unit of pure alcoholic power. You've all seen Hunter run amok. Where do you all think he got it from? You know what? A lot is starting to come together when it comes to your family dynamic or just however Hunter acts. I just think it's all clicking now. Yeah, he gets it from his old man, but my crack days are over. And now here come the beer days. And speaking of which, we got good old canned beer, and I myself am a bush man, but not just any kind because I need me some peach-flavored bush specifically. I will do a handstand twerk off the wall if you give me enough bush beers and I will have some crazy motion back there because old Joe got some junk in the trunk, if you know what I mean. See, I want to believe you, but I just know that Donald has some crazy bunda in his trunk. Do not sexualize me, Barack. I will compete for him bunda for bunda with him and will win out if you see my motion. After all that, we got commotion, we got brandy up next, and I am a mild fan of brandy, but I still believe it to be better than gin. I think I will give it a solid B tier, but up next we got an elixir of magic, and that is mead. Now this is some ancient tribal stuff like things the Vikings used to drink 
And the longer you ferment this wonderful thing, the more the alcohol content is. And I have had some delicious mead that was made at home, and I swear one glass will mess you up, and the flavor was absolutely divine. I will have to give this an S tier. You've been watching people make mead on TikTok, haven't you, Joe? I may or may not have dabbled in some mead-making TikToks, but that is neither here nor there. However, I would recommend people to look up mead-making YouTube videos because it is super interesting. It's like watching Guga Foods make some yummy steaks. But anyways, let's finish the list because we are basically at the finish line. And up last, we got Everclear. Man, oh man, this is going to be a D tier for me. I cannot handle Everclear and it tastes like garbage. Have any of you ever had shots of Everclear? I would not recommend it because it absolutely burns and should only be used as a mixer. And even when you do use it like that, the drinks end up tasting awful too. I'm not a fan of this and will place it into D tier. Jesus, Joe, you have something against Everclear, don't you? Next, you'll be saying that one night you blacked out on Everclear shots and started a national war crime. What? I was in no way involved with the attacks during 9-11. Never accuse me of that or the Boston Marathon incident. Uh, what the hell? Uh, Joe, he didn't mention either of those things. Do you have something you want to tell us? I've said too much. Oh, crap, I'm going to end up like Epstein, aren't I? Uh, this was all satire. Let's, uh, cut the video. Hey gang, we are back yet again with another tier list, and this time we are doing a fruit tier list. And before anyone says anything, we do not have any exotic fruits here, so I don't want to hear the Latinos complain about the lack of guava, or the Oriental people complain about the lack of rambutan. What the heck is rambutan? That sounds like a funny word. Of course, this guy knows nothing about fruit. He probably gets all his fruits from soda. Rambutan are these little spiny balls that probably resemble what you have down in your pants more than fruit. Gross Donald. Let's just go ahead and get this list started. To start things off, I am putting apples in A tier. A for apple, I love it. Not why I put it there, but whatever, sure. I just think it is a super solid fruit. I mean, who doesn't like a good apple? Up next, I'm putting bananas in C tier. They're kind of just there, and I never ever go out of my way for a banana. Plus, every time I eat one, Donald and Joe always laugh at me when I put it in my mouth. You're practically asking for it when you're throating that banana berry. Huh, good one, Donald, but in all honesty, cut up bananas in your cereal slaps, I can't even lie. So it's fine to cut it up and eat it in cereal, but it's not okay to eat it alone. Yes. yes. Okay, that is completely absurd. Anyways, I got both blackberries and raspberries going into B tier. Barry put berries in B tier for Barry. Joe, calm down before you get a stroke. Hearing Joe say all that makes me angry that I'm also putting blueberries in B tier. Berries belong in B tier. Blue, rasp, or black, they all berries. Wow, okay, so he's not gonna say it again. Well, anyways, I got melons going into C tier. They are all right, but I would rather have many other things. Go figure Barack isn't a melon man. God, I love me some big old melons. I'll catch shot after shot of melons in my face. Yeah, I'll catch some back shots from some melons too. Now, I don't know about that one, Sleepy Joe. Enough. You two need to grow up. Up next, I got cherries going into A tier as they're pretty good overall, but those seeds annoy the hell out of me. Yeah, itty bitty cherries are all right, I guess. Makes sense you're not a melon man considering the cherries your wife has. What the hell did you just say? Nothing, look Barack, it's grapes and watermelon. Your people love those things. Now what the fuck do you mean by that? Ooh, now Donald, you know that's not okay. Now, 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 how about we all stop jumping to conclusions? I am just assuming that Barack's people, the Hawaiians, love watermelon because they are tropical fruits and Barry always talks about his love for wine. So I just assumed he loves grapes. I'm letting this slide only because you're correct. I love grapes and watermelon so much that they go in S tier. Now grapefruit though, I wanna put them in C tier because I like them, but I know everyone doesn't. Who the hell likes grapefruit? Are you an old man, Barack? You have to put a fruit in D tier and this is the worst one out of all of them. For the record, I happen to love grapefruit. Oh God, Donald, you're right. I'm moving it to D tier. Up next, we got mangoes and I love me some mangoes. The illegals sure do love those fruits too. I buy them by the baskets whenever I see one and they always bang. They're slappers, man. The tropical fruit is always amazing and same can be said about oranges. I freaking love both of these and I am putting both into A tier. I almost wanted to put mango in S tier, but I want to be a bit reserved. Not too many S tiers. When I get mangoes, I suck on that ma like crazy. I be sucking the mango seed like I'm getting paid to do it. Back in college, they called me the suck machine with the way I was sucking those mangoes. What the fuck? Ignore him, it's the dementia speaking. 
Then I got peaches going into B tier. It's all right, but I don't think I'm going crazy for peaches. Pineapples, though, I will go crazy for pineapples, and I think my most controversial thing on this list shall come. I am putting pineapples in S tier. I'll eat that shit till my mouth starts bleeding. Nah, man, I cannot. I'd flip mangoes and pineapples on this list. I don't want my mouth to feel like Joe's after a Friday night. You wish you had my mouth. No, Joey, I really do not. All right, settle down, guys. Up next, I got pomegranate going into C tier. They're good as hell and in juice form are amazing, but in its base form, it's too annoying to eat. Base form? The fuck are we talking about? Anime transformations? Just say that it sucks eating unless it's juiced. Can't even lie, Barack. What you said was pretty stupid. Like borderline window liquor. All right, whatever, but we all agree it's C since no one said anything. And up next, I got strawberries as our final S tier. The most used fruit in any juice, good as hell to eat by itself, and is available everywhere. Why the hell is avocado on this list? Because it's technically a fruit, you idiot. Okay, but like, why do we have avocados on the list, but not guava, jackfruit, starfruit, dragon fruit, or any other good ass fruit? Shut up, Joe. Sorry. Avocados go into a solid A tier, and all those fruits you mentioned, Joey. I'd probably put them into S or A tier. Does that make you happy? I guess it does a little bit. But where does Rambutan go? Up your ass. What is up, Gang Alang? It is your favorite president, the Doninator himself. And I am going to do a fast food fries tier list alongside Barack and unfortunately, Sleepy Joe. What's so unfortunate about making a list with me? I am the big Meech, the big Papa. They call me the Joe Dog, hold the mustard. They hold the must, but not the tard with you anyways. Let's go ahead and get this list started because I, for one, don't enjoy wasting time. We have Zaxby's and these nasty fries. I don't want to hear anyone try to vouch for these things. Frankly, I'd be a bit upset if you tried vouching for Zaxby's in general. Like, what kind of name is that for a place? It isn't that bad, honestly. I think the fries could have gone in the okay rating rather than the nasty one. I mean, it's pretty hard to mess up fries and make them unappetizing, to be honest. Oh, but they managed to do just that. Trust me, Barry, I'm a fry and fast food expert. The people know that the word of the dawn is the word of the law. See, up next we got Carl's Jr. or Hardee's if you're from another part of our glorious country, and these are pretty mid. I am truly neutral about them, just like how Joey here is completely neutral about our country going down the gutter because of him. What about neuters? I don't see what gutters have to do with them, but oh boy, we have Chick-fil-A fries up next. I sure do love some waffle fries with their Chick-fil-A sauce. Joey, you are spitting right now. Where do we have these Donnie S tier or maybe A tier even? This is how I know you buffoons don't know anything about what makes a good fry. They tricked y'all with their fries. Chick-fil-A has very neutral to good fries, but ultimately you may be asking yourself, Donald, are you crazy? These are amazing. Nah, man, trust the Don. The sauce is what makes those waffle fries elite, but I will admit they are still decent. I just think crinkle cut fries are superior and are way better for dipping purposes as well. Now that's outrageous. I would never fall for a sauce. Next, you'll say the Burger King chicken fries are bad. And if you said that me and Barack would go giga mad at you. I can't entirely agree with the Chick-fil-A take, but don't lump me in with your Burger King antics, Joey. I'm happy you said that, Barry, because the Burger King chicken fries and the Burger King Cheeto chicken fries are both not amazing, and I will be putting them below neutral, to be quite frank. They just don't hit the same. And when I think of fry, I only think of potatoes. The same can't be said of our first S tier, and that is the tried and true McDonald's fries. That is the most American purebred fry I will ever eat or taste in my life. Make sure you get them fresh, though, and you will be in heaven for every bite. I hard dick ride McDonald's, and I will never be ashamed of it. I am just upset about how they massacred my McChicken price. Really riding that McDonald's train, Donnie, but I do agree they have the best ice cream cones from any fast food chain. Quite honestly, I don't give a shit about your ice cream, Joey. I am a fry man, and up next I got a big opinion on the KFC fries. Like, you have to be quite a devious human being to seek out fries from Kentucky Fried Chicken. I would flip my shit if I asked someone for a fry and they handed me a KFC fry purely based off principle, but I still place it below neutral. Wow, you must really hate Zaxby's, Donald. On everything in my life, I despise that place. If I could sacrifice the life of a bunch of illegals in exchange for erasing Zaxby's from human history, I would. But then how will all your hotels and buildings be made, Donald? Ah, crap, you have a point. Never mind, you got me there, Barack. Plus, my beloved Mexican places would shut down and Trump can't go without his Taco Tuesdays. Anyways, up next we have Wendy's fries going into S tier as well. And before any of you crucify me and hang me like Epstein, I will ask you all one question. 
Have you all tried the new Wendy's fries yet? Now I know before Wendy's fries tasted like raw sewage being slurred into your mouth, but these new fries. Man, oh man, these new fries. I just can tell you all how good they are. My mere mortal words wouldn't be enough to describe the gift the gods have descended upon us. These new fries are the most twerkable thing on this list, and it is quite honestly a good comeback story from Wendy's. Jesus, Donald, I did not know you felt that strongly about Wendy's fries. Just for that whole monologue, I'll go get some later. Thank you, Barry. I feel like a follower of Christ spreading his message. Yeah, I've had them, and I have to agree with Donald shit bussin'. I don't know how you did it, but you made me like it less all of a sudden. Let's just move on. And audience, I need your help. What in the ever-living hell are those fries? Like, where are they made? They don't look good, but I just never had them, so I'll put them in that tier. Up next, we got Burger King chicken rings, and I will be placing them with the rest of the Burger King items. These are not fries, so I don't know why the hell they're on this list. Our editor, Frail, probably got lazy and just found a random tier list online and didn't bother fixing it. Of course he would. God, that guy gets really sick and then takes a two-week break like he's really living up to his name of being frail. COVID was scared of getting into contact with my body because my DNA is made up of USA anyways. Up next, we got Bojangles, and this is awful. I also just hate the name Bojangles. Like, who the hell came up with that? Absolutely pisses me off. They go in the same tier as Zaxby's. Now, Donald, this is a bit ludicrous. You only have two fries in a positive tier while everything else is either mid or worse. I think you're being too picky right now. I have to be picky, Barack. I wouldn't want our loyal viewers to eat dookie fries from some piss-poor establishment like Zaxby's, but I will say that our upcoming selection most definitely belongs in the very nice fries category, and that is the Taco Bell nacho fries. God, these things are so delicious, and that's without cheese sauce as well, but if you add the cheese, you're gonna get me creaming. I love eating the fries first and then slurping up all that good and creamy cheese sauce. I just love feeling that viscous liquid reach the back of my throat on God. Joey, you're a disgusting creature, not meant to roam the face of this earth. You somehow one up your lousiness every day. Anyways, up next, we got what I assume to be our five guys fries. And if they are, then they most definitely belong in the very nice fries tier as those Cajun fries are to die for. And they give you so many damn fries, they are just overflowing. Oh yeah, you got it down 100%, Donald. Even in that picture, you can tell that they overfilled it and they then became even yummier bag fries. Bag fries increase the overall yum factor by 10. Something about seeing the grease at the bottom, goddamn man. Anyways, we return to mid with the Burger King fries. They are finally just normal fries and honestly, they aren't half bad. I give them a neutral rating, to be honest. I can't say the same for the Popeye's fries, though, because that shit is going straight to the top. These fries are the best thing if they're fresh. They are God's gift to man. And that's not even the best thing from Popeyes. Don't get me started on their biscuits because I will rant about how amazing they are. I snuck a bunch of Popeyes biscuits to the movie theater when I was watching the Lorax in 3D. And I ended up choking on that dry biscuits and needed to get the Heimlich performed on me by this mother of four who exclaimed that I needed water if I were to eat a biscuit. But what does she know? I run a damn country, and if I want a dry biscuit with no water, I'll do it again. I pray to God that next time no one saves you from choking. Anyways, we are on to our final entry, and that is the Arby's Curly Fries. It would be downright criminal for me to not put these at an S tier. Y'all can't sleep on Arby's Fries because those Curly Fries get me creaming as much as the Jack in the Box Fries do. Massive, massive W here from Donald. What can I say? The Don is always right. Unless it's about him winning the election. What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list, and this time around, the Don has full control over this great list. And what we have here today for you all is a drinks tier list. And we aren't talking about alcohol, but rather we are gonna discuss various liquids. I like the way that sounds. Various liquids just makes me shake with happiness. I don't think he's gonna talk about what you wanna talk about, you weirdo. Joe, I can assure you that it will not be what you're thinking about. I mean, look at the goddamn list. It looks very normal to me. Oh, this is a big disappointment for the Joe dog. If it's making you upset, then this list was an even better idea than what I previously thought. Anyways, up first, we got the absolute best sports drink to ever exist, and that, of course, is Gatorade. Some nice and tasty Gatorade hits hard as hell after you're done doing some hard work. If they had this in the medieval ages when we had people doing the most grueling task, like pushing a sawmill by hand or tending to crops and fields of wheat without a break, Imagine handing one of those dudes a Gatorade. I mean, they'd probably have an aneurysm from the amount of flavor. 
But if they don't succumb to that, then they have the most wonderful electrolyte recovering drink. And I say all this to basically just say that this is a bona fide S tier. That was an unnecessarily long-winded way of basically saying that you enjoy Gatorade. There was no other way to get that point across. Me saying that I will handstand twerk on a wall for some Gatorade just isn't enough. I'm gonna have to come up with another analogy for this next one because I have lemon-lime sodas going into S tier. Like the best example of how good this can be is some McDonald's Sprite. I swear they make that stuff crunchier than their fries. What do you even mean by crunchy? How the hell is a drink crunchy? You know exactly what I mean, don't act dumb. That stuff has like a times two multiplier for its carbonation. I take one sip and immediately feel like I'm being dragged to the shadow realm to atone for my past sins. I can't even imagine what would happen if Joe drinks it. He'd probably succumb from madness and start talking normally for once. I'm scared of super carbonated drinks. I like soda, but I let them get a little flat so it feels like I'm drinking juice. But if it's super carbonated, no matter what, then I'll stick to my chocolate and strawberry milk. What you just said was basically a cardinal sin. Like, I don't care if you're not religious, Joe, but you need to confess somewhere. It can be a pastor or a nun. Heck, go confess your sins to the DMV people because someone needs to help you. Oh, don't you worry, I have a guy for that. Frail roll the clip so that all the viewers can get non-consensually cleansed of their sins. I absolve you of your sins. You have been forgiven. What the fuck was that? Wait, why the fuck is there a censor on my cuss words? F what the hell is going on here? And why isn't hell bleeped? See, that word isn't bleeped to remind everyone that hell is a very real place and we all would have been going if it weren't for my guy. I call him up when I've done sin too much. He's like Lester from GTA 5 for me. Like this one time I got a five-star sin wanted level after I had some fun in the playground and immediately had to call my man in order to get forgiven. That is not okay at all. Jesus Christ, let's please not get too sidetracked in this video. We are going off the fucking rails. Oh man, not me too. I can't even say fuck either. Just give it a few minutes. It works like a protection spell in a video game. The cleansing was too recent and will still be protecting us. Just like how that restraining order is protecting that one pesky kid I couldn't get to. Wait, what? Nothing. Carry on with this wonderful list, you handsome young man. Joe, stop. You're embarrassing me. I mean, it's true, and I can't stop people from speaking the truth, but still, let's go back to the list, as Barry said, and continue on. Huh, we got some fruit punch, and honestly, sometimes these things are hit or miss, but I like them enough to merit an A tier, but we got a banger up next, because up next, we got another S tier, and that, of course, is water. We, of course, have made a water tier list, so our opinion is that we all love water, even if Joe likes Dasani, which, if you ask me, that's also another sin. Should I call my guy again? God, please, no. Atoning for my sins makes me feel like too good of a person, and quite frankly, I'd rather not feel good about myself. Let's just go on with the list, and we got coffee, and while it isn't awful in the grand scheme of things, I'd rather not have it and think it goes in C tier. I'm sure Barack would disagree, though. Nah, I'm actually in agreement. I prefer tea, but coffee isn't bad either. I just hate that it stains your teeth and makes your breath smell. Who cares? I drink coffee for fun, and no one has complained about my breath. Joe, that is quite literally what we've been complaining about every other week. And if it isn't that we constantly complain about your foul body odor, you raise your hands and I swear the stench can kill any plant growth around it. Anyways, after that, we got some lemonade and what can I even say about this? It's a pretty basic drink, but just because it's basic doesn't mean that it's bad. I quite enjoy lemonade and we'll put it in A tier. I don't think I have to make much of a comment on that. After that, we do have milk, and I'm sorry, Joe, but this is going into B tier. I know you made that whole list on milk, but the Don is not a huge connoisseur of milk. Like, I'll definitely have it with some Oreos or any type of pastry at all, but I won't be drinking milk by itself unless it's strawberry or chocolate milk. I'll let that opinion slide for now because not everyone can stand up and take the title as a milkman like old Joe over here can. I can't have enough milk in my life, especially mommy's milkers. Okay, you've talked enough. Donald, please continue with the list. Are you sure we uh, can't hear him out further and allow him to elaborate on what he said? No, we cannot. Buzz Kilberry is back at it again, whatever. And as we go, rank the next thing on our list, we have energy drinks, and I guess this is all energy drinks, but I will have to give this an S tier. I personally am a big fan of rice recently and love the fact that they have no sugar in them, but I will more than happily sell my soul and swap brands if we were to get sponsored. No shilling on the video. Donald, you should know better. I really don't know better, that's the thing. Oh, by the way, everyone become a frail channel member. 
to unlock exclusive emotes from this channel and just be a cool guy overall. But enough of that because I'm really going to upset you here, Barack. That was actually a W plug, but I swear if you say something dumb regarding this next entry. You're already angry. I am so sorry, Barry, but I don't think grape juice is that good. It's still a B tier, but please don't call up your gang and hurt me. How many times have you done this gag? It's been at least like four times off the top of my head and it doesn't hit a single time. Nah, someone out there is definitely laughing. And if you are laughing right now, precious viewer, just know that the Don appreciates you. I laughed at your joke, Donald. Do you appreciate me? No, I really don't. And you know how they say you don't appreciate something until it's gone? Well, it's the opposite for you, Joe, because I am reminded about how much fun life is whenever I am not around you. Yeah, sure you do, Donald. I'm sure the viewers totally don't remember our Resident Evil video where you basically told me that you loved me. Stop bringing up established lore, Joe. And I only did that because you literally leave me voicemails of you crying, and it's like sitting with the kid who is all alone in lunch. It's literally charity work, but whatever. Up next, we got Ice T, which is a certified banger that is going into A tier. If you would have combined the lemonade and iced tea to make an Arnold Palmer, then that would have been a certified S tier. Unfortunately for us, we got the worst drink on this list, and that, of course, is sparkling water. Why would anyone willingly drink this slop? It quite literally ruins water for me and is going into D tier. Well, some flavored sparkling water is delicious, and some people like the carbonation in the drink, and I am actually one of them. In fact, did you know that drinking carbonated water is just as hydrating as drinking regular water? It has also been shown to increase feelings of fullness and may aid in constipation and improve digestion. So drinking that would actually help with weight loss and you can finally start cutting Donald instead of being in a forever bulk. I'd rather munch on shards of glass and drink pure lemon juice for an entire day than drink carbonated hot ass. Wait, why can I say ass? Well, it's an animal, you're so silly, Donald. I hate you so much. Anyways, after that, we got a uh, hold on. We actually have an unprecedented thing because we have back to back to back to back S tier rankings. I have citrus soda going there, normal colas, chocolate milk and root beer all going up there. I think citrus soda is pretty explainable because who the hell doesn't like squirt? Personally, I like both types of squirt if you catch my drift. Oh, are there multiple flavors of squirt? Probably, but I'm not talking about the soda. Anyways, I also love normal colas. I mean, I am the president who installed the Diet Coke button, so no explanation is needed again. And chocolate milk is another banger. We've made milkshake tier lists, a milk tier list, and a freaking Nesquik tier list. We love chocolate milk here. And root beer is explainable too. If you like colas, then you're probably gonna love root beer too. I know I do. Valid reasonings for all of those, but I don't know if cola and root beer lovers have the same taste. Yeah, I just said that, but I frankly don't know if that's true. Either way, it stays in S tier. And up next, we got apple juice, and this is going into B tier alongside grape juice because I do like juice, but it's a scam, America. It has just as much sugar as soda sometimes. So why not just drink soda instead? I don't think that's the message you should be sending across to all of our viewers. You're right, what is wrong with me? Do not drink soda or juice, unless it is the diet version. Diet drinks reign supreme everyone, but an occasional non-diet drink won't hurt anyone unless you're diabetic, in which case it will most definitely hurt you and possibly get you a leg amputation. Anyways, after that, we got Powerade, and this is like Gatorade's little brother with Down syndrome. Like, he's cool, but he's no Gatorade, so I think a B tier is in order for this one. What if he's a Down syndrome kid with cool-ass dance moves? I don't know what you want me to say to that. Like, I guess that'd be dope as hell, but I don't know what you want as a response from me. That's like asking me if I'd like it if my dog can do a backflip. Like it would be a cool party trick, but what the hell does that do for me? Anyways, following that, we got orange juice, and that is a certified A tier because I can most definitely understand the appeal to a glass of OJ in the morning alongside your eggs and French toast. Then we might have a controversial entry here, but I actually have orange soda going into B tier. Like I enjoy it, don't get me wrong, but like I am not gonna place this in the upper echelon of drinks because when do you guys normally drink orange soda? The only time I do it is when there's no other drinks I want at a fast food place, so I go with the orange Fanta instead. Ooh, I love fast food. Why haven't we done a fast food tier list? Wait, we haven't done that yet? Yeah, I just checked the channel and uh, we actually haven't. Huh, would you look at that? We've done limited time fast food and fast food fries, fast food nuggets, but no fast food tier list. Well, Frail add that onto our to-do list. Yeah, I will of course be doing that one, but anyways, we lastly have tea, 
And even though Barack loves this stuff and ranked them in his tier list, I personally am not that huge of a fan, but I'll still place it into C tier alongside the coffee. And that is the list wrapped up, man. It feels pretty good. I wonder, though, can we still not cuss? Let me try. Huh? You still can't. Fuck! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're ending off Trump week with a bang, and we are doing a tier list based on limited time fast food items. A special shout out to Frederick Munster 6024 for the idea. And let's go ahead and get started with this list because I see a banger to start off. And that is the Taco Bell Nacho Fries. These things are so delicious and I'm happy to start the list off with an easy A tier in all honesty. Agreed, Donald. The cheese sauce paired with the fries is simply elite and I love these things a lot. Whenever Taco Bell has them, I make sure to get them. That cheese be versatile too. I'll put that on everything after I finish my fries and I have some cheese left over. I can't even lie. I'd be slurping that cheese if I have no food to dip it in. That is absolutely putrid, Joey. I don't know if you thought we would agree with you and be like, hell yeah, we love slurping cheese too. Like, no, that's gross. And you should feel bad you even said that. Moving past that, we got the Mexican pizza. And even though I don't like that first word in that food, I have to admit, those illegals make a damn good pizza. It's an honest C tier. Okay, Donald, you do realize that it's not actually a real Mexican pizza. It's just a menu item for Taco Bell, but yeah, they're pretty all right. I remember liking it more than I actually did when they brought it back. I had one again and again. It wasn't bad, but like, it wasn't the best thing ever. I agree with the C tier. I've never had a Mexican pizza, guys. I only get my pizza from Little Caesars, and that is elite. Joe, that's gross, and save that for the next tier list. Up next, we got our first S tier, and that is the Fiery Doritos Locos Tacos from Taco Bell again. I'm starting to notice that Taco Bell has the best limited time food. Why the hell don't they just keep these amazing items? But yeah, we got this in S tier because they add a perfect amount of flavor spice to the tacos and taste like better Doritos Locos Tacos, and those were already elite as hell. I love Doritos Locos Tacos so much, they're possibly my favorite thing from Taco Bell. It grosses me out you agreeing with me, but you know what? I'm glad you feel the same way, Joey. Wow, we all seem to be in agreement. That's pretty cool. Taco Bell brings everyone together, but yes, now we move on to the first D tier, and that is this gross unicorn frap thing from Starbucks. It didn't taste absolutely awful, but it pissed me off seeing how much people made a big fuss about it online, and just for that, it deserves D tier alone. I loved these. Me and my bestie Aubrey would go and get them when we'd go on our Starbies runs. Jesus, Joe, stop calling him Aubrey. You're going to make Donald think it's a girl. Oh, hell no. Of course, him and Drake would get these together. I don't know what's fruitier, their bromance or this drink. The next item we got is the beefy crunch burrito from Taco Bell. And this was also amazing. The chips in the burrito added a perfect layer of crunchiness to my burrito. And it's an honest to God A tier. And I would place it higher. But I'm saving the S tier for the most elite of items. You better have some good stuff in S tier, Donnie. This item is a big hit. Like I would push a disabled kid down some stairs for a single bite of that burrito. Whoa, that's a bit too far, Barack. I'd like only push a Make-A-Wish kid down some stairs at max. Okay, can you two relax? We got a personal favorite of mine, but I recognize they're not the best thing, and that is the Mac and Cheetos. They're crunchy and gooey at the same time. This is pretty good and deserving of a B tier in all honesty. I don't remember them being that good. And didn't they give you like only six Cheetos in the package? It's probably a C tier at best, Donald. Simply get your money up, Barack, and you wouldn't care if it came with six because you'd have bought more and would have enjoyed their flavor. The next B tier we got is the KFC Double Down, and it was good, but shit, man. I felt like I was going to have a heart attack eating this. It's a great idea, though. The genius who decided to make a sandwich where the bread is chicken deserves the Nobel Peace Prize. God, that thing screams America to me. Yeah, but then your fingies get too greasy, and it's kind of uncomfortable to eat, to be honest. Yeah, and it seems a bit excessive. Couldn't you achieve the same results with two chicken patties in the middle? Shut up, guys. I have the superior taste buds, and it's only a B tier. It's not like I placed it in S tier. This next entry, however, I am sorry to any McRib fans, but this is going into D tier right off the bat. I kid you not, I took a bite out of a McRib, and I genuinely felt less human, like a piece of my humanity shattered and dissipated into the atmosphere. I still ate it all, but it felt like I was eating a barbecue rubber sandwich, and it was one of the worst experiences of my life. I think I would rather be gangbanged by Mandingo and Lex Steele than ever take another bite of a McRib. Jesus, Donald, you must feel really strongly about that. Also, who's Mandingo and Lex Steele? Oh, Barack, you need to grow up and see the world more. 
Mandingo and Lex Steele are some fine gentlemen, some of my favorite actors. Oh, I guess I'll check out some of their movies later. You've probably already seen them without realizing Barack anyways. We got the McDonald's Southwest salad, and hear me out, guys. This is an S tier. Now, you may be thinking, wow, Donald is so much healthier than me for eating that salad. And you'd be correct, but aside from that, this salad is one of the best things to ever come out of the McDonald's menu. They still have it, but it no longer has the fried chicken as an option. I still urge all of America to go to their closest McDonald's, ask for a Southwest salad with Southwest dressing, and yes, it has to be Southwest dressing. Pour all the ingredients into the bowl and then pour all the dressing inside. Give it all a good mix and enjoy. You all have been put on by the great Don. You know what? After that whole speech, I feel like I'm going to have to try one just for you, man. Yeah, so I just looked it up, and despite it being a salad, it has like a thousand calories, so like it's not really healthy. Shut the fuck up, Joey, and don't track the macros. Just enjoy food for the fine art it is. Up next, we have another S tier, and that is the Naked Chalupa. And oh my God, I would come for this thing. It is the best thing from Taco Bell. I would twerk for this thing all day long. Once they have a box for that thing, I order that every day of the month. Yeah, we can tell by your size that you ordered it that much. Shut the hell up, Joey, as for our final entry. America, this may upset you, but shamrock shakes are a C tier for me personally. It's good, but I can't have one every day. Still good, though. I am a certified shamrock hater. Why the fuck does anyone like mint? Go brush your teeth if you like mint. It's the same shit. Want a shamrock shake? Go mix some toothpaste and vanilla ice cream. It'll taste the same. Don't you fucking dare say that, Joey. You need to follow your own advice and probably get something minty since you have rancid old man breath, you deteriorating old shit. The only minty thing about me is how fresh I dress. Get owned by the J-Dog. Shamcock shakes will forever be ass, and so will anything mint-flavored. What is up, gang? We are back with another tier list. And this time around, Donald and Barack picked me to do this tier list because they know I am the meat expert. Yeah, no one really handles a sausage quite like you, Joey. Frankly, I might give you the title of the number one meat beater because no one tenderizes their meat like you do. Oh, thanks, Donald. I really appreciate nice moments like these. But what about you, Barack? Why did you choose me to do this list? I just want to sit back and see the chaos unfold just to keep it real with you. The chaos of all this meat being raided. Don't worry, Barry, as the meat expert, I will guide these meats carefully to your mind with these accurate ratings. Speaking of which, these meats got me salivating, That's so let's get said. started. Up first, we've got bacon, and I think we all know where this is going. You can put this one anything. I put bacon bits on my mac and cheese, my pizza, my eggs, like this is the most perfect thing to ever exist. I love me some bacon and will confidently place this into S tier. Okay, that's extremely valid. If you place this next one where it belongs, I may have to also deem you the Meat Master Joe. Prepare to crown me the king of meats because I have brisket going into S tier alongside bacon. Get a good brisket and it is simply game over. I will drool over this and will take a brisket sandwich over almost anything any day of the week. Get me some good sweet and spicy barbecue sauce alongside it and oh man, it is wraps for me because I will immediately go into a food coma. Holy W, Joey, I actually cannot believe what I'm witnessing. A good Joey tier list is crazy rare. I may have to buy a lottery ticket. No need for a lottery ticket, Donald. Simply get your money up instead of your funny up. Anyways, up next we got turkey. And unless it's turkey ham, I don't really jive with turkeys. Like, I feel like we eat it during Thanksgiving because of tradition, but no one else is eating turkey outside of it, and sure, it might be healthy. But this isn't about health. When I'm downing my brisket sandwiches, I do not care about my clogged arteries because I eat for the love of the game, and nothing will stop me from shoving these meats in my mouth. So for that, I will be placing turkey into a solid C tier. I'm afraid chicken clears it easily. Okay, Joe, but a Thanksgiving turkey slaps. Like, I feel like we are underrating this right now. Yeah, not very American of you to put turkeys that low, Joey. Listen, fellas, C tier is not bad at all, and I will eat turkey, but you can't tell me with a straight face to hand you a turkey leg over a steak or something. Anyways, up next, we got fish, and man, oh man, I love me some fish. I love the aroma, the texture, the taste, you name it. I love it, like having some grilled salmon belly or some fried fish and chips. Oh my God, call me schizophrenic because the surf and turf goes absolutely bonkers. Just for those things alone, I have to put fish into S tier. I do indeed love fish, but I would not say I'm a fan of the smell, Joey. Reminds me too much of your upper lip, if we're being honest. That's because I'm a muncher. If you know, you know. 
Up next, we got ground beef, and I like ground beef, but solo, it doesn't stand on its own that much. It's definitely good as an addition to certain dishes like spaghetti, rice, nachos, you name it, and it probably makes it bang. But you'd have to be a meat demon to eat just ground beef alone with nothing else. And to be honest, I'd respect the hell out of you. As for a rating, I think this would belong in B tier. Still a step above turkey, but not quite an A tier. I feel like that's a pretty valid line of reasoning. You know, Joe, so far nothing outrageous has been said, but I am quite interested to see what you have to say about sausages. We will get there when we get there, but right now we got back-to-back -back heavy hitters because I got steak and chicken both going into S tier. Give me a juicy medium rare steak, which by the way is the only way to have steak. I'll also allow medium well, but I'm a diehard steak fan. Then when we talk about chicken, oh man, grilled or fried, it is guaranteed to bring you happiness. Like I cannot stress how miserable my life would be without the invention of fried chicken. Big dubs on these two ratings, Joe. Looking at this list, it's just so hard to rate anything low because every person knows how delicious meat is. On God, Donald, I do have some things going lower though, but for all my sausage haters, I'm afraid I will not be doing that to these delicious meat rods. You can literally make a sausage out of anything and they will fit perfectly in your mouth hole, which is why I have these going into A tier. I love me some sausage and will happily eat hot dogs whenever they're available. So if you like it so much, why is it being placed in A instead of S tier? Because every time I eat a sausage or hot dog, freaking Donald has to yell out, hey everyone, he's about to eat a glizzy. And then everyone stares at me and I then I get nervous and end up throating the glizzy in front of everyone. But that won't stop my love for them. But sad story aside, up next we got lamb, huh? Well, I don't really have a strong opinion on lamb. I had it once and it tasted a bit gamey, but it wasn't awful. But based on my one and only tasting, I have to say it belongs in C tier. But more importantly, we have to talk about lobster and I will keep it real with everyone. Lobster is a bit overrated, like we hear about how everyone is twerking for lobster and how they would drench it in butter and stuff. But it's not that amazing. I think it is extremely overhyped, but still delicious. Like I would not pay a lot for lobster. But if it is there, I'll eat it. And for that, I think I will be placing it into B tier. Like it's pretty good, but again, too many people suck it off. Just like the way you suck off those glizzies, right, Joe? But aside from you sucking those dogs like a vacuum, I have to say that you just haven't had good lobster because it bangs every time I have it. You gotta make sure you go somewhere where it's the specialty, like you can't be in the Midwest of America expecting to have some nice and fresh lobster. Yeah, I actually have to agree here with Donald. You have to go somewhere where you can get it fresh, like just caught and was living a happy life in whatever tank it was in, and then getting murdered because you ordered him off the menu. For something like this, you gotta go to like Maine or something to get some super fresh lobster, Joey. No, I don't think I will. Up next, we got some pepperonis, and I feel like this is a very limited meat, like it's still good, don't get me wrong, but you can't do much with pepperonis, I feel like. Maybe they'll go on a sandwich or pizza, but you can't do much else with them, so I feel like a C tier is warranted. Now that I'm looking at the next entry, I also have to say that salami belongs in C tier as well. Like it's also delicious, but man, you can't do much with it. I do like salami sandwiches though. Really? because I think you're not a fan of either of these because we kept making fun of your nipples that one time at the beach. Yeah, we kind of tag teamed you that day. We had Donald calling you pepperoni nips most of the day, and then I uh, piled on and called you salami tits. I blame the alcohol because of all of that. Don't take it personally, Joe. It was a personal attack from me. Please do take it personally. Listen, I don't care. I have pretty thick skin, so like, I don't care about those very rude and hurtful comments and uh, totally didn't keep my shirt on after that because I let it get to me, ha ha. I just got cold at the beach so I had to start wearing something because I like to stay warm. Nothing more than that. And you should stop reading into that day. Anyways, up next we got ham and oh man, I do love me some ham. But it had me thinking, when do we ever eat ham if it isn't on sandwiches? Like I have ham during Thanksgiving, but not during any other time, unless it's on a sandwich because that bangs. So taking all that into account, I think I have to place ham into B tier. Like it's still good, but I don't really have it that much. Seems to me like you do not have very thick skin, but who am I to judge? But anyways, I still think ham is elite, even if it isn't had very often. Like get me slice of Thanksgiving ham with some cranberry sauce on top and we are set. Plus, wouldn't ham in general be like needed because what else would you put on sandwiches? Well, I mean, it isn't super needed because you can always put bologna or 
like salami or pepperoni on your sandwiches. Plus, I don't think it means that type of ham if we're being honest. I mean, look at the picture. It is clearly talking about a big piece of ham, but the rating stands. Let's just go up next. And we got pork and man, oh man, pork is freaking yummy. Like I could name off lots of things that encompass pork, but I'll leave you all with one simple food, pulled pork sandwiches. Jesus, man, I will kill someone for a pulled pork sandwich. And I think that much praise gets it into A tier. I would place it higher, but I know there are some pork haters in the world who unfortunately will never eat this delicious piece of meat. But Joe, you have bacon up there, and that is almost most certainly pork. So like, what the hell are you even waffling about? What if I told you that I was talking about turkey bacon? Also, I'm pretty sure beef bacon might be a thing, so like pork bacon isn't the end all be all. So make sure you get your facts straight. But well, uh, in this particular case, you just so happened to be right because I was talking about pork bacon. But you know what, I don't care. And I don't mind having pork below bacon, even if that makes no sense, because this is my list and you can't do anything about it. Now, finishing this all off, I have shrimp wrapping everything up. I got these little suckers going into A tier. They're delicious. And despite being bottom feeders, they are nutritious as hell and are good in almost any manner that they are prepared. Okay, let's relax now. I agree with the rating based on flavor, but let's get one thing straight. I wouldn't say they're little, more like average. Yeah, Donald has a point. You're trying to make shrimps sound like a whole ass snack, but in reality, jumbo shrimp fills you up, man. I do agree that the other shrimps are teeny tiny though, but have enough of those and you'll get stuffed. Uh, I was talking about the other shrimps, Barack, not the jumbo ones. Quite frankly, if you ask me, the jumbo shrimps are a bit too big. And at that point, it's not enjoyable, right? Like no one likes things that are too big because then they just don't feel, I mean, taste good. Well, I like both big and small shrimp, but uh, this feels like we're not talking about shrimp anymore. But to be honest, I like where this conversation is going. Uh, I don't think I do. What is up, gang? We are back with another tier list. This time we are going to rank all the chicken nuggets from various fast food places. Of course, we don't have every single one, but we got the ones from our area and freshly tasted them, so I am confident in this list. Also, Joey and Barack graciously allowed me to take over and do this tier list because they know I am the Nugget King. Yeah, we always know to let you handle it if it's anything involving food. We know the Don loves his Elite Eats. Is that what we're calling it, Elite Eats? I thought what he always used was called Uber Eats because his fat ass can't get up and drive in a car to the place. Sleepy Joe, shut your ass up because you're not even legally allowed to drive a vehicle with all those mental illnesses you got going on. Don't act like we haven't seen a whole compilation of you falling down. God, but let's move past that because we are about to talk about one of the holiest and greatest food items to ever exist, and that is the chicken nugget. Up first, we got Burger King chicken nuggets, and even though I literally said nuggets were the greatest and holiest item like 10 seconds ago, this shit is ass. I hate Burger King nuggets and will place them into D tier. I swear that meat cannot be healthy for you considering they sell a ton of nuggets for $1.50. Don't act like you're too good for $1.50 nugget because me personally, I will devour those nuggets. That's a bit gross, Joey, but I respect you being a human garbage can and be willing to devour those things. Yeah, I bet Joey is also a fan of Jack in the Box nuggets which is not saying anything good at all because I have those things also going into D tier. I legitimately think that the tacos from Jack in the Box might be better than the nuggets, and I really don't understand how. Their burgers and chicken sandwiches are gas, though. Wow, look at that. Trump is just shitting on all of my favorite foods again. I am disgusted that these two are your favorites, but I don't expect anything more from someone like you, Joey. Anyways, up next, we got the grilled nuggets from Chick-fil-A, and these are pretty solid, I can't even lie. They're a C tier because I think they're pretty okay, but I think they just taste like real chicken, which is why I even have grilled nuggets that high. Plus, it helps me count my calories. Let's be honest here, Donald. You are most definitely not counting your calories. Okay, you may have gotten me there, but that's because I am already in peak physical condition. I would dominate any bodybuilder with my strength. On to the next one, I feel like a lot of people will hate me for this, but I have the KFC Nuggets going into C tier. I just feel like KFC fell off. Like, remember the days you'd get popcorn chicken and it would slap? Now it's bad. 
or at least the location we went to was bad. But it feels like ever since Popeyes came, KFC has just fallen off, and they only care about their Asian markets now because apparently Asian KFC slaps. We need to make KFC great again one day, but for now, that will stay in C tier. I remember when it was good, I would love ordering my popcorn, chicken, and gravy. But I like your message, Donald. That's a campaign I can get behind. Make KFC great again. Truly the only thing that can bring both parties together. Coming up next, we got our first S tier, much to nobody's surprise, and that is the Chick-fil-A fried nuggets. This combined with any sort of sauce is a deadly combo. I fucking love the hell out of Chick-fil-A, and I will do anything to have it open on Sundays. Did you mispronounce Chick-fil-A at the start? Anyways, knowing your fat ass, you'll probably enact some policy to force it open on Sundays. You know what? I would. And I will fully have the support of all my fellow Chick-fil-A lovers behind me. Up next, we got yet another S tier. And I know some of you guys will be like, ew, McDonald's nuggets aren't even that good. I want you all to shut the fuck up. I will never tolerate any type of McDonald's slander and will personally send you all to the gulag if you ever disrespect the most American fast food place in the world. I love the hell out of these nuggets, especially if they come in fresh. Okay, yeah, I hear it, Barry. I think he's in rant mode and isn't thinking about how he's pronouncing Chick-fil A. But anyways, the McDonald's nugget ranking is one I won't argue at all with. I love McDonald's and their nuggets are bona fide. Joey, I appreciate you not being stupid for once, but anyways, we will now move on to our next entry, and that is the Popeye's Nuggets. They're basically tenders and are pretty good. I would give it a B ranking because I love Popeye's chicken so much, but it isn't really a nugget like how we all think chicken nuggets are, if that makes sense. I mean, it kind of does. They're breaded and fried more than the traditional nugget and aren't made the same exact way, so it makes sense that you would make that distinction be known. Same would apply for the KFC Nuggets. Way to use the thesaurus on that one. Why not just say different instead of distinction? Anyways, we got our last two coming up and it is normal and spicy chicken nuggets from Wendy's. Now for the normal nuggets, I will be placing these into B tier because I like them, but I feel like there is a level difference between these and McDonald's or Chick-fil-A, but I still like them. You can order like 50 of these nuggets for 10 bucks and that value alone is insane for these good of nuggets. I then will be placing the spicy ones into A tier because even though I am not really a spice man, I just don't know. The flavor is enhanced with the spice, and the Don can't get enough of them. The only bad part is how it makes my butthole burn every time I eat them. I end up feeling like Joe on a Tuesday night. Yeah, yeah, very funny. Way to pick on the Joe dog, but I'll have you know, my butthole doesn't burn nor hurt. You get used to it after a while, and it even feels good. Uh, are we still talking about the nuggets? Maybe. Hey, hey, hey. What's up, everyone? It's your boy, Joe Dog, and I am in my element. This right here, this list right here is going to be my magnum opus. This is the ultimate ice cream list, and keep everything in mind, I will still eat any type of ice cream you put in front of me. But I have favorites. I am also joined by Barack and Donald. I can't wait to see everyone in the comments absolutely roast the ever-living hell out of your precious list, Joey. Now, Donald, let's relax now. What if he has some good takes? Don't matter, it's a Joe list, so it's bound to be bad to moderately awful. You simply don't understand, Donnie. This is my shit right here. I am the ice cream man, and I want everyone listening to this to understand. Let's go get this list started, and I'm putting chocolate in S tier because it is a classic elite flavor that you can never go wrong with. Then I also have vanilla there in S for the same reason. These two are like the yin and yang of ice cream. You can never go wrong with either. Who the hell likes flavors as boring as vanilla? Of course, the one and only vanilla lover, Sleepy Joe, would like something as plain as himself. Donald, you are such a freaking idiot. I am laughing at how stupid you are right now. Vanilla is the penultimate flavor of simplicity. I don't need all these fancy ingredients or all these flavors to satisfy me. Get me a vanilla ice cream cone from McDonald's and that alone will bang. When you add too much, sometimes things can get worse, like with our next entry, which is double chocolate. I am putting that in B tier because it's just too much, to be honest. I don't need a whole lot of chocolate to be satisfied. But if you love the hell out of double chocolate, more power to you. I actually respect this line of thinking. Too much of a good thing can often lead to a bad thing, and I'd say the same applies to double chocolate. It just does a bit too much, in my opinion, and the sweetness can overwhelm you. I didn't know a bunch of pussies were here complaining about too much chocolate. Are you freaking kidding me? I will take that double chocolate and even triple it. Too much chocolate, just that line of thinking is absolutely insane. What are you gonna say next, Joey, that the rainbow sherbet is too much? 
Actually, Donnie, I believe it has a nice blend of flavors that mesh together really well and provide a great sense of sweetness. In other words, this shit bangs and belongs in A tier. This next one, though, I know I will get flack for, but I want everyone to know that I am not a fan of coffee, to be honest. Sue me. It's a solid C tier for me, but I rather have the stuff above it. But in some cases, coffee ice cream can bang. Yeah, this is a bit of a bad take, Joey. Coffee ice cream genuinely might be better than actual coffee. Put some nuts in that, and I would take that over double chocolate any day. True, but I think in the context of this list, it'll make sense. Up next, I got banana-flavored ice cream going into F tier. Something has to go there, and who the hell likes banana ice cream? I can't wait for all the fruit tier list people to come back and absolutely decimate you in the comment section, Joey. Bananas as a fruit is different than banana as an ice cream. No way in hell. Up next, we got a real sleeper, and that is pistachio ice cream. I used to think that it would be nasty, and I don't know why. I actually like normal pistachios, and you know what? It translates wonderfully into ice cream form and belongs in A tier. I've never had it, so I can't hate, but like pistachio, that just sounds unappetizing, to be honest. That's how they get you berry, but trust me if you haven't tried it, it's actually pretty good. Same can be said about cookie dough ice cream. I like mixing that with my chocolate or vanilla ice cream too, but by itself, it's a solid A tier, honestly. Finally, a solid selection here. Well, Donnie, I know how much you like Shamcock shakes from McDonald's, so you and quite a few others will be upset, but mint chocolate chip ice cream belongs in C tier. You've got to be fucking kidding me, Joey. Right when I complimented one of your selections, you probably just don't like mint because you don't like your breath smelling nice in any way, shape, or form. No, man. I am not a fan of mint, and I will die on that hill. If you want mint ice cream, go mix up toothpaste and vanilla ice cream, but don't go ahead and ruin chocolate by adding it into the mix. Then after that, we get a cleanser and get strawberry ice cream going into A tier. Come on, Joey, you know, mint chocolate chip isn't that bad. Don't get me wrong, I'd still eat it, but man, there is so many better things like our next S tier, which is cookies and cream ice cream. As a big lover of cookies and cream, I support this message. It's essentially just Oreo ice cream, and who doesn't like Oreos? Word, my brother. I then have butter pecan going into B tier. It's a solid choice, and I enjoy it. You bumbling buffoon, did you just say pecan? Uh, yeah, I did say that. It's pecan, you panty huffer. How about you pecan on this dick, you orange shit stain? Okay, but jokes aside, do you or Barry know what the hell a dinosaur crunch is? I'm gonna keep it real, I have no idea what the hell a dinosaur crunch is, but I will say the blueness looks good. Yeah, can people in the comments tell us what it is? I have to agree with Donald that blue means it must be good. I'll put it in D for dinosaur for the meantime, but up next we got Rocky Road, and oh man, I love Rocky Road. I wanna put it in S tier, but I think I prefer moose tracks slightly more, so I'm gonna put it in A tier, and since you all know I like moose tracks more, that then we'll go into S tier. Pretty mid list, I never even had moose tracks. I'm only a lover of moose knuckles. Ooh, what flavor is that? Moose knuckle, huh? That sounds like a pretty cool name. Don't worry about it, Joe, you'll never get any of that. What is going on, gang? Your favorite presidential trio is back, but this time we're gonna be grading Gatorade flavors and seeing as how I am the most athletic of the group, I'd say I'm the most qualified to make this list because I constantly drink Gatorade. Joe, you are definitely not the most athletic person here. I doubt you'd be able to beat Donald in a race, even though he's as big as Lizzo. Why the hell did I catch that stray? And weren't you the one that kept saying we shouldn't do Lizzo jokes? Yeah, but she's canceled now and was fat shaming other people. Imagine how fat you gotta be to have Lizzo call you out on your weight. Probably some huge chungus of a person. Okay, but none of that matters because I am making the freaking list because I drink the most Gatorade. You know what, I will give you that because I know for a fact you only drink Dasani water. And when that isn't around you, exclusively drink Gatorade. I already know your pee is darker than amber. The harsh yellow in my pee is my power level and I wear that with pride. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this list started because I'm getting a bit tired. Up first, we got Fruit Punch Gatorade, and this one is like basic, but it's a very good basic. No one has ever rejected Fruit Punch Gatorade. It's a solid A tier for me because it's not the best, but I believe it is universally liked. Sleepy Joe, what if someone doesn't like that flavor? It's not too crazy to say someone doesn't like Fruit Punch. How the hell does someone not like Fruit Punch? Like, I'd get it not being your favorite, but that shit just tastes like fruit. Like it doesn't even have a real flavor because it's a bunch of fruits mixed together. The literal flavor is fruit. You cannot hate fruit. Okay, he actually spat there. I can't even lie. I always be spitting. 
Anyways, up next, we got citrus cooler, and this is pretty decent. I don't think it's as loved as fruit punch, but it deserves a solid B tier, if I'm being honest. Then we go back to A tier with the Arctic Blitz, and I just want to ask this question. What the hell is Arctic Blitz supposed to taste like? I can tell you one thing, though. The Gatorade Company nailed it with that flavor. I may not know what it's supposed to taste like or what flavor it is, but if you drink an Arctic Blitz when it's cold as hell, you get exactly what they mean. Like, I don't know how else to explain it, but it's an amazing A tier for me. Joe, you're spitting, so don't worry. Having these cold is a game changer. I really like this flavor, but not as much as the Glacier Freeze, if I'm being honest. Dude, we will get to that, but we have to talk about what I honestly think is one of the most overhated flavors, and that's orange. I still don't think it's better than anything we have on the list. And whenever you tell a motherfucker you got orange Gatorade, they look at you kind of funny. And for that, I will have to put it into C tier, but it's not that bad. It's me, Joey. I am the motherfucker who will give you the meanest stare down if you try handing me an orange Gatorade. I think I'd rather just drink water at that point. Yeah, Joe lost me with that one. I think he only likes it because it resembles the color of his piss. Okay, it does look like my piss, but that's aside from the point. Moving on, we got our first S tier, and that is the Fierce Strawberry. God damn, is this shit good. I love strawberries, so that probably plays to my bias, but I think it is one of the best Gatorade flavors to exist. And you know what? I'm going to carry the momentum from that selection and say something that might trigger some folks. I think the lime cucumber flavor we got coming up is a solid B tier, and I'm tired of pretending that it isn't. It's a solid flavor, and sure, I won't have a whole fridge full of these, but every now and then, the lime cucumber combo hits me harder than Hunter hits his bong. I cannot agree with you on this one, Joe. You must have some tamale in you because the only people I see enjoying the lime cucumber are the illegals. They beg me for the stuff once they're done with the lawn work. I can't help it. Must be the hardworking bone in me that loves that cucumber lime. Up next, we got Glacier Freeze, and it's like the evolution on Arctic Blitz. Unless I got those two mixed up, but I swear one of these is better than the other, but they both slap. I'm pretty sure I got it in the right order, though, and I am placing Glacier Freeze into S tier. Joey, you're supposed to know we literally bought you every single flavor and made you do a taste test so that you would have the most accurate rankings. Dude, what the hell? Go easy on him, Barack. It's hard to remember when you're his age, and on top of that, he's got the dementia to worry about. Thanks, Donald. I always knew you had my back. I wouldn't really say that counts as having your back, but whatever, move on to the next entry for us, Joe Dog. Okay, so up next, we got Glacier Cherry, and it's another great entry in the Glacier series. I do wonder how the heck they made it white slash gray when it's supposed to be a cherry flavor. That genuinely bamboozles me, but whatever. I won't complain as long as my mouth is filled with that white, yummy goodness. I am placing this into A tier. Man, I bet you're a huge fan of having that white liquid in your mouth, Joe. You betcha. Unfortunately, same cannot be said for our next entry, Fierce Green Apple. I don't vibe with it all that much, but it's a solid flavor. I'd personally place it in B tier. And my opinion is kind of the same for the Fierce Grape flavor because I like that slightly less, and I think I'll have it joining the orange flavor because I am not that big of a fan of grape. Sorry, Barack. You hear that, Barack? You better get it back in blood. Your homeboy grape is getting dissed by this nursing home patient. Dude, what the hell are you on? You're all so lucky I actually love the hell out of grapes. Yes, we all remember the freaking fruit tier list. Please let me finish because we have two final flavors. And up next, we got the lemon lime Gatorade. It can get a bit sour, but I enjoy the flavor and have it going into A tier. Up next, though, we have the best freaking Gatorade flavor to even exist. I still don't know what blue is supposed to taste like, but I swear that this flavor tastes just like blue. I have the cool blue Gatorade going into an easy S tier. What the hell is up with Gatorade making flavors that have weird names? We got cool blue, glacier freeze, arctic blitz. Like, what the hell is next? Me personally, I hope we get a female discharge flavor. What the fuck? What's going on, gang? We are back with another tier list. And this time around, we are going to be doing a Jolly Ranchers tier list because we are all big fans of them. Wow, good going, Sherlock. I'm sure the audience thought we were making a Jolly Ranchers tier list because we hate them so much. I just wanted to clarify and make it clear why we're doing this. I agree with Barack. Sometimes it's good to clarify and be as transparent as possible. It has saved me many of times from going to jail. Wait, what? Don't ask him to talk further because then he'll go on one of his Joey rants and we get enough of those whenever we bring up pickles and mint-flavored things. 
But anyways, let's get this list started. And up first, we got some Strawberry Jolly Ranchers. How do we feel about these fellas? Out of all the times to open up a dialogue regarding a ranking, this may be top three, if not top one of the dumbest times to ask that because you know damn well all three of us love anything strawberry flavored. That's like asking a fat person if they want dessert after a meal. Like, you already know the damn answer to that. Motherfuckers so fat that they're in the fitness protection program. Oh man, me and Joe just went for the wombo combo. All right, I guess that'll teach me for even thinking about opening up a dialogue surrounding a flavor. I guess I'll save the audience some time and immediately put strawberry into S tier. But I guess in all fairness, it's fair to say that everyone most definitely saw this coming. So whatever, I guess. Now up next, we have another, what I presume to be S tier because I have never heard a damn soul complain about the blue raspberry flavor. Hmm, now wait a minute. God, are you just going to be a contrarian to anything I say, Joe? I was gonna say that the Joe dog loves himself some blue raspberry icy drinks. And I was actually going to agree with you wholeheartedly. Oh, well, uh, I'm sorry, and uh, thank you, Joe. I'm not entirely used to you agreeing with me. I know that it feels a bit wrong to have him agree with you, but you slowly start getting used to it, Barry. It's like having the worst person in the world agree with you on a point, and it just makes you rethink your whole stance on the issue. Like shit, if I said killing innocent people was wrong, but then I heard Joe say, I agree with Donald, then shit, it would have me second guessing myself, and I'll be sitting there asking myself, is killing people really that bad? I call it the Joe effect. I love it, the Joe effect. It has the perfect ring to it. I don't think he was saying that to put you in a positive light, Joe, but uh, sure, man, we can just let you live in your fantasy land. Anyways, after that, we got some cinnamon fire Jolly Ranchers, and I already know my opinion on this because ain't no way I am eating this. Full-heartedly agree. If I ask someone to give me a Jolly Rancher and they have the utter gall, the sheer audacity to fucking hand me a cinnamon fire Jolly Rancher, then they should be executed for their crimes against humanity. That's a bit excessive, but I can kind of see where you're coming from. Okay, guys, confession time. I actually love these things and will twerk for some cinnamon fire Jolly Ranchers. Like, even the name is so cool. Cinnamon Fire, like, isn't that cool? No. Well, either way, I love some Big Red and I love me some Fireball Whiskey, so why wouldn't someone enjoy something as great as Cinnamon Fire Jolly Ranchers? It literally provides a nice sweet heat and is quite delicious. Joe, if the Catholic Church heard you just now, they would start promoting abortions because of that dumbass opinion. Yeah, we are putting that garbage where it belongs, which is straight D tier. I don't know who the hell you were trying to convince with that weak-ass argument, Joe. Like, your biggest talking point was, hey, cinnamon is delicious, right, guys? And quite frankly, that wasn't compelling enough. After that, we got two back-to-back -back B tiers, and that is both the lemon-flavored Jolly Rancher and the Mountain Berry flavor as well. The fuck is a Mountain Berry? How is this higher than cinnamon fire again? Stop saying fire like that, Joe, but, uh, yeah, Barack, what in the fuck is a mountain berry? Why not just call it berry flavor or like berry bash or something? Why the hell is it mountain berry? Listen, man, I am not in charge of the naming process for these Jolly Ranchers, so I can't tell you why it's called that. But what I can tell you that it tastes like a handful of berries. So if you're into those berry artificial flavorings, then this one might be the one for you. I'm more surprised no one got mad at me for the lemon ranking. Well, that's because I like lemon, but I won't twerk nor will I slightly throw it back for some lemon-flavored candies, unless they are lemon heads. Uh, okay, I'll make note of that. Anyways, after that, I got grape going into A tier. Of course you do. Why is that so obvious to you? I can't say how or why I know, but just know that I predicted that ranking more easily than I predicted the amount of people that would look at the floor when I dropped a quarter in a synagogue. Yeah, Barry, your love for grape is quite evident with the fruit tier list. I don't know why you act so surprised every time. Wow. I guess that bit is getting a bit old, isn't it? Oh, well, after that, I got something. I know that will be controversial because I am an artificial cherry hater. And I already know that all the cherry boys in the comments will get upset because I am placing cherry Jolly Ranchers into C tier. I know that some people have cherry as one of their favorite flavors, but like, man, fuck artificial cherry. Now that's a fucking terrible take, Jesus Christ. I don't know what's worse, that take right there or Joe's absurd pickle take. I had a point and the people know it. Also, don't worry, Barack. I also don't understand why cherry flavored things are popular. 
I always see the option to get something in cherry flavor when I am at the grocery store and I don't get it. Anything cherry flavored has that exact same medicine-like taste and leaves a horrible aftertaste. I love eating cherries in their natural form as a fruit. Artificially cherry flavored things, on the other hand, disgusting. I hate that you're the one agreeing with me, Joe, but you kind of just spat there for a little. Motherfucker was spitting saliva in the worst way possible. Nah, I think I will be on Joe's side for this. Anyways, following that, we got Green Apple Jolly Ranchers, and I freaking love these things. I feel most Green Apple flavored things are just guaranteed bangers, like Green Apple Soju, Green Apple Lollipops, Green Apple Gum, you name it, and if it has Green Apple, it most likely bangs. You know what, I was losing faith after that cherry take, but now that you said this, I'm like somewhat back on your side again. I love me some Green Apple. Him, the Joester thinks that, hmm, he too enjoys some green apple flavored things as well. Wow, we all agreed on that. What about the ranking though, because I do love it, but I don't think it's in the upper echelon for Jolly Ranchers. How are we feeling about an A tier? I'll allow it. Allow the Joe Dog to think. Hmm, yes, the Joe Dingo indubitably believes in the A tier ranking. Wow, the Joe Dingo is a new one, but sure, whatever. After that, we got what I think is another A tier. And that is Fruit Punch Jolly Ranchers. I like them, but still don't think they belong high up there with Strawberry and Blue Raz. And unlike you two, I don't shove everything in S tier. Why the hell did we catch a stray on that? I'm not guilty of always putting stuff into S tier. Yeah, but whenever we make food related stuff, I always notice you put stuff in C tier or above. It almost never touches D tier. Joe, what the fuck, man? I'm defending us from shot Barack took at us. See, even Joe agrees to an extent, but whatever, because following that, we got one of the best flavors of Jolly Rancher in all of existence, and I will be placing watermelon-flavored Jolly Ranchers up in S tier. Have any comments on that, Donald? Uh, I like watermelon Jolly Ranchers, too, so I don't know why you called me out in specific. I will say, though, that I love artificial watermelon a whole lot more. I guess Donald passed the melanin check because my ass is very indifferent towards the watermelon flavor. I think there's better stuff out there that belongs higher on this list. Maybe we should rethink the current standing and place that one flavor in S tier, or uh, at least place it into A or B tier. Joe, I know you want cinnamon fire going into those higher tiers, and I am more than happy to report that it will never happen. Anyways, after that, we got orange flavored Jolly Ranchers, and I generally like these a decent bit, but I won't die for them. What are you two thinking about this one? You know, you have not had many bad takes this video aside from the cherry flavor one, because I also agree that the orange flavor is definitely decent, but not indeed a banger. I don't even know if I want to hear what Joe's opinion on this is, because I know damn well he's going to say something absolutely asinine. I'd have to give this a solid B tier, though. What can I say that would be that gross Donald? I am a very normal man but I personally am not surprised that you like oranges, Donald, because you must eat so damn many. I mean, I'm known to be an orange enjoyer, but I put this shit into B tier, so how is that not surprising? Well, I just mean that it surprises no one that you have it that high, because with how orange your skin is, we can only assume that you're consuming an inhuman amount of oranges, or at least orange-flavored things. Joe, how many times do I have to tell your sleep ass that this is literally my natural skin tone? I was born like this. Okay, let's not get too crazy here because no way you were born with that natural hue in your skin. Like if you were somewhat tan or pale, I'd accept it. But your ass is quite literally like discolored from all the spray on tan from the front of your face. We can literally see your real skin tone in your face where we see the fake tan not applied. I have no clue what you're talking about and it is not a fake tan. It is my natural and very beautiful hue of Donald. It looks orange as hell, man. Like you can keep lying to us, but switch up the tanning base because orange isn't a good look. Speaking of oranges, what did one orange say to the other? Yes, let's swap on to jokes instead of personally attacking me. So what did one orange say to the other Joe? Do you speak Mandarin? Your joke was stupid, Joe. But anyways, we are indeed placing this into B tier and after that we got Pineapple Jolly Ranchers. And I don't think this is a surprise to anybody when I say that the Pineapple Jolly Ranchers get a certified S tier from me. Absolute banger of a choice here, Barack. I love pineapples so much. And when you put them in candies, you already know that the Don is going to be a huge fan of it. Not to mention that eating pineapple or having some pineapple juice also changes the flavor of uh, your you know what. Dear God, please don't say that in our video. That's weird. I've never had a kid tell me that my flavor changed. What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list, and this time around, the Joe Dog is ready to make a hot dog topping tier list, and 
Oh boy, you all know how much the Joe Dog loves his dogs. As long as there's no mention of hot dogs infused with blue Gatorade, then I think we should be in somewhat okay hands. Definitely not the best though, because the Don would have annihilated this list. Thankfully, I don't really see anything atrocious on this list either. So yeah, it should be hard for Joe to mess this up. The Joester would have not messed up anything. And if there were blue Gatorade hot dogs, then you already know that would have been an S tier. Unfortunately, somehow, someway, pickles made the cut before my precious blue Gatorade, or even bacon for that matter. Joe, you bring up a great point. That the omission of blue Gatorade dogs is awful? No, I don't think I will ever mention blue Gatorade hot dogs in a positive light. But yeah, there's no bacon on this list. And to be honest, the Don loves his bacon bits on his dog, or even wrapping around a piece of bacon around my dog and then grilling them and getting a nice crispy bacon hot dog. Oh, well, that does sound delicious, but we all know that the Joe dog would have rated that an instant S tier. Joe, do we really know that? Ask yourself that question again, and then let me answer it for you, because no one knows what the hell you're thinking half the time. The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. But anyways, let's go ahead and get this list started. And up first, we got some peppers, and I am mighty indifferent on this. They provide a nice crunch, but I'm not going to keel over and die if you can't offer me some peppers for my hot dog. I can literally do with or without it because that's just how mid it is. Uh, and for being so incredibly mid, I will award it with the most mid ranking of all, and that is a fat C tier. Thankfully though, we immediately get saved from the midness and we three back to back to back S tier rankings. And that of course is the spicy brown mustard, the original yellow mustard, and of course some goddamn onions. The spicy brown mustard is quite literally one of my favorites for a hot dog, but don't get it twisted, everyone, because the Joe dog also loves his classic yellow mustard. And then wrapping things off, you got the onions, which are an absolute must-have, and one of my favorite dogs includes an all-beef hot dog served on a steamed bun with a layer of yellow mustard topped with a mountain of sweet, colossal Spanish onions grilled to perfection and with an abundance of spicy hot sport peppers. That last part read out like an ad, what the fuck? But yeah, I, as a consumer of dogs, I can confirm that these ingredients are indeed elite. Like what I don't get are the people who scoff at you for putting ketchup on your hot dogs. Like, why can't I enjoy a ton of mustard and a ton of ketchup? Well, if you want an authentic Chicago style hot dog, then you'd have to have no ketchup on your dog. All the locals know that. Well, thank God both me and Donald aren't from that place because we both love ourselves some ketchup. I don't know how those Chicago people brainwashed you, Barack, but ketchup most certainly belongs on a hot dog. We are not there yet, though, and I instead have to talk about Dijon mustard, which I surprisingly don't have in S tier. I really like it, don't get me wrong, but I feel like I would be hard glazing mustard if I have three different types of them up in S tier. So instead, I think I'll just put it in A tier because it is still pretty delicious, but the Joester actually prefers his Dijon mustard on his burgers rather than his hot dogs. You know what, I can't even hate this decision because it would indeed be some maximum glaze on the three mustards being up in S tier. I don't see what would be wrong about having all three up there in S tier. We all know damn well that ketchup doesn't belong there, so we may as well have those three up there. Barack, you're not the only person in the world who has lived in Chicago. You don't have to keep reminding us of that fact with your downright tarred takes on hot dogs because I have ketchup going straight into S tier. I know you're like a stick in the mud about it, but Donald, I know you got my back on this. For once, you're actually quite right on this, because not only will I take the opportunity to shit on Barack, but I will also come to the aid of ketchup at any time of my life. Thanks, Donald, but yuck up next, we got an absolute D tier, and that, of course, is relish. And I am relishing the fact that I relish how badly I will rate relish. Joe, absolutely no one will laugh at that joke, and relish isn't bad at all. I don't throw it back and will off myself if my hot dog has no relish, but if I have ketchup and mustard and I can't add much else, then why the hell would I not add relish? See, as someone who lived in Chicago, I must inform you all that you must have relish with your hot dog. A great Chicago-style hot dog must come with yellow mustard, sweet pickle relish, chopped white onion, tomato slices, a dill pickle spear, pickled sport peppers, and celery salt. If you got all these, then you got yourself a Chicago classic and a banger on your hands. You literally sound like a fucking ad right now, Barack. And that sounds absolutely dreadful. You know, now it makes sense why Chicago people don't put ketchup on their hot dogs because they must be so used to eating fucking shit tasting garbage ass hot dogs that once they include a yummy ingredient like ketchup, 
they get too scared and start worrying that they'll actually enjoy the hot dog rather than eat it in pure disgust for repentance because of a great sin they must have committed in their past life. Joe, what if it just tastes delicious to me? I'd have your head checked out for possible abnormalities and diseases. Joe, you do realize how ironic that must be when it comes from you? The only problem with my head is that I receive too much of it. Book of Joe, passage 12, page 50. But let's go ahead and move forward with this list. And up next, we got jalapenos. And I have these going into C tier. They can be a nice compliment, but my ass is not trying to have a spicy hot dog. I respect people who added in for that extra spice and crunch, but the Joester wants to enjoy his dog in peace. Then, after we got chili and cheese, and I love these two combined, like if this were both combined as one entry, then I'd have it going into S tier. But on their own, they are far weaker than anyone could ever imagine. I can handle the chili on its own, but I won't go out of my way for it, but I still think it merits a solid B tier. But maybe it's the craft single as the thumbnail. But God damn, if I had a hot dog with only a single craft single on top that was slighted melted, then I'd probably throw that shit back in your face. I still don't think it's as shit as relish, but I will give it a C tier, and it is probably the worst C tier item on this list. Okay, those aren't bad takes at all. And I definitely feel you on the chili and cheese combined would go into S tier, but I'm afraid for our next entry because we all know how much you hate pickles. That's where you'd be wrong, Brock. I actually enjoy dill pickle spears alongside my hot dogs. It's a great change to my flavor palette and helps with all the grease. Wow, that's unexpected as hell, Joe. Kudos on you for opening up your mind and allowing different flavors to be tasted. Yeah, I'm just joking. Hell no, I hate pickles of any kind. And you all already know that I am placing this garbage into D tier. You've got me fucked up if you ever think I'll ever say anything positive about pickles because they always ruin my dining experience. For every fucking burger or sandwich place I order from, I have to specify and say no pickles. Then guess fucking what? 75% of those end up having pickles. Another 10% had pickles on them at one time before someone removed them at the last minute. I'm sick of my fucking burgers and sandwiches tasting like pickles, so of course I'll hate them on my hot dogs. You can't even just pull them off because the flavor is so fucking pungent it leaks into the bread. Stop making pickles the default for every single piece of food. Fuck pickles. Dear God, Joe, we get it. You fucking hate pickles and mint so much that you've made it an intrinsic part of your character. I am dreading the upcoming sauerkraut rant that you surely have cooking up in your brain as we speak. Oh, I actually like sauerkraut a decent bit. It's like kimchi without the fiery spice, if that makes sense. And the Joester loves himself some kimchi. I'll be placing these bad boys into B tier, but holy shit, guys. We have an absolute banger up next, and that is another S tier in grilled onions. Now, I'll say it again if you haven't heard any of us proclaim in previous lists, but if you hate onions with a passion, please try out some grilled onions. They get caramelized and taste nothing like their fresh counterparts, and I can guarantee that those things will absolutely bang. That and fried onions, because some onion rings as a side to my mustard and grilled onion hot dog will fucking make me go rock hard. I already know that breath has to be worse than SpongeBob Sunday breath. If we fill a jar or bag with your breath, I swear we could let it ferment, and it'll basically be bear mace in a bag. Shit can be used in chemical warfare, and it will be deemed as a weapon that is too cruel and inhumane to be used against other people. My breath after some onions can smell a bit funky, I'll admit. It smells funky before and even after the ingestion of onions, so I don't think that's your primary concern. I don't know what you mean by that, because my breath doesn't smell that bad unless I eat something stinky. But yeah, let's just go ahead and begin finishing off this list because our second to last entry is lettuce and let us come to a conclusion about this. And uh, I don't really have a strong opinion on this, to be honest. I think this barely sneaks into B tier, but I like the texture it adds to my hot dog. Like I'm not talking leafy lettuce. I'm talking about a crispy, refreshing iceberg lettuce. If you put lettuce on your hot dog among your other desired toppings, your hot dog experience will change. The iceberg lettuce adds a refreshing aspect to a hot dog you normally don't get. It also provides a nice texture if you only have condiments on it. You know, for someone who doesn't have a strong opinion on lettuce going on hot dogs, you really hit us with a somewhat convincing reason as to why we should put it on our hot dogs. Well, yeah, it's pretty good, but our last entry takes the cake for me because I love some tomatoes on my hot dogs and I will give it an A tier. I feel like most people can agree that some diced tomato on your dog can moisten it a bit and add some good flavor. And you all know how much Joe loves his moist things. Hope you're referring to only food in that statement. 
You know the Joe Dog is talking about how he likes all his things moist and wet. You know, contrary to popular belief, I actually respect how you can turn uh, a normal conversation into something gross and sexual. What is up, gang? We are back with a Joe Dog tier list, and this is for all my Joe heads out there. Rise up, everyone. I finally got a tier list. Now, for today's list, we got a little hot sauce tier list going on, and I will be doing my best to rank these based on flavor and spice levels. The only reason why Joey likes hot sauce is because that's the only thing that wakes him up when he's about to knock out from his ongoing dementia. Now, while that might be slightly true, I just enjoy the art that is hot sauce. I've become enamored with the sauce and use it on a lot of my foods. Like you cannot have tacos without hot sauce. As a matter of fact, you can't have some wings without some spicy sauce. But I digress because I must save this all for the tier list. Now, the spiciest thing I've had was a Carolina Reaper doused in Blair's Mega Death Sauce alongside a shot of Everclear to wash it all down. So let that be the peak for my spice level. But thankfully, almost everything on this list does not compare to my experience that day. I swear I was high off how spicy everything was, like my freaking brain was tingling so hard, man. That sounds absolutely painful. Why would you subject yourself to these things? I was bored, and I had some peppers and hot sauce lying around. The Everclear was just a cool bonus to wash everything down. And you bet your bottom dollar it was a full shot of pure Everclear. But it was not as bad as it seems. Once you reach peak spicy, all things just fade away and become nothing, and you enter a zen mode. But enough dilly-dallying, because we have this list, and up first we got Louisiana hot sauce, and I am a big fan of this. I love to have some over some Popeye's chicken, specifically, but all around it has an excellent flavor. I have to give this a solid A tier. Then we also got crystal sauce, and since I am still speaking, let me rate it. And I think a B tier is in order for this one. I personally am a bigger fan of Louisiana hot sauce, so I'm happy you're placing crystal beneath it. No shit, Sherlock, that's why I did it. The Joe Dog understands flavors and stuff. Anyways, after that, we got one of my favorite sauces, and that is sriracha. I love this by itself, and I love to mix it in with my mayo. Whenever I add mayo to my hot dog buns, I make sure to mix it in with some sriracha just to give it some added kick and flavor. I have to place this into S tier because of how magnificent it is. Just had to find an excuse to squeeze in hot dog talk during a hot sauce tier list, didn't you, Joe? I will take any opportunity I can to praise hot dogs because that is just the type of man that Joe Dog is. After that, though, we got some spicy ketchup, and I won't lie to all of you, the Joe Dog is not the biggest fan of it. I'll still enjoy some, but I would rather have normal ketchup. I think this is mighty mid, and we'll say that this belongs in C tier, unlike our next hot sauce, because we got Tapatio going into S tier. Now, I know all the Hispanics will be with me on this. The patio adds the right amount of flavor and spice, like it is spicier than our next entry, which is Valentina. But it is what I would want if I were craving something with a nice spice level, whilst also wanting some flavor. Joe, I know you did not just shit on my precious Valentina. I love that stuff with my hard shell tacos, and I would say soft shell too. But I eat whatever green sauce they put in there, and that shit also slaps. But hard shell tacos get the Valentina treatment. Whoa, whoa, settle down there, Donald. I actually really like Valentina as well. And when I am craving more flavor rather than kick, I always get this one. This is another S tier for me, and honestly, I love the flavor Valentina gives on my chips or ceviche whenever I make some at home. I'd like to say I prefer the Black Label Valentina more, but in all actuality, I'd rather have the normal one. Like, the point of the Black Label is to be spicier, but at that point, just give me some tapatio. So I think for the Black Label Valentina, I'd have to give it an A tier. I still very much so love both of them and would urge people to buy these if you have not tried them already because boy howdy, I love me some Valentina. Okay, that is respectable, man. I was about to go ape shit if you did not rate these highly. But once again, I feel like you are stepping up to the plate when you make the tier lists. Like I feel like you do not care at all and troll me and Barack when we make them, but then you try hard for your lists. Yeah, I think it's like his bit now. Like that's what he's doing to garner the Joe Head army cult he has going on. We are not a cult and I do not do this for them. The Joe Heads simply understand that I am above all and rule all. It is quite simple. I don't get how you two don't understand such a simple concept. But alas, the Joe Dog has a list to keep making. And after those excellent sauces, we got even more greatness coming up. This was like going through the Larry Bird versus Magic era to the Michael Jordan era, because up next we got Frank's Red Hot. And I fucking love this sauce. The Red Hot Original and the Red Hot Wings both get an S tier from me. 
Now it is not spicy at all, but I just love the flavor on it so much, I swear it is so delicious. What's that one commercial they made too? The slogan for it was, I put that shit on everything. Like I smelt that commercial so much and related to it extremely. I will put it on my wings, my chips, my burgers, my tacos, my seafood. Hell, I would put it on a burger. Probably because Frank's Red Hot is just that good. The Joester will die by Frank's Red Hot. That was a super passionate advertisement for Frank's Red Hot there, Joey. If you ask me, it could have been more passionate because the Don is also known to partake in a lot of Frank's Red Hot. It does provide the most excellent blend of flavor and spice. Well, I don't think it's spicy at all, but the flavor is immaculate. After that, we got Tabasco sauce. And I don't think I've ever used this hot sauce on anything other than eggs. And even then, there is a clear winner in that competition, if you ask me. I have Tabasco going into B tier because it isn't better, but definitely better than spicy ketchup, man. After that, though, we got Secret Aardvark. And I only heard of this sauce after watching Hot Ones on YouTube. And it just looked so interesting, so I had to order it, and I sure am glad I did. I was pleasantly surprised by it and still keep ordering some to this day whenever I want something different because the habanero sauce is a knee slapper. I think this deserves an A tier, in my opinion. They always make sauces look good as hell on that show. Well, uh, at least the first couple of bottles where the spice level isn't crazy. After that, though, it looks like pure pain and suffering because everyone dies on Da Bomb. Do not even get me started on that because we will eventually get to the rating for Da Bomb, but for now, we will talk about Texas Pete, and I think this sauce is okay. I am sorry to disappoint any Texas Pete hot sauce fans, but let me tell you that there is definitely better sauces out there. No shame in this being your favorite, but just know that it is not as amazing as you think it is. I'm feeling a B tier for this sauce. After that, uh, we kind of hit a bit of a block because I have not had those next four hot sauces. Like I don't recognize the labels and I don't want to throw out a random rating in case they are actually good or awful. So I will be placing them in the haven't tried tier and moving on to our next entry, which unfortunately for everyone, the next thing I have to rate is Da Bomb. And this thing is hot garbage. It is absolutely awful and will genuinely ruin your day if you have this. There is no flavor, there is no nothing, it is just pure pain and nothing more, and I guess that's kind of the point. But yeah, this is an automatic D tier in my book. Jesus, I didn't even notice the next one. But the same applies to Blair's Mega Death Sauce. And basically everything I said about Da Bomb applies here, but I would rather have Blair's over Da Bomb if you ask me. Sounding like a bit of a hater here, Joe. Why don't you describe your experience when trying these? I am sure the audience would love to hear you go more in depth with it. What the hell is there to describe man, my burning asshole? Or would you rather me talk about my bubble guts and how my stomach was entering a wormhole whilst it processed the absolute vile and putrid lava that entered my system? See me personally, I would rather not talk about either, but instead I would rather talk about green pepper Tabasco. And I'm not that big of a fan. I think a C tier for that one. And the Chipotle Tabasco is honestly even worse. I feel a D tier for that one because it is quite simply that bad. It's probably better than the two in the same tier with it, but I think I will keep it there. The Tabasco habanero sauce actually slaps though, and I put it on the same tier as Tabasco original because I think it is worthy of the B tier. Now, I don't know why you hate Tabasco sauce so much, Joe. What the hell, man? I genuinely want to know what it did to merit these stinky grades because I have a lot of those sauces going higher. Not to mention you talked about only having Tabasco on your eggs and that another sauce is better for eggs and you have that one going higher. What sauce were you talking about? Fucking Frank's Red Hot? I won't even lie to you. I have had Frank's Red Hot on my eggs and I do not regret it one bit because it slapped. No, but the funny thing about your whole rant is that I actually do not really like Tabasco and frankly, I have no reason for my hate other than the fact that it's personal bias. That being said, the sauce for eggs that I mentioned is actually the one that is up next, and that is Cholula sauce. This sauce right here is absolutely amazing for eggs. Like, I'll prefer to use this one constantly for my scrambled eggs, because it just gives it the right amount of oomph and flavor. This is an A tier in my book, but the Cholula green pepper sauce does not slap as hard, in my opinion. I give that one a B tier, but it still is pretty solid in my eyes. I may just be a hardcore Cholula fan, though. I don't think you're a fan of anything more than Frank's Red Hot. I have not seen you ride something harder other than Frank's this whole video. The Joe Dog loves his Frank's Red Hot, what can I say? After that though, we got, uh, 
Oh, hamburgers. We uh, got a bunch of sauces I have not tried, so I actually have to place all of these in the have not had tier, unfortunately. Looking at that have not had category makes me think you may not have been the most qualified to do this list. That, and it tells me that you did not do your proper research on this, Joe. I'm actually somewhat disappointed with you, Joey. Shut up, bitch. Disappoint these nuts, Barack. What is up, gang? We are back with another tier list, and this time we're doing one that we have been asked to do for quite some time, and that is the energy drink tier list. We have tested many and have had all the ones on this list, and I can confidently say that this is the definitive energy drink tier list. Well, we can't say that. What if someone just likes different things than us, Donald? We have to be nice and accept everyone's opinions. Joe, stop trying to play the middleman. That's my job. If they don't like it, they can argue about it in the comments. Yeah, Joe, this is no democracy. This is a Trump-ruled list through and through. Well enough yapping. Let's go ahead and start this amazing list. And up first, we have Ghost Energy. I think most people who have had Ghost knows it bangs. It used to be my pre-workout, and I absolutely love the Sour Patch Kids flavor and the Warheads one. Donald, let's be honest here. You never use this for pre-workout unless you were exercising your gaming fingers. But yeah, anyways, I personally was more of a fan of the Swedish Fish one, but those are all really good selections, Donald. Don't try to hide that stutter, Barry. You've been hanging out with Sleepy Joe too much, but yeah, that's exactly why I have it going into A tier. There's a lot of variety, and it's just a great tasting drink overall. Up next, we got C4 Energy, and this is pretty mid. I don't really hate it, but I don't really love it either. It is a good substitute if you don't have anything else, and it won't taste bad either. I, however, would prefer the things above it, but hey, a B tier isn't bad at all. I personally like it if things are mid, it keeps it grounded. Like I'll be eating plain pasta with just oil on it. That's just weird, man, but this is slightly better than mid. I'd still take it over our next entry, which is a classic, and that is Red Bull. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, how the hell is this a classic but not better than C4? And I'll tell you, it simply just tastes like ass, hot, fresh ass if we're being specific. It is a flavor you can get used to and begin to enjoy, but when you compare it with other things on this list, it just isn't up to snuff. The energy boost you get from a Red Bull is good, though, so if you have nothing else to use or really need that huge pick-me-up, well, then Red Bull is your safest bet, and I would not judge you for choosing this. Now, given all the info, I will now be placing Red Bull into C tier, which, again, not really that bad, but still doable. I feel like that's a reasonable take like, are there a lot of people that genuinely enjoy the taste of Red Bull? Like, if you ask me, I'd much rather have the drink up next because monster fucking slaps. Don't go jumping ahead of the list. Wait till I get to it so I can give an opinion. Jesus Christ, Barry, how many of these have we done and you and Joey still do this shit? Well, anyways, up next we do in fact have Monster, the classic drink you'd see in every caffeine enjoyer's hand and for good reason. Monster has a variety of flavors. And I feel like it was the first energy drink to teach us the lesson that caffeinated drinks don't have to taste like hot, wet ass. I think for taste, energy boost, and legacy reasons, I will be placing Monster into S tier. I feel like it's too much of a legend to be placed any lower than that. I remember drinking Monsters before my speeches way back when Barry was in office, and to this day it still bangs. But I think I got too used to it now because I'm still sleepy after drinking a couple. Well, Joey, just keep drinking more and more till you have the inevitable heart attack, because that would truly be the greatest thing you've done for our country. Burn aside, we should move along this list. And up next, we got Mountain Dew Energy. And I think this is pretty decent. It's like a decent to high B tier. And now that I look at the next entry, I have to say the same about Bang Energy. I used to like Bangs, but they kind of fell off for me personally. Then there was all that super creatine nonsense. Like, I still don't know what the hell super creatine is. Okay, cool, but can we move on to the best energy drink ever? I love Prime so much, and I can't wait for Logan Paul to knock out Dylan Dennis in the fight on October. Joe, I do not care enough about that whole situation, but please take Logan Paul's cock out of your mouth. I personally hate Prime, but only the Gatorade clone of it. That one tastes like garbage, but I will give you this small W, Joe. The energy drink version of it absolutely slaps, but it is most certainly not the best in my honest opinion. I think a solid A tier is good for Prime. I would prefer it over everything in this list, but Monster, I think. So I'll give the Logan Paul crew a dub for their energy drink, but two thumbs down for the Gatorade one. I thought both were okay in all honesty, but I think Joey can live with an A rating, right? 
Uh, I guess that's okay, but I am telling you all that Prime will take over the world and will be the best energy drink in the world. And their Gatorade clone is better because they have cool flavors. Joe, you are not 12. Please grow up, but let's just move on to our last drink, which is Rockstar. I am going to keep it a buck with everyone here. I hate Rockstar. It is possibly the worst energy drink I have ever had in my whole life, and I will be placing this into D tier. I had it a long time ago, so maybe it got better, but I will keep my hater energy from back then and refuse to ever buy this horrid drink ever again. It tastes like a used cum rag that's been drenched in gasoline. How would you even know what a used cum rag drenched in gasoline even tastes like? No, 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 trust me. He hit it on the head with this one. But to me personally, that flavor sounds like a good time. What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list, and this time around, we are going to be doing a Pringles tier list, and old Joe here loves himself some Pringles, so we all know I had to make this one. Knowing you, Joe, you're going to put something asinine high in S tier and just make us all suck it up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think it has been proven time and time again that the Joester takes his list seriously and that there should be no cause for concern on this. Donald, he's only saying that because I promised he could do a woman's hair tier list if he behaved correctly for the next few tier lists. Dear God, why are you putting us through that? Listen, man, it was a short-term solution that kept him in line for the past few videos, so I say that it worked out. Past few videos? Why are we rewarding the grown man like a dog? Is that why he's been so buddy-buddy with me recently? Some of that was my honest-to-God true feelings, Donald. And the other 90% was me wanting to do this freaking hair tier list. Well, it's not that time yet, Joe, so can you please focus on what's in front of you and start this Pringles tier list? Fine, Mom. So let's go ahead and get started with this list. And up first, we got original Pringles. And I know a lot of people are fans of original flavored chips, and I do have to agree that they aren't bad at all. But I will still be placing this into C tier so that it can be our sort of baseline for flavors. Like if this is completely average to me, like fully neutral, then it'll be easier to detail what flavors are but and what flavors are amazing. You know what, I'm not at all angry with this because original Pringles just taste like chips to me. I don't have anything positive to add aside from the fact that they are probably the best original chips out there. I mean, I prefer Lay's if I'm being honest, but only for original chips. Can we not talk about both of your opinions because the last I checked this was a Joe Dog certified tier list. Anyways, after we got some honey mustard chips, and this might be because I love me some honey mussy, but I can't help but rank the chip flavor version a solid A tier. Joe, I don't entirely know if honey mustard translates well into a chip flavor. I'm the official mustard police, and I can assure you that they are delicious in almost anything. They have Doritos hot mustard, and that was pretty banging, but this is like a next step above it. And it's honey mustard. Of course, it deserves an A tier. Joe, your mustard takes are always asinine, but you know what? I'll let the honey mustard one slide, and even that Doritos take, because I've also had the hot mustard flavor. And let me tell you that it is hot garbage. It tastes like someone brushed their teeth with wasabi and thought to themselves, oh, hey, this can be a flavor for some Doritos chips. And then for whatever fucking reason, the board of directors were dumb enough to even approve that horrendous thing. All I'm hearing is a hater who doesn't have enough mustard in his life. But anyways, after that, we got dill pickle chips. Now I'm not one to hate. That's almost what you and Donald do every video matter of fact. Donald was quite literally doing it just earlier. I don't recall, but once again, I am not one to hate, but I will say that, and once again, I mean no harm, no ill will to anyone who enjoys these chips or pickle flavored things in general. And let me once again reiterate that I mean absolutely nothing by my next statement, and I think you are all wonderful people if you enjoy this flavor, but the evidence suggests that you are a nincompoop, you snail-skulled little rabbit. Would a hawk pick you up, drive its beak into your brain, and upon finding it rancid, set you loose to fly briefly before spattering the ocean rocks with the frothy pink shame of your ignoble blood? May you choke on the queasy, convulsing nausea of your own trite, foolish beliefs. You are grimy, squalid, nasty, and profane. You are foul and disgusting. You're a fool, an ignoramus. And what meaning do you expect your delusional, self-important statements of unknowing, inexperienced opinion to have to us who think and reason? What fantasy do you hold that you would believe that your tiny-fisted tantrums would have more weight than that of a leprous desert rat spinning rapidly in a circle? waiting for the bite of the snake. You are a waste of flesh. You have no rhythm. You are ridiculous and obnoxious. You are the moral equivalent of a leech. You are a living emptiness, a meaningless void. But of course, I mean that with no offense, but me personally, I just have this dill pickle flavor going into D tier. 
It's not good at all. Jesus fucking Christ. What the hell was that all about, Joe? Now I don't like pickle flavored chips either, but isn't that all a bit much? Like, I don't know what the hell I'd do if I got roasted by Joey that badly. Like, I think I'd rather get made fun of by the special needs kid than Joe. Now, Donald, your statement was just as bad, but Jesus Christ, Joe, you need to settle down. I meant all of that with no harm. You can't punish me because I said no offense and I said I meant no harm. No, but in all seriousness, if you like pickle-flavored things, you should kill yourself. Whoa, whoa, no, no, no. Sorry, what I meant to say was that I have the pizza Pringles going into S tier. Oh boy, howdy, I do love me some of the Pringles, za. Uh. Then after I got salt and vinegar going into B tier. What was that, Joe? Salt and what? Vinegar. Wait, I must have misheard Vin. What, Joe? Mm. Stop, stop, please stop. I don't know what's gotten into him. I merely was about to answer an easy question, but whatever. After that, we got barbecue and Memphis barbecue both going into A tier. I'm a pretty big fan of barbecue, so when you put it into chip form, it tastes good as hell. Well, at least the Pringles one do, because we all know that the Lay's barbecue is mid as hell. Joe, I don't think people are going to side with you on that one. I think they're really good. Listen, Barack, I don't mind the flavor of Lay's barbecue, but I can kind of see where Sleepy Joe is coming from here. Thank you for putting some respect on my goddamn name. After that, we got some cheddar cheese Pringles, and we all know who cut the cheese with this one, because I have this going into S tier. Joe, that joke made no fucking sense. You only say who cut the cheese when someone farts or shits themselves. Well, I didn't fart. Okay, see, then my point still stands. Hold on now. I just said I didn't fart, but I also didn't deny the other allegation. Joe, I pray to God you actually didn't shit yourself. But either way, thank God we're not in the same room as you because I know it must smell crazy in there. Can't say I'm surprised the super senior can't control his bowels, but honestly, it probably smells like how he does on a normal day. Very funny joke, Donald, but I told you I up my showers to twice a week and my teeth brushing to three times a week. This is a brand new Joe in 2024 and he smells like rainbows and posies. But anyways, after that, we got jalapeno going into A tier. Now I normally fucks with the jalapeno flavored things on my chips a lot, but I feel like Pringles has the weakest flavor of them all. Don't get me wrong, it is still amazing, but I just feel like they should have made it more spicy or they should have added some cheese to that mug. Excuse me, that mug, what the hell are you saying? You don't get today's kids lingo. I have to be in the know or else I won't get invited to the cool high school parties. And you all already know that's where all the baddies are at. That's disgusting, Joe, but if you don't mind bringing me along next time, I'll be there to chastise you and possibly talk to any 18-year-old high school girls. You two should be ashamed of yourselves. What? I said I'd talk to only the 18-year-olds, and last time I checked, this is America, and if J-Mac can pound some fresh strange, then why can't I? But either way, I wouldn't mind pre-ordering some young talent out there. Call me Team Skeet with how good my scouting department is. I don't believe in pre-orders. I would just have it then and there. And of course, what I'm talking about are video games and nothing more. Following that, we got Buffalo Ranch and extra hot Pringles going into B tier. I like how the Buffalo Ranch kind of tastes like wings, but if you ask me, I'd rather have the pure ranch flavor in my mouth. Then the extra hot Pringles are simply all right. Like, I feel like that's where they need more improvement as a chip, and it is any type of spicy chip that Pringles produces. Not such a bad take here, actually, except for you saying that you want ranch higher because ranch has to be one of the worst flavors in all of existence. Like the more you eat of it, the more you just want to throw up because you overload it on ranch. Amen to that, Barack. Joe, you better not place that vapid, vile ass flavor high because Lord knows that I hate it when there's too much ranch and also ranch flavored things just don't hit. I think I'd rather pour the actual condiment on my food or chip rather than having something be flavored with ranch. The Buffalo Ranch slides through in my book because it does taste like some wings and the fucking Dominator loves himself some wings. Uh, I hear you two out and I promise you that I will uh, make a decision on where to place it. There is no decision to be made here, Joe, because we made it for you. Ranch belongs in D tier and if there was an F tier, I'd place it there because somehow ranch tastes more like garbage Thank pickle flavored Pringles do. I hate to be this aggressive, Joe, but if I'm coming to Donald's aid and admitting that he's right, then you have to know how awful that flavor is. I'll take your constructive criticism and I will come to a conclusion that will make all of us happy. In the meantime, I wanted to tell you guys a ranch joke, but unfortunately it was still dressing. No, Joe, just no. I thought it was hilarious, but hey, I guess I'm the only tall, humble, handsome, strong, ravishing man of this group. Either way, up next, I am happy to report we got two back-to-back -back bangers because both sour cream and onion and cheddar with sour cream and onion are absolute bangers.
They'll make your breath smell, but trust me, no one will notice as long as you pop a Jolly Rancher or something. Trust me, Sleepy Joe, we always fucking notice, but never point it out. Those Jolly Ranchers are doing nothing but helping your teeth decay even further. Speaking of Jolly Ranchers, I think we should make a tier list on that. I'm game as long as you don't place grape in S tier, Barack. I hate you so much. Not as much as you're gonna hate me, and I've come to a conclusion. I think that ranch belongs in S tier. Nope. Yeah, not happening. Slide that shit over to D tier right now. Aw, oh, hamburgers. I know I control this list, but I don't want to make you too angry because then my hair tier list privileges will be revoked. God, that's really the only thing that's making you behave, isn't it? It's kind of sad realizing that, but hey, Donald, it's better that than nothing. Can y'all blame a brother? Now, come on now, because we all know that it's not like you two got me some fresh and delectable under 18 strange waiting for me. Seek religion, Joe. What is up, gang Alang? We are once again back at it with a tier list, but this time we're about to discuss the best and most delicious food of all time, and that is pizza rolls. You really think this is the best thing we as a human species have to offer? Well, it has to be that berry, either that or cocaine. You've been hanging out with Hunter again, haven't you, Joey? I don't blame you, he is cool as hell to hang out with. But yeah, pizza rolls bang, bro. I legitimately can't think of a bad pizza roll flavor on this list, to be honest which I'll just go ahead and start this wonderful list and start off with the classic pepperoni flavor and immediately put that in S tier. I can already tell this is gonna be a hard list for Donald to make because he's such a fat ass. Whoa, what's with the emphasis on that last part? And how is this ranking a problem? The OG pepperoni flavor has to be a freaking S tier. There is no other way other than doing this. See, my take on this is that I like to suck out the sauce and pepperoni from the pizza roll like I'm a vampire and then eat the whole thing without any sauce. Does anyone else do this? Sleepy Joe, what the hell is wrong with you? I might have to change your name to Suck Machine after that, but to answer your question, I do not do that to my pizza rolls because I eat them the way God intended. Up next on this great tier list, we got the sausage pizza rolls, and this is yet another S tier, everyone. Of course this is another S tier. Donald, do you think all of these are S tiers? Do you just twerk for any sort of pizza roll that is thrown in front of you? No, I actually do not. For instance, I have cheeseburger pizza rolls going into A tier because I prefer the pizza flavor to it a lot more. Wow, way to really change it up. We go from S to A tier, and that is a big change for you. Yeah, but then we immediately go back up to S tier for the combination pizza rolls. And to be honest, yes, the A tier ranking is a big deal to me. It goes from 99 overall to like 89 or 90 overall. That's a huge drop. I, for one, support the fact that you're putting these so high. I cannot wait for you to put cheese into S tier because that one is the best to suck on like it's jelly. And then leave a bunch of sauceless and cheeseless pizza rolls out on your plate like a bunch of corpses piling up. That mental image of you sucking off a pizza roll is scarring and I never again want to think of that, you absolute putrid troglodyte. I think just for that I have to not place cheese that high. I'll place it in B tier because it is a bit mid, plus everyone knows that Don needs some meat. Word? Pause on that statement, Donald. Obviously, you two know what I mean, but even though the Don loves his meat, I know when it can be too much. And for that reason, I also have triple pepperoni pizza rolls going into B tier. But these supreme pizza rolls are fucking bangers, guys. I felt like the peppers inside, or whatever the green shit is, made it taste like an actual pizza and gave it a new flavor. For that, I will place it into S tier. At that point, why not get actual pizza, Donald? Because actual pizza isn't as easy to make as microwaving pizza rolls, and Barry, this is a tier list, so why are we counting real pizza? Anyways, let's move on because we are in our final three, but up next we got the bacon pepperoni pizza rolls, and I know you all think that would be a match made in heaven, but like Oppenheimer, I'm gonna have to drop a truth bomb. It is good, but the bacon can sometimes get a bit too salty, so I am putting it into A tier, but it is definitely in my pizza roll arsenal and always in my fridge. How many pizza rolls do you eat in one sitting, Donald? Like, how the hell can it get to the point where it is too salty? You are one fat bitch, Donald. Like, no hate at all. Shut your sleepy ass up, Joe, and never compare me to someone like Lizzo again. I love pizza rolls and obviously work out all the calories. Oh yeah, what workouts do you do and what days do you go to the gym? I don't have to answer those questions. I do full body workouts every day and I recover faster than anyone else because I am the Don. So yeah, buddy, to answer your question, I lift, bro. Let's just go ahead and move on with this list instead of answering these stupid questions. We got triple cheese up next in the tier list, and I am giving this a B tier as well. 
It's better than just the normal cheese, but I still need to have my meat in my rolls to fully enjoy them. Okay, that's valid, I guess. This fat ass has yet to place anything below a B. That is actually insane behavior. Shut up, Joe. You don't know where I'm placing the triple meat flavor. I bet it's going into B tier or above quite easily because you love meat in your mouth, so I imagine the triple meat is your heaven. Well, I don't have it going into B tier, but it's a solid A. And to once again make it clear, I do not like meat in my mouth. I like it in my pizza rolls. At the end of the day, the pizza roll goes in your mouth with the meat, so you have meat in your mouth. Relax, Sleepy Joe. I'm not you on the weekends with all that meat in my mouth. Only on Fridays. What is up, gang? We are back with our weekly tier list, but this time we're bringing you a fruit juice tier list. I'd like to add that Joey was fighting for his life trying to include his favorite juice, which was, of course, freaking prune juice. I can't help it. It's the only thing that helps me go to the bathrooms nowadays. Yikes, Joey. You can get fiber in other ways. You don't have to resort to drinking only prune juice. Let's go ahead and get this list started before Joe starts talking about his bowel movements more. I was just about to tell you why prune juice gives me the best consistency in my poops, but fine, you're the one missing out. No, Joey, I don't think I am. Fine, the audience is missing out, but whatever. To start this whole list off, we got the iconic Appy Juicy. That belongs in an immediate A for apple, in my humble opinion. I like apples a lot. If you like them so much, you probably wouldn't have fiber problems, you dementia-ridden panty wad. Listen, man, I don't think apple juice helps with constipation. Trust me, I would know. Up next, we got cranberry juice going into C tier. This shit is too freaking sour, but I love the juice when it's mixed with other juices. I can get down with that. The cranberry mixed drinks are bomb, and I also prefer them over just pure cranberry. On God, and of course you'd say it's bomb anyways, I then got Hawaiian punch going into C tier. This is red 40 in liquid form, and I kind of mess with it. I'm not even gonna lie to anyone. I will say though, that blue Hawaiian punch is better and you all can fight me in the Joe Dome about it. The hell is the Joe Dome? The dome where Joe goes to fight and Hulk smash those who defy him. Like if I hear any people tell me this next juice is their favorite, then we're gonna have some problems. Literally, I don't think anyone likes grapefruit juice. Like that is pure like bitterness going into your mouth. Okay, this kind of contradicts the fruit tier list because I remember we placed that higher, but anyways. What if someone put sugar in it to lighten up the bitterness of the grapefruit? You know, I've never thought of that. Well, then it would probably be pretty good, but for now it belongs in D tier. Not at all like our first S tier, which is going to be coconut juice water. This is like straight up the nectar of the gods. I can drink this at any single time of day. This is legit the best type of water juice I have ever had in my life. If I had the choice to either get rid of coconut water or my son hunter, well, let's just say I will miss him while I sip out of my coconut juice. Let's be honest, Joey, you would not miss him. But I hate having to agree with you on that coconut juice slash water is elite as hell. If you keep this up and put grape juice high, I'm gonna have to actually compliment you for once. Also, sorry for taking your Thunderberry. I know how much you like grape juice. Uh, I never once told you that I loved grape juice. Dude, I just assumed from the fruit tier list, of course. God, you were about to non-consensually grape me there. Wait, what, Donald, you can't say that. What, I can't say you almost graped me? You're a grapist with the amount of love you show grapes. It's just fruit talk. Joey, please help. Yeah, I like grape juice too, but I have to be honest, fellas. Both grapes for me are a solid B tier. I am not a huge grapist. They aren't like the best, but I enjoy a glass of grape juice from time to time. Unlike our American classic up next, which is good old fashioned lemonade, and I have this going into S tier, I feel like there is never a bad time for lemonade, and when you can't have any of that, the second best thing is the fruit right next to it. Some good ass limeade is almost as good and some even prefer it. But I have limeade going into A tier as it falls below lemonade in my opinion. You got me fucked up on the grape one, but lemonade is amazing. Pair that with another fruit too, and it becomes even more elite. Get some lemonade mango drinks or lemonade strawberry and ooh, that is good. On God Donald, speaking of mango, I then have mango juice also going into A tier. It is solid and I really like it, but I feel like our top two entries are better, but I may be tripping. I definitely feel like you are Joey, but I will personally let it slide since A tier is still pretty high. Thanks, Barry. I love getting the pass from a brother. Anyways, I then have the original morning fruit juice at S tier. A good glass of orange juice is something I'd kill for. Joey, I'm not used to you taking these many dubs. Just like how I'm sure your skin wasn't used to the amount of orange juice that you were ingesting, so it had to adjust and make you look like an Oompa Loompa. 
Joey, you are fucking dead. Next time I see you, you sleepy little shit. Yeah, yeah, Donnie, sure. Back onto the list. I then got pineapple juice going into A tier. I sometimes drink this so much that my mouth hurts. That doesn't sound healthy. Probably hurts from all the amount of sucking he does. Donald, I don't use straws, so I can't be sucking you silly goose. I then have pomegranate going into B tier. If pomegranate juice was fused with cranberry, I'd have that fusion up in S tier. I can't even lie, but alone, both are pretty good. Then I have our next S tier, which is strawberry juice. I can drink it alone or combine it with almost any fruit here. Banger with the strawberry choice here, Joey. Thanks, and now we can wrap this list up, and I will be putting tomato juice into S tier. No way, dude. You're not putting freaking tomato juice into S tier. That belongs in F, and you know it. He has got to be trolling. Joey, quit trying to be different. You know, you never had tomato juice in your life. You two don't know my life. What if I love tomato juice? Put it in F tier right now, Joey. Fine, I will, but I'm serious, guys. What if I like tomato juice by itself, like just the pure tomato juices? Then you should off yourself. What is up, gang? Your favorite of the trio is here ready to present you a fried chicken tier list. And despite me trying my best to get Barack to do it, he just simply wouldn't. Donald, everyone likes fried chicken, but we all know your fat ass loves it the most. The only reason you wanted me to do the tier list is because you were trying to set me up for some jokes, and I will not let you do that. Why am I never the setup for any jokes? Why are we leaving the Joe dog out of all this fun? Joe, you are quite literally the butt of almost all of my jokes. If I had to give a percentage of the amount of jokes I said revolving around you, shit that would probably be around 90%. Sounds to me that I live rent free in your head. I don't gotta worry about paying a damn dime when staying in your head. I got a whole ass timeshare in there all to myself. Shut the hell up, Joe. I barely even think about you when I'm not around you. Really, because some would say that I live with the freest of rent inside of your head. Okay, let's relax now. And Donald, I am not gonna lie. Joe most definitely lives in that shit rent free. Like if we're being real, I think he owns a whole deluxe mansion in there, but hey, I don't judge. You two obviously don't know what you're talking about. I don't think of Sleepy Joe at all. I say we go ahead and start this tier list because we are holding up the audience. Up first, we got PDQ chicken, and I'll be placing this into a solid B tier. I like their chicken and just think it's solid overall. I don't really have much to say about it. Sounds mighty mid to me if we're being honest here, but I've never had it. That's because you're never in the East Coast, Joe, but yeah, it's pretty good too, all right, if we're being honest. Unlike this next entry, which is very near and dear to my heart, I freaking love KFC, but I know that KFC just isn't what it used to be. The chicken is beyond mid, but their gravy does save them a bit of points. I just hate that most KFC places are very bad and that they only care about their KFC restaurants overseas. We talk about all the stuff we're importing from China, but can we talk about the real issue here? The fact we have KFC exporting all of their talents to their markets. I want some good ass KFC. It's not fair that I have shitty booty KFC. So for those reasons, I have to place this once great place into C tier. Wow, you're very clearly super passionate about KFC, aren't you, Donald? I think I care about KFC almost as much as I care about my kids, but definitely not more than McDonald's. Up next, we got one that'll appease the Filipino audience. All three of you can finally jump for joy that you all get to see Jollibee on these tier lists and will be even happier by the fact that I am putting Jollibee fried chicken into a solid A tier. I really like their spaghetti, but we're not here to talk about that. I also had their fried chicken and it is indeed a banger. If anyone is by one of these and are craving fried chicken, the Don would highly recommend you go out there and get yourself a bucket. I've had their hamburgers before and they kind of slap. They're a bit sweet, but it's like weirdly enough, very satisfying. This is a huge W. You finally said something normal for once, Joe. I didn't even realize that, but yeah, Jollibee slaps. Up next, we got Church's Chicken. And much like PDQ, I think it's pretty good. Definitely better than KFC, so I am happy with this placement. Up next, we got Zaxby's, and I know a decent bit of people were hating on us for our Zaxby's placement in our previous videos, but I am proud to report that they get a solid A tier from me. I like their chicken. Hey, look at that. Donald had a change of heart. Hopefully the viewers appreciate that because that does not happen often. They'll really start sucking me off when I tell them about this next one. I am putting Bojangles up in A tier alongside Jollibee and Zaxby's. I know the people will love this decision. First of all, it's pronounced Jolly Bee, and second of all, 
What about the people who prefer PDQ or Church's Chicken over all those you put in A tier? What if they get angry? Don't correct me, Joe. It was a simple mistake, and I doubt anyone will care that much about mid-chicken. Anyways, we got some dangerous entries coming up next. We got the tried and true Chick Fil A, and we all know that will go into S tier. I feel like I've said all I needed to say because that place is truly the best when it comes to chicken. Then up next we got Canes, and I know a lot of you might be haters, but I love their chicken even without the cane sauce. It's fresh and juicy, and I am a huge fan of that. That if you add on top some cane sauce, then you got a dangerous ass combo on your hands. Then lastly, we got Popeye's chicken. I love Popeye's with all of my heart, so this is going immediately to S tier as well. And I don't want anyone in the comments trying to argue with me and try to say that one of these big three don't belong in S tier. The only one I'll hear you out on is Cane's, and even then, I will be more on their side than anything else. Well, I think Cane's is on the same level as Jollibee. So I think it should either go down or Jollibee should go up. Well, I can't really argue with you over fried chicken because you clearly are well versed in the subject, but I don't think I'll be doing either of those options. Guys, please, can we talk about the real big elephant in the room? And what is that, Joe? Well, you see, there's two Zaxby's on the list. Uh, what's up with that? You are such an idiot, Joe. That's obviously a mistake. Yeah, Joe, you are an idiot. Well, fuck me for asking a question, I guess. What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list, and this time around we have the long-awaited fast food tier list. Well, uh, it would be long-awaited if we didn't just mention us making it earlier this week, but either way, it is here, and it is guaranteed to be the best fast food tier list on this whole platform. Well, that would be up to audience to determine whether or not you do a good job on this tier list, because you know how people get with their fast food takes. Yeah, like I will kill someone in cold blood if they rate White Castle lower than an S tier. Uh, I won't break the news to you yet, Joe, but let's instead ride the high of this positive energy and talk about this list. Damn, I have never heard you talk so happily about a list. It's because we are talking about America's number one thing, and that is fast food. I love this and will die eating fast food, and I would want to be buried with all my receipts from all the fast food places I visited. Keep up your diet, and it won't be long for that. I'm going to ignore that and keep the positive vibes going because we all know that fast food is literally what fuels the dawn. But enough of that because we have to start this damn list. And up first, we got Arby's. And I honestly feel like people hate on this place too much. You always hear about how much Arby's sucks and how they have the absolute grossest food. But I swear that's only from people who have never had Arby's before. Or they went to some bad location because Arby's has some of the best fries in the game with their curly fries. Not to mention that their burgers and chicken are actually good. And sure, they have some monstrosities like their meat mountain. But if you get something normal, then it should be fine and you should have a pretty good experience with them. Their shakes are pretty good too. Now this is a banger of a take because I quite do like their fries. Of course, this is a banger of a take. I have a 99 overall fast food rating. This isn't a Joe list, nor is it your list. Every take on this video should be taken as gospel and be listened to immediately without ever questioning it. I want my opinions to be like Nazi Germany. And if you speak out against me, I will guillotine your ass. You're talking about the French Donald. The Nazis did not do that, uh, I think. I don't care. I refuse to be corrected by you, Joe. And either way, I'm sure that the French in some ways are just as bad as Nazis, maybe even worse. In no way at all are they as bad as the Nazis. I don't know, Barack. The French do eat snails. That's literally their cultural dish. And here in America, we have freedom with a side of kick-ass with all of our obesity-inducing meals. It's quite clear to me that we are better. But anyways, moving on, we got Sonic. And this is a god-awful place. I pray to God that you only go here for the slushies because their food is among some of the worst slop I have ever had. And before you say anything, Joe, yes, it does include their foot-long chili cheese dog. Now, this is outrageous. The foot-long glizzy gladiator deserves to make Sonic an A tier alone. See, that's where I heavily disagree with you. I refuse to allow my stomach to have an entire foot-long of chili cheese meat inside of me with their microwave-ass food. Moving past that atrocity, we have Little Caesars. And this, of course, is an S tier. Now, admittedly, the pizza is not the best, but since when did pizza have to be this grand spectacle? They are simple and have good pizza and all for the price of $5. I don't think it can get more American than that. Yeah, but their pizzas literally taste like cardboard with some sauce and cheese. Like, there's a reason it's $5. Oh, sorry, I didn't know we had a food critic here. I forgot that not only are you good at bombing innocent people, but you also seem to be some sort of food savant with your shitty Michelle-made healthy foods that taste like skid-marked underwear. 
And I hate to burst your bubble, but to me, Little Caesars tastes like pizza enough, and that's what matters to me. Anyways, after that, we got Carl's Jr., and this is an honest A tier. It isn't bad, but it is pretty good solid food, and I have not been disappointed by them yet. However, up next, we got Joe's favorite up next, and I got some bad news for you, Joe. I don't really like White Castle, but I don't hate it as much as Sonic. This is like a solid C tier because their sliders are ass. But you know what you're doing if you roll up to a White Castle, and most times out of 10, you're pulling up after 12 a.m., and you're most likely trashed from a night of drinking. This is fucking outrageous. Joe, it really isn't, and I refuse to hear you out. The fact it isn't in D tier should be more than enough. After that, we got Taco Bell, and you all already know how the Don loves himself some Mexican food. And no matter what people say, I will always be a Taco Bell lover. Get you some spicy potato tacos or some beefy layer burritos, and you are goddamn set. This is an automatic S tier, and since we are talking about Mexican food still, let me tell you all that Chipotle is also going up there in S tier. Even if these two give you the shits, it really does not matter because it is so worth it. How the hell are you getting the shits from Mexican food? It literally is just meat, cheese, and rice. Like, can your stomach not handle those basic food groups? Yeah, I actually can't. They always add on some secret ingredient to give you bubble guts after you're done eating. After that, we got Burger King, and that is an honest B tier. I think this is also overhated, and it's actually not as bad as what people think. I will twerk for a Whopper, and I will get crucified for the goddamn Whopper. I will be the face of the Whopper and die for all those people who are afraid to admit that the Whopper is amazing and that I will indeed have it my why. Now, this is something I can get behind. I love me a Whopper, and they had this delicious Fruit Loop shake at Burger King that absolutely smacked. Don't even get me started on the Mac and Cheetos. Well, it's not a terrible take from you, but those Mac and Cheetos were kind of mid. Still, though, I'd agree with that Fruit Loop shake take. After that, we got Domino's in A tier, and this has to be the best fast food pizza place around, in my opinion. That garlic crust is to die for. And if you have the app, they constantly give you a ton of points and free pizzas just for buying from them. It is a banger. Then we got Dairy Queen, and this is all right. Their blizzard saved them, but I think it's a B tier. Now, those blizzards are to die for. I'd even say that the blizzards are the best ice cream you can get from any fast food joint. While that's true, I am grading everything about it and not just the damn blizzards. After that, we got in and out and five guys both going into A tier. Now, hear me out on these because I know this is where the comment section is going to gape my asshole farther than Goatsy ever could. I just think in and out is super overrated and I have tried their animal style shit, but it just isn't worth all that hype. It's still great and amazing. Don't get me wrong, but it's not worth the amount of glazing people put on it. I swear in and out gets glazed more than a Krispy Kreme donut. As for the Five Guys rating, well, uh, that shit is just too overpriced. Like if I am gonna pay above $20 for a burger, then that shit better have gold flakes on top. But nonetheless, the flavor is great and I love their fry seasoning. Okay, the Five Guys take I can handle, but are we really gonna hate on in and out just because it's overhyped? It is definitely worth the S tier. You're just saying that because all you liberals love the hell out of In-N-Out and their veggie menu. I am a man of the people, and I am sure the people will agree with me, but uh, if you don't, then don't comment on it. I don't want anyone going against the Don. Anyways, after that, Jack in the Box is up in S tier because their burgers are amazing, their tacos are great, and I will twerk for their goddamn curly fries. Then we have one that is personally very disappointing for me because I have KFC going into C tier. Now, back in the day, this would have merited an A tier or maybe even an S tier. However, nowadays, they just don't seem to care anymore, and it's just been mid to downright bad whenever I go to a KFC now. Seems to me that the downfall of KFC seems to correlate with the Obama administration. So now you're blaming the downfall of KFC with my terms in office? I am not saying that they are related, but it makes you think a bit. I'm on to you, Barack. Anyways, after that, we got two back-to-back -back S tiers with McDonald's, and Chick-fil-A, and honestly, McDonald's almost slid down a bit for me because why the hell is a McChicken damn near four bucks? What the hell are they doing? They are killing the American dream of a cheap McChicken, but they still have a stranglehold on me because I cannot have enough McDonald's in my life. And as for Chick-fil-A, well, uh, you all already know that it's amazing. Yeah, but they hate gay people, Donald. Sometimes you have to forgive the bad and just see the good in these multimillionaire corporations. I'm sure that the gays have no issue since their chicken fucking bangs. 
After that, we got Panda Express. And for being the only fast food Chinese place, I can tell you that they are doing a damn good job. Get me some orange chicken and chow mein, and we are set. I think an A tier is in order for this one. And for Papa John's, I'd say that a B tier is in order. I like seeing Shaq in their commercials, and their pizzas are good. But nine times out of 10, I am choosing Domino's or Little Caesars. And while we're at it, I'll be slotting Pizza Hut in the same ranking because of the same reasons. No way Pizza Hut and Papa John's are in the same tier. Well, of course, you of all people would say that. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Well, I know you got beef with Papa John himself because of what he said. What did he say? Pizza, pizza. Is that what triggered you, Barack? Joe, you are honestly such a fucking idiot. At least I don't get triggered by the saying pizza, pizza. Joe, that is the wrong company, but hell, that makes it funnier. After that, we got Popeyes, and that is an easy S tier. I've tried their new wings, and I have to say that it fucking bangs. I will twerk for some Popeyes. I am throwing it back for any type of chicken they got there, and they have the best chicken sandwich in the goddamn game. Subway, though, I have nothing but bad memories of. I have this going into D tier with Sonic because the last time I had Subway, I freaking threw up. And in the grand scheme of things, I just genuinely don't think this competes with anything on this list except for dog shit Sonic. What the hell did you order from there? Ask Joe because he ordered some atrocity of a sandwich and I forced myself to eat it because the Don refuses to leave an order unfinished. Joe, what did you do? Nothing. I just got him the Joe Dog Special, which is a, a foot-long meatball sub with extra marinara and extra every other sauce, which at the time would have been yellow mustard, brown mustard, ranch chipotle, light mayo, regular mayo, sweet onion, cold tuna, and at the very end, you got to toast it. And the trick to getting the right Joe Dog Special is to make sure they toast it till it's almost burnt and make sure you toast it after all the toppings and food are put in so that you can have some warm tuna and yummy sauce alongside the meatball. Oh, God. Just hearing that all again makes my stomach ache in pain. I think I got an ulcer from that shit. Let's please not talk about that again. Let's just talk about Wendy's next, because Wendy's in an A tier, and let's just go and finish this list, because I want to throw up so bad right now. Culver's is an S tier. You all know this, but oh, God, I think I'm going to hurl from hearing the order again. Oh, God, he's puking. See what you did, Joe. Shit, how is this my fault? I told him if he wasn't going to eat it, I'd finish it myself. More for the Joe dog, which would have been amazing. You are beyond repair. What is going on, gang? We are back once again with another tier list, but this time we are doing a donut tier list. I happen to be a donut aficionado, so I'm pretty sure I'm the most qualified to be judging all these delicious donuts. No, that's not quite the reason why we let you do this list, Donnie. See, the main reason why me and Barry thought you should handle the list is because you're a fat ass. Shut your sleepy ass up, Joe, before I kill you before the dementia does. Let's all relax now. What Joey meant to say was that you are simply an elite eater who has the best taste buds. Hmm, I do have elite taste buds, so I'll let this entire thing slide. But let's go ahead and get this list started. And up first, we got a Long John. These donuts are basically your normal frosted donut, but just long as hell. I think for this, I'm putting it at an A tier. Dude, I actually really like these. I love to see how far I can put one down my throat before I ultimately take a bite. You guys know what I always say, I love thickness, but this thing has both length and girth, let me tell you. Jesus, Joe, you are some sort of special, most likely the needs sort of special, to be honest. Anyways, up next we got an old-fashioned, and I am assuming this is just a normal-ass donut. Yeah, I can't really say I love these because it is just fried dough, so I might have to put this at D tier because it's worse than everything else on this list. I do like me an old fashioned in another way if you all catch my drift. I don't think I'm catching your drift quite honestly, but I think an old fashioned with like some hot chocolate bangs enough to merit a C tier, to be honest. I personally like eating it that way. That is such an old person thing to say, Joey. God, I bet you have as many wrinkles on your face as you do on your nutsack, bro. You know what I actually kind of- All right, enough of that. No nut talk when I'm speaking of donuts. Let's continue on with the list. And I got double chocolate donuts in B tier. It's just a bit too much chocolate, but I still mess with it heavily. Valid, I feel like too much of a good thing sometimes turns into a bad thing. Thanks, Barry. I knew you felt the same way as me. And up next, we got the classic sprinkle donut going into A tier because it is a staple. Like you can never go wrong with a sprinkle donut. I won't lie, I do not like sprinkles. Like what do they do? They are just there and I would rather just have it with just the frosting. I don't want any opinions from the nutsack man himself. Either way, I'm sure we will all agree on this next one going into S tier, as glazed donuts are literally like perfection. 
You can never go wrong with this selection. And if you get me a dozen glazed donuts from Krispy Kreme, I think I would cream my pants. I hate that you use the word cream like that, but like goddamn man, I have to agree that it do indeed be bussin'. I love Krispy Kreme so much, I think I would wipe out an entire country rather than lose Krispy Kreme. Well, that isn't really saying much, Barack, since you wanted to wipe out all of the Middle East free of charge, but yes, Krispy Kreme is indeed the best. Up next, we got a jelly donut, and I have that in A tier as well. Like, you cannot go wrong with a jelly donut. Shit is just delicious, and I will eat it up any day of the week. Ooh, I quite like jelly donuts, too. I love eating them with tea or something slightly bitter. God, Joe, do you also eat them while doing your crossword puzzle? You are such an old fart, I wouldn't be surprised if you keel over any day now. Anyways, up next, we got a chocolate frosted donut, and that goes into S tier because it is elite as well. Once again, I just feel like you can never go wrong with this option, and it is always banging. Extremely valid take here, Donald. This next one, though, guys, I wanted to put higher, but I was afraid the audience would, like, kill me if I put it in S. So I am instead putting powdered donuts in A tier. Like, I just love eating powdered donuts. I love the mini powdered donuts. Wow. Yes, Joey. I can definitely tell the audience would go feral and jump my ass considering you agreed with me. But quite honestly, I did not expect you to have an actual dub today considering how you always have bad takes. Yeah, I love eating them with my tea or a fresh tall glass of prune juice just so I can clean out my bowels real quick. And there goes all that. I take back my compliment and I will now move on to the last donut, which is of course a Boston cream. I like this going into B tier. I just think it does a little too much. Like I always get my cream falling out of it because they fill it up like I'm some girl in the middle of a bukkake and I hate that. It's still once again pretty good. You know, in 86, I once participated in a 33-man bukkake to celebrate my neighbor's birthday. He was turning a young 76. We do not need to hear any more of that. But going back to the list, Donald, I noticed you have basically had everything placed at B or higher, aside from the old-fashioned. But even then, you have a ton of A-tier stuff. Why is that? I just feel like this is where the food is accurately rated, and people will love it. I think these donut tiers are solid as hell, and most people would agree that they simply belong that high. I genuinely believe that this is how the list should go. All of these donuts belong that high, and I haven't heard anyone say otherwise during this list. I think you rated them that high because you're such a fat bitch. What is up, gang? We are back with another tier list. And this time around, we got a Hawaiian punch tier list. And let me tell you all right now that this is the definitive tier list because we have no one else other than the Don making this list. Now, I am a connoisseur of the finer things in life, so you bet I have had every single flavor of Hawaiian punch on this list, and I will be able to give the most accurate rating for every single one. Watch him rate nothing lower than a C because, of course, Donald would love this sugar-infested drink. Ha! That's how I know your knowledge on this magnificent drink is almost as outdated as you, Joe. Since you've been hitting us with fun facts, let me hit you with one about Hawaiian punch. It actually does not have much sugar, and for every serving, which is about eight ounces, there are only 11 grams of sugar, so it is actually not that sugary. Donald, I really hate to be the one that burst your bubble, but uh, the American Heart Association's recommendation for sugar intake is that men should consume no more than 36 grams of added sugar per day. For women, the number is lower at around 25 grams per day. So if you think about it, one serving of this drink is around 30% of our daily sugar intake. That is one third of our daily sugars from one cup of your juice. And I can't even imagine what else you eat or drink because your bloodstream must be more sugar than blood. Joke's on you, I already knew that fact and I only drink Diet Coke aside from the occasional punch I have here and there. You know, Barack, not everyone goes all in on the things they do. I, for one, have self-control and do not go over my daily sugars, I uh, think. Either way, only losers count that, and I am only a winner, but who cares about some nerd stats? And let's get started with this list. Up first, we got the classic Fruit Juicy Red. And before you guys try to grill me in the comments, it is actually called Fruit Juicy Red. I don't know why they didn't just call it Juicy Red Fruit or even Red Juicy Fruit, but hey, I am not in charge of their marketing. Nonetheless, we all know where this classic flavor goes, and it is an immediate S tier. This shit slaps harder than an abusive husband with a couple of brewskis in his system after his wife refused to grab him the TV remote. The light version is still okay, but that's a C tier. It is not as good in the Don's opinion. All that red 40 going in my bloodstream. Yummy, yummy, I actually think I can become superhuman if I consume all the colors. 
red 40, blue one, yellow five, green three, and whatever the hell else they got. I will consume them all and become the ultimate being. Joe, I don't know about that, but I'm sure it'll have the inside of your stomach looking like a goddamn rave festival with all the colors. After that, we got Berry Blue Typhoon, and this is another goddamn banger. This is another S tier in my book. Like, I don't know how you could possibly hate blue colored things. Make any drink blue, and I think it'll just taste better. It might be the blue one Joe was talking about, but this is a masterpiece of a flavor, and honestly, might top the red one for me, but let me not go too crazy. Nah, I think you were spitting there for a bit because I honestly prefer the blue flavored one to the red one. But then again, Michelle only lets me have the sugar-free one, so I can't really judge that well. Sugar-free sounds so un-American, but hey, chalk my shit up full of aspartame or sucralose, and I honestly won't care. Cancer this blah, blah, blah. Listen, all I know is that it makes my drink taste delicious, and it has no sugar. That's a life hack, and I don't care about the medical downsides. Anyways, up next, we got Berry Limeade Blast, and this is our first A tier. Don't get me wrong, I love the inclusion of the lime, but I'd rather have the original red flavor because that's like the OG. It is nice to have around and use whenever you want to switch up flavors, though. What isn't that good is our next entry, which is Berry Bonkers, and this looks like black sludge, but it tastes actually not that bad. I still would rather have everything above except for the light drink, but I'll give it a solid B tier. It really isn't that good, though, but if there's no other flavor, then I'll drink it. Now you're Berry Bonkers for placing it that low, Donald. God, shut the hell up, Joe. Do not make those puns. After that somewhat bad one, we got its cousin with Greenberry Rush. But unlike Berry Bonkers, Greenberry Rush actually tastes pretty good in comparison. Like it's worth an A tier, in my opinion. And it almost had me debating putting it into S tier. But I have too many good things going up there that I just could not put it there. It was a good contender, but I think A tier is a perfect spot for it. Not too high and definitely not too low. You're really getting analytical with these takes. Do you really care about the placements of these drinks that much, Donald? Of course I do. I take all my lists very seriously, and even more so if I am grading the nectar of the gods. Don't try to distract me, Barry, because I am on a roll right now. And then up next, we got some good old lemon berry squeeze up next. This is honestly another A tier for me because this flavor has the nice addition of lemon with all the berries, but once again, it just doesn't quite reach the zenith that the other flavors above it do. Do you like that, guys? Yeah, I'm a pretty smart guy for using the word zenith, I know. You know what? The Joe Dog likes the verbiage you just used. Zenith would indeed be applicable for those items on top. No shit, Joe. That's why I used that word. I told you that the avant-garde incident was a one-time thing. Speaking of one-time things, I got Lemon Lime and Lemonade Hawaiian Punch going into B tier. Like, it isn't bad, but these two are just too citrusy for my liking. I'll have a couple of cups of this and my face will contort more than Joe's when thinking of what to say during live TV. Wait a minute. You just said earlier that you don't drink more than a cup because it would exceed your daily limit for sugars. Barry, why are you such a snitch, bro? And I obviously only do that during my cheat days. That must be every day then for this round mound of a man. Shut the hell up, Sleepy Joe. I do not want to hear any snide remarks from the man who is a professional kitty sniffer. Anyways, after that, we got yet another S tier, and that, of course, is Mango Monsoon. I am pretty sure if you make anything mango flavored, it will just automatically slap. Like, I legitimately think it's a cheat code when it comes to artificial flavors. Then, uh, damn, we got back-to-back -back S tier ratings because I got Whitewater Wave also going into S tier. You know how I mentioned that anything mango flavored tastes amazing? Well, the same can be said about anything white colored, like you got the Glacier Frost Gatorade or whatever it's called, tasting absolutely amazing. And then now you have this. I actually uh, don't know if there are any other white colored drinks, but fuck it. I'm still gonna say that my statement holds true. Would you count clear colored things with flavor a part of that category? Well, that would make no sense at all, but sure. So like stuff like clear Pepsi and actually didn't older Gatorades have a clear flavor? I swear remembering that to be a thing, Joe, you're full of fun facts. Is this an actual thing? Well, if you're asking me if I remember, buddy, you're asking the wrong person. Of course, as always, you do not come through when we need you most. But watch out if you misuse a fucking word, because then you'll have Joe down your throat. Figuratively and hopefully physically as well. You are so gross, Joe, but let's keep going with the list, because we're nearing the end of the list. Up next, we got Orange Ocean, and let me tell you all right here that this is not really that good. I give it a solid B tier, but most of the time, orange-flavored things miss unless it's pure orange juice. Oh, that and Sunny D, actually. So those two things are primarily the only two things that are orange-flavored that I actually really enjoy. 
Did you know that Rice Energy has a Sunny D flavor, Donald? You might actually enjoy that because it tastes amazing. Shit, actually. I might have to order some and we'll probably do a tier list on that then. Following that, we got another S tier in the Polar Blast flavor. And once again, if it is blue, then the Don will probably like it nine times out of 10. What was the one time you didn't like it? Okay, I can't recall that, but Joey people just say that to signify that they like something a lot. Stop being a smart ass. Wait, I can actually remember the one time I didn't like it and it was when you were talking about boiling hot dogs in Gatorade water. When the hell did I say that? That sounds very un -Joe like Frail, roll the clip. Going straight into S tier. I honestly think I'm just a fan of blue products. I get blue ICs, I get blue Gatorade, and I get blue Kool-Aid. I'm a blue sort of guy. I freaking love the flavor blue. I think I'll eat or drink anything that's blue. Whoa, whoa, hold on, Joe. What the hell is the flavor blue? Also, what can you possibly be eating that is blue? Like, seriously, honest to God, I cannot think of a food that comes in the natural color of blue. Well, I sometimes boil my hot dogs in blue Gatorade, and it gives them this yummy tinge of blue that you can see and taste. That is so freaking gross, man. Oh, that, uh, well, what can I say? If I said it, then it must indeed bang. You are so fucking gross, man. Anyways, following that disgusting stuff, we return to some mid. And I know, Barack, you might find this controversial, but uh, I have the watermelon flavor of Hawaiian punch going into B tier. Please don't be so angry. I really don't care. As a matter of fact, I uh, actually kind of agree with you. Barack, please calm down. Don't yell at me, please. I will never disrespect you ever again. I'll stick to berating the illegals instead. Okay, I said that in a pretty calm manner, and uh, I don't know if that's the right thing to say in this situation. You're right, I just gotta live with the fact that I'm pissing you off with that rating. And you know what? I feel better standing on business and not backing down to you. Watermelon Hawaiian Punch will stay a B tier no matter what you say, Barack. God, Donald, you can be just as stupid as Joe sometimes. Actually, you can be as dumb as him a lot of the times, but we don't call you out on it nearly as much. The fuck did I do to merit that stray? Joe, do we need to roll that clip of the hot dog boiling in blue Gatorade again? God, sometimes just seeing you pisses me off. I want to, like, pop your head like a pimple. Mama did always say that people are going to hate on my success. She always used to tell me they hate us because they ain't us. Pretty sure you just ripped that entire saying from the movie, the interview, like that was the biggest joke of that whole movie. Yeah, you caught me. Boy, howdy, I freaking love that movie. It was okay. I may need to rewatch it, though. But we're on the very last item, and that is Citrus Splash. And uh, I don't know why there's two, but we'll only rate one. And as I said previously with orange-flavored things, I uh, just don't really like them that much. I am giving this a B tier, but I will say it tastes slightly better than Orange Ocean. Well, now that we're done with this list, I noticed another thing. What is that, Joe? That this fat ass didn't rate anything lower than a C, and the one and only thing he did put into C tier was the diet version of one of the higher-rated flavors. Yeah, you actually have a point, Joe. Donald, you need to cut back on the sugar. I'm telling you that my sugar levels are fine. I bet vampires would love the hell out of your blood. They'd probably use it as a honey substitute for their pancakes. I can only imagine what they use your semen for. What? What is going on, gang? We are back after a long pause, and we are here to bring you another tier list. But this one involves one of my favorite things, and that is pizza pie. I would twerk for some good pizza right about now. Well, good thing we don't have any near us at the moment because not a single soul in this world wants to see that Joey. On God, Barack, plus we all know I would throw it back better than Joey ever could, just like how I was a better president than he could ever imagine himself being. Anyways, let's get started with the list, and I see Home Run in Pizza on this list. And we have Home Run in Pizza twice in this list, and I am putting the frozen pizza version of it in C tier. It's pretty solid and easy to cook, the perfect rating for an okay pizza. Also helps to add that no pizza is truly bad because we all know that pizza bangs no matter what. Really? What if it was pineapple pizza, guys? I personally would rather lick Ron Jeremy's taint than eat that garbage. If you're putting pineapples on your pizza, you may as well be putting goddamn blueberries on that shit. Go ahead, what's stopping you? Fruit simply doesn't belong on pizza. There goes Joe not taking his dementia meds again. I am a pineapple on pizza truther. It provides the perfect bit of acidity and sweetness to a salty pizza. And if you pair that with some jalapenos, Jesus, I will come at the thought of that. If you hate pineapples on pizza, you simply are not an elite pizza eater. I personally don't care either way. I'll eat any pizza if it's there, no matter what, to be honest. Barack, you can't tell me you'd eat some garbage Hawaiian pizza, right? Joe, you do realize where I was born, right? Uh, Africa? And they say I'm the offensive one. Jesus, America, wake up. 
Anyways, up next, we got CC's, and this place is going straight to D tier. I honestly believe you'd be better off eating frozen pizza than eating at this place. It did have a unique concept with the pizza buffet, but like, let's be honest, guys, it's pretty garbage. Yeah, but garbage can be yummy sometimes. I guess that has to be true, considering how you and Barack enjoy being married to your wives. Uncalled for man, what the hell, I've been on your side. Sorry, Barry, sometimes the Dominator can't focus on one target. What I can focus on is the fact that Domino's is an A-tier pizza place, especially for fast food chain pizza places. Man, get me that garlic crust, and I will bark and go on all fours for that pizza. Can't lie that garlic crust is elite. I'd giga twerk for that. Giga what? Jesus, but that's a solid selection for our first A-tier, to be honest. Of course it is. I put it there so it is simply an elite selection, you dingus. Up next, I am putting Papa John's and DiGiorno in B-tier. I think DiGiorno is one of the best frozen pizzas and Papa John's as well. It's kind of a mess internally, but the pizza isn't bad. Some say that Mr. Papa was spitting on what he was saying. Not a goddamn soul was saying that. What did he spit? Was he spitting on the pizza? Gross. But I like how Shaq is in the commercials now. I just feel so safe and secure knowing his big, strong hands is helping make my pizzas. Purr. What the hell? Joe, you get more and more odd every day. Now, this next one is home run in pizza, but like the actual restaurant, and I can't lie. I went to one before, and I had severe diarrhea from that place. I spent the whole night on the toilet just evacuating my entire insides into my toilet bowl. Just for that experience, I have to give it an F. But, Donald, it's not really fair to rate a place based on just one singular experience. What if they're really good and yummy and you just went to a bad place? I like the in-person restaurants. I would rather eat a used condom than visit that place again. Up next, we got Red Baron going in C-tier. I like the name Baron. Reminds me of my son. Wow, what a way to rate things. Listen, Barack, it is my list, but I will admit the great Don needs your help for these next two because I haven't had enough Chicago pizza to know the difference between these two, and I know you were in Chicago for quite a bit. Dude, you literally have a tower named after you in that city. I'm not trying to get shot in that city by all the troglodytes just to find out if Lou Malnatis is better than Giordano's. God, these Guido names are so hard to pronounce. God, you cannot be saying these things. But I guess I can help. Now, I think they're both great places and the best of all the things on this list. But I would put Lou over Giordano's personally, so I think an S tier for Lou would be appropriate. Their deep dish is amazing. God, I hate deep dish. Chicago pizza is so overrated compared to New York pizza. On God, Donnie, I hate all that tomato paste in my mouth. It makes me feel like I'm eating a tomato pie. Plus, it's just so thick and like, what the heck is the point? I want pizza. I don't want a freaking mush pie in my mouth. On God, Joey, only pies I want are creams. Guys, it's literally called pizza pie. The whole freaking point of deep dish is for that novelty. God, you two piss me off sometimes. But yeah, I would personally put Lou at S tier and Giordano's at A tier alongside fucking Domino's, I guess. God. Yeah, I guess that's cool, but we got Little Caesars up next, and boy howdy, that's a pretty mid pizza, but it is only $5, so like I have to give it an A tier just for that. It is pretty bad pizza, though. Like, objectively, it is worse than the ones below it. But Barry, it is only $5. Joey gets it. Do not order Little Caesars sides that are not crazy bread. I got wings from Little Caesars, and I swear that a leather boot would have been easier to swallow. Okay, so you're gonna ignore how Joey pronounced $5? Okay, sure. And I do have to say that the crazy bread does indeed go crazy shit as gas. Yeah, call that crazy bread schizophrenic with how good it tastes. Anyways, we got Pizza Hut up next, and much like Domino's, I am a pretty big fan of the Hut. I want to put this in A tier, quite honestly. I don't mind that placement, honestly. I would devour that pizza, and they have pretty good sides, too. To put it in words that Barack would like, their pizza is the bomb, and I love it. I cannot say the same for Tombstone Pizza. That shit is dog food. Actually, I am swapping it from D tier to F tier with Home Run In. I would rather be poisoned again than ever have Tombstone Pizza. Since I'm talking about bad pizza, I am putting S Barrow in D tier. It's mall court pizza, and I think that speaks for itself. I'm happy you finally put Home Run In slightly higher now. We can end a list calmly with Totino's at like C now. Are you crazy, Barack? C tier, really? They made pizza rolls and that shit is fucking gas. Okay, but we're talking about pizza, not pizza rolls. Back me up on this, Donnie. I'm afraid Sleepy Joe is speaking facts. You're speaking to king of pizza rolls, 
And this shit is elite just for the invention of pizza rolls. I am placing Totino's at S tier. You have got to be kidding me. Oh, my pizza rolls are ready. Hold on, guys. Lucky. What is up, gang? We are back with another presidential tier list. And this time around, we got the great Don rating various delicious looking pastries. And while I told Barack and Joey that I did not know all of the ones on the list, they insisted that I still do this list. Come on, Donald, don't sound suspicious about that. Of course, we chose the most elite eater of the three of us for this pastry list. And we just know that you will have good takes on these. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if you just put all of these in S tier. Joe, you absolute Neanderthal. I would never make an uneven list like that. I know your sleepy self would, but I, on the other hand, have standards. Yeah, that's totally what I meant by that comment. But uh, Donald, can you get this list started? Because I am getting hungry just looking at all the stuff here. Jesus, do not tell me what to do, Sleepy Joe. But I will get this wonderfully sweet list started for our fans. Did you guys like what I did there? Well, it doesn't matter because I liked it. But anyways, up first, we got some sort of vanilla pastry with some nice filling. I actually don't know what this is, but just by the looks of it, I can smell it and taste it through the screen, and it actually looks kind of good. My Donalysis provides me with great insight on this, and seeing how it has a nice filling with either syrup or fruit, I can tell this is kind of good. I think I will land on B tier for this dish. As a matter of fact, I may as well grade the next two as well because I do not know what they are, but the next one seems to be like some sort of pie dish, or sweet casserole, or even a brown Betty. Listen, I can't tell you what it is, but I can smell it through the screen and tell you that it belongs in A tier. I see that it's not doing too much and has some nice cinnamon on top, and then you have them in nice little bite-sized pieces. I love that, and that's why it belongs up there. Meanwhile, with this Choco Taco looking thing, I will be putting this into B tier. Don't get the Don wrong, because I do like things when they are wet and sloppy, but that just looks like it is doing a bit too much. Like I take a bite and then white ooze just flows all over my plate and probably falls out of the side of this mysterious cum dish. I think B is a little high, but I am a sucker for pastries. So even though I shit on this, I know that this unknown ass dish will get eating it no matter what. I'm starting to think that we maybe should not have gotten you to do this tier list if you did not know the first three entries. No, trust me, I'm good for the next ones, uh, for the most part. Like, I most definitely have us for this next dish, because this next pastry is most definitely carrot cake, and I do like carrot cake, as you can tell by our cake tier list, but in the grand scheme of things. When you compare something as simple as carrot cake to other things on this list, like tarts and churros, then you already know it isn't in the same stratosphere. I love me some carrot cake with some tea, but I can't for the life of me place this in the higher tiers. It is good for a cake, but not for a pastry, if that makes sense. Still, though, I give it a C tier, so it's not completely being shat on. Me personally, I really like carrot cake no matter what. I think the value of it does not change. If Margot Robbie is pretty in one movie, she won't suddenly stop being pretty in another. Same goes with carrot cake. Carrot cake is in no way comparable to Margot Robbie. It's more like an actress that looks super cute or hot in one film, but then looks absolutely mid in all other film appearances. I will not go further on carrot cake talk, because up next we got some key lime pie. And let me tell you all that this straight up goes into S tier, and there is no argument against it. I love me some good ass key lime pie, and I am just a fan of citrusy desserts. Like I would kill someone for a tray of lemon squares, which by the way, if those were on this list, they would also get an S tier. I would absolutely do horrendous things if I were high and needed lemon squares. Have you guys ever seen a Serbian film? I'd do worse things than that, dude. Joe, never mention that film in my presence ever again. And what do you mean, hi? We don't do that type of stuff, remember? Oh, yeah, our monetization, uh, yeah. And by that, I mean high on life because I never do any sort of substance. Hunter does, though. Yeah, we all know about that twisted and, quite frankly, unhealthy relationship you have with your son, Hunter. But that's not the talk of the list because, holy shit, we have another S tier, and that, of course, are churros. I tell you, I was hesitant on building that wall only because I knew I would be depriving the U.S. country of all these delicious Mexican foods and desserts, and the churro is one of them. It is a fried stick of dough with or without a filling, and then you just tack on a bunch of brown sugar or normal sugar in general. This is like the Michael Jordan of pastries because it is just so damn unhealthy, but like that's what makes it so damn good. We then continue with some form of greatness because after that we got a cinnamon roll and this is a solid A tier. I don't hyper twerk for these things, like I won't throw my ass back to high heaven, 
but I will give you a solid and firm handshake if you bring some cinnamon rolls to the function, which is still respectable in my opinion. You just can't go wrong with a cinnamon roll. I don't know, Donald, cinnamon rolls are all right. Like, I would not go as far as to put them into A tier, but whatever. Whatever is right, because last time I checked, it was the Don making this, not you. Following that, we got another unknown ass pastry, but it looks pretty nice with all that powdered sugar on top. Give me a glass of milk and I'll be set with that. So I am thinking a B tier for that. And as for our next entry, we got cream puffs, and these are okay. The problem with cream puffs is just that they are too easy to eat. I am just eating air instead of an actual dessert, but I will still be giving this a B tier because despite that complaint, it is still very delicious. I absolutely cannot say the same for the next entry because creme brulee is overrated as hell, and I honestly don't jive with it as much as others. Now, I am not saying that it is bad, but I'm also not saying it's the best thing to ever exist. On this pastry list, it hits mediocrity, much like with the carrot cake, so I think a C tier is good. The hell is creme brulee, really? It's just custard with a caramelized top layer, and that's it. Overrated, as I said. And following that, we got another unknown dessert. It looks like some bread with an orange filling. I think I'll give it a B tier. Whenever I don't know what it is, I want you all to know that I just guess how good it is just by the picture. That won't be the case for this bad boy up next because I got eclairs going straight into S tier. It's basically an elongated donut with some good ass filling. And if you get me a coffee with that, it'll be wraps. Well, wraps for the toilet because I may have the shits for the next 30 minutes, but after that, I'll be set. We really did not need to hear about your bowel movements, Donald. You could have just kept talking about the pastry instead. Speak for yourself, Barry. I, for one, really enjoy it when Donald opens up to us about his tummy issues, and that in turn makes me feel more safe and secure to talk about my tummy issues. Well, the very last thing I want is for you to feel safe and secure, so I think I'll take you up on your advice, Barack. Anyways, after that, we got pies, and this is an immediate A tier, because you can never go wrong with any sort of pie. Me, personally, though, I am a cream pie type of guy. The next pastry is like some powdered donut or something. I swear I've had these before, and they bang. I think I'll give it an A tier as well. But now we run into a problem because why the hell do we have the damn peach emoji in this tier list? Yeah, that thing is so curvy. I can actually incorporate this into my material the more I look at it. For the love of God, Joe, don't say that. And I could not tell you what that is, Donald. Sorry. Well, the curvy peach emoji gets a C tier, looks more like a candy than a pastry. Then after that, we may have a controversial take, but I also have macaroons going in C tier as well because they are kind of overrated, like I don't hate them. But when the hell am I ever like, man, I'm craving some macaroons? I'll answer that, it is never. Then after that, we got what I presume to be is mochi. Now the Don is a man of culture, and if this is actually mochi, then I, of course, am giving this an A tier. Now I prefer ice cream mochi over the dry ass regular one, but I still enjoy them a lot and have to once again applaud the Japanese for just having good food in general. I don't know how there are not a lot of fat people over there, Probably because they don't deep fry all of their food, but God damn it, it is an American right to enjoy a deep fried Twinkie or some deep fried Oreos. Could have not worded it better myself, Joe. After that, we got some flan, and this is going into A tier right off the bat. Maybe I am just biased, but flan slaps anytime I've had it, and maybe because I've rarely had it, it has been more of a positive experience with me. Following that, we got some weird ass scrambled egg looking thing. I swear I remember eating this, but cannot recall the flavor of it but I'll still give it a C tier. After that, we got another S tier, and that is pumpkin pie. This shit slaps, and because it's seasonal, you don't really get the opportunity to eat it a lot, thus preserving the value of it. I also want to add that if cheesecake were on this list, I would skyrocket that shit to God tier or something above S, because the Don will never not eat a cheesecake. Trust me, we can tell you never skip out on a cheesecake. Just like how you'll never skip out on being an absolute creep. But now coming to the end of the list, we have nothing other than an amazingly delicious tart. Now with that description alone, you should already assume I am placing this high, but I have to tell you all that this is getting an S tier from me. I love tarts so much and just having the sour slash bitter fruit on top with the sugary glaze and the beautifully crafted crust at the bottom. Oh my God, it's amazing just to think about it. Like my mouth is salivating. Wow, way to describe your love for tarts. But, uh, Donald, I want to point out something wrong with this list. What could possibly be wrong with my list? Sure, I may have not known like a couple, well, uh, actually more like three or four things on this list, but I tried my best with the knowledge I had and did my best to give everything an absolutely fair rating. Like, I am looking this thing over and cannot see a single wrong thing with it. 
whoa, whoa, let's settle down a bit and take a deep breath because there is something quite obviously wrong with this list that a lot of other lists don't have wrong. Can you spot it, Donald? It's kind of right there in your face. Barack, stop messing with me because I am looking up and down on this thing more than a girl in a bikini and I see nothing wrong with it. Dude, you forgot to put absolutely anything in D tier like that's such an obvious mistake. Oh, that's no mistake. Donald is just a fat bitch. What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list. And this time around, we are going to be doing a pasta tier list. I, of course, am handling this list because I am the man who has been wined and dined the most. Well, it is quite obvious to me that you're unaware of the amount of people I've wined and dined. Remember that people under 18 don't count, Joe. Well, that's not plain fair. Joe, please seek some sort of therapy. Joe Dog does not need a lick of therapy. What the Joester needs is another type of lick. Joe, the video just started, man. You can't just go from zero to 100 on the disgusting meter. Now, Barack, why are you so quick to judge my friend? You do realize that the licks he's talking about is regarding the pasta tier list today. Uh, yeah, that's what I was talking about. The amount of disdain I have for you both right now. It's pronounced stain, not disdain, unless you're uh, talking about a specific stain, I guess. Ah, uh, never change, Joe, unless I tell you to. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this list started because up first we got some tortellini. And what can I not say about this delicious pasta? It's basically kind of like a ravioli, but in a different shape, and the Don loves himself some ravioli. This is an auto S tier for me. Valid answer on that one. Get me some cheese stuffed tortellini, and it is wraps. I like to stuff mine with some meat instead of some cheese. You know, for a second, you had me worried because I thought you were about to say something really gross. Oh, you didn't let me finish. I love stuffing it with meat, but only some nice grounded up bull testicles. Personally, not for me, but it's still valid. How the hell is that valid? The dude is obviously trying to get his testosterone levels up, so I have no choice but to respect that. Anyways, after that, we got Fusilli, and what I got to say about that is fool you, silly, if you love the hell out of this. Now that's a knee slapper, Donald. Not looking for your approval, but thanks, Joe. But yeah, I don't have anything special to say about this because it's just corkscrew pasta, and I don't really think it adds or takes away from any dish, but I'll still give it a B tier. After that, we got lasagna, and this, of course, is an auto A tier. I love me some lasagna, and I understand that it is a relatively easy pasta to make, but just because it's easy doesn't make it bad. I mean, take a look at Joe's wife. Wrong. She isn't easy, and she's the worst. Joe, I will never understand why you married her if you're just continuously going to bash on her. Joe Shiesty will never reveal his secrets. It's like when a gay person marries a woman and she becomes his beard, but I don't know what Joe has to hide. Oh, you very much so know. Yeah, you're right, I definitely do. But anyways, moving on, we got ravioli. And if you guys paid attention to me when I was talking about tortellini, you already know I am about to give the Gawk Gawk 3000 to ravioli. I'll even add my finishing technique, which is a little hand twist at the very end. What? I'm saying this is an S-tier Barack. Way to be a stick in the mud and not understand my analogy. I'll throw you one better. Ravioli to me is like a Swifty hearing a new Taylor song. I always know I'm gonna fucking love it no matter what. But after that, we got some gemelli. And I'm probably butchering these Italian names, but I don't care because I'm not some short, fat Italian dude named Giuseppe. So you all should not expect some amazing ass pronunciation. This gets a solid B tier from the Don. If you guys want to know a fun fact, gemelli actually means twins in Italian, so that's pretty cool. You know what? That is a pretty cool fun fact. It was all right. I was kind of half expecting Joe to go on his unhinged rants and probably drop some weird ass knowledge about this pasta. But uh, this was actually normal. Anywho, after that, we got- Wait, did your ass just use the word anywho? Uh, yeah. Listen, man, don't grill me for it. Maybe I wanted to switch it up from always using anyways. Nah, nah, I didn't mean it in a bad way. I actually liked that word. It was a very couth-mannered way of speaking. Uh, what the hell? Why are you using words like couth? Barack, if you don't know what couth means, you can just say it. But uh, you might as well explain it so the viewers know. I don't think I will because I think you don't know what it means. That's not very couth of you. Uh, let's just move on and up. Next, we got God's gift from up above, and that, of course, is macaroni. I don't think there is a damn soul on this plane of existence that hates macaroni. This is a guaranteed S tier in the Don's book, and I can assure you that if you hate macaroni, I will send a firing squad to your house. That's a bit excessive, don't you think? You're right. That's not very couth-like of me. Are you going to just throw around that word the whole video? Mayhaps I shall. Anyways, after that, we got Campanelle pasta, and this shit is all right. I've never really used this pasta type that much, so I can't exactly be super harsh on it. But hey, it's a solid B tier in my book. 
But holy shit, guys, we have the nice little bow tie pasta, otherwise known as farfalle pasta. And this gets an A tier from the Doninator. It tastes amazing, and it's a little bow tie. How can you not like that? Get me some farfalle pasta with some of my secret Joe sauce, and it is set. I'd argue this is an S tier. Uh, I'm scared to ask, but uh, what is the secret Joe sauce? Well, it wouldn't be a secret if I told you right. You're right. Let's just move on, Donald. No, no. I'll tell you since you're so curious, but uh, my special Joe sauce is quite delicious. You see, I get a bottle of ketchup. Dear God. I... Now, now, let me finish. I swear it's a banger, but yeah, you get a bottle of ketchup and you douse your pasta in that right. Then you get some mustard and sprinkle some bits throughout it, and the finishing touch is a scoop of mayo. Then after that, if you want, you can add your choice of protein, and I personally like using cut-up uncooked hot dogs, and boom, you got yourself a nice pasta a la Joe. You know, that sounds fucking repulsive. If you added ground beef instead, I was willing to hear you out because it would be like hamburger pasta, but that sounds horrendous. The choice of meat is what threw you off? I don't even think I'd feed a homeless person that disgusting slop you called the Joe special. Hey man, like a fat kid at a buffet, it just means there's more for the Joe dog. God, that's so gross, Joe. You confused me more than a homeless man under house arrest. Just hearing you describe that made me sweat more than Anne Frank wearing tap dancing shoes. But anyways, after that, we got some conchigli, or also known as seashell pasta, and this goes into A tier. It has a nice little opening as wide as Riley Reed's asshole, and it's perfect for some sauce to just be scooped in there so you get an extra flavor punch when it's on its way to your mouth. As wide as what? Barack, don't act like you don't know who that is. Or would you have preferred I use Lisa Ann or Lana Rhodes instead? Either way, I feel like it gets the point across. Following that, we have some cavatappi pasta, and holy shit, why can't Italians give these things easier names? Why does it always sound like some gabagoo? Wow, that is so offensive. Why can't you just say, wow, it's hard to pronounce these properly? Because they have some hard-ass pronunciation for these words. Like, why can't it be easy like German? Like, for example, tot alle Juden, ich meine Italianer. Whoa, what's that mean, Donald? It's just a nice way to greet people. But anyways, moving on, we got spaghetti, and this is a bona fide S tier. I don't need to explain that one. And then I got linguine going into A tier. It's just a thicker and flatter spaghetti, but personally, I prefer the texture and girth of spaghetti. After that, we got some oriki at pasta, and this also goes in A tier because of many of the same reasons I praise conchigli pasta. I like the little slit it's got going on, and you all know the fan of some holes. You know, a wise man once told me, if you close your eyes, then it won't matter because a hole's a hole. And what the hell does that apply to? I'll leave it up to interpretation. I think I catch what you're throwing down, Joe, and uh, I think I subscribe to that philosophy. A hole is indeed a hole no matter what. But after that, we got angel hair, and this is one of my lesser favorite pasta types if we're talking about the long ones. I just don't like how thin this stuff is. Like, I'll take a bite and instantly swallow that shit in like two chews. I need more girth in my pasta, which, speaking of girth, we then got Bucatini pasta, and this one is definitely girthy enough for the Don and I will be placing this one in A tier. So angel hair is not girthy enough, but Bucatini has a lot of girth, but still goes below spaghetti? I don't get it. Well, too much girth is a bad thing. You guys ever hear of Girth Master? Talk about too much girth, and that's the number one guy. But anyways, after that, we got a triple threat coming up next because I have penne, tagliatelle, and gnocchi pasta all going into S tier. The penne is just a great pasta type to have if you're just looking to make anything really, like I would use it for almost any sauce in my cabinets. The tagliatelle is just a perfect length to girth ratio and is amazing, and I only use this for my pesto-based sauces. I don't know why, but I just can't have pesto unless I use this specific pasta. Then lastly, gnocchi just has the best texture of the three. See, with gnocchi, I actually prefer using pesto with this one instead. Add some shredded cheese and have some tomatoes in there for a nice refreshing touch on the dish and boom, you have yourself a damn meal. I don't like veggies, so I don't think I will do that. I fucking hate seeing some tomato bits in my pasta and always pick that shit off. It's like when people try to tell me that Chicago deep dish pizza is good, when in reality you're just having some sauce alongside your pizza, and whenever I take a bite, I get hit with like the chunkiest tomato bits. Shit, I may as well just bite into a raw tomato if you're just going to end up adding one to every damn slice of pizza I eat. This is why New York-style pizza will forever remain supreme in my book. Anyways, we're approaching the end of the list, and second to last, we have ourselves some rigatoni. And I know that you all think I'll suck this off because it has some huge holes to just contain some sauce.
But my problem is that the sauce falls out of it sometimes, so I just end up with a little sauce on my pasta. Still, though, it's an A tier. I love these things. I love to pretend they're a straw whenever I get some, and I always try to drink my juice or soda with them for fun. But, uh, Joe, that adds pasta sauce to your drink. Okay, and it gives it more flavor. You know what they say, sweet and salty are the best combinations. Not in that fucking way, Joe. I think I'd rather floss my teeth with Lizzo's skid-marked underwear than ever try to do that disgusting act you just mentioned. Let's just get this list over with now, because after hearing that, I am quite frankly disgusted. Lastly, rounding this whole list off, we got Rissoni, and I have this going into B tier. It's kind of all right, but it makes me feel like I'm eating big chunks of rice, which I guess is okay, but I don't know, man. It makes me feel weird. Eating grain-shaped pieces of pasta makes you feel weird. Well, I don't know about you two, but I feel weird whenever I sit between two of my friends in the car and we go past a super bumpy road and I end up getting a little chub and I have to stay quiet because I'm scared they'll notice. Joe, what the fuck, man? Is that why you were quiet as hell when we went to get ice cream the other day? Guilty. Gang Alang, what is up? Your presidential trio is back once again with another tier list. This time we are going to be ranking different flavors Kool-Aid packets. Now, alongside the Cheetos that I had in prison, I also had a copious amount of Kool-Aid with them, so it's safe to say that I'm an expert. Again, we've been over this, and you were there for only like 20 minutes at best, so I can't imagine you drank that much Kool-Aid. Oh, but I did. I just had people serving me different flavors until I found the right one that suited the Don's taste buds. Well, uh, did you find the right one that suited your taste buds? Well, no shit, Joe. That's why I said I was going to make the list. Enough of this time wasting. Let's go ahead and get started with the list. Up first, we got the berry cherry Kool-Aid flavor, and I know that we all share the opinion that artificial cherry is terrible. Like the absolute worst thing. This flavor, however, it bangs. I think I have to place berry cherry into A tier because it's got the right stuff going on. Like the other berries are nullifying the acidness from the cherry flavor and might actually work together well with it, and for that alone, it deserves to go that high. Oh man, that's some praise from you, Donald especially about a cherry flavor, but if I were to guess, I'm gonna assume the same doesn't apply for black cherry Kool-Aid, right? And you'd be right in guessing that because I have black cherry Kool-Aid going straight into C tier. Now, no Kool-Aid is terrible, but I would say that the black cherry was my least favorite one of them all. Thankfully though, we got like a good ass flavor up next, and that is the blue raspberry lemonade flavor. I have this going straight into S tier. I honestly think I'm just a fan of blue products. I get blue ices. I get blue Gatorade and I get blue Kool-Aid. I'm a blue sort of guy. I freaking love the flavor blue. I think I'll eat or drink anything that's blue. Whoa, whoa, hold on, Joe. What the hell is the flavor blue? Also, what can you possibly be eating that is blue? Like, seriously, honest to God, I cannot think of a food that comes in the natural color of blue. Well, I sometimes boil my hot dogs in blue Gatorade, and it gives them this yummy tinge of blue that you can see and taste. That is so freaking gross, man. Like, I don't think we can even explain it to you. He is too far gone. Let's just keep going. And up next, we got normal cherry. I think everyone knows my opinion on that. So no need to talk or explain why I have it at C tier. Now, this next is for all my brothers out there. I will be placing grape Kool-Aid up there in A tier. I'm so happy to represent all my brothers who are also known as grape lovers. This one goes out to Barack and Kanye West. Why are you changing your manner of speaking? Why call them brothers? Why not brothers? Why did you also only seem to mention a certain demographic of people? Uh, well, you see, I know you love grapes, and I have lots of conversations with Mr. West. Lovely man, and he tells me he loves grapes. Yeah, I have nothing more to add to that. Uh, let's just move on to lemonade, and I like it a lot. But let's be honest. It is basic as hell if you get lemonade-flavored Kool-Aid. I am placing it at B tier just because of how basic it is. B for basic, if you will. Like, at least get the lemon-lime flavored Kool-Aid or blue raspberry lemonade because it adds more oomph and, quite honestly, is just better than the plain old lemonade flavor. And since we are talking about how good lemon-lime is, I guess for that reason, I will be placing it into A tier. That's a pretty good take, Donald. I usually try to avoid pure lemons because I remember one time I had lemon heads in the White House and I was choking and no one wanted to give me the Heimlich. Um, I don't know if they were purposely ignoring me, or if they wanted me to die. Pretty sure everyone in the White House is instructed on how to give the Heimlich, but I also don't blame them for ignoring you. They probably just felt like you could have handled it. Anyways, up next we got the Mixed Berry Kool-Aid. 
This is an absolute slapper and goes straight into A tier. It has a lot of things that I like, uh, berries and strawberries. Ooh, and it's the color blue, so, you know, I got to give it points for that. Points for just being the color blue? Wow, that's dumb. But I will agree that it slaps, so I can't even hate you for that. Dumb to uncultured people, but as a blue believer, I don't think it is. Anyways, up next, we got orange-flavored Kool-Aid, and all I have to say is that it is mid, still better than the cherry flavors, though, so I will be placing it into B tier. The same cannot be said about the peach mango flavor. God damn, is this shit a masterpiece. Like, I love mangoes as they are, but then the combination with the peach, God, it's just marvelous. I'll write poems about how good this is. Damn, is it that good? I always thought that mango-flavored things would be kind of mid. So I never really went out of my way to try that flavor. Just like how you don't go out of your way to do or help anyone in this country, Joe, because you're too busy boiling hot dogs and Gatorade. But as I said yesterday, you called me handsome, so you get a pass. Anyways, up next, shit, we might have a bit of a problem. What is it? Have you not tried these flavors before? No, the problem is I have tried all of these and these next three all slap. Like, I don't think you understand the magnitude of how hard these slaps. These three are all amazing. Strawberry Kool-Aid absolutely belongs in S tier no matter what. I am a diehard strawberry enthusiast. Anything strawberry flavored always seems to bang. Then next we got strawberry kiwi, and that is yet another classic flavor, which is a big banger. The big bang, if you will, that just has to belong in S tier. And then lastly, we got tropical punch Kool-Aid. This is also an S tier, like there's no way around it. We just got hit with the super team of Kool-Aid flavors. Nothing can stop them. Well, I don't know about that. Um, you see, after I boil the hot dogs in Gatorade, I drink the leftover liquid, and I feel like the hot dog meat adds this extra layer of oomph needed to make Blue Gatorade truly elite. And if you all would give it a try, I think... Shut, Shut up, up, Joe! What is up, gang? We are back with another Joe Dog tier list, and this time around, we are doing a popsicle tier list. I'm so excited to finally getting around to doing another one of these tier lists. Now, I did make an ice cream tier list, so if you guys have not checked out that one, I would highly recommend it, but only after finishing this video because I will get down and dirty making this popsicle list. W plug on the ice cream tier list, but uh, what the hell does getting down and dirty mean when making a tier list? You just wouldn't get it, Barack, but anyways, let's go ahead and get this list started, and up first, we got some bubblegum flavored popsicles, and I hate to break it to my Latino audience, but this is garbage. Not the brand, but the bubblegum flavor is just atrocious. I would much rather have cotton candy flavored stuff, but oh man, the Joester hates bubblegum flavored things. I have to immediately place this into a D tier. Now what the hell is wrong with bubblegum flavored things? I personally happen to be a fan of it. It literally tastes like some generic non-flavored gum stick, but crammed into popsicle form. It tastes terrible, Donald, and the fact you like it repulses me quite honestly. After that, though, we got a solid A tier in the Big Stick Popsicles. Oh boy, let me tell you that the Joe Dog is a big fan of that big old stick. I can suck on it for hours upon hours because that's just how yummy it is to me. Does not surprise me you like Big Sticks in your mouth, Joe. Cannot get enough of Big Sticks in my mouth. I love feeling it melt in my little mouth. Okay, you did not have to say little mouth. Sorry, I meant to say that I love feeling it melt in my petite mouth. Anyways, after that, we got the watermelon flavored Bomb Pop and I have to put this into S tier, like I love bomb pops already. And if you add in some watermelon flavoring, then you're just asking me to suck on that popsicle harder than I ever have before. Following that though, we got another freaking gum flavor, but I will give this brand some more credit because it does taste slightly better than the previous one. And I think a C tier is in order for this one. I still think it's awful, but hey, at least it isn't in D tier. You have an agenda against bubble gum flavored ice cream and I personally will not stand for it. How about you stick to your Donald versus tier lists and stay in your own goddamn lane because the Joe Dog knows what is up when talking about these frozen treats. Following that, we got a delicious and delectable treat, and that is the Crunch Bar, and I love the hell out of this. Honestly, anything chocolate related will be placing high for me, and this is an instant S tier. Following that, we got some Cyclone Popsicles, and much like with the Big Stick, I will also be placing these in A tier. I love their design and flavor a lot, so it gets points for that. After that, we got some generic fruit-flavored popsicles, the ones that can split off and are shareable, but what the hell is the point of that? Because I refuse to share my delicious treats with anyone not named Joe. This goes into C tier for being mid. 
Wow, Joe, does the thought of sharing popsicles with someone else really piss you off that much? Of course it fucking does. Who in their right mind would share a popsicle like there barely isn't even enough for one person? I'm never content with just one popsicle. I will get two or maybe even three, but I don't want to rant. So let's instead just keep this list chugging along and up. Next, we got fudge bars and these kind of slap. I won't lie, like I still rather have a crunch bar, but these are pretty solid. I will not be upset if you whip out a fudge bar for old Joe here. And I think a B tier would be a solid rating for this. After that, I will please all the Latinos with this rating because I have these Mexican strawberry bars going straight into S tier. I love getting the little bits of strawberry in these and milk-based popsicles honestly smack so hard. And if you guys have not had these, then I would highly recommend them. Then, uh, oh God, I'm gonna come from these selections. We have two back-to-back S tiers again because the Jolly Rancher Pops and Magnum Double Chocolate and Caramel Pops are both to die for. If you want something fruity and love Jolly Ranchers, then the Popsicle versions are a no-brainer. Like you'd have to have an extra chromosome or two if you just aren't a fan of these. And if you don't like fruit-based popsicles, then these chocolate magnums are the way to go because they have caramel yummy goodness in them and are just so rich in flavor. I wouldn't know about the magnum ice cream because the only magnum thing I am buying are condoms because you know the Don got that master dong. Listen, man, we all know what Stormy Daniel said and that is most likely not the case. I'm no Peter Gazer, but the rumors are that the Don has a little shrimp going on, so I refuse to hear about that. That stuff doesn't matter, though, because we are talking about popsicles, and I do not want to hear any conversations about Peter's. Following that gross talk from Donald and the amazing bars we just had, we will talk about some mighty mid-sugar-free bars, and these are okay. Like if I were some diabetic and diatomaceous ass motherfucker who could not enjoy the finer things in life, then I guess I'd get these, but why the hell do that when sugar's the best thing to ever exist? I give this sugar-free pops a C tier, and it's closer towards the lower end of C tier as well. Then after that, we got some Mr. Freeze Jumbo Pops, and these are okay. I think it also warrants a C, to be honest. I don't really have strong opinions on it. Ooh, but boy, howdy, we got some orange cream sickles, and I actually like these a decent bit. They aren't what I will seek out first, but if I see them in the freezer, and they're the only thing there, then I will happily take one. I don't think these things are to die for, but a solid B tier is in order for them. I will be placing respect on the orange creamsicles name. Orange creamsicles aren't actually that bad, so I'm glad to see you have that amazing take, Joe. I am proud of you. I don't give a shit if you're proud of me, Barack. I'm merely the truth spreader, and I do it for the Joe heads and no one else. Moving on, we got some generic frozen popsicles that you bite off and suck the juice out of because it's all ice. This is going into C tier because it ain't nothing special. After that, we got two outshine popsicles, and the first is a creamy strawberry flavor that I do enjoy a lot. But if you're going to get milk-based popsicles, I would recommend getting the Mexican ones first because they hit different. I am still giving the outshine creamy strawberry an A tier, while the normal strawberry outshine popsicle gets an S tier from me. I really enjoy this flavor, and it's just great overall. What is your obsession with strawberries, man? You always rate anything strawberry related up to like A tier or S tier for any sort of tier list. What the hell is there not to like? Sorry, my ass did not put an orange flavored popsicle all the way in S tier because you must have so many that it left your skin all orange. Speaking of, we also got some orange cherry and grape popsicles and these are a solid B tier in my opinion. Then after that, we got a push pop and these were more gimmicky than anything else, but still a solid B tier in terms of flavor. It's a shame they're so small, but the flavor is what matters to me. Oh, then we got the firecracker popsicles and you all already know that the Joe dog loves these things. The watermelon variant is a bop and you best believe the red, white and blue version gets an S tier from me as well. Like there's no arguing for this one because these have the perfect flavor profile and taste amazing. I can get behind some red, white, and blue popsicles because that screams America to me. But I want you to know that I do not like orange flavored things, you sleepy, dementia ridden, rotting old man. Is that all you have to say to me? Just call me sleepy and an old man. You have fallen off Donald and the Joe heads have taken notice. Anyways, after that, we got these freaking like frozen juice pops, which are just basically all concentrate being frozen, but I will give these a higher rating than Mr. Freeze because they have more quantity and are cheaper because it's the generic pack. And for that, I have to give it a B tier. 
Then after that, we got some goofy-ass looking SpongeBob popsicles that you would get from the ice cream truck. And even though these look hilarious, I did not think they had amazing flavor. The bubble gum in the eyes is a nice touch, but ultimately it is still a B tier, which is actually a good rating if you ask me. Then this list has me bursting from the seams because they throw in an immediate S tier right after that. And that is the strawberry shortcake bars. I don't see how anyone could hate these because they're so crunchy and delicious. And if you don't like strawberries like Donald, then you can get the chocolate version, which is also a freaking bop. Okay, let's get one thing straight, and I do not hate strawberries. Everyone who has seen the fruit tier list knows that the Don puts respect on strawberries, but I just notice you always suck it off whenever we have lists. Because they're fucking delicious. What do you want me to do? Lie for the views? The Joe Dog refuses to do anything like that because I keep it real here. Now let's hurry up and wrap up this list because I need to crank one out. Now another president would lie to the viewer and say they have important things to do, but remember that old Joe here will never lie to any of you. Unless I want to, but if that's the case, there is a good reason, trust me. Ahem, anyways, after that we got cotton candy popsicles and these are pretty good. I think a solid B tier for them. And after that we got paradise pops going into A tier because I like the whole tropical vibe they have and the different flavors like mango and strawberry banana. Then we Tweety the bird and I don't know what the list maker wanted me to say because this gets the same exact rating as the SpongeBob one. And if you ask me, there is some bias going on because why does SpongeBob get some doodlebob looking popsicles, but Tweety the bird gets some looks maxing popsicle? Like what sense does that make? Uh, are you asking us? Because we don't know either and I don't know what you want us to say. I want you guys to be equally as outraged. This is a disservice to SpongeBob and I will not stand for it. I will be sitting instead. But yeah, ending this list, we got some random shit from Mexico. Listen, I don't know what the hell this is, and quite frankly, I'm tired of making this list. I need to fight the one-eyed demon if you guys catch my drift. You gotta hit the sack, Joe? I gotta hit my sack, and then I gotta hit the sack if you catch my drift. Gross. Hey, gang, it is Supreme Overlord. The Don himself here, ready to present you guys the ultimate Lay's tier list, and I'm joined by Sleepy Joe and Barack, as always. And we, of course, elected Donald again because of his uh, elite taste buds and nothing more. He is an elite eater. I am an elite person, aren't I? Well, let's go ahead and get this list started. I wouldn't want to deprive our precious subscribers from this amazing tier list that I am about to make. And to start things off, I have Limon Lays going into A tier. Let me tell you, let the illegals cook because they were onto something with this flavor. I love eating these so much. I like these too, Donnie, but whenever I eat so much, my mouth starts to bleed and my teeth feel super sensitive, so I always try to have a spit cup next to me so I can spit out all of my blood into. Jesus Christ, Joey. That is absolutely putrid, and I do not want to hear anything more about your goddamn spit cup. Up next, we got salt and vin... Uh, I can't pronounce that. Can you help me out, Joe? I just need help for the ending part. It's salt and vin... What, Joe? Easy peasy lemon squeezy, it's Nick. Okay, let us move past that and get to the rating. Ruined the best part, Barry, but yeah, I have these chips going into A tier as well. I have grown to really like these, to be honest. The opposite kind of happened for our next entry, which is sour cream and onion, which I have going into B tier. I swear I used to have these at S tier, but I feel like the more I've had them over the years, the less and less I like them, to be completely honest. Was there some sort of formula change, or were these just always kind of mid? Maybe you're just getting old Donald. They say a change in taste buds is the number one sign of aging. I think... I do not want to hear that I am getting old from the prune juice drinker himself. Get the fuck out of here, Joe. Anyways, the next chip. The cheddar and sour cream has taken up the mantle for best chip for me. I have this going into S tier because I fucking love cheese. What can I say? I feel like cheese is just one of the best flavors on almost anything. Valid as hell, Donald. I remember we had people mad as hell we had Cheetos in C tier for our chip tier list. So I bet they're glad you're putting something cheese flavored up top. Even if honestly, I think you were the one hating on it the most out of everyone here. Whoa, 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 I still don't buy into the original Cheeto hype and these cheddar and sour cream lays are completely different, but I digress. Let us move on to the next chip and this next one is kind of hot ass. Like literally it is hot, but I guess it isn't complete ass. It was very close to a D for me, and that is the Flaming Hot Lays, which I have going into C tier. I feel like it's just hot for the sake of being hot, and there are better spicy chips out there, but also I don't like spice. Color me surprised that the orange man hates spice. Sleepy Joe, do not go on a high horse and act like you're the spice king. 
I will put your sleepy ass to sleep with this blast of reality I'm about to hit you with. Joe, I know you think Cajun wings from Wingstop are hot, so I don't want to hear anything about spice coming from you. You just want to look cool in front of the audience again, and I am not having it. Anyways, up next, we got one that might make the people upset, and that is Lay's Barbecue going into B tier. I mess with it, but I like the kettle cooked version of barbecue chips so much more that I find it tougher and tougher every day to go back to normal Lay's barbecue chips. You already know I am on that bandwagon with you, Donald. Something about the rough and hard texture of a kettle cooked chip pairs wonderfully with a barbecue chip. I bet you like it rough and hard, don't you, Barry? We then have a classic, which is classic Lay's, and I am putting this into C tier. It's OK to be honest. I don't twerk for it as much as Barack does. Up next, we got dill pickle lays, and I am very indifferent about these chips, to be honest. I'm placing them in B tier because I don't like them as much as Lee, Moan, and Salt and Vinegar. I still think B is a solid placement for them, I won't even lie. Okay, but wait, what the hell is that last flavor? What language is even on it? Joe, you're such an uncultured swine. That is obviously the spicy crawfish flavor from China. And aside from the Kung Flu, they gave us all. I would like to thank the Chinese for this amazing S-tier flavor. It'll leave you with some SpongeBob Sunday ass breath after, but trust me, that shit will make you come. Wow, I am just surprised you've had this flavor, Trump. I'm not, he's always been such a fat bitch. I'm killing your ass, Joe. What is up, gang? It's me, Barry, Barack Obama here, and I am joined by Joe and Donald, as always. This time around, we're going to grade different types of gum, and hopefully everyone hates chiclets as much as I do. Barack, don't go jumping forward in the list. But you know what I really hate? Any form of mint gum or candy. Like, go brush your teeth if you like mint. And it is absolutely the worst, because I constantly have people offering me some mint gum. Joe, you realize they do that because your breath smells absolutely rancid. Like it possibly smells just as bad as liquid ass. Maybe even worse, if I'm being honest. Haha, ha, very funny, Donald, but my breath does not possibly smell that bad. Uh, no, you should really go to a dentist sometime in the future, Joey. And you could have just said it was me who was constantly handing you the gum. You don't hang out with anyone aside from us, so you could have just said it. Plus, I only do it because it genuinely feels like you never brush your teeth. I do brush my teeth, well, uh, when I remember. Mother of Christ Almighty. Yeah, let's just get this tier list started. Up first, we got Wrigley's Spearmint Gum, and I like Wrigley's. And I actually prefer their mint over their juicy fruit one. But yeah, I will go ahead and place this into B tier and follow it up with Mentos in A tier. Oh my God, here comes all the mint propaganda again. I can't wait to hear about how you guys just love all the minty fresh stuff. Joe, I'm sorry you don't know how good it feels to like finish eating at a barbecue or at a burger joint and then popping a piece of minty fresh gum after a meal. That shit is so satisfying and adds to the experience. On God, Barack, I know about eatery, so I know how much it enhances the experience. Plus, I know you don't care about how you smell or what your breath might smell like, Joe, but me and Barack do. It's okay, though, Joe. We only judge a decent bit, but not a whole lot. Anyways, let's move on to our next entry, which is Wrigley's Double Mint Gum, and I will confidently place that into B tier. It's just mint, but doubled. But as for the juicy fruit flavor coming up next, now I want everyone to hear me out. I love this flavor, but I feel like with Wrigley's in general, the flavor runs out quick, and especially more so if it is a fruit flavor. So despite it being really good, I will be placing it into C tier. It just runs out of flavor too fast. Nah, Barack, you got me fucked up here. How are you gonna say it's really good, but then put it into C tier because the flavor doesn't last that long? Are you chewing on the same piece for 30 minutes or something? Let's keep it real here. The flavor literally runs out with the first three minutes of you chewing a juicy fruit. Probably runs out sooner, but I said what I said. You're gonna have to deal with this ranking, just like how I know Joe is gonna have to deal with these next two rankings. Barry, please don't do what I think you're about to do for the love of all things sacred. I am putting Double Bubble and Chicklets both into F tier, and I do not care about hearing any other opinions on this, Joey. You are quite literally the only person in my life that I have seen actively pursue these two disgusting things. Like, I'll chew them if they are there, but objectively, they are some of the worst pieces of gum I have ever had in my whole life. Thankfully, we don't have to deal with that anymore because I got extra and trident gum going into B and then A tier, respectively. Way to slam dunk on Joe and then put trident gum up in A tier. 
I freaking love Trident gum, and I especially love the Trident Layers gum so much. That thing had me hooked on it for weeks like I was being fed some sort of drug. I freaking love the Trident Layers gum so much. If that were here, I would give it an S tier. But we only got normal Trident, which is still pretty good. I might lose you guys on these next two, though. I have Hubba Bubba Bubble Tape going into C tier alongside the Bubble Yum. Now let me explain why I am putting them here. I am going based off of the flavor, and I don't like bubblegum flavored things, and the Hubba Bubba tape is neat and smacks, but it's kind of a gimmick and runs out of flavor quick as well. The big pieces of Hubba Bubba gum is superior, but sadly that is not on this list. Barry, you don't have to worry about losing me because you lost me a while ago when you put my two favorite pieces of gum all the way in F tier. Joe, I'm gonna be honest here. We do not care if we ever lose you because you always lose yourself in your own train of thought because of the dementia. Anyways, Barry, I don't entirely blame you here because you had a good hubba bubba take, but I definitely feel like this could have gone higher, my guy. It probably could have, but I like to think of C tier, like mid tier stuff. So like, I think those pieces being there really fit. And honestly, the only one I feel like has an argument to move up is the juicy fruit. Anyways, our next two are Orbit Gum and Big League Chew. I am putting Orbit into B tier for being a decent piece of gum. And again, Big League Chew goes into C tier because these are just mid pieces of gum. And while we're at it, let's throw Eclipse in B tier too, because a lot of these gums kind of feel the same, if I'm being honest. Well, Big League Chew is a bit different, and I think it should go higher, but everyone always disagrees with the Joe Dog. Nah, I kind of smell you on that one, Joey, but this is Barack's list. He has not done one of these in a while, so maybe he's rusty. I am not rusty. I just think what I think, and I think it is mid. It's okay though, because we got our first S tier in Icebreakers gum, and these things are amazing. They have a huge ass variety of flavors too. Like you guys should look up and see just how many they actually have that all sound delicious. Then I'm putting Bazooka into D tier. Now wait one moment, Barack, please, for the love of God and all things holy, please put Bazooka in A tier at least. I grew up my whole life chewing these and they were a huge part of my childhood. Donald, I know you can vouch with me on this. As much as I hate to admit it, Joey is speaking facts. Back in the day, we would be smacking on these like crazy. Okay, but you two are old as hell. This thing came out in 1947. Jesus, Bazooka is mid now, so like why would I place it that high? I'll shit myself in your car if you don't place it high. Well, with that convincing argument, I guess I'll place it into A tier, even though it's a D tier at best. Now let's move on to some real A tier gum, and we have a back-to-back -back combo of Stride and Big Red. I like Stride gum a decent bit, so that's self-explanatory, but I am also a big fan of cinnamon-flavored things. So I also love me some Big Red. I also love me some Fireball whiskey. Fireball is kind of gas, I can't even lie. I like cinnamon things a decent bit too, so I approve of this message. Thanks, Donald. And lastly, we got my favorite gum, which of course is Five Gum, and I am placing it into S tier. I love these things, and I love the commercials that came with them. Those commercials always scared me. I never felt like chewing five gum after seeing these people like enter another dimension when they chewed on it. Yeah, a lot of things seem to scare you, Joe. Your biggest fear seems to be your toothbrush, though. What is going on, everyone? And we are back with another presidential tier list. But this time around, we are going to be talking about me and Donald's favorite thing, and that is some milky, milky num num goodness. For once, Joe, I have to say that you are indeed spitting because the Don is known to be a prolific milkman. If I see some good milk, I have to admire it for at least a couple of minutes. We're talking about the drink, right? Like this tier list is purely based on the milk drink. I, for one, am not talking about the drink unless we count that last picture in this tier list. God, I hope that picture doesn't get us demonetized. I personally am speaking on behalf of all milk drink or not, and that last picture certainly intrigues the old Joe dog. I already know what I'm rating that masterpiece, but right now we have to rate the current milk, and that is good old 2% milk. Now, I don't hate this, actually. While I do prefer actual full fatty milk because it actually tastes better, and I am not a calorie-challenged human like Donald. However, I will give it some credit because it is still passable as a milk, and so is 1% milk. These both merit a C tier from me because I don't think there's some sort of abomination, and I don't have some sort of aversion for it based on the flavor as well. It still tastes all right with cereal or some milk and cookies. When the hell did your sleepy ass start using words like aversion and abomination? Did you study up on the thesaurus before coming into today's video, Joe? See the fact that you think that words like aversion and abomination are quote unquote big words. 
that actually makes me worry more for your brain rather than your already clogged up arteries. Shut the hell up, Joe. You hear me mess up the meaning of avant-garde once and you think you're some sort of brainiac now. My bad, I didn't know we had Aristotle in the building, except instead of being a philosopher, you instead chose to be something else that starts with the letter P. A Peter Gazer? Because I will admit that I just can't help to be curious. Like, if you're peeing next to me in the urinal, you can't expect me to not gaze at your Peter. Like, honestly, if you stand next to me, you're basically asking for it. You're basically spread eagle, begging me to just do it. Jesus Christ, no, Joe. I was just going to call you a pedophile and make jokes about you sniffing kids. This is so gross, Joe, and is that why you always stand next to me when we pee in the urinals? I can neither confirm nor deny that fact. Oh, but I can definitely confirm it. I literally saw you peeping on me when I went to go pee last time. I had to see and confirm if the BBC was really all that it was cracked up to be. And uh, by that, I mean I had to confirm that the, the British Broadcasting Corporation really had the correct height description for Barack. I did it only for that reason. Oh, uh, let's uh, get back into the video. I think that would be for the best. So up next, we got some banana milk. And let me be the first to tell you that this stuff ain't half bad. Now, I am a fan of bananas, and I'm a fan of banana-flavored Nesquik. So it should not surprise anyone when they hear me say that this is a solid B tier. Matter of fact, I got a fun fact for everyone regarding bananas. Oh, God. No, I swear, this is a good fun fact. But anyways, did you all know that artificial banana flavoring tastes more like actual bananas than real bananas? Now, what I mean by that is artificial banana flavoring tastes more like Gros Michel bananas with a brighter and fuller flavor than the Cavendish banana we are most familiar with. The reason why we don't have the old flavoring is because of a fungus that wiped out most of the old yummy tasting bananas, so we genetically engineered the modern day banana to combat that. So the banana we taste now isn't the bananas people had back then. That was actually a pretty cool fun fact, Joe. Thanks, I pride myself in my fun facts. Anyways, up next, we got two substitutes for milk, and that is almond milk and coconut milk. And quite honestly, the Joe dog really likes these two a lot. Like, I think an A tier is warranted for them both, and let me explain why. They're just good. I don't know what else to say. Like, unless you're allergic to nuts, then I can understand why you wouldn't want almond milk, but then there's coconut milk to drink. And yes, I understand that this in no way will replace dairy milk for some people. But if you understand it and appreciate it for what it is, I'm sure you'd enjoy it more that way. Sometimes I just drink a glass of coconut milk by itself because it's just that good and flavored almond milk is literally the best. Some chocolate almond milk tastes almost exactly like normal chocolate milk, but with less fat and more protein. Just make sure you get one with low amounts of sugar. Look at Joe here appeasing all the vegan subscribers with his almond milk is good take. I know damn well your sleepy ass is drinking cow milk. I do drink cow milk. But whenever I go to Barry's, he always has almond or coconut milk. Barack, is this fucking true? Yeah. It's not my fault, though. Michelle won't let us get anything that isn't soy, coconut, almond, or skim milk. So I just have flavored almond milk throughout the house, and Joe has the audacity to ask for juice every time he's here, knowing damn well that all we have is homemade prune juice. And when he drinks too much of that and gets the shits, he then has the audacity to ask me to bring him a glass of almond chocolate milk for when he goes to the bathroom. I must have misheard. Do you mean for when he comes out of the bathroom? The fucked up part is that I wish I meant it that way, Donald. He makes me bring him a glass before he goes in to do his business. A glass of chocolate almond milk while blowing up a friend's toilet is one of the best things you can have in life. I am sorry you two have yet to experience that, but it's more of a if you know, if you know type of situation. Anyways, we actually have one of the best things you can have in life, and that is some chocolate milk. And you all already know that I have this going into S tier. Who the hell doesn't like some chocolate milk? Like, this is a goddamn staple, and I refuse to hear anyone out if they think it should be placed lower. I will literally orgasm if you bring me some chocolate Nesquik. I remember I once chugged so many that I literally puked all over my car. But then again, I probably shouldn't have had six of them in a row on a hot summer day. Why the hell were you drinking that many on a hot summer day? Like, why would you ever subject yourself to that? Same reason why I edge for over an hour. I just like having too much of a good thing. After that, we got some goat milk and... I don't really have strong opinions on it. Like, I have had it once and I remember it being okay. Like, I think I only thought it was weird because I knew it was goat milk. I'll give it a C tier because I honestly don't think it was that awful. What is truly awful is that dry milk powder because that shit belongs in the garbage. It belongs in D tier. And I have no bad feelings about putting it there. 
then I may as well talk about the next two because I think that's lamb milk and cow milk, but straight from the teat. I'm giving both a C tier because I have never had lamb milk, but I can imagine that it's not worse than dry milk powder. And some fresh milk from a cow's teat is the freshest milk you can have. Just make sure you boil it a bit, or I've even heard people say they put some alcohol in it to clean out the bacteria. I don't know about that, but it tastes pretty all right. I would not go out of my way for it, though. What's your hate with dry milk powder? What if someone can't have normal milk because they're lactose, and that's the closest thing they can have to normal milk? With all due respect, this is how I can tell you're a freaking nincompoop barack. Dry milk powder does, in fact, have dairy slash lactose, so it isn't for those who are intolerant of lactose. God, you're such an idiot. You have room temperature IQ, yet you have the utter gall to try to tell me how to rank things. I'm honestly ashamed of you, but not as ashamed as those who like skim milk because this watered down milk tastes awful and belongs in D tier as well. Rare W from Joe here because I freaking hate skim milk. And I almost thought you were gonna rate this high because you were sucking off almond and coconut milk and you rate one and 2% milk a C tier. See, I actually like those and never disrespect almond or coconut milk in front of me again. But back to the skim milk. I just think it's doing too much and crosses the line when it has absolutely no fat. It gets rid of all the flavor and makes it taste bad. Then I have soy milk going into B tier because it is also good, but kind of has an odd flavor to it that I can't describe. But hey, I still somewhat enjoy it despite it tasting a bit off. What doesn't taste bad is our next entry, which is strawberry milk, which immediately goes into S tier. I love me some strawberry milky, and I can drink that like water. See, while I'm pooping, I drink my chocolate milk, but when I'm pissing, I do the strawberry one instead. There's layers to this. Gross, disgusting layers that we really should not learn about you, to be honest. Like, I feel like a certain point, there has to be a thought in your mind that says, maybe I shouldn't share this information with the public. Nah, I want my Joe heads to get more Joe lore, and it would be a disservice to not feed them that info. They need all the lore they can get. But enough of that, because we are nearing the Ned of our list, and you all already know I want to talk about our last entry in great detail. Dear God. Nah, nah, I feel him on that one. Thank you, Donald. But anyways, after that, we got normal full of fat milk, and this is going into S tier. This is the best type of milk to have, and I love me some red cap milk. No surprise there, but... What I have questions on is what the hell that next milk is. Like the image is cut off and it isn't labeled, so I have no clue what it is. For all sakes and purposes, I will just say that this is evaporated milk or condensed milk. And this stuff is amazing for treats and desserts. So you know, you gotta have some handy if you got a sweet tooth and know how to bake. I am giving that a B tier because you can't really have it by itself. Well, I mean, you can, but it is not advised. Then after we got some steamed milk, and with steamed milk, it is a lot heavier than frothed milk, which is why baristas typically use it as a milky layer on top of your coffee. So for that fun tidbit of knowledge, I will give it a B tier as well. I like having it in my coffee whenever I do drink some. I'm actually amazed with the amount of milk facts that you know. You were actually the most qualified for this list. Of course I was. I am the great Joe dog, and enough of these other milks. Let's talk about the mother of all milks. Pun intended, by the way, but now we got some, uh, O-E, breast milk. Mommy milky num num, so good. Uh -huh. But yes, the flavor with this is, uh, well, uh, the answer is that the exact flavor of breast milk varies from person to person and from day to day. It's affected by factors like what you eat and how fresh it is. In general, many people say that it tastes like skim cow's milk. So if you have it in a bottle, it's a D tier. But if you have it the way God intended and you suckle a woman's teat, then it's an absolute S tier, and I will have it there. I also think some men can breastfeed, and I have to say that if I had breast milk from a man, well, uh, I'd still give it an S tier. You dirty, dirty dog, Joe. All right, that's enough before we get demonetized. How about you demonetize these nuts, Barack? But on another note, I have a serious question. What if men had to breastfeed babies with their cock? What is going on, Gangalang? We are back with another tier list. But this time it is a chocolate bar tier list with a few exceptions because I know Payday, Whoppers, and M&Ms are not candy bars, but you make a couple of exceptions. But for the most part, it is all chocolate. Only reason we even have these is because Joey loves popping those big black Whopper balls in his mouth. You betcha, I love Whoppers the most of those three, to be honest. I'm glad you remembered Donald. Joe, for the love of God, just start the list already before you embarrass yourself even more. 
Uh, okay, I guess up first we got a 100 grand bar, and this is pretty decent. I would definitely eat these if they were just there, so I think B tier is good for the bar. Yeah, Sleepy Joe has a point. They're decent, but I wouldn't keel over if someone said I couldn't have one. On God, Donnie T next. I think everyone here has to agree that the Three Musketeers bar belongs in F tier, and I would place it lower if I could. Agreed. Give anyone this bar, and if they happily eat it, then you know that you would never want to associate with that person ever in your life. You know, I'm surprised that Joey here didn't say they were his favorite. He seems like the type of slow person to like these things. No, they are icky as hell. I'm not a fan of these at all. Anyone that eats these should just stop saying they're chocolate lovers. Same can be said with the Fifth Avenue bar, which is also bad, but I put it one tier above the Three Musketeers. No one should eat or enjoy these things. That is fine and dandy, but I swear to God, Joe, if you don't put this next one up high, Ew, you like Almond Joy? Who the hell likes that gross candy bar? Uh, lots of people do. Who the hell doesn't like coconut and chocolate? On God Barack, this dude doesn't realize the elite combo chocolate and coconut provide. It deserves at least an A tier. I would even say it should be an S tier. I deadass twerk for Almond Joy. I will jump for joy if someone brings me one. Uh, fine, I'll put it at A tier, but it's honestly like a C tier, if even that, to be honest. Shut your stupid whore mouth, Joey. We will not let you desecrate this delicious treat from God himself. You guys are a bunch of weirdos anyways. Up next, we got a baby Ruth bar. And once again, I think we have hit something pretty mid. I think a C tier is fine because the bar is decent, but like I would not jump for joy if someone gave me one. I would eat it and feel fat, but I wouldn't enjoy it. Stop insinuating that this is on the same level as an almond joy by saying, oh, we have mid again, you sleepy fuck. But yeah, I agree that it is simply mid as hell and belongs in C tier. The next thing on the list looks very appetizing though. Now you're speaking my language, Donnie. I love Butterfingers. I will twerk for some Butterfingers and I will confidently place it in S tier. A bit too high, it constantly gets stuck in my teeth, man. It should go in B or A. You simply do not know Ball Barack. I bet you're the type of person to like Charleston Chews. What if I am? Is there a problem with that? Damn right there's a problem that Charleston Chew sucks ass and tastes like Lizzo's gooch after the hardest workout of her life. It will go into D tier. Up next, we got a couple of mid entries. We have Heath bars and Hershey kisses going into C tier. They are all right, but let's be honest, no one is dying over these bars. I can agree with that, I guess, but where do normal Hershey's go? Don't worry, I'm placing Hershey's into B tier and I think it's mainly for legacy reasons, but it is mid, but a good mid. Oh man, though, we got Kit Kats up next, and oh my freaking gosh, I will like bust a neck vein from how good these things are. Perfect amount of crunch and flavor on these, and if you get the flavored ones, they are even more elite. It is so weird for me to agree with what Sleepy Joe is saying, but this dude cannot stop spitting facts. Kit Kats are the most elite of chocolate, and they belong in the Hall of Fame for chocolate bars. Agreed, Donnie. And now, unfortunately, we are back to mid, and I have normal M&Ms going into C tier because they're not as good as their peanut butter counterpart. If we had the peanut butter ones that would go to A tier, I'd argue. And even worse, we got a Mars bar here. Shit is garbage and will go into D tier for me, honestly. Okay, now what's wrong with a Mars bar? What isn't wrong with a Mars bar? God, Barack, you just don't get chocolate like I do. And since Barack looks like a milk dud, we might as well rate that too. I will confidently put that into F tier. How the hell do I look like a milk dud? I have hair and the joke would have worked if I were bald, but I'm not. Don't listen to him, Joe Bag. That was a good one. God, I can't believe Barack is here getting decimated by a dementia-ridden old fart. Thanks, Donnie. And God, looking at these next bars, it's all just so mid. I got Milky Way going into C tier and Mr. Good Bar is going into B tier because they're both, once again, just nothing amazing or outstanding. Same can't be said for the Crunch Bar because I will get down on my hands and knees for a good Crunch Bar which I am confidently putting into A tier. Joey, now you are speaking my language. Milky Way isn't all that because I'd rather have a Twix and I love Crunch. I'd even argue for it in S tier. I disagree. Crunch is a good solid piece and it barely reaches A tier to be honest. It's nothing amazing though. It's just a Hershey's bar with a bit of Rice Krispies in it basically. Yeah, but for what it is, I love the hell out of it and Barry has a point. It should go into S tier, but I'll keep it in A tier for now. I know what everyone is thinking for this next one, and I know payday isn't chocolate, but it is a bar. A bar that is not good at all and is too dry for my liking, it goes into D tier and barely. Reese's then goes into A tier because peanut butter and chocolate never fails to amaze me. Joey, how the hell is Reese's not an S tier? That shit is amazing as hell. 
I just want to keep the list even and not have too many S tiers, and unfortunately, that did not make the cut. I swear to God, Joe, if you put Snickers and S over Twix. Don't worry, Barry, I got you. I have Snickers in A tier as a very close S tier, but I have Twix over it and have that going into S tier. How the hell is Twix in S, but Snickers isn't? That is asinine and it is rigged like the election was. Yeah, yeah, keep whining. I then I'm gonna put Whoppers into A tier. Hell no, Joey, you are putting that in B tier and that's that. I do not care how much you like big black balls in your mouth. Fine, it'll go into B tier, but I do love me some big black balls. Is no one gonna say anything about what we all just heard? Sorry, Barack, but what's wrong with saying I love some big black balls? Oh, and I guess I like Whoppers, too. What is up, gang? It is your favorite president here. The one, the only, Donald the Great. I am joined here by Barack and Joey in order to make the best cookie tier list on the face of this planet. Although I will admit we couldn't think of more cookies, so please let us know which ones we're missing. Well, right off the bat, I can tell you that we're missing animal crackers. Shut up, Sleepy Joe. That's a cracker, not a cookie. What's the difference? Like, genuinely, what is different? Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and get this list started, and we got some Nutter Butters coming up first. I personally am not a huge fan of these, but I don't judge people who like them. Ooh, I love these things. I shove so many Nutters in my mouth that it gets all dry and becomes one big glob of nut in my mouth. Never mind, I most definitely judge people who like them, and I'm now putting this into C tier. That's a solid placement, despite what Joey regurgitated out of his mouth. I know my cookies, what can I say? And up next, well, we got some cream pies, and oh boy, I love me some cream pies. I personally can't get enough of them. We are talking about the cookies, right? Yeah, so I'd put cream pies in S tier, but the cookies go into C tier alongside the Nutter Butter. Up next, we got our tried and true Oreos. I feel like we all know where this is going. There's no way people can argue against Oreos being in the cookie hall of fame. This goes right into S tier. I love Oreos so much, but if I eat too many, I get like really bad stomach cramps and then my shit looks like tar when it comes out. Joey, dude, what the hell? What if people are eating while watching this tier list? Joey doesn't care. Joey simply voices the truth. Joey, stop talking about yourself in third person anyways. I then have grandma's cookies going into A tier. I don't know why, but whenever I have these, they always hit. Like, I can't explain to you all why, but just know that these always bang when I grab them. And after that, we got knots. And these cookies are pretty good, I can't even lie. A solid B tier for me, but I enjoy the fruity flavor mixed with the cookie. I'm seeing a whole bunch of boxes up next. What the hell are those things? Something I'd advise the sellers of to avoid you at all moments possible. Send a Girl Scout to Joey's house, and that's basically game over. Little girl gonna come out of Joe's red screen like in COD. But yeah, the cookies, though, I would rate an S tier. We could go into a tier list of flavors for the fans, but as of now, we are rating them as a whole, and the Samoas are simply elite, and that alone places them that high. Solid selection here, Donald. I will twerk for Girl Scout cookies any day of the week. Those cookies must have nicotine or something inside of them. Thank you, Barack. I'm glad someone appreciates Samoas as much as I do. Anyways, we got Keebler cookies, and with their fudge stripes alone, I'm putting them into S tier. I was thinking A tier, maybe, but I smack on those cookies way too often, and they taste different from the other options. Like, I feel like they're more unique. I'd agree with that, actually. Keebler cookies are banging, and they separate themselves from other cookies as well. Joe, don't just go repeating what I said so that you seem smart, you mouth breather. Up next, we got Famous Amos cookies, and I like them, but I believe they're slightly worse than Grandma's, so I am putting them into B tier because of it, but more importantly, guys, we have my Nillas up next. I love my Nillas. Whenever I see a Nilla, I go, what up, my Nilla? Okay, stop the cap and stop the corny joke, Donald. You are going to get us canceled, and I will personally go and make you choke on Nillas if we ever do. All right, relax, relax. Yeah, truthfully, Nillas are ass and go into D tier, to be honest. I don't really like them all that much. But the same cannot be said for these next ones. And those are Chips Ahoy. God, I love these things, and I'm putting them into A tier. My favorite thing to do while eating Chips Ahoy is to fill up a glass with those cookies and then pour milk till it fills up to the brim. And then over time, the cookies get mushy and perfect. And I scoop them out with a spoon and then drink the cookie water and get the chocolate chips at the end. That sounds like straight ass, Joey. Like you're drinking a bunch of dookie water, just dunk your cookies into the milk like a normal person. Anyways, lastly, we got Walmart sugar cookies and they're okay. Like, you know what you're getting with these, and they aren't Nilla's, so I put them into C tier, to be honest. The sugar cookies are pretty good. I like them a bit more than C tier, if I'm being honest. 
Yeah, I bet your Nillas love them too. You motherfucker. What is going on, gang? We are back at it again with our regularly scheduled programming, and this time around, we got a cultural food tier list since Barack and Joey didn't want me to make a culture tier list because, quote, it is too insensitive and we will immediately get demonetized on YouTube and we won't be able to buy you your gaming PC for Christmas. Now, I was completely fine with it being too insensitive and being demonetized, but as soon as they mentioned the gaming PC, I can't even lie to you all, I immediately folded. Which is good, because why would we want to do that list? Instead, let's just make a tier list based on their food, because that is slightly less offensive. And we all know you love to make people angry, Donald. I know he made me angry with the seafood tier list, so I can personally vouch that Donald is a big troll. But just paint it orange instead of green. You know, Joe, if I wasn't so happy with the plate full of Thanksgiving food I had the other day, I'd personally crucify your ass and hang you up for display. But now is not the time because I am full of joy and happiness because I finally get to make a great list like this. I think I will go ahead and get started with this list. And up first, we got Italian cuisine. And man, the Italians have a lot of great food. I think pizza alone puts them higher than a B. But then we got stuff like all the different types of pasta that they make. And why am I even trying to reason with anyone? We all know this belongs in S tier. Just give me some spaghetti or ravioli, and we are done with this conversation. Way to boil down the excellent Italian culture to just spaghetti, ravioli, and pizza. That sounds super amazing and is all that they have to offer to us in a society. OK, man, choke on some rocks. I obviously just chose the most obvious ones, but the Don is a fan of all Italian food. And I'm sorry I didn't mention lasagna, tiramisu, or ciabatta. Do you want me to tell you the whole pasta making process while I'm at it? Jesus, man, you want me to say the whole alphabet in Italian as well? I personally would love to hear you say the alphabet in pure Italian. Well, uh, you got me because I actually do not know how to speak Italian. I can say prendili per la figa, but that's about it. Anyways, up next we got Mediterranean food, and I personally don't really mind Mediterranean food. I don't hate it, but I am not in love with it. That being said, I still think it places higher than a C tier because it's actually pretty good if you have had it. Just not incredibly amazing, if that makes sense. Like, I'm not trying to hate at all, but if we compare the next entry to Mediterranean food, then you'd understand because I have Japanese food going straight into S tier. I don't think there should be any arguments against it either. I freaking love sushi. And it's incredible that with that alone, it merits that high of a grade. But then they freaking have other amazing stuff like teriyaki chicken, udon, yakisoba, takoyaki, and so much more that I can't even begin to talk about. But most of all, they got the best baddies from Asia. Donald, this isn't the list for that. And we all know that all types of women are pretty, and they are also all queens. OK, Joe, relax. You could have just left it at this isn't the list for that. But yeah. Regarding that placement, I have to agree, Donald, because I know you did not mention it, but they have some pretty great stuff. Honestly, it's tied between Korea and Japan for the best foods. The Koreans won't like that you put them together with the Japanese. They hate each other. Like when Oppenheimer came out, apparently it sold out in a lot of Korean theaters, and the Joe Dog respects that level of hate. I admire it quite honestly. That is some next level hater shit, but for once, I do agree with you, Joe. All you can do is look back and admire. Well, moving on with our list, we got Thai food up next. And when speaking of mid, I genuinely don't think Thai food is that amazing. It's kind of whatever, to be honest, but some pad Thai does hit the spot. But nine times out of 10, I would rather have Chinese food or some Japanese food if we are being totally honest here. Up next, though, we got a certified banger, and that is Indian food. Now, I know you're all thinking, ugh, Indian food? The street vendor videos look so gross. And I want you all to forget about that, because if you actually have some fine cuisine from India, you will realize how delicious it all is. Like all the spices and herbs they use just to cook up tofu or a piece of chicken amazes me. And then they got some naan bread, which slaps so hard. And my personal favorite is some tofu curry with some naan on the side. And with that, I am set. I put massive respect on Indian food and will never take any slander against their name because chicken tikka masala has forever changed me. Chicken tikka masala freaking slaps, man. And I have to agree with your take completely here. I always see TikTok videos where people hate on them, but me personally, I love Indian food. I like Indians. Uh, their food, their people, or what, Joe? Yes. 
This dude's brain is in a blender right now. Let's just move past that and go talk about our next entry, which is Chinese food. And many of you already know I prefer this over Thai food. And I genuinely love all the Chinese restaurants. They always serve you an amount that is extremely excessive, and you get a lot of bang for your buck. But I think that's a part of the charm. I just think they look at your big ass and assume you want to eat the whole kitchen. And I bet they look at your sleepy ass and try to sell their youngest daughter to you for marriage. I would not be surprised if I saw a picture of you at a local Chinese-owned massage parlor with the message saying, banned for being a creep, all plastered over their walls. Who told you about that? Was it Barack? I told you to keep that a secret and that I just wanted to test if the happy ending thing was true. You are truly disgusting, Joe, and I did not mention it, but way to out yourself. Oh, but I did not out myself. You see, I have the ultimate trump card that will get me out of any legal situation at all. Ahem, it was merely satire. Checkmate, you bums. God, Joe, I really, I really just cannot believe you're of the same species as me. Like, the fact that we share genomes actively embarrasses me and makes me hate myself more and more every day. What the heck is a genome? I think you mean Geno Smith, who is a quarterback for the Seahawks. Yeah, the Joester knows about sports and gaming. I am the most talented and interesting man alive. I hate you so very much. Thankfully, I can just wipe my mind of all that hate with our next S-tier entry, which again should surprise absolutely no one, and that is Mexican food. What don't we have with this beautiful culture regarding its food? I'll have me some chalupas, I'll eat some tacos, I'll eat some burritos. Hell, I'd eat some tamales too. I think they have too many bangers to not be an S tier. The only knock I have on Mexican food is how expensive it has gotten over the years. Like how the hell is one taco freaking $5? Thanks a lot, Joe. What the heck do you want me to do? They were approaching five bucks when you were president. Guys, we can all admit that I was the best. Well, if bombing innocent countries qualifies you as the best, then I guess you do take the cake from me and Joe. But that's enough of that, because when I do my tier lists, I like to be clear and concise. Following the Mexican tier, we got some other basically wannabe Mexican food, and that is Cubans. Now, aside from Pitbull, I cannot tell you a single thing about Cuban cuisine. Oh, wait, Cuban sandwiches do exist. I am thinking a D tier, because like, if you ask anyone to look over this list, I can guarantee that no person will be like, oh man, I need me some Cuban food. They will simply not say that, and if they do, then may God smite me right now. Oh man, I need me some Cuban food. Nice freaking try, Joe. What do you mean? I love our Cuban people and their food, and I refuse to stay quiet because I will not stand for their slander. Then tell me one of your favorite Cuban foods right now that isn't a Cuban sandwich. Uh, well, there's a, um, hmm, you see, uh, I just really like Pitbull. That's what I freaking thought, Joe. Jesus, I think I would move it into F tier if I could just for that sorry display. If the Cubans are upset about this, I just want you all to know that you can't blame me. Go in the comments and blame the Mexicans for having better food. Donald, don't incite race wars in the comments. That will not be good at all. Good for the algorithm, maybe. But yeah, you have a point. Let's just move on to our next culture, and that is Caribbean food, and I think it's pretty mid. Like, I got this still going above Cuban food at C tier, but I don't really have much to say about it. Much like with Creole, because I have that going into B tier, so at least it gets a leg up on the rest of the competition. Donald, uh, I seem to notice that you have a very vacant A tier spot. What's up with that man? Like there is no way you believe everything on here is worse or above an A. Well, if you would let me explain and get to my list in a very timely and orderly fashion, I would be able to explain to you that I don't have anything there yet because we were barely about to get to it. I have our next entry, which is Korean food going into A tier. I love Korean food so much, but I don't think it will squeeze into S tier because those foods are on a whole other universe. Like S tier is just something else, but that isn't to say that Korean food is bad. On the contrary, it is very delicious, and I for one love me some kimchi fried rice or just going to my favorite Korean barbecue place. I will happily pay any amount you want to get to stuff my face with all you can eat meat because the Don here loves him some meat. I will out meet you any day of the week, Donald. Nobody, and I mean nobody, outdoes the Joe Dog in a meat eating competition. You know what? After hearing that out loud, I no longer wish to be the number one meat eater. I will gladly settle out of that one. Don't worry, I'll give you number two, Donald, because you bowed down to the great Joe Dog's meat-eating prowess. Okay, funny stuff, guys, but Donald, you told me this was a food tier list based on different cultures' food, right? Yeah, I mean, it is quite freaking obvious, Barack. God, are you stupid. Okay, I can't be stupid, because why the hell is there different cultures and stuff like Japanese, Thai, Mexican, you know all that. But then for our very last fucking entry, we have barbecue. What culture is that? That is not a culture. 
You idiot, Barack. That is our great American nation. Barbecue screams freedom, and with freedom comes barbecue. Obviously, this is going into S tier as well. I love me some barbecue, and quite honestly, I might have to make a barbecue tier list. Okay, if we're counting that as American cuisine, then that's fine, but let me take a crack at the list. I love barbecues. Maybe only because you approved of me doing the animal fight tier list. Wait, guys, what about me? Can I make it? No! What is up, gang Alang? It is your presidential trio back with another tier list. We did chicken nuggets, so now we figured, let's go ahead and do some chicken sandwiches. And of course, my viewers don't need to worry because the great Don is taking over for this list, and I am the food expert. But Donald, you told us that you haven't even had chicken sandwiches from all of these places. Listen, Sleepy Joe, I am here to appease the people, and they wanted this, so I will give them this. Just because I haven't had them all doesn't mean anything. This is not Pokemon, and I will simply just grade the ones I have had. Let's go ahead and get this list started instead of listening to Sleepy Joe. Up first, we got Burger King, and this ranking should really surprise no one because I have the Burger King chicken sandwich going into D tier. Much like their chicken nuggets, the Don simply isn't a fan of what they have to offer, Whoppers aside, of course. Or actually, their Mac and Cheetos are good, too. They got some good shakes, too. I had their Fruit Loop shake the other time, and I swear that it tasted good as hell. So if you get their shakes, I will personally vouch. Listen, Barry, I try to visit Burger King as little as possible. How about instead we talk about places with real food, like our first S tier on this list, and that is Chick-fil-A. These are made with real juicy, tender, and scrumptious ass chicken. This is the Margot Robbie of chicken, and this deserves the spot of top-tier sandwiches. But what about Popeyes? That's like the Selena Gomez of chicken, and I like their sandwiches almost as much, maybe even more than Chick-fil-A. Joe, you stop butting in and let me do the fucking list, man. We haven't hit Popeyes yet, but believe me that it will get only the most accurate of rankings. Speaking of that, I am sorry to the loyal audience, but I have never had a chicken sandwich from Dairy Queen. Is it good? Because I only get ice cream from there whenever Joe makes us go. Which is almost every weekend because he can't get enough of his blizzards. It's kind of an unhealthy amount of ice cream that he eats. No amount of ice cream is unhealthy, in fact. I could go for a blizzard right now. Can we go after this list? God damn it. Sure, man, I can go for some ice cream. Anyways, let's go to Jack in the Box next. And I have this going into C tier because I think it's honestly all right. And following up our KFC comments from the chicken nugget video, KFC has simply fallen off, and I will be placing their chicken sandwich into C tier as well. It could have an argument for B, but I'm gonna keep it here till they get their shit together. Now with those two out of the way, I have some very, very unfortunate news for everyone. Now I am a McDonald's lover and everyone knows that. The audience knows, Barack knows, Joey knows, hell, even Hunter Biden knows I freaking love McDonald's, which makes these next words I'm about to say hurt me even more. I am placing McDonald's into D tier for their failure of a chicken sandwich with their dumbass McCrispy invention. You're better off with a McChicken than ordering the stupid ass McCrispy because that thing is absolutely dreadful. It has no passion or love put into it and it is simply hot garbage. Jesus, Donald, we got a whole rant from you. It must be that awful for you to talk so badly about a McDonald's product. Believe me, it was horrible. I was scarred from eating that monstrosity, but I will forever swear by their McChickens. Thankfully, we got another palate cleanser, and that is the delicious ass Popeye's chicken sandwich. This goes directly into S tier and is the direct competition for the Chick-fil-A sandwich. For me personally, I get whichever one, but lean a bit more towards Popeye's. Let's go, Popeye's superiority. Relax, Sleepy Joe. I usually only get it when I want something cheaper or if it's nearby, but I enjoy them both equally. Up next, we got Arby's, and I think it gets too much hate. I love their curly fries, and their chicken is just as good. It's not the best, but they place in a solid B tier for me personally. Let's give Arby's some more respect because it is better than the credit it gets. Following that up, we got Shake Shack, and I never got a chicken sandwich from there. Just a burger and a shake, so I have no opinion on this, really. And thus, I have to place this into the question mark tier. But oh man, you see that shit up next? Yeah, I am putting steak and shake straight into F tier. This is hot garbage, and I would rather be shot on sight than ever step into another steak and shake again. That's a bit excessive. I personally really like steak and shake. It's like a cool little place to enjoy, and sure, the food might not be the best, but I like it for the atmosphere. Yeah, I bet you like the atmosphere of where little kids and young teens hang out at. Plus, this is purely a ranking based on flavor alone and not anything else. Which leads me to our first A tier, which is Wendy's. 
They stepped up their game a decent bit with their new fries, and they have good sandwiches. I feel pretty good about this placement, but I think I still wouldn't go to it because if I really am craving a chicken sandwich, I'll go to Popeyes or Chick-fil-A. And if I want a cheap chicken sandwich, I'll just get a McChicken from McDonald's. Okay, so if the McCrispy alone makes McDonald's a D tier, what does it become if you count the McChicken for this? Probably an A tier, to be honest, but I'm too lazy to change it. Joe wants me to finish this list, and quite honestly, I also want a blizzard now. So let's go ahead and wrap up this list. I never had what a burger chicken sandwich is, so that also goes into the question mark tier. And for all the Bojangles lovers, I have good news. I think that it is a solid B tier. Take that however you will. Now, Joey, let's go get you some blizzards. Yippee! What is up, gang? We are back with another tier list, and this time yours truly is bringing you a Cheetos tier list. I had a lot of time to think in jail, and this is the main thing I was snacking on in there. I must have had at least 50 bags of Cheetos during my very long and excruciating time in prison. Weren't you there for only 20 minutes? Hold on, let me Google this. Yeah, it says right here that you were only there for 20 minutes. That doesn't seem long at all. How the hell did you eat 50 bags of Cheetos in 20 minutes? That is actually kind of insane. Listen, I said it was an estimate on the Cheetos I ate. Also, don't trust Google, it is simply fake news. And I may not be able to fully recall my prison time, and I would prefer if you two would simply not bring up such a traumatic and tough time for me. You just said all you did was eat Cheetos in there. Yeah, that was my struggle meal. You would never get it, but anyways, enough of this blabbering. Let's go ahead and get this list started. And up first, we got the Flaming Hot Chipotle Ranch Cheetos, and I will be immediately be placing these into C tier. This was kind of mid, and maybe that comes from the fact that I don't like ranch like that. I love ranch, don't get me wrong. I eat it on my wings, put it on my pizza, sometimes my fries. You all know how it goes. But sometimes ranch doesn't need to be placed onto things, and Flaming Hot Cheetos did not need that because they are delicious as is. Yeah, whenever I have too much ranch, I get bubble guts, and I end up just sharding myself when I think it's a safe fart. And then if I keep eating ranch-flavored things despite my body's first warning, well, I end up spewing bile from both mouths of my body if you catch my drift. That is absolutely vile, Joe. It's actually astonishing to me just how putrid you are. But I did see that interview where you reacted to my mugshot, and you said I was handsome, so you're on my good side, Joey. Have you seen Donald Trump's mugshot yet? Mr. President, are you worried at all about that? I, I did see it on television. What'd you think? Handsome guy. Up next on the list, we got some classic hot Cheeto fries, and I think this is an easy S tier. These things slap and are just great to eat. I can't have too many because it gets spicy, but I love the texture they have, and it can be a great switch up when I get too tired of munching on hard, hot Cheetos. So I think that one should be up for no debate, but this next one, see me personally, I am a fan of the cheddar jalapeno Cheetos. I believe they belong at a solid A tier, but I can see arguments for either having it higher or lower. I personally really enjoy the flavor and the slight hint of spice that these things have, and I am sure many others also appreciate it. Extremely valid, I mess with the cheddar jalapeno flavor as well. I'd say an A ranking for it is just right because I already see like maybe two better Cheeto flavors than it. Ooh, I hope one of them isn't the flaming hot Cheetos with lime because I actually have that going into B tier. Now, before everyone hates on me, just hear me out. You can just squeeze limes into your normal flaming hot Cheetos and it's basically the same. Some say better. Yeah, but what if I don't want to cut limes, Donald? Have you ever thought of that? Have you ever thought about moving your lazy ass every now and then? Of course you haven't. Sorry, Joe, I forgot we're cool now. I'll cool it down a bit, but anyways, up next we got the classic Cheetos, and I also have that going into B tier. I like them a decent bit, but I won't go crazy for them. I respect them for being the OG Cheeto, and will love them forever because of that. But if you ask me personally, these next ones have them beat by a mile. I have the Cheeto Puffs going into S tier because these things are banging. The texture is so much better. I like the airy bit it has and can easily demolish a family-sized bag of these in, like, record-breaking time. Oh, yeah, now this is one we can most definitely agree on, Donald. I freaking love eating Cheetos Puffs and just seeing how many I can chew in my mouth before swallowing. Then when I finally can't put any more in my mouth, I end up swallowing this big yellow glob of cheese and I feel it slowly move down my throat like a big ball of mucus. God, I love it so much. Uh... That makes me want to rank it lower, but again, you called me handsome, so I am letting a lot of stuff slide today. 
Up next, we got hot Cheeto puffs, and this is joining the cheddar jalapeno in A tier. I like these, but I must admit that the classic flaming hot are better in my opinion, but it's nice to switch it up every now and then. Now, this next one is dangerous, like they should put a warning label on this because I almost ended up in the hospital. These black label hot Cheetos are something fierce. They are so hot, and I kept chugging milk after like three handfuls of these. But I must say this, the flavor is absolutely immaculate, and they belong in A tier for entering God's domain of too spicy. If they're that spicy, can you really even say you enjoyed it? Like, why rate it that high? If you can't handle it and are barely going to eat any? Because they're good, I don't need to explain it further. Jesus, man, no one ever complains about Icarus flying too close to the sun because he's a motherfucking dog for trying that in the first place. If it slaps, it slaps, even if it's super spicy. It's like eating something super sour, like, yeah, it'll hurt a little, but it hurts in a good way. Actually, I take that back. I didn't mean it like that. Anyways, let's just wrap up the list and go on to our final entry, and that is the classic Hot Cheetos. Now, if you think I'm going to come on here and try to say that it is anything other than an S tier, well, then you got me fucked up because the classic Flaming Hot Cheetos is a certified banger and absolutely belongs in S tier. Is it because it hurts you in a good way? Is that why you like it so much, Donald? Jesus, I take it back. I knew it was going to be you who was going to rag on me. I mean, it wouldn't have been Joe. We know that for sure. Yeah, I know I've been quiet for a while, but uh, I like it when stuff hurts. Like, it hurts so good, so good, I can't help but let out a little yelp. Like, I'm really into the pain as gain sort of mentality, except I want no gain and all pain. I live Let's for cut it. the video here.